so we have players shuffling up, passing back and forth. It looks like our names are our names reversed. Is that uh, Steven on? That doesn't look like Steven's hand. Okay, I wasn't sure. Uh, that doesn't either. I don't know. Yeah. We're removing our uh, our technical tape. Like yeah, six one and four zero, oh, but not a lot of other non blue grasks. Yeah, that that makes sense. Good chunk of five twos for sure, and I'm sure the losses were to various blue decks and John Ryan on one card combos. Five two, a very respectable record. Yeah. All right, Leo in the opener over there for me. We Mason. are switched. We are yes. swapped here. Let's see if I can fix that here from my my seat wall. Yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. All right. Hopefully. There we go. So, oh, and a green sun to start with as well. So Mason may actually get the green sun dryad arbor off the rip. And Steven. Currently wonder... the Steven mirror, but we'll fix that. Yeah. Mason. Oh, wait, nope. Yep. Yep, there we go. We're good. All right. All cool. right. Yep, that green sun and the skull clamp in the hand here for Mason. Oh, he does have skull clamp. He does indeed. Oh, man, that is got a real emerald. good. This is a hot start. Findhorn Elves, skull clamp. Whoo. Uh, yep, and a land and... Ignoble. Ignoble. A significantly less thrilling start for Steven over there. Yep, Steven, Steven not having a mox to get started with. Not having a mox, a single mox to his name, in fact. No, little... and he took Soul Ring. Yes, he did. Which I think is 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 the right thing to do in his his spot, but in uh, that circumstance, do we have a play here? Oh, we got two mana. Certainly, you know, Green Sun Zenith is an option. It's yeah. Available. It looks is that like what we're, we're doing? Yep, it. we're going to Green Sun for two. Let's take a look at the deck list. What are we going to go? Visionary get? Scoos, Priest. Mm. Priest seems real good here. Yep, it's going to yep, be Priest of Titania. Go. course everyone's favorite classic elf creature from back yeah. in the day present for cut and what is are, are we how are we going to follow up are we going to get a plague engineer here uh, i think yeah plague engineer out of the sideboard we have uh, is oh that, that is in the sideboard is that despise yeah. is that what that is i think that is uh, yep that is a despise it's a different one right it's the, so he keeps a leo despise. Yeah, it's that despise. He keeps a Leo, and we get a decay yep. on the priest. Solid call. Yeah. Got to get rid of that now. So we have a Leovold and Dryad Arbor. We'll clamp it. Clamping. Give him the clamps. Arbor. Clamp. A Lanawar and a Death Rite. All right. So handful of elves, but not a lot of action here. No. No. Just a lot of one ones and nothing. But you know what's he good with no one ones and nothing? Skull clamp. Oh, heritage yeah. druid. Oh, and it's we're we're about to go. Okay. Yeah, we're off to the races now. We got a mox jet, summoners packed. Death right notably does allow him. Oh no. Yeah, death right now does allow him to cast, um, Leovold. Yes. So he will be able to have that off next turn. Yep, but he's gonna have to wait a little bit. With, yeah. Because yeah, with the mox and the. Yeah. Okay. Would be, and yeah, he's gonna have to exile the the dryad armor yep. for that. But that's fine. He won't miss it. No. We're gonna play Rex Age. Rex Age. No targets nothing. pass. And just making sure that was a may. Yep. You know, I would hate to go out there and tell him he had to <laughs> blow up one of his mocks or yeah. something. But looks like we are getting Witherbloom command here for a sweet two for one. Yep. That's good. We got rid of the Skull Clamp and the Heritage Druid, which steals a lot of gas. Mason Mason doing what everyone has to do when Witherbloom gets cast against Command gets yep. cast of them. Time to read this card. What how why did this card just two for one minute? Yeah. Oh, that's why. Great. Yep. That's that's one of my favorite uh, two for one possibilities in this format along with collective brutality. Oh yeah, for sure. Those cards are both great. Wither Bloom Command, Mark was saying he thinks the best, certainly the best of its cycle for VRD by, yeah. by quite a wide margin. It and Prismari Command. Really yeah, Prismari is really good. Leovold, and are we Hellbent now? I think Mason's Hellbent. I think Mason is Hellbent, but... Oh, no, uh, he has one card. Ah, uh, yes. Swing for two. No more Skull Clamp. Dome. That's Yeah, that's a three. Or three, yeah. 
and it looks like Leovold is going to eat it from something. Trophy? Uh, Assassin's Trophy, yeah. I think. Yep, we got a trophy. Thinning the deck out here. So Mason, with a lot of ways to make mana... And he not, does have a Summoner's Pact in hand. That's true. He's got Pact, so if he gets up to uh, Crater Hoof mana, yeah, he can he certainly can, he challenge can win. Steven, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Steven going for the DT here. Yep. Which we don't really know what Steven has in his hand, so it'll be interesting to see if he's got a combo here that he can just win. Yeah, he... Because Chain of Smog is two? Chain is two. Wither Bloom so, is two. Yeah, so he can... Not this turn, but next turn he can win. Yeah. Um, and against Mason's deck, I feel like he's got the discard spell, so not really the removal. So if you go and grab one yeah. of those pieces, you just you know, like if you go grab the apprentice, you just throw it into play. Yeah, and I I feel like it, at this point, you know, if I'm Steven, I'm feeling pretty comfortable because you would have used your discard if you had it a little bit earlier. Yep. You know, rather than wait. So we have right. a you just misty. Gotta try to fade the top deck here. Yeah. So Mason at two cards with a Summoner's Pact and a Misty. So he has five, six, seven mana, but obviously you don't want to use your Elves if you can help it. Right. Because, of course, Crater Hoof is at its best with friends. Elves of the Deep Shadow. Elves of Deep Shadow coming in. Everyone's everyone's favorite mana elf from the dark. Yes. Also the best art Yeah, we've, on we've, that card by far. We've got the right version printed out. Yes. Unfortunately, that's the one that is that reads the worst on camera. Oh, yes. You'll just have to trust us. All right, there we go. And we are drawing Concordant Crossroads. Mm. Probably not what he wanted to see. Not a real helper here. Yeah, and Mason is in a bad way at this moment. Yeah. Misty comes down. He, he can still gain life and apply pressure with his Deathrite Shaman. That is true. Um, oh, that's an Archdruid. Yes, Elvish Archdruid coming down here. That Ooh, having boy. haste is great, although there's not really a lot of places to put all that mana. We are going to swing. Is Archdruid your elves or all elves? I believe it is your elves. I thought it was. All right, so that's down to 10 now for Steven. Other elf creatures you control. Yep, yep. Steven takes so quite a hit. Yeah. One, three two, mana three. for a Lily of the Veil. Okay. Well, that's uh, a little bit outclassed here on the board. Yeah, that that was not what he wanted to see right no. now at all. What is uh, that green card to the side up top? It is Concordant Crossroads. Yes. It's it all is. creatures have haste. It's a world enchantment. Yep. Uh, we just paid one mana for, I assume, an Imperial Seal to go down to three life. Yep, that's Seal. Steven's dead, isn't he? Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, Steven's dead. Well, depends what he finds. Oh, no, it goes on top of It goes deck. on top. Never mind. Yeah, he is just dead. Mason shocks himself down to, I think, 17. Yep, there we go. Yeah. Off of that Misty. A nice early pickup of Misty grabbing that overgrown tomb. Yeah. DRS activating. Going to bring Steven down to... Oh, swipe up, Steven. Swipe up. Down to five. Steven's so used yeah, to Steve, the left Steve, right. Steven is just dead here. Yep. He is going to die. Steven and him scooping up. him up. All right. So sideboard-wise, what are we doing here? Sideboard-wise, Steven has that Plague Engineer, yeah, right? Yeah, Plague Engineer. I think he has... He's got Toxic Deluge. Deluge well is in the board, board as well. Um, those Revoker, and, maybe? I think oh, no, Curse Totem. Curse Totem is probably very yeah. interesting. Although he doesn't really need to bring it in because he's got Karn. That's true. He's not going to bring that in. It's, that's part of the Karn board. Yeah, he's more likely to just Karn that up. But He can bring in Plague Engineer named Elves. He can bring in Questing Beast if he wants to compete on the battlefield. Yeah. Uh, Toxic Deluge, I think, is a pretty easy call. Yeah. But other than that, I think that's a I think him. Bit. Does him come in here? Him's, him's main deck. Oh, so it is. Okay, I didn't catch that. And Last Hope is also main deck. So what does Mason bring in? Uh, does Mason he have much? has very little for this yeah. matchup that I know about. Mason left the discard spells out of his main deck, actually. So Ah, okay. Uh, Mason doesn't really have... Endurance? I, I mean, I don't know. The thing is, you saw so little of what Steven did. Obviously, you have perfect yeah. information, so you know he's going like... All in combo. Yep. 
But he's not graveyard based at all, so Scooz doesn't make sense. I don't know that he brings anything in. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe a clan caller. Mason looking at his four copies of Elvish clan caller. Of course, the yeah. self tutoring uh, yeah. nonsense lord just says, I want to overwhelm you on the board early. Yeah. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, I think Karn does have other things to get. Totem may that's come true. in because Karn fetching Lattice is a pretty good yeah. combo there. Um, yeah, getting four clan callers is definitely a lot different than getting four squadron hawks. It is that's very for sure. different. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite the pickup for an elves deck now. Yeah, elves not a, a super well represented ar archetype across VRDs, as uh, as hyphenated mentioned earlier. Priest has been drafted. Priest of Titania has been drafted five times, so I think I'm okay yeah. with clan caller being a four of giving giving elves a little help. Yeah, I don't see a problem with that. I would love to see goblins drafted at some point oh, in this format. That would be so wonderful. I especially with Muxus now. It just got so much better. I love Muxus. That card is so sweet. Yeah. I hope somebody makes that work someday. And just with like you can do so much with Skirk Prospector, right? Yeah. There's there's so many silly things you can do with that card. Plus that's an excuse for me to uh forty five forty fifth pick the uh the onslaught goblin uh, pinger. What's the name of that card? Sharpshooter. No, the other, the, the worst one. Oh, fl uh, flame. Yeah. No, nope, not this one. That's the wrong. Skirk Fire Marshal. Oh no, it's worse than that. It's four mana. It's like a one one. It taps for one. But uh, there's, fire slinger. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. It's something. It's terrible. And I would just draft it for memes. I I full disclosure. I would forty fifth pick mountain goat. Mm, yes. I, I absolutely would 45th pick Mountain Goat. No no question whatsoever, we're getting it, if I ever draft this. I may, I may even do Mono Red Aggro just for the meme, so I can say, no, it's 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 yeah. one of my cards. I get it. Goblin Lackey has been drafted twice in 2010 and 2014. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People tried. Yeah, they did. good enough. Recruiter, I feel like, would be good with Food Chain. You can actually make that work. So. Ha. <laughs> well, uh, Unfortunately, Mason is up one game yeah. to none currently. Right now, uh, Chicago is, is, is a little bit ahead of St. Louis. Yeah, Chicago's here. representing here. It's not just the pizza, which Emos is better. Um, oof. Oof. What? Oh. What? Oh. What? I oh, forget I you're not from St. Louis. Oh, I see. Okay, I grew up in Massachusetts with the, like... Uh, oh, yeah, the, the, the giant... The big Greek-style pizza yeah. with, like, the, 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 like, crunchy crust and the... the very greasy bottom of the pizza. That's that's where I live. So. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. I can't. Yeah, well, you can disagree. You can be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have Glimpse in our opener here from Mason, which yeah. is something that was missing last time. Granted, he still top-decked like a champ, so it was fine. Uh, double black here. All right, so there's... there's is that an opposition that's agent? Void that's Void That's Voidwalker. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a sweet card. Not gonna. So, uh, now Mason's graveyard is not of much concern, really. But yeah, it's a three-two. It can't block. Notably, it's got shadow. But it also can't be blocked. It does. It does get in for three every turn, unless you want to use it. I'm gonna go ahead and play that Circle of Dreams Druid. Yep. A new addition. So that was a sideboard card. So he went a little bit bigger. It seems like. Oh, we're gonna play Deluge for one. Okay. Yep. Yep. Rip your See board. your board. It's and it's been swell. Coming at you for two. Yeah. Did he hit for three there? Because that's wrong. No, he hit. I believe he. Well, that's they probably I... rewound and said, actually, I would have swung first if okay. I was playing sure. ideally. Yeah, that's fine. We're friendly here. We allow takesies backsies as yeah. long as it's immediate. All and right. a visionary for a little bit of gas. What do we get? We get a symbiote. Why would symbiote's going to be good here? Death Red Shaman coming down. He's still got that glimpse in hand, yeah? He yeah. does still have glimpse in hand. Um, I think he's trying to build mana before he does anything else, really. All right, so we have a thespian stage. We're going to swing for three. Yeah, Wheaton Rel. Yep, precisely. Don't be a jerk. Oh, did he swing first? We missed that. Sorry, okay. hyphenated. Thank you. Sometimes I don't, you know. I see things in the wrong order. You 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 take you take breaks from judging. Yeah. I think that's important. Yeah. Sometimes I sometimes I, I I I have I've been known at in the top eight of, Ooh, of professional events to ask players. Silly that questions. is an opposition agent, I yes, believe. Yes, it is. I think so. And that's gonna eat the DRS. Or oh wait, no, is it? He yeah. So he flashed in. I think we have a response. 
Oh yes, we're companying. Yep. Yep, and so they trade. Okay. Company into Elvish one of four copies of Elvish Clan, Clan Caller. Caller. Yep. Stephen bringing down that that hotly contested strip, strip mine. mine that should not have lasted that long, and we're gonna hit the waterlogged grove. Nice pickup while that's tapped, denying me yeah. some in for the card. All right, Four so steps. we get the draw here. This this is a much more interactive game than the last one was. Turns out, when you have mana and can cast spells, you can do things. Of course, that uh, that that thing is exiled, but that that won't matter. No. Yeah, glimpse also yeah. exiled. So we have a wirewood symbiote, another clan caller, draw a card. Yep. Is that it? Are we done? Uh, yeah. Time to swing for five. Okay. Yep. Now, Clan Caller is other elves, right? Other elves you control get plus one. Okay, plus one. yep. Yes, indeed. All right, so Void Walker's swinging in for three. Steven looking to actually attack the life total. He pa Did he pass? He passed. Ooh. That is rough. I got. I got to wonder what's in his hand right now. Uh, so much for the best non-blue deck we've seen. Yikes. Okay, there's not a lot of instants in Steven's deck. No. Uh, Assassin's Trophy, perhaps? Yep, we're going to trophy a clan caller. Oh, that's a decay on one clan decay caller. clan caller, rather. Yes. Okay, so we're taking three there. Should be four. Or no, it's three, because yeah. clan caller is a one one. Yep. yep. Good, 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 good. And we're going to play a Quirion Ranger. All right, so we're going to start drawing cards. Yep. Maybe? Possibly, I mean. Yeah. Honestly, Quirion Ranger is a two-two that attacks. That's true. Yeah, it is. It is a two-two that attacks. But yeah, we're gonna bounce on tap. Replay the forest. Ooh. Realm Walker. Realm Very Walker. Nice okay. Elvis, yep. Probably. Everyone's favorite new changeling. Yep. So Mason can look at the top card of his library at any time. Yeah. He can cast elves from the top. That's pretty sweet. That is very cool. And we are passing again. Ooh. Checking the top. Not an elf. There's a Mox Jet, and we do have a Symbiote, so we can potentially draw cards here off that Ranger. Yeah, there's there's the possibility to do some work here. Or off the Visionary, rather. So four mana, what do we got? It is Natural, natural Order. Uh-oh. Crater Hoof. Here comes one hoof, hoof friend. There it is. And unless Steven can do something really remarkable, he's going to be dead. Okay. Trophy the hoof. That's fine. Mason's creatures are still very big. Yeah. Can he... He can crop rot activate here. I don't know that that's enough, though. He's dead. Yeah. All right. That's what I thought. All right. So Mason takes down Chicago the Chicago stomping. <laughs> And round one. Steven's deck just didn't do anything. No, he, he just didn't draw well. Yeah, which I think, you know, when we were looking at it, we said, look, there's not a whole lot of draw here, so he's going to be in top deck mode a lot. Yeah, he, he clunked out real bad in the early mid game and just... No Phyrexian Arena. That's right, yeah, no, no Arena. He's got the Confidant. Yeah, he does have Bob. But other than that, he doesn't have any source of card advantage or card draw. Yeah, maybe his deck would have benefited from like a Knight's Whisper. Or yeah, something. something. Of that, a Skeletal Scrying. Yep, 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 yep. Necropotence, of course, went to John Ryan. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think he wants a Necro, anyways. Death, That's anyway. yeah. Yeah, there's uh, no one took Knight's Whisper. I don't believe. No, not a, not a single one. Knight's Whisper, not not present, sir, not appearing in this film. It turns out. Yeah. So that's tough. All right. Well. Uh, now that you and I have done done one of these, we should probably get a player in here. Yes, to, let's. Uh, do a little commentary. I'll go scout somebody out. Sounds good. We will be right back in a couple moments, guys.
Yeah. All right, so we have Brandon and Joe coming up on this one, and I have here in the booth with me Mr. Stephen Hagen, fresh off. Fresh off my loss. Yes. So, yeah, my deck didn't, uh, I don't know. I think I'm a short on actual, like, threats. Like, I have the combo, and I have some beatdown here or there, but I think I'm short on actual finishing games. So I... Eric and I thought, after we looked at the deck list, we thought you might have the best non-blue deck list we've ever seen. Yeah, I like the list. I think I just think I'm short something. I don't yeah, know. like I, I feel like I'm just short either a little bit of ramp or a little bit of another finisher or a threat or something. I yeah, don't know what it is. So, so we've got Brandon on mill and Joe on Delver without a lot of fixing. Yeah, it's a mill shenanigan. I mean, it's not. It, it, like he was talking earlier about like he was going to do a mill, but I don't. I mean, it's got a couple of big mill cards, but I, I, it's not. The mill I was envisioning, but it's probably no. better in the long run. Like, I, I, there's no glimpse. I mean, he's got Tasha's. Uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, but he's definitely going to mill some people of a lot of things. I mean, it's definitely a Brandon deck. Yeah. The fact that he didn't main glimpse is somewhat surprising, but he did main quicken. So I yeah. think, is he just, I guess, audibling game two, kind of? Yeah. I mean, uh, what's he going to quicken here? Um... Not a lot. <laughs> it, it was kind of a, it, it was an interesting choice. Quicken and sorceries? Uh, Quicken is only sorceries. Only sorceries okay. Next sorcery card you cast this yeah. turn, maybe cast yeah, as though it had flash. I mean, I guess some of his mil, mill cards are sorceries. Tasha's? Yeah, Tasha's is. Yeah. That's fair. Is he just drawing? Yeah. What else did he main here? Okay, so it looks like we may. Yep. Oh, he does have Cryptic. God, I love Cryptic so much. Is there somewhere we is can see the draft freeze? spreadsheet? Is there is. Or brain freeze? I can't see. That's Brain Freeze. Okay. That he's got up currently. Now, I will say, uh, I was talking to Steven, and he said that the um, round 17 pick was brutal for him because Brain Freeze, Thought Scour, a yeah. bunch of the... Con or, sorry, I was talking to Dan. Uh, a bunch some of the stuff of the, he wanted. Yeah, a bunch of the stuff he wanted got drafted by other players. Did we just have our first mulligan? We did. So you you were audible in here, correct? You yeah, you were originally going to be swapping out for commentary, like, yeah, always. like always. Yeah. So how do you feel about the format now with Modern Horizons two? I, I think it's I mean I, I think it's just ever growing. I mean I think it's an interesting format. I mean I think we saw a lot of it during the draft where people were shocked by things going later, and it's just like well, there's just so much new stuff that yeah. you know that comes in, and you know potentially viable combos if you want to try stuff that may not pan out. Um, so you get strip mine twenty ninth. Yeah. <laughs> Bob. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I. I mean, that was 30? I mean, Brandon yeah. said he, he had just missed that. Like, yeah. Had, it was on his mind, and it was one of his brain farts. Yeah. So, Island Pass from both of these players. We do have a City of Brass, so we do have our fixing in for Joe, Joe here. Yeah. And he's, got, he's a bit all over the place. I, I think... I don't I feel like his... Um, got a Mana Drain? Reanimate slash Mana Gorge was a mistake from yeah. where he was. I yeah. Think he could have just kept going, grabbed Ragavan, and then maybe grabbed... Uh, yeah. Did, did he, does he have Delver? In the, dr Delver went undrafted. Okay. Or maybe a he, Kiki. You yeah. Know, uh, maybe Kiki combo as a backup. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the deck's good. I mean, I think... It, I, yeah, it, I, I it, think it, it is. It's Joe's wheelhouse. I know I play yeah. Commander with Joe a lot. Okay. And this is very much a deck that Joe likes to play. He likes yeah. counter spells. He likes a slow control game. Yeah. Got for Spike, there's the Mana Drain he revealed off the Serum Visions, and a Taiga. So we have our full rug out there. Yeah. And then he's got a little bit of black, but he's got City for that, so that's... Alright, sorry, sorry about that, that Cube. Uh, had the gain turned down. Different commentator. So we had to change it. Yeah. So we have... Because I'm like, underwater and a mile away, that's why. Right, yeah, that's exactly why. <laughs> He does have a CZ Peasy in his hand now and enough mana to cast it, although I I mean I feel like I would just run that out there, right? At what, this point. What is it? Season Pyromancer oh, yeah. if I'm Joe. Probably. I mean uh Brandon doesn't have a lot of counter magic, so Yeah. Yeah. They turned me up too, so I, that's what we're hearing. Uh, which is weird because uh, you know I'm a professional. Is speaker. that a season? I thought season was four mana. Am I wrong? No, season's three. It is three. Oh never mind that. Two red and one. Oh, there we go. Pitching two, getting a couple dudes. Duders, drawing some cards. What do we got here? I didn't catch quite what he drew. He pitched Leak and something. Uh, land. Forest, like. yeah. Leak and Forest to get his dudes. Yeah. 
For sure. Sorry about that, Cube. Thanks for letting us know. Okay. And we're passing. So looking at Joe's deck, like Atasha's is pretty brutal against him. Yeah, because he's real low to the ground. He's pretty so. low. Um, is is that Thrun main? I can't tell on the bold. I mean, Thrun, Thrun and World Gorger. Thrun little... is sideboard. Okay. Yeah. World Gorger though, it's got some pretty pretty high cost. That can save him some. Well, and he doesn't have a win condition with World Gorger. Uh, blue, ma infinite mana blue sun. Oh, that's right. He did put Blue Sun in, yeah. yeah. Uh, which Blue Sun it's is main. main. Yeah. yeah, and World Gorge Animate is main as well. Yeah. Okay. All right, so Brandon has not really done a whole lot this game. Just played lands and passed. Yeah. He's got action in his hand. He's just not... Like, there's a Jace. I think he's just trying to play around counter magic. Right, which that I makes think, sense. I mean, yeah. I'm one of those guys that, like, I'm just going to make you have it, though. I'm right. going to run it out, run it out, run it out. You're going to run out eventually. Yeah. It's a singleton format. Come on. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. I have to. So let's see. And we have, what, a grip of five over there for Joe? There is our dragon, Rage our Darcy, yeah. as they're calling her. Which I remember overhearing when you were doing the MH2 stream with yeah. Mark. That uh, you were excited for that one to get picked. I can't believe Ragavan went as late as he yeah, did. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, we've always talked about Burn as the deck, but yeah. I think there's actually just like a red aggro, aggro. slash red blue aggro yeah. with Guide, Ragavan, Chandler. Yep. One that I Mark always makes fun of me for, but I think Robber the Rich is actually pretty decent in this format. Uh, I think Robber's really good in this format. Um, Extortionist is good. Yeah. And there's a Mystical. Okay, so we, we have. I mean, he's got gas. Over he's there. got a full. He has seven cards in his hand, so he has to play something. Oh no, he has eight cards in his hand. Yeah, he had a full grip before. Yeah. Run it out, Brandon! Come on, you're gonna have to cast spells. No. We're gonna get probe. Oh, mana drain and an oof and a deck. And a force spike. And a force spike, and we have double blue open. Yeah, I'm surprised with the main deck oof, to be honest, in his list. He doesn't have a green sun to get it. Yeah. We don't have a dominant artifact list here, so I don't think No, the there's... fact that there's no workshop that got right. drafted is wild to me, because that's such a... Oh, I mean... Well, I mean, I was telling out there, I was talking, I think workshop's actually often a trap. I think it was Academy Workshop, yeah. that you yeah. have, like, generally, unless you're just in the mud deck. Yeah. Right. Then yeah. it just, like, when I had workshop, it didn't do me well. Now, if you're in the mud deck, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have I mean, to be. There were games where I had workshop that it was amazing, like yeah. you know, where I you know real real quick ran out, uh, you know, as like workshop uh, black lotus turn one worm coil, you know? right? Yeah. <laughs> Are we? Nope. He pulled out the four spike and then allowed the mystical tutor. And I know in that in VR in St. Louis VRD two, Eric thought uh, Cat, uh, Academy wasn't that great for him. Yeah, uh, you know, it just he didn't have the threshold to really make it overly worthwhile. No, I feel like Workshop and Academy both they're great in actual vintage because of the density. Right. Because you get five. Every yeah, you get every mox. You right. get your Lotus. You get Trinisphere. You get all of that stuff that you can have multiple iterations of. Right. And you just don't get that here. Yeah. And I, I think that's that, part of... That's always that why I always say this is like part vintage, part EDH. Because, exactly. You know, there's just so many things that aren't as good when you're not drawing four of them. Four of them, yeah. Which is why I think that the Storm deck is not good in this format. I think yeah. a lot of people try to draft it. You can pull it off, and it can and it can win big. Yeah. But I think you just don't have the four Manamorphoses, the four of everything you need. And sure, yeah. you can get there without the redundancy, but I just don't think it's the same. Sure. Also, props to Joe for being good guy Joe and playing face up <laughs> after that get probe. Yeah. We're going quicken? to quicken. What are we quickening? What are we quickening? We're going to draw a card. This is the Brandon special, quicken into nothing. Yeah. I, I have actually seen him do this when playing him. Quicken in... <laughs> I, I was honestly kind of expecting Bizarre. Funny you mentioned that, Cube. I'd mentioned it earlier when John was drafting. I'd kind of expected Bizarre there. I don't think it was, I don't think it's shown well in our St. Louis ones, but I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of there's a lot of data across. Yeah. Hyphenated actually may be better to speak to that. True. Um, he's very embraced into the data. Um, I, Jeff might have in one did well. Yeah. With it. Um, 
bizarre, but yeah, again, it's without four of, it seems a little difficult. What is Brandon Great, thanks, doing? Pete. Yep, there we go. What's he jamming out here? We got two mana. Is that two or three? No, he put the cards back because they rewound. So we're going to brain freeze, freeze here. So we had a gush. Gush, mystical, or gush, quicken. Mana drain. Brain freeze. Four. That's 12. That's, that's a lot of cards. Yeah, that is that is really good. Oh, and probe, oh, probe was yeah. his turn. Yeah. That's five. That's 15. That's a lot. Uh, and Joe did not get an Eldrazi either. He did not. I, I As soon as uh, the Tasha's went, I, I grabbed an Eldrazi. Yeah. Just... I, you and Brandon are the only two that have Eldrazi. Yeah. I mean, he's got a... I mean, he's got a bit of ordeal. He can play around it, and he's yeah. smart enough. But, uh... uh jo Joe does have a guy's blessing, though. Oh, that's true. He it's does probably, have I don't, a guy's It's probably blessing. not main, but... Uh, it is sideboard, yeah. but I have... Oh, no, we're game one, so yeah, yeah we're he's game probably one. not gonna... Yeah, Joe did grab blessing, and I like blessing. Yeah. I'm a big fan yeah. of blessing. I like blessing a lot. Ice Run and EDH, as well as Kozilek. Blessing's also solid because it can it can go come in against the uh, Reanimate deck, because you can yep. target Shuffling. Yeah, you can target <laughs> three Reanimate yeah. targets. So yeah, I mean, Brandon only being at 15 here is significant, right? Like, like Joe's showing the beat down at this point. Yeah, and, he is. and he's got a firm one, especially with that Dragon Rage channel. But it feels like Brandon bad. should be lower, and that yeah. doesn't bode well for Joe. No, it does not. But, but uh, you know, interestingly, Brandon doesn't have a whole lot of removal in his okay, deck. Okay, they're fixing it themselves. Thanks, yeah. thanks, Mark. Yeah, no, Brandon doesn't play a lot of interaction in his decks. Brandon, no. Brandon... Yeah, he wants to do his thing and just be left yeah. alone. Power to him. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, very few cards left in Joe's library there. So 15, 7 to 22. <laughs> yeah, seven Dragon Rage is, yeah. Dragon Rage better be a 3-3 three, three by now, correct? Yeah. All right, we're, che we're checking to make sure. There's the blue sun. Yeah, I don't think Joe's in a very good spot here. No. Not that... Brandon's in a great one. Yeah, it, it's it's a 3-3 three, three flyer. I don't really think there's any way around it. We've got instant land creature that I saw. I'm sure there's a sorcery in there somewhere. So that's 3 plus PZ. It's 2. We're going to surveil. All right, so we got a sorcery down there. There's a merchant scroll. We're going to loot. Oh, that's a JVP. There's That's a lot of cards rough to see yard, that go. Yeah. Is that a chrome box in it? What is that second card next to the spike in his hand? Oof. Oh, oof. That's right. The oof. Yep. Is, That's the, the oof. Main, should not main be main deck. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> the mainy oof. I was kind of surprised by that one. I I felt like that was a pressure pick. Because he thought you were going to snag it soon. I was going to snag it soon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was like, I, I need something because yeah. there's a lot of artifacts Well, he took the Force of Vigor right before it, so... Yeah, that's fair. I yeah. mean, he, 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 he solidly forecast. decided into, into his hate there, which yeah. is fine. Like, again, like, that's one of the things I think, like, looking at Alex draft, I think that he fell into a trap. Well, I felt... Because I drafted that same deck in three, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I think his version's better. But he fell into a trap that I did, which is I, he has too, way too many main deck cards. Yeah. You know. Um, you only won about... 29-ish main deck cards. Yeah. And then you're going to have to cut some of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So we're down to nine. Wait, is it not a 3-3? Three, three no, yet? it's a three. It's, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that is a mystical sanctuary, which gets us back. Something. Nothing, because he doesn't have a third island. Now he has oh, a third yeah, island. Oh, yeah, now we have a third island. He had three islands. We... What Fractured is... sanity. Oh, yeah. There goes World Gorger. There goes Animate Dead. And, and scoop him up. Yeah. Scoop, scoop, scoop him up. I was surprised Brandon didn't get anything that functioned like a ley line. Yeah, no, I, um, I mean, as in, I was in a weird spot. I mean, I wasn't, I knew 
if the narset had got to me, I was taking the narset and then a different day. Um, I knew it probably yeah. wasn't going to get to me where I was because I knew Brandon was being in the pre- high. doing the previous announcer li- li- yeah. li- list. I kind of knew what Brandon was going to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, that was f- after that and knowing what he was going to do. That's why I took Dothy Voidwalker as high as it did. I think yeah. I could have floated at about five picks. Um, I I, think you were the only one that was dedicated black at that point. Yeah. So. You kind of had your pick of the list, which yeah. is nice. I, I probably could have floated that much more, but like yeah. that would have been something that I easily could. I didn't know exactly what he was doing with his mm-hmm. build, and that's something I would have done with that build. Yeah, that's fair. I, th- I think Brandon may side in... St- I would want to side in stuff like Lutri and Thada Adele to kind of get on the beat down. Here. Oh, yeah, draft Yorian. <laughs> there you go. That's the plan. Fill it out with basics. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 45 main deck cards and 30 basics. So what's Brandon going to bring in? So we have an engineered explosives. Right, that's good. Relic, I think, is very good here. Because he, well, he should know that there's a guy's blessing in play. There we go. Brandon's not checking the list between games. I mean, no. That is true. Uh, uh, what is that? Arcane Denial? That is an Arcane Denial. Oh no, he's putting back the Relic. Don't do it. Don't do it. So Joe's going to bring in Blessing. Yeah, so Joe, let's take a look at these deck lists. We're going to bring in Blessing. Uh, he's gonna we're going to take out the main... Well, he's got enough Walker's main deck needles, probably still okay. Yeah, I think so, with Ashiok and everything. I think Reb may come in here. I think that I yeah, think Reb, Reb definitely yeah. comes in. Misdirection? Misdirection, yeah. I like Misdirection a lot here. Um, being able to redirect that. Yeah, uh, redirect Tasha's. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, do do we go for the stasis chronotalk phrase in Aether? Do, do I don't do know. It? I don't know. Uh, now, evidently, Blyden talked him on that. And yeah, I know. And... I mean, that is a very Blyden combination. Yeah, main decks are bolded in the spreadsheet. As long as everyone got them right. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ace Fire. That's uh, actually, fun fact, those playmats, that art was done by Yang Hao Han. Uh, I was at... Moonbase Market, one of the founders, the LGS, which is now closed, that actually got those commissioned by him. Uh, there's another art that I have that we have yet to use, which is Forest Park is Selesnia. Oh, nice. Which is pretty incredible. So, yeah, right? It was it was a great run. All right, so let's see. We have sideboarding done on Joe. What do I take yeah. out here? I don't... I don't like Renin Six. I don't. Yeah. I don't, I don't like it in the deck. I don't like it in his deck. And I don't like Alter in Brandon's deck. I know Brandon loves Alter and he's making a cute <laughs> statement. But like he's not you know, like it made a lot of sense when he was fast bond uh yeah. or being, you know. Yeah, when he had uh, all these ways to get a bunch of permanents into play. Yeah. Um I mean here it gets it's a Milfridge land. I mean that's not not the worst, but it's Thanks, not, Mages and Mementos, appreciate that. Or Mementor or and mentors. I promise I can read. Can you? Eh, kind of. Yeah, this will be this will be interesting because I Brandon I think did the same thing where he has a lot of main deck cards yeah. here, uh, including Altar of the Brood, which questionable, which you know what we'll we'll pull it up. I love this card. Yeah, I, mean, the I card, love the card I love amazing. that Brandon loves this card as much as he does. Like the fastbound Crucible Zernor, but like I mean, he just killed me with it. I mean, he was oh yeah, so it, many it, lands was, it was and, great. I mean, Altar of the Brood, there it is. Which, as you can see, again, with Fast Bond, right. Crucibles, or Orb, that card's great. You know, Bitter Blossom even, and, you know, and just we are getting the more repeated value out of it. Yeah. Which, man, I was really hoping we'd see Bitter Blossom out of you there, because I love that card in I, this format so much. I almost tutored for it, but I was just in a weird spot, like, when yeah. I was tutoring for... You know, game two, I was in much better after you know bringing in the delusion and everything, but yeah. he just had a little. T- the crater hoof just guy. I had it without yeah. the hoof. I mean, yeah, I, if he didn't have the hoof, you had. If it he didn't have the natural, there. I had it because he was at four. Yeah, I just needed a swing and a half. Hoof, there it is. Yeah, I was able to kill the hoof and it's lower to some damage, but it was just still enough. So it didn't matter. <laughs> I agree, Picula. These are a little surprising. Thank you for joining the chat. Um. There's a lot of fair decks. Yeah. I'd say a lot more fair decks than usual. There's not very many A plus B combo decks like I would have expected. Well, if I had... So my original plan, if I had been in pick one or two, was to basically repeat mine from two, which was just several two-card yeah. two, two monies. It was just yeah. going to be... 
Two card Monty dot deck. Yeah. Oh, there's an altar of the brood. I mean, a turn one altar is. Uh... <laughs> is it, is it going to happen? Yeah, he's got a turn one altar. I want this to happen so bad. I think he only has two lands. I think he's going to do it, though, because he wants to get the turn one altar. Oh, my lord. Uh, pretty big. Uh, yeah. I mean, so we have Grief, Solitude, Endurance. Dragon Rage uh, Channeler. Opposition. Whole Breacher went pick three, oh, yeah. which I expected it to. Um, you know, we'll see how they play out in the actual thing, but uh, they definitely uh, shook things up. Yeah, Darcy on the board there right now. Yeah, I mean, that's one that I expected to be huge. Tasha's Laughter, obviously a big one. And I, yep, there is the turn one Altar of the Brood. Man, this is actually a thing that we're going to see happen. Yeah, Dragon Rage versus a mill deck is exactly what you want to see if you're the Dragon Rage player. Ooh, our first pathway of the day. So the, the biggest weird thing was uh, there was a couple decks that could have used them, and I didn't see any Triomes. I was shocked I by was that. surprised, like actually stunned that we didn't see a Triome, especially uh, literally Joe. Yeah, yeah, Joe. I, yeah. I would have expected him to take a Triome over the pathway. Yeah. I took the pathway, and it just set people's mind on pathways, and they yeah. had, if I took a Triome there, it would have set people's mind on Triomes. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> and then Eric and I were commenting on that during the draft when we said, you know, it seems like the land flood comes earlier every time. Yeah. Where someone picks the I first fetch land. It. I know, and yeah. I, we commented on that, that you were like staying away from it and yeah. just grabbing, I'm going to get the cards I want for my deck. Yep. You I had a main, can... I had most of my main done, other than like three picks, I had most of my main yeah. done early, and then I was just, cool, now I'm just going to take sideboard things and reactionary yep. things, and... See, see what I end up with that's still in there. Yeah. All right, so no turn to play out of the mill deck, and... You had a mill one off of the, yeah. of the land, so that is a turn to play. So what we got there? We got a Season Fair. Pyro, a uh, Mana Leak. I think I saw... Oh, no, Negate's in the bin. So there's a Season Pyromancer. Now, so he had Dreadboard last time, so if he can pitch, like, Inevitable Betrayal there's or something There's a Chain here, of Vapor. Depending on what he pitches, the Dreadboard. Yeah. Because he's got Inevitable Betrayal for the Dreadboard. I don't know if it's in his deck currently, but... Uh, the card is really good, it turns out. Alright, and drawn two. Looks like Forest Peatland. And a Force of Will. Yeah. Oof. Not that that Force of Will is really going to matter much. I, I don't know if Brandon's going to have much there. And chain back the Altar of the Brood. Will he bounce? Will he repeat the chain? Uh, I Can you don't chain a land? him. Chain non land or it's non land. Okay. He could get the guys attacking him, but if I'm Brandon, I think I'd rather have the lands and just recast alter next turn. Yeah. I. It was interesting to me that Brandon took brainstorm and did not take any fetch lands. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's my inner legacy player, but I will never play Brainstorm without some way to make it draw three. Well, that's why I wasn't super sad about losing the Sylvan. I wanted it, but I didn't I didn't go into the fetch plan, so yeah. I just, you know, having that card stuck on the top of my deck or paying eight life doesn't feel super yeah. good. Yeah, we were kind of surprised you didn't get a source of, like, card advantage. Like a, <sighs> That's the the flaw of the deck. When I was building this deck, that's what I, I felt. Yeah. I mean, that's why I was glad, glad the Bob floated late. Yeah. Even like a something. Phyrexian arena or something yeah. would have been. When I was good. building it, I just that was my one. I kept looking at it, yeah. going, "This just doesn't have enough card advantage." Yeah. What should I cut? Or I cut? Knight's Whisper, and... Skeletal Scrying, any of that stuff. Yeah, Oof got drafted in twelve. Okay. There was yeah. an eleven, twelve uh, Force of Vigor, and then Oof by Joe. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, which we saw last game, but it was uh, there yeah, it part is. of them saying Oof. oof. Yeah. There oof. it is. All right, so what do we have out of Brandon here? Brainstorm on end step. DRC triggers off Arcanist, right? All right, so here's how you know that I'm in fantasy football mode. I read that as Dominique Rogers Cromartie, <laughs> <laughs> who hasn't even played in years. But uh, I believe so, yes. I believe it does. 
I'd have to check the word. What's the RC word? Uh, yeah, isn't Dominic Rogers Cromartie's kid now playing in the league? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Dragon. Uh, yeah. Dragon Rage. There we are. When you catch. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Yep, it will. Right, so we're going to Mystical for something up top here. It's interesting, the Force of Will is the highest converted mana cost in Joe's deck. Yeah, other so, than World Gorger. Other than World Gorger, if he still has World Gorger in the main. Right. Um, which, obviously, you have the opportunity of World Gorger ending up I mean, in your graveyard from your uh, opponent here. I guess, I mean, uh, without World Gorger, I mean, but again, World Gorger is only... Mana and Blue Suns is only combo there, so yeah. I just want to. I feel like he's like me. I think he's a little light on the win con, right? Like, yeah. I mean, he's got a. He's going for this beatdown, which is good, but yeah, it seems like he probably wanted to Delver a little bit more of the beatdown to go with it. I'm. I was surprised he didn't take Delver. And there's Tasha's hideous laughter off of the mystical, which was Eric's pick of what he wanted to see drafted. Mine was Darcy. Well, that's a great question, Mr. Caterberg. Um, I'm. I'm gonna answer the second half. Uh, but uh, you know. <laughs> he can answer the first half, and together... Truck stop Kanye over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it is difficult. I'll say that. Oh, and there is an Urborg for land three. So we could see Tasha's hideous laughter here, and I feel yeah. like this is the turn we have to see it. Yeah, I mean, does he even have a second blue card in he hand? He does not have a second blue card in hand, is the thing. Uh, and granted, you know, he would need to draw a blue card and not play it. Yeah. He does have a land, but we're a land behind. Just do it, do it, do it, do it. Jam it. Jim. Come on, do it. Give in. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yes. Is this Tasha's hideous laughter? It better be. Or true name. Ashiok. That's a mistake. I mean, that's just going to die to... I don't know, does he even have Tasha's in hand? He tutored... Oh, no, he tutored... No, he tutored for it on instep. Yeah, he has it in hand. Yeah, no, yeah, no. And the walkers See? right here all seem bad because they're just going to... They're just going to die to all the dudes. Right. That's just Which is the same, fact. At the same time, it's a fog. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's fair. Yeah, yeah. It, it does buy him time. I think also he, maybe he recognizes a guy as blessing as a thing, and he may just be exiling. Right. But also, if I'm Joe, I think I may just be all in on the beatdown brand I, and I, kill I him plan. That. I don't think I bother caring about, like, oh, I need to fog this Ashiok. No, I'm just going to... Yeah, I think you just... Oh, yeah, Tasha's does exile, you're right. Oh, we're going to sack a peatland. Ooh, what is that? That looks... Root maze. Ro okay. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I agree. That was illegally cast. It should have been Tasha's. What if he's got a Narset's Reversal in his hand, too? Does he have it in his deck? He does. Okay. Yeah. He did not side it out. I did not see that. Get... Who has Narset's Reversal? Brandon. Brandon. Right. Yeah, Brandon yeah I didn't Narset's... even see it get drafted. Yeah. I, I, wasn't, I must have missed that one. I zoned out at some point. No, no twin cast, just Narset's Reversal. All right, so we're deciding if we're going to squish yeah. Ashiok here. I, I Honestly, if I, I do, mean, I don't no, care about Ashiok. I, don't, I think you'd be down. Yeah. It's three cards. You... It's it's three cards, he's at 17 life, and you're presenting a ton, this is what, a two, three-turn clock here? Two and a half? Yeah. So, all right, we're just going to exile some more cards this turn, maybe play a land. The thing is, the longer he waits, the more likely it is that Joe will just have a blue card. Right. All right, what are we doing, Brandon? We all want Tasha's. Everyone wants Tasha's. Just do it. Give in. There's the Renin 6 and the Stasis. So we did sign into the Stasis plan. Oh, man. I love Stasis. What card's more fun, Winter Orb or Stasis? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't an option. <laughs> yeah, I mean this this is this is pretty pretty sad here. We're gonna do ooh, engineered explosives. E E seems good here. Yeah, E does seem good here. I mean it only gets one. He's got a one, two, three though, right? I mean right now. Well yeah, I mean it gets the tokens though, if nothing right. else. So he can choose. He can yeah. get the zero, one, two, or three, but he can't get and we're just going to pass after that. That is. So he played it for awful. the tokens. Yeah, he played it for the tokens there. Because he wants to be able to blow it up, I assume. Oh, there's the inevitable betrayal. Yep. Which doesn't really 
I mean, I guess it does get Emmerich cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. All right, so Root may slow down. Yeah, but it pitches to force. That's oh, yeah, that too. True. That's the real value right now. Yeah. And Brandon missed land drop. Yeah, he, he, he stuck on two for a while. Yeah. And then Root Maze is now going to slow the rest of those land drops down. Yeah. So, so at this point, I think it's, you know, Brandon missed his opportunity. Uh, obviously, like, even outside of the inevitable betrayal, though, if he just had force, yeah. I still think Brandon's missed his opportunity at this point in this is game. Um, and it's, you know, too far gone, unfortunately, yeah. I think, for him to be able to come back. The Root Maze is solid here. It, it's yeah. Gonna do, it's going to slow him down and do work. Did he hit any creatures that he can do off the Ashiok? Uh, to get some I don't think he's hit a single creature yet. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. It's kind of. Yeah, I liked the first Ashiok. I wasn't a big fan of the second one there. Yeah. Ooh, we're gonna cast a Snapcaster Mage, targeting Tutor or Brainstorm. Better be Tutor. I feel like Tutor Natasha. Tutor Natasha. <laughs> he's already got Tasha. Oh, okay. He tu he tutored Tasha the first time. Tutor into force negation that he doesn't have. Right. Who has force negation? Okay. Uh, blue white player okay. from Chicago. Yeah, Andrew. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Andrew. Wait, he did get brainstorm. No yeah, way. Oh, uh, I feel like Mystical's the play there. You get Narset's reversal to provide backup against the force. Yeah, the man for that anyway. Yeah, that's true. He doesn't have a fetch land to shuffle in his list. I'm going to be so mad if we don't see Tasha's hideous laughter here. I know. I'm going to hear he, sitting he, here. Sitting he here on camera, I want to, yeah. Yeah. All right, what are we blocking? We're blocking the DRC, which is not a big boy yet. Yeah. We're down to bad. six life, so we're going to have to pop next turn. Joe's got a bolt in there, too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, just do it. Jam it. Just so we can Dan see it. and I John Ryan, counter. all right. So the Reanimator deck and the Thurston Special, as he calls it, yeah. the Dramatic Scepter. Hey, there's a JVP. That's a card. Granted, it you know still dies because Brandon's dead on this next turn. Hey, he's got the. Um, he's got the. E, yeah, but he's. It, He's two turns away at this point, yeah. and there's the counter back up. I just don't think it's happening. No, I don't think. I think he's out. Right? Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Are you surprised we didn't see the Into the Dungeon deck? Uh, n no, I'm not. Aluren is... I mean, I thought about putting in Aluren and Asrak into mine. I thought it would have been perfect in yours. Um, like we we figured you would be the one. It was close. That would I, do mean, it. I think a learn is just like pretty risky in that you know other people get a benefit from it as well. I guess that's true. And it's, so if you're not completely built around it, yeah, it just seems risky. Yeah. I, I thought about it hard though. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're not completely built around it, I just wonder if it's worth it. Come on, Tasha, just let it happen, Joe. Just let him do it. Nope, we're gonna play a land tapped. It's tapped. Point it's to the tapped, root maze. Brandon. The, cla the classic dick move there. Point to the root maze. Yep. Hey, I do it with Winter Orb all the time. Exactly. Hey. And stasis. Ooh, Mystical Sanctuary? Doesn't do anything. Herb no. Orb. Yeah. Oh, my. Is two to activate explosives, right? Two to activate. Yeah, so, so he, he can has to leave the mana up. Unfortunate. Oh, and there's a mana drain. Yeah, yeah that's no, game. That's 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 just over. all over, but the crying. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I I just you know try to get the Emrakul. I know it's there. Gonna make him pop it. Pow. But you can't hard cast. He has to he has to suspend it. I mean. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he really wants, what he really wants to do with that is pitch it early to something and yeah. then catch with a Dreadhorde for free. Yeah. He should have grabbed a um, Cascade... Uh, uh, Careful study? Face, uh, uh, the Faithless. blue-green one. Cascade guy. 
Oh, uh, Shardless Agent. Shardless. I mean, his color yeah. should have had Shardless Agent. Yeah, yeah. Shard, for sure. Yeah. He has so many good targets. Because he's got, too. He's got uh, Rhinos, too. So. Yeah. Shardless into Anoof, Shardless into that. Shardless, yeah. into Shardless Agent should have definitely been there. Shardless into Ren and Six. Oh, Tasha's is gone. We just have land. Oh, no, he has his hand off screen. Okay, can we, can we, I, the laugh is going to get countered. The laugh is pointless now. The laugh is over. It's not funny. But he can try. It is funny to try. No, it's just disappointing. <laughs> had, I wanted to see it. He had his window. He had his window and it's gone. Forever. Forever. Don't worry, he'll do it to me off camera and I'll, you'll hear me yell in the other room. Yeah. Because it's good against my deck, Jesus Christ. Boy, is it. Is that Dream Render or Nightmare over there? That's Nightmare. That's Nightmare. That's yeah. the original OG. So we have a JVP in play and a pass. What? Ugh. Look at that grip full of mill cards. Doing nothing. Goif. And a goif, 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 goif. And three blue cards. Goif, 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 goif. Goif, 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 goif. I love a good Tarmogoyf. Is there a bad Tarmogoyf? Yes, there is. Yeah. I have played an 0-1 Tarmogoyf. <laughs> I wasn't proud of it, but it's happened. And one. Down to one. There's no mana burn. You can't go out on your own terms. What is that? Is that a Narset's Reversal that does nothing? That is a Narset's Reversal that does what nothing. What is he Narset's Reversaling? You should brainstorm, you should brain freeze and then Narset's Reversal. <laughs> Jeez, what? He's like, what did I do here? I yeah, no, you're doing it wrong, Brandon. Brain freeze. Narset's Reversal targeting brain freeze. Blow your counters, dog. You know he has the hideous laughter. Yeah, we cast a Tarmogoyf this turn. It's the only spell we cast. Are we going to Mana Drain? Are we going to Force a Will? What are we doing? What are we doing? We're going to Mana Drain one of them. Alright, so we're going to get free mana next turn. I, I think they're trying to figure out how many copies there are actually. Yeah, I know. Because the storm <laughs> still happens. Yeah. This this is my favorite part about storm. Yeah, about storm is people sitting here trying to figure out. All right, so how many copies of this are going on right now? Uh, all right, so we have one, two. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you for letting us know. For those of you that didn't hear, there was a mana drain on Brain Freeze in response to the Narset's Reversal. To the Narset's Reversal. So the Narset's Reversal fizzled. Fizzled, and only the copies yeah. resolved. And go ahead and pull up Reversal. Yeah. Uh, which we did just have a Gaia's Blessing trigger in the graveyard as well. Woohoo! The Blessing saves the day. Yep. There is Narset's Reversal. So if the copy no longer exists, it fizzles. No need to choose new targets or anything. And for those of you that don't know the good old blessing, guys, blessing right here. Uh, I said it, this is a really flex card, and I, I was really glad to see him pick it because it's good against um, real and reanimator well, because yep. you can. It's up to three from their graveyard, so you can target reanimator and get rid of three cards, or you protect you against mill, or can recur your own stuff too. Just all around good, and unfortunately, um, yeah. I mean, he was in just desperation mode. I mean, he knows he's losing yeah. There. He I mean, he. I think if he'd cast the uh, hideous la or the Tasha's earlier, he probably would have won. Yeah. But, oops. And then we go to a game three here. Yeah. Man, that's unfortunate. I was wrong. He countered the reversal. Okay. Oh, he countered the Narset's reversal. Okay. 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 So we were incorrect information. The yes. reversal was accounted, so the mana drain got shuffled. Yep. Uh, which now we unfortunately, due to the root maze and the mana screw, are not well off here if we're Brandon. Because we could potentially JVP, 
Or we could Tasha's hideous laughter mm-hmm. flashback with JVP yeah. after we flip. We can't now, right? Unfortunately, because he won't have six lands. Yeah, because he won't have six lands. But we're gonna get, we'll we'll get some action here. It's gonna get forced, whatever it is. What is he? Doing He's checking this? to see right. what the planeswalker is because it's gonna flip after right. this, presumably. So draw land. Oh, you're gonna discard that bad boy. Yep. That's you can't put that into play untapped. You'll die. Oh, well, you can't pay the cost, so you won't die. You just won't get a land. Oh, got a life pad. Death of oh, a life no. pad here. Oh no, it died. It died. Mark, we have a death of a life pad if you're on your ear- earpiece. If you can hear us. Ooh. That's a good question. Doesn't Jace go back to Joe when it exiles and flips? I had to check the wording. Pull up, pull up Jace. Mark, we may need a hold on the game. One second. Uh, Exile under its owner's control. control. Under its owner's yeah. control. Uh, yep. Mark, we need a hold. I'll be right back. Yep. So we are going to hold that real quick. Hold that game. Good catch. Appreciate that, Northos. Good looking out. And we have dice coming as well. Yeah, where's the hair dryer indeed? <laughs> well, we've got music going out there. Yeah, oh, that's fair. Yeah, it does in fact go back to owner. Yeah. So we may be rewinding some here. It doesn't matter. Brandon's dead regardless. Yeah, I mean, it's, he's just in desperation mode. There's a force in hand. Uh... Yes, the dice will go on living and maintaining the life totals. All right, so Chicago. I'm not gonna lie, Chicago's making us look bad here. Yeah. Hey, they get they got round one. Might be getting round two. This is. This, we'll get them though. It it is like a bad comedy. Well, we're gonna get rid of the life hat so I have more room for my cards now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The issue, the big issue with oversized lands. Yeah. Oh, what do we do? Just counter Atasha's and we get the scoop a loop. Yep. So now game three. Brandon's on the play here. Hopefully, he does you know is able to draw proper lands and actually play. Uh, yeah. Again, the laugh. If he'd just done it a couple turns, to, a couple turns sooner, we all could have laughed together. Instead, hideously, hideously. Instead, we get disappointment and a crushed soul. Uh, no mana crypt that game either. So brainstorm, snap, mind sculptor, sideboard. Interesting. I would have figured that card would have been mained. Yeah. I mean, I'll take that over brainstorm. Because it's a win con. Yeah. Sheldock, Drown in the Lock, also in the side. Yogg's going true name, too. That's, uh... Sheldock's main. Yeah, Sheldock is main. Yeah. Um, Drown, yeah, but Drown's side. I mean, when he brings in more removal. I mean, he, yeah. Brandon's not trying to play the counter game early on. No, I mean, he's not. That's yeah, not he probably should have something, but... Uh, yeah. All right, so we have Pitting Needle and Spyglass, I think, are probably solid choices for Joe that we didn't see last game. Yeah, uh, he had Needle main deck, unless he... No, he didn't. It looked like it was bolted. Was yeah, it? he okay. bolted it at first. Okay. Um, it then took it off. Okay. Uh, I think Root Maze is really good here, because I think Joe's... Yeah, if Root Joe Maze can get good. a board presence on turn one or two, yeah. he's set. All right, so we have a top. We have a Brain Freeze. We have a couple lands. Then over here, we have... Stasis. Ooh, baby. Jace, flip Jace. Yep. Some kind of red dude. Yeah. You know, the Chicago people make us look bad. I mean, they just lost their whole baseball team. It's, That's it's, true. You know, yeah, it, it, it blew up. <laughs> makes, makes me grateful that... Uh, 
I have I mean, Jerry Jones as my team owner. Said yeah. literally. I mean, me. Wrigley Stadium's currently a spirit Halloween store. Yeah. Being in Chicago when all that was announced this past week was wild. <laughs> oh no! What? He drew the guy's blessing. Mm. I mean, you know, that's that's rough. Yeah, that's the downside of it. Yeah. All right, and there is he can the Jace. I mean, yeah, well, like with, with, if you had like a Kozilek like or Nulamog, you could pitch it to the Jace and get the re. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a shell dock aisle. That's pretty good. Uh, so that's that's yes, it is currently one one. The zero zero is their match or is their tournament record. Uh, so they were this yeah this is still their first round that they're playing. And Island Go, opting not to play the Sheldock Isle yet. That's a Taiga. We don't have any threats. That's an interesting keep from Joe. I think he just knows he can play the slow game, mm -hmm. basically. Oh, and there's the Force. A Force, of course. Pitch the Blessing you don't give a shit about. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the, the Blessing at this point doesn't really matter. You can afford to get rid of it. He, he doesn't have... I mean, you could stop a... Uh... I guess you could stop a Snapcaster. Does he have a Snap? Yeah, he has Snap. He played it uh, last game. Oh, that's right, yeah. You can stop a Snap, I mean. Yeah. But it doesn't do much else. Right. Draws you a card later on. Yeah, that's true. Chain of Vapor. Playing a Taiga. There we go. So now we have the green mana for the Tarmogoyf, and we can get Tarmogoyf out to start the beat train. Season Pyro. Yep, CZ Peasy works too. Which back up has definitely been the MVP. Yeah, he's done really well. for Joe he's done a lot of work throughout for this. It's yeah, it's it's one of them, one of the game. So top, I didn't catch what Brandon put on top there. This time, Brandon not having a problem drawing lands. In fact, it uh, looks like he has a Mystic Sanctuary in his hand yeah. along with the Shell Dock Isle, which means at most he has three non-land cards yeah. right now. Triple Island he's got right now, or is that yeah. Island Swamp? That's Triple Island that he has. So he can hold off the Mystic until he gets a card in his hand, a yeah. card in his yard to rebuy with it. Yeah. Uh, he does have a Brain Freeze, so if... Joe does go deep on the spell count. We can brain freeze here. Right. We've got a force stasis. I think that's all his action. All right, let's top again, see if we can get something. Oh, there's an archive trap. <laughs> that doesn't do us much good when he's not searching his library, but hey. Put it on top and leave it there. You're not going to cast it anytime soon. I was surprised Brandon didn't take Glimpse. Didn't he? Oh, no, he did. He did You're right. Yeah, he took it late. I think he took it after Archive Trap. Yeah. Glimpse, yep. There it is. Not main, shockingly. Yeah. Now, it's there just is the, like, what is the card. one, like, mill five draw card or mill three draw card? Yeah. Or that I, went to somebody else, didn't it? Also, so, Mind so. Funeral that he didn't take, which yeah. is one of my favorite mill cards for this archetype. Yeah, I mean, because the thing about Mind Funeral is that, I mean, a lot of these oh. decks run a little lower on lands. I mean, you can get away with 15 pretty easy for a lot of them. Yeah, we, we have the Chronotog Stasis combo in hand. We're missing Frozen Aether, but we've got those two. Right. And down to 16 for Brandon off that swing, and it looks like we're probably going to have an online Jace here in a second. So pull up Chronotog real quick. Let's walk through that combo. Yeah. So, Chronotog. One of my favorite cards in the history of Magic, because it works so well with Stasis. Right. Hit the actual Tog. Yeah, there. the actual Tog, not the Totem. The creepiest art Hit in the all next of Magic. turn, yeah. So you just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yep. 
So what you do is you drop stasis down so that you skip your untap, right. and then you chronotog skip your turn. Right. Now what you used to do was you would cast Kismet, so that whatever they played, it didn't matter. Right. Well, in Planar Chaos, we got Frozen Aether, right. which is you don't have to the same be in thing. White now. Yeah, you don't have to be in white now. I can just be mono blue and do it. Uh, so that's basically should he end up with Frozen Aether. So you're skipping every other turn, getting him, you know. Yeah, getting a five, getting a four dude right. potentially to swing with, and then not having to spend the extra mana on the. Uh... Yeah. Uh, we got a Scalding Tarn. We're going to discard an island, and we are going to flip a Jace. So Jace is going to flip. Now, is that Archive Trap on top of his deck, or...? He drew the Archive Trap, I, mean, I believe, this last Archive turn. is off of Search's deck, right? Yeah, yeah it yes. is off Search. So if that Merchant Scroll gets cast for something... Well, he is Tarn, so... Yeah, since yeah, Merchant Scroll or Tarn, if those get cast, or if... The Tarn gets played and used. Oh, it's Tarn's in his hand. No, yeah, the tarn, I thought he had already used it. No, the Tarn is in his hand. He discarded the okay. island with the Jace. Jace. Um, he has not played land yet this turn. Wait, yes, he has. I lied. So we'll see how his turn's going to go. There's an inevitable gonna... trail in the yard, which is... Uh... Yeah, <laughs> that, gets, that gets an Emmy. Pretty good, I hear. Roll down. We're going to get a vapor. chain of vapor. Are we going to tap draw? We are going to tap draw. Yeah. Smart. There is spell number one on the turn. Land. This could do... This I mean, he's could, got the Force. He does have the Force, but Force fuels the brain freeze that's in the right, right. hand. Yeah, this could be a real turn either way. I yeah. Mean. No matter what, this is going to be pretty... Ooh. No, he passed. Yeah, he passed. He dodged a bullet. <laughs> he did. He didn't even know it was up there. Yeah. All right, so there is a Sensei's Divining Top. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Who knew? It was me all along. We gotta play the top here. Bait out that force of will. There's a top. Have you ever topped a, f or have you ever forced a top? No. Yeah, I. Same. Had my soul ring dazed. Oh yeah, soul soul ring. You do that turn one every day if you can. In four player commander, I had my soul ring. Yeah. Dazed. No, ab absolutely yes. <laughs> By Joe. Oh I nice. Let him live it down. Nice. <laughs> That's a good time. All right, so what are we doing here? We've got a land we're going to play. Oh, we're playing a Mana Crypt. Woohoo! So we have Storm of Two. Storm of Two. This this might be where the Force comes in. we got to play another land. So he can freeze here. Mm-hmm. Mystic... Uh, Speed puts it back on top. Or I, Sanctuary puts it back on top. Never mind. Yeah. I was going to say, he can freeze in Sanctuary. So we're going to Brain Freeze. Right. So we've got at least two going to resolve here. Yeah. He's got one Carlos floating currently. Yep. Oh, and the Aether and the Recall. Deck. That's huge. Channeler. Channeler, Renin, Renin 6. P3K Mountain, Dread Horde Arcanist. That is some really good stuff. Gone. Wow. So with the colorless free, then. Now we still have force of will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that hurt a lot because that was the majority of Joe's win cons. I mean, I think you just sanctuary put the freeze on top. To yeah, you, on top. yep. There we go, yeah. and there's sanctuary. Just do it. Just do it, Brandon. Yeah, just just put do the it. Back on top don't don't think too much. Turn. Just do it. Don't you're overthinking. Actually, he can freeze again because of the top. He's got the colorless floating. Oh, that's right. He does. Yeah. So you totally. Don't, don't, what are you doing? Yeah, you Mystic Sanctuary to put it on top. Oh, man. That would be so good. Is it going to happen? Oh, all right. This this is just going to be so disappointing if this doesn't happen. Not only did we not get to laugh hideously, we didn't get to double brain freeze off a single copy. Oh, come on, Brandon. You can do it. No! Oh! No! Brandon's hurting our soul. Why do you do this to me? Why you do this? Why do you hate America, Brandon? Why you do this? Oh man, that is 
That is so disappointing. I am I mean, so that, sad that right now. That would have been another, another three? Uh, it was nine before, so that would have been another 12. Yeah. Another three copies. Yeah, yeah, another, yeah, another three copies. Oh, no. My heart. All right, so here, here's where we're going to archive trap, because we're going to crack a fetch, and we're going to blow force of will on it, because yeah, we have, have to, to. Yeah. actually. Just archive trap. You're trying to be too cute. Oh, yeah. he That brain freeze would have probably got him, actually. Don't even cut the deck. Just windmill slam the archive trap. Yeah, come on. Dude, come on. Strut yourself, Mr. TikTok. No, no, no. It's it's you got to be courteous if you're gonna if, if you're gonna archive trap somebody out of the game. You better be courteous no. about it. Good lord. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're just like. Wah! Yeah. You All right. Hogan's so there's there. there's the crown of tog. We still have merchant scroll stasis. Uh, yeah. He doesn't know what's in the dude's. Hand. That's, That's true. true. That's true. But if he drops stasis here. That's. Good. Ah, uh, Stasis is brutal here. Oh, yeah, because he has a mana crypt. Yeah. But he can just rely on him killing himself. Slow death. Yeah, yep, there's the Stasis. Okay. <laughs> Rough. Yep, yeah. yep, I agree, mages and major. <laughs> yeah, it's it's real Involver, bad. Yeah. He's definitely playing around it. It's bad. How did he just untap this? Oh, taking back attacks. All right. Now, if he wanted to go really old school, he should have time elemental in this deck. Well. I know, right? Yeah, come on. That, that would have been... If you really that, that was do back it. in the. If you want to do it, do it. Right. Back in the mid '90s, my play group was you know, always you know we first we were always playing out the same deck, and then it was yeah. you know uh, they all like sixty bolt that deck. I was the first yep. one to try to mandate that we play, and I started playing Stasis, and then everyone quit playing. What do you know? Yep. <laughs> Odds are in your favor. Odds are in your favor. Odds be with you, always. All right, you got a six, so you take three from one of them. That's fine. Yeah, he's yeah. Appreciate the short col shortcut of rolling twice there. Like, unironically. Also, he didn't archive trap. He didn't. I don't oh know. Oh, my God. He searched. You have to archive trap. Sheldock's not going to do anything. It's going to stay tapped. Yeah. Though he has... He yeah. has no blue sources to... Yeah. ...keep the stasis going. No, that's not a root maze. That's a blessing. Oh, no, root maze in play. Yes, there is a root maze in play. Right. Sorry. Yeah. But I mean, he can't even keep the blessing. Go the stasis yeah. going. No, the the stasis dies this turn, and then Brandon dies on the swing. Yeah. Unfortunately. Oh, Brandon, you had the win. How disappointing. Tragic. Oh, there's a Jace the Mind Sculptor. Uh, if only. Curses. Although I guess. No, because if we're skipping our untap... There yeah, he can do it once each turn, is right? Is, is yeah. there, is there uh, Oracle text on that? Is it only on your turn or anything? It's only... Uh, oh, no. Yeah. So it, he can just it, do it on his yeah. turn. Yeah, so he just does it on his turn to kill him. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to force a will to gush. And just slow die to crypt. Yep. That's the plan. Lives a turn. It got played this past turn. There's no counter spells left. Oh man, that's so brutal. Why? Why? <laughs> I, I have to walk away at this point. I know. No! We're scooping him no, up! You have no commentator turn him over. We're scooping him up! <laughs> We can't, gonna take a walk. we can't do no, this. No, he, he pitched your miracle. Oh, okay. Sure. He's reading the card. Like, what does yeah. this do? It doesn't matter. It doesn't untap. Yeah, it does, doesn't untap. And, yep, now, and the extension now of the hand. All right. So there we go. That is another amazing battle of... 
Oh. Oh, uh, another battle of VRD. So. All right, folks. I enjoyed being back on commentary. I'll see y'all later. Yep. We will be back in just a moment. Hello. This is Mark and Eric in the booth today. Uh, checking our levels, making sure everything's good. It yes. Seems solid. Everything seems to be fine so far. It looks like we have Dan coming in versus John Ryan. Dan, of course, on the uh, the Thassa's Oracle Underworld Breach deck. Had a little bit of a misfire this past round. Had a tough time. Meanwhile, John Ryan won a close one against uh, Andrew Swift uh, coming back from one, reanimating an Archon of Cruelty for mm -hmm. the win. So... It's an exciting time for John Ryan and uh, Dan looking for a little bit of redemption here, so it should be interesting. Yeah, Dan has a lot of like really degenerate ways he can go with this deck. Like the the wish lines are really interesting that he has available out of the board. Um, obviously, this last match I heard from him that the reason that he was really disappointed is his Soul Guide Lantern was not a Tormod script, so he had some graveyard shenanigans ready to go and just couldn't actually execute them because he didn't have that extra mana line around. So. Um, my, do, my favorite thing about Dan's deck, though, is actually that in this deck, Lion's Eye Diamond is better than Black Lotus for a bunch of reasons, right? You can actually discard your hand, which he can take huge advantage of, but also he can tap it to Urza, Lord, Art of, Lord High Artificer, um, which uh, you can't do with Black Lotus because you need to tap it to get generate mana, unlike LED. Do we have a tied die roll? Is that what happened? I saw nine from Dan. I didn't catch what John Ryan rolled. But. It's like there were a couple of rolls. I'm not sure. But uh, I think Dan might have won. It looked like Dan won that roll. Mm -hmm. Not 100%. But we'll see here. Um, who do you think is favored in this matchup, Mark? Man, I, I don't know. I feel like Dan has a explosive, explosive potential for sure that John Ryan just doesn't necessarily have as much of. Um, but, like, the reanimator strategy from John Ryan is going to be so, so dang uh, efficient and just consistent, right? There's no way to stop it, necessarily. Um, with the addition of sideboard cards in the main deck from Wish, I do think that Dan probably has a potential uh, to, to execute against John Ryan that John Ryan doesn't have in, in reverse. So, I guess 
I think that I think Dan is in favor. Um, but yeah, we'll have, we'll have to see. Yeah, it really is draw dependent. What about you? I pretty much agree. I think Dan is a little bit favored off of that that wish goodness. I think he's got a very strong engine. Not with that hand though. That hand looked like it did a lot of nothing. So wise call by Dan to ship it back here. John Ryan seems to be keeping. Yeah, I think John Ryan just has that that potential to just go off very early if he can you know entomb and reanimate something like Gristle Brand in the early turns. Dan's going to have a lot of trouble coming back from that. But if if something like that doesn't happen mm -hmm. in the first couple turns of the game and Dan gets some time to set up, play cards like Urza, he's very, very much favored. I agree with that. Yeah, I, I mean, Dan's deck almost looks more explosive because he does have the kind of traditional storm-type strategies that you'd see out of legacy decks or vintage decks. And John Ryan is a reanimator deck that looks fairly reminiscent of, uh, of EDH, honestly. Yes. Uh, but... John Ryan, I think, does have a deck that is set up to win early and struggle late. Uh, and Dan has one that has a pretty even power level throughout the match. Dan, unfortunately, is going to be going to five cards here. He's on the double mulligan. Looks like we have Isochron Scepter, Seed of the Synod, Lotus Petal, at least one island and a few other cards. That might be a frantic search there. Grim Monolith. Oh, this no, that's a turnabout. Pardon me. The Prismari Vancouver, The Vancouver Mulligan really is just, like, showing how it keeps magic fun, though, here. Like... I really was a skeptical when they were introducing mulligan changes, but the fact that you get to draw seven and just make sure you have a hand that has lands in it has been just a huge uptick in, in actual games of Magic played. I think this mulligan rule has fundamentally changed the game of Magic the Gathering because it's much easier now to center your deck, center a strategy around a single card or, 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 or a pair of cards, right? Agreed. Well, I think that's true. But I also think that it means that you have fewer games that end with mana screw. Yes. So, like, I think that is a, a problem in some ways, but also, I don't know, I think the cost is, is very real that they didn't have before. I, I, I Yeah, I, I think the cost is, is, is worth what we're getting out of this. Yeah. I'm very, very happy with the, the outcome of this mulligan. Looks like we've got Entomb for Iona here, and that's going to be fairly disastrous here if John Ryan can pull that out of the graveyard. Dan's going to be pretty well locked out of his blue cards. Mm -hmm. John Ryan making good use of this uh, this pathway here. Yeah, course, uh, the pathways that I've been skeptical of, um, obviously they are they are do great work, but I guess by comparison to other dual lands, uh, the fact that you can't use both mana late game. I think make them a lot harder in a, in a straight three color deck. Mm -hmm. I think they're better in a two color deck. John Ryan did uh, take Clearwater Pathway when Underground River was available, but to his credit, he did win game three of his previous match uh, from a position <laughs> where he was at one life and he had the pathway in play. So, yeah, you know. He's third level in you. You understand this. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're into results oriented thinking, you got me, right? <laughs> so the nice thing here about Dan losing this game in a really fast way is that you know, he was behind anyway, right? Mm -hmm. He was pretty far. Uh, it, it was going to be a difficult game for him to win, um, starting at five cards. So if you're going to get uh, screwed out in turn two, this is the game to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Not having to suffer through a game where you're mulliganing to five and uh, sort of, you know, Dan, Dan does really need, Dan really wants a full seven card hand in order to compete. Mm -hmm. He's uh, He's very much in need of, oh. He's he's very much in need of a lot of different resources. He's got the man. He's got the spells. You know, there's there's just and that 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 sounds pretty reductive. I understand, but when you take a look at uh, at, at Dan's deck list, it's very much just like an engine that needs every little piece. You, he needs to spend every man point of mana wisely. He needs to use every card wisely. It's very difficult. Yeah, you, uh, sitting here with the master of third level thinking. That's true. You have <laughs> Eric Levine on the mic. Now. Let's think a little bit about sideboarding here. Dan obviously has perfect information because, you know, we're, we're, we're here in VRD. We've got these open deck lists, right? Are there mm -hmm. cards in Dan's sideboard that he might be able to use to combat John Ryan and vice versa? Let's take a look. So the first card that comes to mind is that Soul Guide Lantern. Obviously yes. Obviously incredible. Uh, but yeah, let's see other choices. I mean, the, the wheels, uh, is Windfall is Windfall a graveyard wheel as well, or is it just like a Wheel of Fortune? Uh, I believe. Let's let's take a look. I, I think Windfall, we'll... I think, puts discards the cards, right? Yeah. And that's that's very dangerous, right? Letting John Ryan discard cards. Yep. Letting John Ryan discard his hand can be quite dangerous. Yes. That can really backfire. Something like Time Twister obviously be very strong in this kind of matchup where they, and it's in his main deck already, which is nice. Uh, but they have to discard. They discard their hand and they shuffle their graveyard and hand in. 
Mm -hmm. Um, This might be a situation where remand could come in, um, but I'm not 100% on that. This is kind of where the same commentary you were talking about during the draft really shows, is that there's a ton of cards here that could be in the main deck that are actually in the sideboard, so you end up with not having the silver bullets that you'd hope for. Mm -hmm. Things like Tormod's Crypt are not available to him because he took things like uh, like Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, that didn't end up making the main deck. Yeah, those pieces of redundancy that end up sort of burning you later. Reality Shift is an interesting option uh, yep. if if John Ryan doesn't end up with Iona in play, because of course John Ryan's going to name Blue with Iona pretty much any chance he gets. But if Dan can snag, you know, John Ryan will still get to draw seven cards, but at least Gristlebrand will be off the battlefield, right? Sure. I, I, do you think you bring in Echoing Truth as John Ryan against the Urza Orb combo? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think I think that uh, we're getting an Echo. Oh, it's probably yeah, Echoing Truth. Yeah. No, no. I think uh, we're Chad is telling us we're getting a little bit of an Echo here. Oh, I'm sorry. I think what's happening is that uh, my game needs to turn down from when Stephen was in here. How about this? How about this? This should be. I might just have to be ASMR Levine. Oh no. Hello everyone. We discussed it. Jason and I discussed the, the ASMR VRD. Uh oh. <laughs> Focus. Focus. Uh let's just try swapping over and swapping back. Yeah. Nope, that's no love. Interesting, interesting. Okay. We're both really low. Like too low? Too low? Uh oh. I don't know, Lane. We're about hitting that yellow marker. I've never, I've never been accused of being too quiet, literally in my entire life. I'm gonna go see what I can do yeah. about the camera. I'll be right back, Mark. I think you got this. And yeah, no, uh, Kyle. Glad to see you in chat. Sorry you couldn't make it, um, but it would be, <laughs> it would be, it would be great to have you in the next one. Kyle Vans, of course, well known from VRD5, came in here and did a great job. Uh, and for his first time through, really put on a great show. Elaine has had pretty mixed results, uh, so we're hoping that Elaine can sometimes step up her VRD game and really actually start winning some matches. It would be ideal. But it would be, it would be interesting to see if, uh, if Ordart can show up and actually deliver some results next time. But yeah, we have John Ryan sitting up one game. Uh, looks like they're drawing opening hands now. Uh, and... Looks like we got a couple of keepers here, I think. Yep. John Ryan looks settled. Dan looks settled. Yes, you're good. Sorry. Oh, sorry for that. They didn't know they were good. I forgot to go back out there and tell them they were good to go. Mm -hmm. In case you thought Eric was too quiet, now that just solved it by blowing out your earbuds. Yeah, thank, I, I, for everybody who put in earbuds and turned up the volume after I went into <laughs> ASMR mode, I apologize. Ponder on turn one off that Spire Bluff Canal for Dan. Spire Bluff Canal, fantastic card. Very happy to see the pickup of the Fastlands. Mm -hmm. I'm a big proponent of Fastlands in this format. Yeah, like most games are not decided by turn three, but the games that are decided by team turn three, you definitely need your mana in place, right? It's kind of like defensive speed and limited. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure you have you have things you can do in that in that early game. Um, it's just th this is why I think people talk about Fabled Passage like it's supposed to be a card in this format, and I just mm -hmm. I don't see it. Prismatic Vista is a card. Fabled Passage is not. Fabled Passage is effectively evolving wilds in this format at this point. Agreed, and and like that's not just like obviously it is better, right? It will have games where it performs better, but uh, it just you need mana on turn two. Yep, it's 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 you have to think of it like if if you're if you're drafting uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms right now, right? Mm -hmm. You need five or six ways to interact with your opponent on turn two, realistically, in some way. Um, in this format, you need to be spending your mana turn one, turn two to do something. Very much, yes. It's very much the same the same concept. Okay, so we saw Grim Monolith get Spell Pierced. Spell Oof. Pierced is a card that I really love in this format that. Uh, it just it hits everything that matters, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's there's not a lot of creature based combos that happen in the early game. So again, with the idea that you need to be able to interact early, uh, cards like Spell Pierce are the cards you want, and then you can figure out how to deal with the Questing Beast later. Like that's not the card you need to worry about the turn it comes down. Yeah, Spell Pierce and Miscast, both big winners. We have a thought erasure here from John Ryan, mm -hmm. showing Hull Breacher, Wheel of Fortune, and expressive iteration here from Dan. Man, Dan's hand is just like straight up the cards that are all banned in, in EDH, right? Like, this yeah. is just, like, the hands that people complain about. Uh, like, in the dark, Dan's deck is the deck that I 
would just want to watch, right? Yeah. I, I don't know if it's the best, but it's the one that seems the most exciting. It's the most exciting deck for sure. Ooh. Wheel to the yard here, which could uh, could of course backfire if uh, mm -hmm. if if the the underworld breach engine starts rolling. But right now we've got expressive iteration coming off the top or coming out from Dan. Look yeah. at the top three. Usually as exile tradition. land here, um, as 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 one does in say standard 2022, <laughs> um, the only standard format that I recognize at the moment. Island getting exiled. It looks like. See, I'm still sad about my uh, my Loch Ness monster getting banned from Standard 2022, yeah. but I understand that that's not exactly the most broken thing about that format. <laughs> so dropping down this island here, putting something in the hand. There's a Thassa's Oracle in the hand now. That's exciting. Ooh, that is. Of course, we're going to need to get through the Paradigm Shift universe before we do something like that, most <laughs> likely, or grind things out with the Breach Engine. Yeah, let's pull up Paradigm Shift a minute. That's, that's a card that... I saw and then was like, that's a really neat card, and I never actually read. Yep. So explain to me why this card is good in his deck. So so in this case, what we're looking to do is, is Dan's looking to absolutely just empty his library and mm -hmm. then win, win with a card like Laboratory Maniac or Thassa's Oracle, right? So what, what Dan can do he, uh, fairly early on if he, if he finds Paradigm Shift and Thassa's Oracle early mm -hmm. is with four mana, he can simply... Uh, go ahead and flip the script on his graveyard and library if there's not much in there, and then just go ahead and cast Thassa's Oracle. And with if, if your graveyard is small and you have something like uh, uh, Express Federation in it, you can you can still even with four or five cards in your yard uh, go off pretty handily with that because you 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 will draw you you'll pretty frequently draw and cast Express Express Federation early in that process, and that'll empty your library nice and fast. That makes sense. What is that? What's the card that just went into play there? Uh, bu 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 bu. We got LED. We've got a pathway. That's Clearwater Pathway. pathway I got it. Okay. So I just believe that's the black half. I believe that's Merc Water Pathway. There's also a careful study from John Ryan. It looks mm, like. Yes. Uh, I don't. I can't see what he discarded. Uh, but the fact that they aren't in play right now means that it probably wasn't a Grizzle Brand. No, there's no Grizzle Brand in there. Let me just uh, peer at it. Uh, looks like there's some lands in the ba in the graveyard there. Okay. Yeah, the swamp was the one that was in there beforehand. So. Yeah, it does not look like there's anything good in there for John Ryan that he's going to want to reanimate. Just some land in that spell pierce. And Dan was able to get rid of the top two lands with that expressive iteration, so that's yeah. going to be pretty exciting. Uh, I mean, he seems set up, right? Like, if you get to the spot where you have four lands and an LED in play with his deck, I feel like you're in a pretty great spot. Yeah, Dan needs an Urza or something to start mm -hmm. uh, putting the wheels in motion, but otherwise he's doing pretty <laughs> well. <laughs> Passing here, unfortunate for Dan though. He's it seems like he's he's got some reactive elements and not much else. Show and tell for John Ryan coming in Ooh, here. Oh, that's a risky card. And Dan says, I'm going to cast Hall Breacher in, in response. response. Interesting. Usually. Ah, he's okay, he's Hall Breacher in response to, to ward off Gristlebrand, right? That's clever. And then he puts Urza into play, gets the construct, and also, yes, if Iona comes down, presumably naming blue, he's going to have a lot of trouble casting that Hull Breacher at any point. Yeah, Hull Breacher is one that I'm very happy is banned from Commander. It yes. feels like a, a good pick, and I, even the CEDH community, like Lab Maniacs and such, are seem to be in favor of that ban. Uh, it's a really powerful card, and I wish it were worded slightly differently. Um, by pointing at the construct... Oh, no, there's blue. It says in large text blue on the Iona. Yeah, John, John Ryan, I think, was, was checking in on the size of the construct, which in this case I, I believe is a 3-3 three, three here with the two mana-related artifact and itself. Mm -hmm. um, Dan may be looking to spin the wheel here with Urza. That is what's happening. So the Urza spin in combination with Iona means that Urza doesn't get around Iona, correct? I believe that's correct. Urza will be casting those spells. Uh, yeah, you, until end of turn, you may play that card without paying its mana mm. cost. So Urza does not beat Iona here. And it looks like that's what we see. We get an island and not much else. So uh, Urza, Urza peering through that temporal aperture, of course, flavor-wise, uh, unable to find anything useful for Dan here. But he was able to tap that uh, Lion's Eye Diamond with no sacrifice problems. It does feel good to tap Lion's Eye Diamond to generate mana. That's really something. So here, would you have spun the wheel again? Because he could have. He could. I don't know what's. I don't know what the card is in his hand. Fair. But I can't imagine throwing away cards is not a good thing, right? That's not how you win games. I mean, Urza does not dodge the non-blue thing. Ur Urza, Urza cat makes you 
play the cards, and, and you can't do it. Yeah, so Urza allows you to play the card, but because Iona says that you cannot play any cards with blue, uh, Iona Shield of Emiria says that the uh, s says that the, you can't cast the cards. So. Yeah, so this is the, the classic issue of can't beating can. Dan dropping the Mox Opal here. Mm -hmm. That does increase the size of the the construct. Yes, indeed. It's that only is... sitting at, seven, at 13 life, so two swings away with Iona. Iona might have to stop attacking so it can block this construct. Yeah, out. at this point, that construct is part a big part of Dan's game plan because Iona is is the beatdown, but only to a certain degree. Time Spiral is just going to... Uh, uh, playing and casting, the, the, the big difference between playing and casting is that playing allows... When, when a card says play, what it means is you can cast spells or play land effectively, versus when a card only says cast, that means that excludes land. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference. Um, but when you... When a card says that you can play cards from the top of your library or, or, or such and such, when you do go to play that spell that's on the top of your library, you're casting it. Yeah, these are these are some just comedy level distinctions. Snuff out, <laughs> just chews oh, up that wow. construct, and that is a that is a, a e, that life expenditure here for John Ryan is is a irrelevant is, is a short term difficulty, but it is largely irrelevant here. Swings with a and with Iona puts. John Ryan down to six plays a pack rat, and pack rat is just uh, pack rat is, is is relegated to the role of chump blocker here. Sure, which is you know a little bit of an ignominious death, but John Ryan doesn't care. The card is a means to an end. Yeah, that Iona is just gonna be coming through the air and hitting one more time for the end of the game. I don't know how Dan gets out of this one unless he just top decks like a champ here. Yeah, I can't I can't imagine what card Dan is going to find with Urza here that's going to save his life. Dan casts Underworld Breach. Oh, okay. I don't I mean, think that helps. That is helps. a good start, but that allows him to wheel again. Uh, the wheel could potentially be really great. I mean, he's got Hull Breacher in play. Wheel right. and Hull Breacher are very good friends. So, so at that point, I mean, what can he draw? He can draw a Wish, which doesn't do anything. Uh, but what can he draw that actually takes care of Iona? How is he getting Iona off the battlefield? I guess... Right. If reality can, shift. No reality, reality shift. Blue. If he can cast enough spells, he can tendrils. Sure. Yeah, you know, he can wish for tendrils. That's honestly that feels like the win at this yep. point. I mean, with the seven treasures, that's got to be the. Uh... So Stormcount is at. Uh, there's underworld breach. Was there anything else before that point? No, just breach. Into breach wheel now wheel. Here. So we're at two. And wheel, of course, we, breach off we, wheel off breach rather feeds itself. Yes. So you just you really just need the mana. Well, you also need the cards in deck left. Right. Yeah, Dan. Dan could get into a scenario where Wish is in like the top four, the bottom four cards of his deck, and he might be might simply be unable to access it. I mean, luckily he does, assuming that he didn't board it out, still have Time Twister, so mm -hmm. he can alternate Time Twister and he Wheels. He can't cast Twister here. Oh, you're right. Yeah. God, Iona really does complicate things. He's very clogged up here by Iona. Uh huh. He's I... looking at like a seventy percent blue deck. Yep. Yeah, even the tutors, personal tutor, not going to do it. Sure. The card draw spells, frantic search, not going to help. He doesn't have the faithless looting. He's got the treasure cruise, the ponder. The empty the warrens wouldn't actually stop anything because they don't fly. Yeah. Yeah, he. you're right. It's kind of uh, tendrils or bust at this point. Yeah, I mean, the only the only card that he has that isn't blue that lets him move through his library at all is Manamorphose and sure. Wheel. And Wheel, of course. I mean, he has a lot of... He can use wheel many times, right? Uh, and he can also alternate wheels and LEDs. He does. Oh, he does get to draw. He he does get to draw one card with Soul Guide Lantern at some point if he so chooses. And he he's well above the seven cards that he needs to worry about before he can stop right. wheeling. It's just a question of where Wish is physically positioned in his library sure. at this moment in time. Well, but even that, how many? He now is at three spells, right? He has right. the the breach, the wheel, and the Soul Guide Lantern are the three cards he's cast. Yep. So. Uh, I don't see a wish in his hand. No, nope. he's got a good is sign. signet, which is at least a spell he can cast. Correct. Uh, and he'll, he'll I think he can get because I can't see John Ryan's life total, but it looks like it's fifteen. It's or? pretty. It's it's not high. He I think he got beat down by the uh, the Urza and the Hellbreaker, uh -huh. and he uh, snuffed out and snuffed out. I don't know You're how right. you verb that. <laughs> um, but his life total is in. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's a that's a nine right there. Okay, so so he actually, if he can find the if he can find the the wish, he wins. Yes. Yeah. If Dan if Dan can access wish, and and uh, and also do math, 
correctly, he will right. win this game. He, he does need to cast the LED out of the graveyard again. Yes. Just without a doubt. Well, he's going to get a lot of treasures from Hallbridge. Hallbridger. Sure. So he he may actually not need to cast, because during the wheel process, he's going to, to actually gain mana off Hallbreacher. So Crambler asks the question, if he can gain enough life to not die to Iona, he can kill something else. Yeah, that's true. I don't see an avenue that he can gain a lot of life in his deck, though. The only card that's going to gain him significant life is Tendrils. Sure. And at this point, if he if he casts Tendrils after doing really anything, because he's cast what? Uh, he's cast two spells. He cast the Soul Guide Lantern and the, the, the Underworld Breach, and now he's wheeling. And then wheel. So there's... So that's three. So yep. he needs to cast literal one other spell. Uh, Which, he didn't just exile wheel, did he? Uh, that can't be his exile. No, nope, no, 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 no. He, he's, he's casting he's, that card. Yeah, he's casting the wheel. Okay, dear God, I was scared that he. Oh, he's exiling the LED. He doesn't need the LED because of the treasures. Oh, sure, that makes sense. Hull, I'm not used to playing with Hall Breacher, but that makes complete sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hall Breacher Hull unlocks. Breacher, yeah, I, Mark, I've literally never cast Hall Breacher in my life. <laughs> I get it. I my <laughs> channel Fireball retweeted a picture of my set review the day that Hullbreacher got banned, yeah. and my set review was just, like, me throwing a lot of shit at how unfun the card was going to be, yeah, and me saying, like, but, you know, maybe I'll have fun one time, and the answer is no, I never did, because I never cast it, because F that card. <laughs> the shame is that Hullbreacher, I think, if it were worded in a non-aggressive way, the same way that Ashiok is, where it has to be an opponent's card that does it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it would actually be a very fun card. Yes, 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 yes. It'd yes, be yes. a nice responsive card, like Opposition Agent, that is still very playable. Right. That would be, that would kind of be a little bit of a word soup templating, though. It'd be like, whenever a, a spell or ability an opponent controls would cause sure. them to draw a card after the first card, they, you, you you have, like, Merfolk of Mephistopheles at that point. You're not wrong, but it adds three <laughs> words to a 75-word card. I don't think that's really the cost. I mean, we're adding, point. like, 15 words to a 75-word <laughs> card, which is still congruent with the current templating in Magic. Yeah, fair. Um, you know. Yeah, Hellbreacher is a very powerful card, and it actually is a very interesting card. It just promotes a lot of unfun games yes. in multiplayer. And I, as a as, as a hashtag casual for life in EDH, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm I'm not one of its biggest fans. Yeah, but no, I, I, if I had to put money on this, I'd say Dan is about eighty percent to win at this yep. point. We'll see what happens. I'd also play Merfolk of Mephistopheles. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's true, Bolander. We would we would not have to put the like that part of the chain's restriction on there. So we actually get to save, like, six words. Yeah. Okay, so he's still hunting through. This is why, this is why I didn't get hired as an editor, because I would try to put all that on Hull Breacher. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you think he's just trying to optimize the line at this point, or is he still f figuring it out, or is he just looking for the edge? So here's what I think is happening. Dan kind of biffed it in one of his games in round one. Okay. And I think he's just trying to step through this combo very slowly. Uh, there's the tendrils. There we go. Wish into tendrils. He's just trying to be very careful and make sure he doesn't make a mistake. Yep. And that's wish. That's tendrils. That's game for Dan. Oof. So we're going to game three. So wish is the card that makes me want to sell out of magic because it makes me realize how many cards I need to buy to keep my fully foiled copies of Legacies and Modern Storm. Yep. <laughs> just they keep releasing new cards like Buying Burgey, there's there's just a lot of things. On but, the yeah. on the on the like positive side though, one of one of the things about like one of the one of the things about the the like the assault of many different printings of cards yeah. is that if you just want like a regular foil card, <laughs> that's a lot that's like easier to get in some ways. That's like sometimes you can get the regular foil version of a card for less than just the 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 plain non foil draft booster printing of it and that's wild to me yeah agreed and i, I agree with lena or lena lena uh that i i i was i thought it was gonna be about a 25 percent chance that dan wins from the point that i own a dropped into play yeah i was about to pour one out for dan's deck because i love dan's deck i was gonna pour it out into my mouth to, to, to be honest <laughs> i do have this beer next to me uh you know i don't know, waste not but uh but i i i, I you know n no shade to john ryan great guy I'm glad Dan won that game because I love Dan's deck. I also like watching more Magic. Me too. I like a game three. I love a game three. Same. I love it when when it's all on the line. Uh huh. You know, the, the person who I feel like I really want to watch in a lot of game threes is Mason. I feel like Mason is a uh, is a really tight player that's played in lots of these, like double digits VRDs, and the double digits sounds a little silly, uh, but 
in a That's format a where it takes 12 hours to play, and if you play asynchronously, it play, takes months Weeks, to play. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of a lot of uh, repetitions and a lot of understanding. So Mason is a very experienced, like high energy player. So mm -hmm. he's not only a very, going to be entertaining to watch from a strategic perspective, he's just entertaining to watch from a he's an entertaining person perspective. And also, you can just tell how competitive he is, right? In that moment where he is down a game, he just doesn't yeah. want anyone to speak to him. Yeah, <laughs> and it's great to watch those kind of players in game threes. Yeah, he's one of those players who you'll see in in you know start of the game they're joking around with their opponent they're very friendly and of course you know he's still friendly but you lose game one and all of a sudden you see them straighten their shoulders sit up in their chair mm -hmm. start looking at their sideboard and there's a different look in their eye and mason mason is cut from that particular cloth absolutely we have a, we have quite a few of those actually here mm -hmm. I mean, if you watch Brandon in game threes, right? Like, Brandon of drafting Altar of the Brood and meme cards to the end, you can tell that losses don't sit well with him. No, Brandon Brandon wants to win. He's yes. hungry today. Yes. He he is he is well slept. He 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 tried to prepare. You know, he's he's really got something going on. And his deck is good. His too. deck is good. It's just it's a very complex deck and there's yeah. a lot a lot going on and that that's uh that Jace activation in particular I think uh, I think it was frustrating for him, but he'll sure. he'll recover. Yep. <laughs> well, sometimes Brandon comes in. When I say he tried, to, he did prepare. But when when sometimes Brandon comes in, you know, with with I've seen Brandon come in with half of five ideas before. Yep. And today he did not do that. Today Brandon came in and he knew what he was about. Yeah, I finished. I I know that you're you're kind of acting as the force for the asynchronous VRDs, and that's great. Um, apparently, Chicago has a ton of data, so we're excited to to see that show up in the in the in the data sheet soon. Hey, Mason. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's good. <laughs> I think he heard me talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> that look on his face means he just won last match too. Ah, uh, yes, he he definitely did. He's that's that's the the, the winner's <laughs> smile right there. Yeah. Down with the seed of the synod early. That's going to be a big helper for him if he does get into the combo stage here. True. And Grim Monolith's going to be a big helper as well, really power things out. Well, in a draft where Wasteland wasn't drafted at all, like seed of the synod is much better in this in this format than it usually is. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of shattering going on either. There's a couple right. of you know permanent destruction, but a lot of those don't hit lands and. Uh, yeah, we're not we're not in the we're not in the abraid zone today. Right, I didn't see wear tower, didn't see abraid. Price of progress didn't get drafted. Wasteland didn't didn't get drafted. Yeah, there's just like not a lot of fun plays going around. Just like uh, Elaine was saying earlier. We miss you, Elaine. Yep. We need people that are drafting sideboard cards. Acid rain didn't get drafted, and I know that when there's no tsunami, no acid rain, Elaine just is yeah. crying tears. Yeah, I I was waiting for like the aether gusts and the flash fires to start the celestial purges like the weird nonsense to start showing up like right. i was honestly waiting for andrew to pick up like a celestial purge to just blow up gristlebrand or something mm -hmm. you know something like that you know that's probably not the right choice but still so what did john ryan just resolve there john ryan just resolved pack rat? pack rat and that's going to be uh that's a huge clock also a black lotus yes yes yeah, so, so this seems like it's going to be john ryan's fair game happening yeah. today this is this is john ryan's game to lose with pack rat in play a little mm -hmm. bit um if he can put enough pressure on Dan early on by by dumping some cards, up oh, personal tutor. Okay, Dan's getting ready. Uh, Portal All Star personal tutor. <laughs> True. Gonna go tutor up a sorcery. Non foilable card, sadly. Makes yeah, Doomsday a lot harder to keep. Oh, that's very sad. Yeah, but finding Time Twister is good. Yeah, yeah. Time Twister is a uh, a solid pickup. But I, I mean, we're about to see John Ryan drop a, another card to make a second pack rat. Okay. John Ryan hurling makeshift mannequin into the into the graveyard and making a morph. A That's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously joking. That's just a pack rat token. Yeah, pack rat does have the uh, the strong advantage of being named pack rat. Yes. Yeah, personal tutor does put that card on top of your library. So we're gonna have to put that there. Good. Good. Okay. That card made it to where it belongs. I was gonna have to turn on the hair dryer, which we don't have. <laughs> Again, yeah, we're regressing a little bit from two years ago, where we had a pretty solid setup. I'm gonna buy us. I'm gonna buy us a like a, a like a little LED. I'm gonna yeah. buy us a light. Flick, 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 or a buzzer. But yeah, we also don't have Ninth Seed hanging out in chat with us this time. That'll probably come back next time around. Yes. yes. Um, our our friendly bot that can post standings and ask post stats about cards. Our bot is not vaccinated, so it couldn't come today. Exactly. Yeah, we're we're hoping to convince the vaccine skeptical robot we have. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, the uh, yeah, the uh, Pack Rat continued continues to be a, a member of the limited Hall of Fame with cards like the Scarab God and Umazawa's Jite. Yes. Although those two cards are not as good in this format, Pack Rat, Pack Rat does have the like. Pack Rat's one of those creatures that just like. It doesn't seem like it's as powerful as it is. It's it's so easy to forget how good pack rat is. So interestingly, he didn't he didn't make a third pack rat when yeah. he attacked there. That's well, interesting. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think he's just in love with the cards in his hand, and he sure. wants to. He, he may want to react to what Dan's got going on here. Um, it looks like he, I, I I assume that, that uh, John Ryan is holding up some of his tricky stuff. Sure. Uh, some of the like. So he must have a two mana counter spell or something yeah. to deal with that time twister. Um, because otherwise, I mean, you might as well. Or perhaps he was holding Echoing ah, Truth. There we go. There's a Pyroblast in response to the ah, Time Twister. You can go ahead and Pyro that Time Twister. That's a great... That's a big hit for John Ryan. And then makes one at the end of turn instead of on before. Okay. Yeah. He's he's willing to lose a little bit of that damage to represent a wider range of counter magic. That's smart. Yep. And I think John Ryan probably did a little clock math and realized that he was going to be able to do that and still probably kill in the same number of turns. That makes sense. I haven't done the math myself. Here comes 9. And we'll see if it's 9 or if it ends up being 12. Still on 9, okay. I think that's wise. Yeah, and I mean, it would put him down to uh, down to 4 instead of 7, which in this world doesn't really have any difference. Dan pops off Soul Guide Lantern, goes to draw that card, foregoes the Graveyard Hate, because, well, there's very little Graveyard to hate at this point. And he scoops it up. He is done. John Ryan at Akrat takes his one home. Wow. That was, a, that was an exciting match. That was wild. It's it's great to see the pack rat plan. It is making it happen. And while I feel for Dan, I love Dan's deck. He's built he he's built a terrifying and, and powerful machine. It just you know the rats took it apart. It yeah, was crazy. Uh, I'm gonna jump out there and get somebody else in here with you, uh, or if you want Jason to take over. But I'll be right back. I took I took a nice long break. Bring go ahead get get whoever. That's fine. We'll take care of it. Yes, it is round robin. That is correct. So what we're going to have is we're going to have everybody's going to have seven seven matches total. So Dan does still have a chance to uh, to prize out here at five two. We've seen five two. Uh, we've seen we've seen a lot of crowding at five two in the past. I think many VRDs have two or three people might have that record, but I don't know that that's going to happen today. Uh, right now. My beverage is actually a Budweiser, which I'm told is the king of beers. Uh, we are here in St. Louis, Missouri, so it is it is the drink of choice. Um, but the stakes today, we've talked a little bit about this, but for those of you who missed out, I should remind you that the, the buy-in is what we like to call the Lupe Fiasco. Yes, it is the Bud Heavy. That's true. The, uh, the, the, the buy-in is the Lupe Fiasco buy-in, which means that uh, basically you need to bring a food or drink item that is uh, is worth about 50 bucks or more, something you wouldn't be embarrassed to give somebody as a wedding present, right? So in the past, we've seen, you know, nice bottles of alcohol. We've seen uh, steaks. Like, like we, one of the prizes was literally a, a, basically, it was a receipt from a butcher that was like, come pick up these steaks when you feel it. Uh, the steaks were steaks, and that was delightful. Um, and we've seen, we saw, there was like a large wheel of cheese at one point. So we've seen some, some very creative buy-ins. Today I've mostly seen bottles, um, but we'll see what ends up happening. I know the, uh, the Chicago guys uh, ran out of time to go pick something up on their way here or, or, or weren't able to pick something up right beforehand and or were, had to go out to get something. So I'm not... All right, so this is going to be a fantastic matchup. We have uh, Mason versus John Ryan here, and if you just press that button on your wire here, you will be unmuted and happy. Great, there we go. Uh, so I just watched Mason dismantle Alec. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we all saw John Ryan. Mason didn't actually dismantle, so it went to game three. Uh, game one, Alec comboed off. Mm -hmm. Game two, Crater Hoof got there. Yep. Game three... Crater have got there. Was, it, game, was game three long? Because I feel like I it saw was, game two. It was very long. Like I was out there. <laughs> yeah. It, it was uh, without extra card draw or anything. I think there was one Eladomri's call. Alec had about half his cards left in his library. Wow. It, and there was no natural order for Mason. Like it was just. So it was just they were top decking. Two creature decks crashing into each other, yeah. unable to break the stalemate. Yep. Classic. Until someone drew the card that broke the stalemate, as tends to happen. Right. Mason you know. drew his haymaker first. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 
Crater Hoof getting there seems seems kind of sus. It, yeah. it does that a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. Crater, crater Hoof is... Uh, <laughs> Mason offering one of the more unusual die rolls I've seen. We've got the D20 yeah. plus the D6. Yeah. I, I approve, though. It's very good. Oh, look, nice handshake. Friendly, friendly nice, handshake. Nice to see the handshake. Yeah. BRD is a, 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 friend, a, a very positive format. That's why we have takesies, backsies, yeah. because sometimes stuff happens. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Are we both mulliganing? It looks like we're all mulliganing here. Friendly mold of seven. Who would I feel like? I always feel like that favors somebody, right? Yeah. There's, there's D20. The person, the person who asks for friendly mold of seven is the one who it's going to favor. Absolutely. I, I have, I have denied friendly mold of seven at so many comp REL events that people are like drawing mold of seven, and I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. Nah. <laughs> no, I'm good. Yeah. Let, I'll keep mulling down to four. Although past four, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to keep whatever I have. Yeah, my yeah. odds of getting a better three are non-existent here. I feel five, like if five I, is like my soft one. Yeah, I feel like if I go to five, I, I've, I, I, I've won exactly one game lifetime on a mold of four. Yeah. And my hand was forest, and three planes. Uh, my forest, my, my hand was forest, five mana Garrick, six mana Elspeth, Elishnorn. Nice. I won that game. That is ridiculous. I I drew only lands. I my have opponent's la my opponent's <laughs> hand was five islands and two lord of uh, two of the illusion lord. Oh yeah. So he bricked. Yeah. I uh, I have lost against a multi three in modern. Oh. I'm sure you can guess what deck had the multi three oh, that I lost God. to because I played Jund. Yeah. What, what, what? Actually, what was it? Tron. Oh, of course. <laughs> Rip. Yeah, it it was it was Tron. I was gonna say I saw Matt Nass. Dredge on a... Dredge is another good guess, but no, it, it was Tron. They mold to three and had the turn four Karn. Mason popping off that uh, that once upon a time as a free spell yeah. here. What a card! I was surprised that went as late as it did. That's yeah, that... and this because that's usually the green decks get that one pretty early. I feel like typically. Yeah, I I, I actually thought Alec was going to pick that up just yeah. because it's so good in his combo deck. It really is. But uh, Mason picking up the Circle of Dreams to read that GGG uh, Priest of Titania Plus. Free is nice. Absolutely, Kyle. I saw Matt Nass win on a Mold of Four with Dredge once. It was pretty nasty. Yeah. Um, a broken card from Eldrain. Yeah, no kidding. Who knew? It's crazy. Tropical Island for Mason into what I assume is a Mana Elf. Oh, that's Aquarian Ranger. That's kind of like a Mana Elf. So who do you think is favored here in this matchup? John Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's not close. Uh, free cards, 15 years. Well, what what are your thoughts? I'll I'll say what are your thoughts on that? Um, uh, based on the job application that I currently have in the pipeline, <laughs> I'm going to punt this one back to you, my friend. <laughs> Fair. I uh I I will say, yeah, that when Once Upon a Time was made, all of a sudden they just knew. But uh, here we are. We go back to Phyrexia. We yep. get. Infect again, we get for I don't know. It's yeah. it's silly. To 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 be serious, because I do believe I can express my constructive criticism freely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once upon a time was a mistake, and they know it. Yeah, they do. I it, it's. I I think Urza Saga. There was Sam Black had a tweet about Urza Saga where he was like, I actually don't recall us playtesting this card whatsoever. Yeah. That, and I was like, all right, I get it. The pandemic happened. Like mistakes happen, but it seems like there's consistently something coming up, and there's always something that's like, well, this is why this happened. Yeah, Still they, no mana elves for Mason. Uh, but an Elvish Visionary, hopefully... Oh, sometimes cards go flying. They do. Uh, none of Mason's cards have flying, but that one did, apparently. Yep. It so. doesn't look like it had flying. It just <laughs> flew. <laughs> the worst keyword ability. Dance and of that the Dance dead. of the Dead. What do we have in the graveyard? Looks That's like an, an Iona. Coming out. On green. Uh-oh. <laughs> Scadio. And Mason says, uh, 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 let's go to game two. Scoop him up. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a, uh, a pretty pretty reasonable scoop there. Mason going to save himself and all of us some time there. And that's one of the reasons that I think is that John Ryan is extremely well favored. Yeah. There, there's not a whole lot of favorable interaction that Mason has here. He does have scavenging ooze that he drafted. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he can use that. He can use Caracas as well. He yes. has that to fall back on. Uh, both of those are actually really good sideboard options that he picked up. Um, not sure what else he's got yeah, here. Yeah, looks like we've got the Caracas. That's about it, actually. Yep. Uh, Caracas and Scoos. Yep. Yeah. Oh, he has the Endurance. Pardon me. Oh, yeah, he does have Endurance. That's right. And um, Cabal Therapy. Interesting. He does, which is... I, it's an interesting one here because I feel like there is value. You just never want to name the targets. Yes. You want to name the yeah, enablers. You, 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 know? you go for the enablers. 
Uh, Meanwhile, uh, show and tell is an option for John Ryan, potentially. Disfigure and Massacre is a blowout here. So is Elish Norn. Yeah, we could also see Elish Norn here out of the board. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's possible we just we may just see the card disfigure, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Echoing Truth, because we do know about the Clan Callers, Snuff Out potentially sees play as well. I'll be a little bit surprised if Mason chooses to bring in the Clan Callers here. I don't think that's I don't the, think the so direction either, yeah. he's going to want to go. Uh, which figure? Disfigure. <laughs> disfigure, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Bullets. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you picking up what we were putting down. Uh, uh, I've I've spent I've 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 been in the the, the same room as as Bolander many times, and and we've we have a friend who who is well known for the the which, which member, figure which member which dis member dis member in particular, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is you know the more crass of the options, but you know I, uh, I'm a there. big fan of is it Signet or is it Dancer? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a very good one. Yeah, any any time I can get a good good bad magic pun in, I am oh. I am a happy happy man. Uh, yeah, I it's it's going well so far. We've got everyone has I believe two rounds under their belt now, mm-hmm. so we're getting mm-hmm. into three for everyone. Um, this has been fairly fairly smooth so far. Not very many hiccups. Yeah. No, people are people are having fun. Everything seems to be going generally fine. Yeah, everything's cool. We're having a great time here at the VRD. Always. That's that's the thing about this event. It's it's a lot of fun, and uh, we are we've already started talking about scenarios like four way ties and stuff like that. So yeah. you know that we're excited for a long day of magic. Oh yes. Uh, by so. the way, if there is a four way tie, we're doing a bracketed playoff. Okay. Mark and I talked about this. <laughs> yeah. So four way tie would be what five two? It'd be like four five twos most yeah. likely. Yeah. It would have to be. Yeah. Uh, which apparently happened at one of the Chicago VRDs. Yeah, to they, yeah, they were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a fun one. That's a fun one, but uh, unlikely to happen here. Yeah, we'll we'll see if it goes that long. Uh, we may we may take a break. We had a three way tie once. Yeah, we did. I think in the very last one, actually. Yeah, it was. Gosh, so long ago. Oh yeah, let's take a look. Uh huh. So, Narset's Reversal targeting mm-hmm. creates the copy. Can you have that copy targeted the Narset's Reversal? Well, Narset's Reversal is still resolving when you're choosing those targets. So it would have to still be on the stack. That is my understanding. So, yes. And then, of course, Narset's Reversal will finish resolving. Good. Arcane Denial Graveyard. has no valid target. And Arcane Denial will be countered by game rules. Yeah. I believe that's correct. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's that's my understanding yep. just from when that exact interaction has come up. Yeah, I've seen I've seen that happen with a counter yeah. spell before. I'm I'm ninety nine point nine on that. Yeah. I'm a little rusty. We're all a little We're rusty. all a little rusty on rules here. It's been a minute. Yeah, I've I've done some I've you know I mean, I was a, I was a, an ardent double checker before. I, 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 I use my phone a lot to look yeah. things up. Even as a head judge, I'm always just like, all right, folks, I'm just, I'm 99.9% sure, but I'm going to make it 100 because I care about you. Yeah. I spent a lot of time looking stuff up. So, and even more so now. Cavern. That's a really mana heavy hand there. Yeah, Mason, Mason has all this mana and nowhere to go. Although that happened round one, and he got there. He so. did. Mason putting something on the bottom there. Mox Emerald. Ooh. Misty. Concordant Crossroads. With no follow-up. Oof. That's a little scary. Yep. It looks like there might be a Beast Whisperer in his hand. I think so, yeah. That customer service. Yes, indeed. That's what we do. Yep. Mages and Mentors knows all about that. Mages and yeah. Mentors is one of the most positive customer focused judges I know. That's important. Alright, so we have a preordain here for John Ryan. 
And I feel like, so from the games I watched of John, he either wins by turn three or he loses. He actually pulled one out. Like, he, he, he did pull out a long game against uh, Andrew yeah. when he was down. He was actually at literal one life. Oh, wow. Okay. John Ryan has two first names. Yeah. I believe that is the, the case. Yeah, John Ryan has two first names. It's a, it's a combo. Yeah. All right, so there's a fetch for an overgrown tomb on end step. Of course, Mason could be a mononym. I'd never know. Yeah. No, the world kidding. may never know. Pretty sure he has the last name. Yeah, he does. <laughs> All right. So we've got three mana here and Elvish Arch Druid. Yes. Arch Druid is attacking. Oh. Okay, two damage. We're on the bash plan with an Arch Druid on turn three. Well. Or turn two. Sorry, turn two. Yeah. Not a lot of friends for the Arch Druid here, so. No. Tough life. John Ryan, two mana. There is a green sun zenith out, though, but we're going to brutality here, and we're, are we going to escalate? Do we have? We have an Iona. That is probably game. That's deep trouble. Mason yeah, discards Whisper. his non-Beast Whisperer card. Yep. Green sun zenith is gone, and this is over. Yeah, I, if John Ryan has a reanimation spell now, and Mason can't eat the Iona literally in this moment. Yeah, then the that, game that's game. Wow. Oof. What a... What an extremely powerful deck John Ryan has. Yeah. Which, I mean, we thought he was kind of uh, a little little all over the place, but he's been putting it together for sure. Is, is, uh, is John Ryan going to be the, uh, the the Pedro Martinez of VRD? Is, gonna be, is he going <laughs> to break the curse of the Lotus Bino? Right. If only. We'll see. Man, Pedro was good. God. What an incredible player! Yeah, up oh, four mana. I I flew What's home going on? from that from from college in California to go to the World Series. Go to the World Series, yeah. Because like Iona's here. All right, here's a makeshift mannequin on an Iona. Yeah. So don't target me, please don't target me. But also I'm naming green, and also yeah. I have haste from Gordon Crossroads. Ow! Yeah. That is rough. Uh, Mason says. I uh I'm gonna draw a bunch of cards and scoop. I don't want to play this game. Scoop a loop. Yeah, no, this this was Wow. Imagine yeah. if he'd gotten yeah. the other reanimation cards he wanted. Yeah, if he had gotten reanimate, animate dead, think about what his deck would be like. Instead he's operating on like necromancy and dance of the yeah. dead. Well it, I asked him about it and he said, I mean, I really didn't care. There's plenty of other options there. Like, yeah, I don't have reanimate, but right. all I need is to get it in for a turn. Like mm -hmm. you swing with Gristle Brand once and it doesn't matter, you yeah. know. The game's over at that point. John Ryan has two for it. I love that this is like an ongoing. So Mason's last name is also Mason. Know. <laughs> it's just Mason Mason. Nobody took life and death. Ah, yes. No life death. That's interesting. It, that, yeah. that could have been another option for John yep. Ryan as uh, as reanimate minus. Yep. Yeah. So showing the Caracas, which we kind of expected the Scoos. Yep. Uh, John Ryan probably didn't sideboard at all. Uh, yeah, I would imagine if he, I had he, he may not have he just stayed really streamlined. Yeah. Ah, yes, John Ryan, also known, also known on the internet as XJ Cloud. If you've ever, if you've ever been farmed in a legacy, in a legacy queue by someone named XJ Cloud on Moto, that's him. That's who beat you. All right, I'm gonna step out and find somebody to join you in the booth here. Sounds good. While I take a little bit of a break, <laughs> paywalled for value. Yeah, join the. Uh, Join uh, VRD Pro. For, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to get access to Mason's <laughs> last name and more great content, we'll be back real soon, folks. Don't go away. All right, so we are back. Uh, this is not Mason and John Ryan. This is Alec and who was it? And Joe, and they're going into game two. I'm unclear on exactly who is up a game, 
but I know that it's a very exciting match. Yeah, so Alec is on the Vizier combo list, and Joe is on that Legacy Light um, Delver list almost. Interesting. So we have Alec, it looks like, taking a mulligan here. I see green cards on the left. Do you know who's up? Oh. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, hop in. Uh, I'm actually going to step out and let Mason jump in here to commentate with Jason. Yes, we're working on the names. I'm sorry. The names are wrong, Iggy. You are absolutely right. <laughs> The names, they're wrong. Oh, God. Okay, so name. confirm or deny, your name is actually just Mason Mason. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, okay. Uh, Mason, I, I just... uh, it was, a lot of people try to pluralize the last name Masons. But Masons, Mason, Mason. yeah. Kind of fun. All, All right. right, so obviously you guys just watched me get my ass handed to me. <laughs> fucking destroyed. F yeah. Fucking destroyed, that's what I meant. And now we get to watch some action happen in here. So this is our eighth seed yes, Alec versus... and our third seed Joe who was on the kind of Delver variant almost oh like, sure, sure legacy sure. With, light um, without a whole lot of fixing yeah okay nice I, um, I like this so I played against Alec uh, yeah. and his deck seemed very consistent I was pretty scared of it so I'm excited yeah. to see what he can do um, have you have you played against Joe yet I have not okay I got so to sort of see him Mason um, didn't win. Mason, why didn't you miss win the last match? I honestly busted card, dude. What are you gonna do? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty pretty tough. Yeah. Hopefully he gets worse luck against some other people. Yeah. I don't get crushed. So no uh, Delver in there, right? But he's got the Dragon Rage Channeler. You know, yeah. The, which is uh, close the enough. Delver. Fabulous. I I was surprised he did not pick Ragavan and that Ragavan went so late as it did. Yeah. It went 36 overall. I mean, that card uh -huh. is nuts. Well, and I, I know it was one of the most talked about cards. Yeah. Everyone was super excited to see it in VRD. Alec is nice. up one game. Cool. Okay. Game. Yeah, so uh, when I was breaking down Alec's deck and taking a look at it, I was a little surprised that he didn't have almost sort of a more synergistic overall pile. Yeah. Um, and instead, he's sort of got a bunch of two-card combos. Yeah. Which, you know... Which Not are dudes that still attack worst case scenario, which right. I think is because there was also Steven's deck, that black green one. Oh, yeah. Has a mm -hmm. lot of the two card Montes in it, but there are not a lot of creature based decks. Mm -hmm. It's like Chain of Smog, Wither Bloom Apprentice, Professor Onyx. Right. So he's doing more of the removal based thing, and then yeah. just sort of like, oh, I've got a combo, you're dead. I was a little surprised. I thought a lot about a sort of a similar style of Alex deck, but I was thinking about doing something along the lines of like Birthing Pod. With, uh, you know, I obviously sniped Green Sun Zenith early yeah. in the draft, so he didn't get a chance at that. Um, but he didn't take Court of Calling, so it's not like that. Yeah, there's, there's no Court. Time. He took Eldritch Evolution, but there was no Court and there was no Birthing Pot drafted this time, which was surprising. I was a little surprised about that. I get, I, what I was guessing is maybe, since people weren't talking about it, maybe the, maybe it was just deemed to be too slow in your guys' meta. Yeah. But with how slow people's decks have kind of been, I don't know. It, I think it could have been a powerful option for them. It, it, this, this is really odd, because it is. We have a lot of the A plus B combo decks, typically. And mm -hmm. this is, like you and I talked about earlier, just a very fair draft for what we usually... Have. Oh, Dragon Rage just channel are gone. Ooh. That's rough. Yep. You know, those Thought Scars uh, are tricky. Yeah. I personally couldn't believe Thought Scar was taken after cards like Serum Vision and Opt. Yeah. But, you know, obviously it's kind of a feels bad if you uh, yeah. snipe your own card. See, actually, I love Thought Scar specifically because you can snipe off cards off the top of your opponent's decks in a format where you've got people playing stuff like Imperial Seal, Mystical Tutor. Yeah, Personal Tutor. Boom, occasionally. Baby. Yeah, no, it feels great. Um, I, I think that's one of the one of the reasons I love Thought Scour so much in Legacy, too, is that it's such a versatile card when you have so much top deck manipulation in the format mm -hmm. that, like, you know, Brandon hid some combo pieces from Joe uh, and their matchup where he was like, all right, I'm going to, you know, hide this just in case he has something to see it. I don't want him to. And I I think, oh, we've got a Viscerous Seer here. Sniped. This is, he's got Viscerous Seer and Vizier. And Vizier, so he's like halfway to so many different combos in his deck. He can bust There's out an Ivy Lane Denizen creature. as well. Ivy Lane will act as a combo Scurry Oak or uh, sort of a backup Vizier. If oh, got he has Fanks too. Creatures. Oh, then that'll be Infinite Life. And yeah, Joe is, just is one of the decks, I believe, that does not get around Infinite Life, right? No, it does not. So So you just... Oh, we've got the Force of War. Oh, oh okay. Force. Is he forcing the Viscerous here? He's forcing, he's forcing the Seer. 
That's kind of interesting. Now, I didn't. Maybe he might know, depending on how well he remembers jo, uh, Alex's deck. I yeah. wonder if he knows how many sack outlets Alex has overall. Yeah, I feel like getting the Finx is a little bit better there. Right, I, I kind of make him commit more mana. Yeah. Then again, if he only has a couple of sack outlets, well, he's got this and he's got carrying feeder. Yeah, so carrying he's got you know those. two of those yeah. and he's got two persist creatures. I know that. Yeah. Um. So I mean, honestly, I'm. Maybe he didn't have access to it. I would have probably wanted to force the Vizier just because it's his devoted yeah. druid combo. Now, here's a question for you. Uh, out of these um, sort of goofy cards like Thought Scour, do you think there's yeah. any merit in you're playing against a, a guy who you know has a lot of two card combos? Do you just mill them, or do I you think, think so. Joe has enough going on in his deck that he really needs those cards in the graveyard? I think so. I think the worst case scenario happened for Joe, right? Where you milled the Darcy. Mm -hmm. I think, and you know, he has Tarmogoyf. If I'm Joe, I actually. I would be more prone to target myself because I do want those cards in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Especially if, like, I drafted, you know, obviously Snapcaster went, like, fifth mm -hmm. or something like for that. Sure, for sure, um, But, yeah, I, I think in this case I'd definitely target myself, especially because you know that there's a lot of redundancy in Alex's list where, you know, you can't just get rid of one sack outlet. He's already got the Vajir out, which is, like, your one-off thing mm -hmm. that you may hit with it. Right. So right. I would just, like, all right, I'm going to, you know, Well, and I suppose myself. Alex even in a, a more... Uh, sort of advantageous position in that case because his finale of devastation does search his graveyard. It, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so yeah, he, Joe's probably just got to hit that, get some lands in his graveyard for Renin Six, get some yep. Delirium action going. Yeah, get some Tarmogoyf action going. I Tarmogoyf like is one of my favorite. Root Maze seems like it's God. Root Maze has been doing so much work for him this entire time. Has he been playing it in the main deck? Yeah. Oh wow, that's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks really nice, especially against Fetchlands. My God. Yeah, it's, it's completely brutal. brick people. So there's a Scurry Oak, so we're now in Ivy Lane Dennis in a way. Did he... Oh, he's not going to block and take the three because he knows if he blocks it just comes back, no counter. Yeah. So he's going to give up three life in order to take two life off of Alec? Does that not seem worth it to you? No, I, I... Yeah, not really. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, because he's got the stasis. Yep. Oh my god. So this is game. So now Chronotog yeah, can skip his turns with Stasis. Yep, because you can do it during your opponent's turn. Uh, yep, that makes perfect sense. So, so now the Alec can draw out of this. Mm -hmm. He right. does have outs. It's just a matter of, all right, do we want to go through the time to actually do this? I know Alec. Alec is going to spend the time to actually go through well, this. Well, I mean... Alec, this should be a kind of a dunk for Alec, right? Yeah, it like, is. He just has to draw enough lands to play his... Oh, Root Maze makes them all come to play tap. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. Okay, so, so no, does that, he that have is... any outs? He can't draw lands, No, he yeah? doesn't have outs. Yeah. Ooh, yikes. Yep. Okay. He can't draw lands, though, because uh, okay. Root Maze keeps them all tapped. Now this makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking... Yeah, because it, it, it used to be Kismet lands. that you would take. Yep. Uh, yeah, frozen but now Aether. you get he yeah, is. frozen Aether, root maze, yeah. So this this is now Joe is one using that exact combo three times now. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. It's just stasis, chronotog, root maze. It's it's so out of left field, and it's not something people think about. And none of those cards seem good individually. No, example. but when they're together, all together man, are they insane? Rolls it out. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. I mean, like I'm not the biggest you know two card three card combo fan in, in general. But that seems particularly thin. I mean, maybe if you were doing some kind of an enchantress thing, yeah. where you can, you know, oh, I've got an idol on the blossom, so if I'm slowing my opponent down with root maze, I'm drawing cards, and I yeah. get stasis, and then I've got my chronotog totem or whatever. Yeah, of, just of all having the them raw in your Delver deck, yeah, like, oh, yes, yeah, that seems so rough, seems right? Rough. But it, it's worked. Yeah, that's crazy. It, the I thing is, because uh, root maze for a while was seen playing rug delver sideboards. Mm -hmm. Which was pretty wild, I thought. Yeah, he does have Force of Vigor, so he can, if he needs to, get rid of his own stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting to me because Root Maze, like you said, they seem bad on their own. Root Maze seems good in, like, a stack shell. Mm -hmm. Not in Delver, though, which is what this no, is. No, no. I mean, it, it didn't even... It's kind of crazy because it didn't look bad in that game. It was making no. the special lands come to play tapped. Yeah. It was making some of his critters come to play tapped. I don't know that that would matter so much against Alec, but I know it's going to be good against me. Yeah, um, for so sure. So there are definitely decks where it's useful, yeah. but I don't know. I guess we'll see. It's kind of interesting. Root Maze is an interesting card. Uh, yeah. Breaking your opponent's lands. I know some of the cards that have sort of gotten printed recently, there's a three-drop white creature yeah. that makes your opponent's non-basics come to play tap. It's like Archon of something or other. Yeah. Um, 
That card's great. Three mana yeah, Thalia is great. Yeah. yeah. Your opponent's non base coming Man, attack, three mana so. Thalia is one of my favorite cards from recent years. That card mm -hmm, is so underrated. Mm -hmm. And no one's playing, you know, the Thalias of the world for this draft. For yeah. While. Yeah. Yeah, there's no Thalias. There's no, like, white or red aggro, which it's funny because we say every time on commentary, we're like, there's definitely a mono red aggro deck in this format <laughs> that just destroys. Uh, because have you people... guys not had a lot of people draft it, period? No. People really? don't really attack life totals oh, in wow, this. That's it's a crazy. lot of two card combos. That's wild. Uh, yeah. I, I would think that that is the outlier out of all the VRDs that I've hosted. Um, yeah. I would say it's more it's more rare than not to not have someone go mono red. Yeah. I think usually uh, if someone doesn't really like the, the contestation that they have to go through to get their deck, uh, I've seen a lot of people abandon their you know first eight picks and just go, all right, that's it, I'm playing yep. red. Uh, yep, I'm playing red now. And that, that's, still we've, up, we've, we've seen here. that happen too, where someone like, they were all in on it looked like reanimator, and then they were like, "Well, red's open," and then just drafted a worse red deck than if they had spent like goblin guide and stuff on the first few mm. picks. You know, yep, that's tough. That's tough. I mean, fire uh, blast, and there is a there is a lot of very powerful red cards in the game. Yeah, you know, and nice interactive ones too. You can break up a lot of these combos with like a well placed lightning bolt or a fire blast. Or For sure. You know, like, so you almost get to play the interactive strategy while putting your opponent on like a three four turn clock. Yeah, no, this and this is so not a pack rat sponsored yeah. tourney rage. Uh, John Ryan has it, but, but yeah, if no. anyone knows pack rat's manager, you get us in contact. Yeah. we will. We, we will. We will get them on pack rat. I'm into that. Two card combos are very St. Louis thing. You think that's it is. true? It is. You, you think a lot yeah. of people are just like pack There's, them, uh, especially for like VRD. It seems like our meta is very combo oriented every single time. That's interesting. Like we get a lot of Tinker Time Vaults. We mm -hmm. get a lot of sneak and shows. We get a lot of like just storm. You know, it's it's interesting because it is, you know, we draft a lot of unfair decks in this format. Sure, that makes sense. I have noticed, I, I think that's a general meta kind of thing. I think Storm, uh, Time Vault, I, people love Time Vault. Yeah, pe people love fantastic. Time Vault. Um, um, Storm is one that I'm like, I'm always very hit or miss if it's good in this format. When it's good, it's insane. Mm -hmm. The problem is you have to be the only person in Storm. Yeah, I think of it a little bit like the... I know Mono Brown Mud is like a deck that people really like to draft. Yeah. But rarely does it actually work out and wind up being good. Yeah. It's, the Eldrazi. It's just, ooh, there's it. Allosaurus Shepard. Ooh, that'll be quite good. Um, it doesn't float all of Alex's combo pieces through. No. Um, but about half of them, like yeah. the, the Persist Creatures, mm -hmm. stuff like that. He actually threatened to go big with dinosaurs and murder me in, in our match. So, yeah. Um, it would be kind of interesting if he has that threat against Joe, if Joe's able to sort of control the game, getting up to that breaking point with mana, having a few green creatures in play. Three mana recall, still good? Oh, still very good. My god. How, <laughs> how often do you pay, you know, three, four mana for a treasure cruise and you're still just on cloud nine? I know, right? You know? It's the best thing in the world. Oof. Cannot complain about that. So, wait, is Merchant Scroll not an instant? It is not. I always thought it was. I thought the no. old um, reset high tide decks played Merchant Scroll. Yeah. Because you could cast it on your opponent's turn, but I guess... Nope, you cast it on your turn for your reset. Interesting. Yeah. Eh, kind of makes sense, I suppose. All right, okay, so we've wait, got an so Eladomri's got... Call here now, is what we're on. Yeah, did I miss something? We've got Recall in the Graveyard and Merchant Scroll in play. I think so I think there something... may have been an Eladomri's Call in response somewhere, because I know uh -huh. that just got cast and Alec is fetching for something. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes um, sense. I think so, maybe he accidentally put the... Yeah, he put them reverse the cards. Where, yeah, yeah, where he wanted them. Yeah, okay. I'm sure yeah. I'll figure it out. Just put the version scroll right back in his hand yep. and moving on. Pull, pull off the Burton Chini. Oh, boy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Right from the graveyard to the yep. hand. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, oh. we have a, we have a Ancestral. Is that cool? All right, it's cool. Let's go. It's cool? Okay. You sure? Positive? I would like Alec to... Devoted Druid on top. What? Beautiful. So he pulled the Devoted Druid. Now, so the problem is Alec has no way to give this Devoted Druid haste, right? So he's only Correct. ever threatening to play it and then go off next turn. Yeah. Which could be a little tricky. It's uncounterable. That's nice. It is uncounterable. Um, and there's only one bolt in Joe's deck. Oh, that's, uh, Which that's... was the only bolt type piece drafted the whole time. My god. We've got two more here right, for just... a Duskwatch Recruiter. So I think this is big. I think this Duskwatch here is going to be really important. Because yeah. now if Joe sort of floats to uh, hold up a counterspell, like some kind of vizier, uh, yeah. to counterspell some kind of vizier, Alec has a reasonable means to just beat him to death. I, he um, can't counter the vizier, though, because the shepherd's out. 
So Shepard, I think, only works on green creatures. Oh, right? yeah, you're right. It is. Um, yeah. Which, unfortunately, which, you know, will give him about half of all of his combos uh, unlocked, Yep, I green say, spells. Uh, yep. Or, or uncounterable. But the Vizier specifically with the Devoted Druid is going to be... Yeah. Um, you know, it makes me think he would probably go a long way having Malira in his deck. I'm not Oh, yeah, lie. I agree. Um, Malira pod. Would look Back to the pod train. Nice. You know, yeah. Vizier is good. Don't get it, me wrong. It is, but, for I sure. I mean, it's not tangibly much different in his deck than Malira would be, right? Yeah. I Of course, no one here drafted... Um, in fact, this go around. Yeah, no. But uh, people do draft that every once in a while, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, we. Guys. It seems like every other... Seems like we get uh, yep. someone that drafts Infect. That's cool. I like that a lot. I think what what's tricky is you kind of want to have like blue cantrips and cheap counterspells. Oh the my god, he had the one lightning bolt. Yep. What a guy. That uh, was... Still needs to deal with the Duskwatch Recruiter. Right? Yeah, I feel like I'd almost rather go for the Duskwatch Recruiter there over the Druid, but maybe that's... I, I guess no, because Druid can go infinite with Ballista, which we know he has as well. Mm -hmm. He so. actually... If there's one thing Alex deck has going for him, he has a lot of mana six. He has a yeah, lot of different yeah. ways to spend his infinite mana. Yeah. Um, along with a bunch of tutors, Finale of Devastation stuff, which is, will kill in yeah. and of itself. And then he's also got mana sinks like uh, the, the Shepherd. so... Oh, the Noble. The Noble Hierarch. <laughs> so, I heard you guys joking about the Noble. You're not, not a fan of the Noble? <laughs> we were like, wait, Noble Hierarch over Ignoble? What's going on? Because at, at that time, we were so we were still like, why is he taking white mana? Uh, why yeah, yeah. We found uh, out why he took the pearl, because he accidentally crossed the emerald off instead of pearl. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah. I asked him as soon as our match was done. I was like, so... Pearl over Emerald, huh? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I really like it. I, I, I really prefer it. And I was like, okay, okay. How do you yeah. like the Fast Bond? Is the Fast Bond better than, like, another Mox? He's like, yeah, I... Not <laughs> I, was, I was willing to hear him out, but I am very skeptical. He doesn't yeah. have any real way to draw extra cards, which makes Fast yeah. Bond, like, pretty medium. Yeah, he has the clearing, and that's about it. Um, the fa Yeah, the fact that he only got one of the draw lands, or mm -hmm. the Horizon land. Oh, no, he got Canopy, too. So he has two of them, so Fast Bond would be good with those out. And sure, we've got a sure. goif that is instant sorcery land, yeah. at least a 3-4. Yeah, it looks like he's got to die on 4 on it, so yep. I'm imagining okay, so there we're must four, be... Five. Uh, there's probably land, yeah. yeah. Land, instant sorcery creature. Yeah, yep. makes sense. Okay, well... Oh, we're uh, tapping 3 to activate on end step. Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly where he wants to be putting the pressure yeah. on, I think, right now. Joe's actually managing to cast spells on his own turn, which, which is, is helpful. Yeah. Uh... It's almost sort of a double-edged sword here, because on the one hand, your stuff's uncounterable. On the other yeah. hand, your opponent can't really hold up counter spells anyway, because your Dustwatch recruiter is threatening to flip over and kind of beat you down. So. Yeah. Um, but Tarmogoyf will stun the bleeding. We'll have a little Yeah, uh, Tarmogoyf will, because you're, you're stopping a little bit here. So. Mm -hmm. um, a little staring got... contest for a minute. Land in, is in Alex's yard, yes. Absolutely. So we could potentially swing six here with the Allosaurus Shepherd. Ooh. Uh, you could make, what, both of your green creatures 5-5s, five yeah? Yeah. Um, or is it just elves? It's just elves. Each elf creature. But the, like the Allosaurus would trigger Exalted off the Noble then, so it's oh, yeah, we yeah, know yeah. Bolt is gone. Mm -hmm. We don't have Bolt up. We do have, uh, I guess, the Unholy Heat, potentially, but oh, we're going to sure, get sure. a mm -hmm. Duskwatch activation here. There's a Finx. Oh, Finx is nice here. Okay. We can cast Finx, too. Yep, we like Finx. So assuming that Joe doesn't put together, does uh, what is Joe threatening with combo wise? Like, what does Alec have to be worried about him doing other than uh, Chronotogging him? Literally Chronotog. Literally. Chronotog. He's he's just okay. a fair deck besides the Chronotog lock. Okay, it looks like uh, Alex passing to try to flip his Duskwatch yeah. Recruiter. Now Duskwatch Recruiter on the flip side of it is yeah. called what exactly? Um. Oops. I, I'm a little skeptical on this. I almost think that he would rather slam the Kitchen Finks and or activate Duskwatch Recruiter a second time. Creatures cast one colorless less. Yeah, I don't know that mana is really where he's choked on right now. No, I he he's not. He's choked on threats. Yeah. I'm wondering, I'm wondering what the thought process is there for flipping. I, I wonder if this. he has Vizier in his hand as well. Okay. And he, or like, Vizier thinks something, and he wants, oh, there we go. Okay, so, so this one suspends and uh, comes yeah. off and searches your opponent's library and stuff? Yeah, uh, it's bribery okay. off suspend. Yes, bribery off the suspend. Interesting. 
Oh, I can almost. I, I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't I quite make it out. Uh, so that's interesting. I think he may just want to dump mass on the table. Mm -hmm. um, if he has a Shalai, I guess he could do that plus. But let's see what we end up with yeah. here. We've if he got... has three creatures in hand, I, I could certainly see him saying, okay, fine, I'll just play it. Yeah, just for one turn, because then it flips back right. over. So It's kind of funny. So he didn't actually wind up using that three mana, so he could have double Dust Watcher Yeah, he there. could have. Um, and it, it, at the same time, he passed without playing a spell. Joe also didn't play a spell, so again, could yeah. it over. So, kind of All right, so we are at 21 now. Beautiful. Off of that Finx for two mana. Gotta love it. And what else? Oh, I think that might be a Shalai. Although Shalai is still five mana, so we're still not quite there. Oh, there's a fifth land. No, Shalai should only be three mana, I believe. Unless, oh, it's is four he getting mana? taxed? Yeah, it's, it's normally four. Oh, I thought it was normally um, four. Oh, it's six to activate. That's right. So we've got three mana here. That is, in fact, a Shalai. Okay, so okay. we have a Shalai in play. Nice, nice. So possible he just... Well, he's still got two mana open, right? Yeah. Like it's it's not like he needed the mana. I, I no. think this might have been just a, a worst case. He does get recruiter back this turn. I sure, mean, right. Should, and and that should be guarantee at this point. Yeah. He has cast both the spells. Even if they don't resolve, he'll still be able to flip his werewolf back over. I know this. Shall I resolves? Oh, that is kind of rough. Yeah, that's that should be huge for Alec, right? Really helps put the put the walls up. Yeah. Um, unholy heat is not a delirium, so I can't take it out. Um, uh, oh, and we do have a Duskwatch. There we go. All yep, right. Duskwatch flipping back, back over. He's only at two mana now, so unfortunately he's not going to get to activate. Yeah. But yeah. He's also now got the... So he's got the threat of the Allosaurus Rider, or uh, Shepard, yep. to make his boy into a 5-5. Five five, or he can just start pumping his whole team, putting plus one, plus one counters on Yeah, I feel like July. pumping is the way to... Is, I would go for the pump here myself. Yeah, over, I would imagine. You're just going to um, get there a lot quicker that way, I feel like. And, let's and there's a CZ peasy. You know, flyers, if you want. Yeah. Um, I need to see a bird's attack. Shalai is also Fizzle's betrayal. Fizzle? Which one's Fizzle? Oh, uh, just betrayal would be countered. So what are we discarding here? We're discarding. It looks like a dread horde and a force spike. Ooh, okay. No, that's Dragon Age Chandler. Oh um, yeah, it is a Darcy. And force yep. spike, which you know what? Fair enough. Your opponent's got a million it, mana. Yeah, he's got a million mana. That's. You're not going to be it's able to do that. Oh, ones I saw mana, mana leak. leak and an island, and which an is island. not the two That's you want to see there. Yeah. I think he's going to wind up sacrificing this uh, land here, not only to help himself turn on Delirium if that comes up. I don't know if yeah. he's got any other oh. Delirium stuff. Uh, no, that's the only one he has. Besides, it's Darcy and Unholy. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so, either right. way, he's got so many lands in play. These, these guys have so many lands in play. Yeah, they do. Uh, um, we're not we're not choked and. Alex seems to be drawing a little bit better despite, I have to assume, running more lands. Well, mm -hmm. no, because he's super low to the ground, I feel Alec, like. Yeah, he uh, he tops out at four, but he's got m multiple different, you know, mana dorks yeah. and, and different stuff like that, so I think he's getting pretty flooded. I think he's playing 15 lands in total. So. Oh, okay, that's not um, bad. He's not happy about the number of lands he's drawing, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, oh, there we go. Second Pete land to draw. Hit Delirium. That was... It looked like an oof. oof yeah, I whatever. think... So, he must be going for the Shalai activation here, is what yeah. I'm thinking Alex trying to do. Because otherwise you would want to spin that Duskwatch Recruiter and, and go. There's a Stasis. That's not going to do as much good here. Yeah, but he's... what is he, is he? Does he still have Recall in his hand right now? He cast Recall. We've got it right there. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, that's good. You don't have to worry about that. Joe passing with mana up at this point is kind not a threat. of not yeah. really not really doing much, I don't think. The the only threat that I the only thing that I like would have cared would have been Shalai at this point because right I mean I guess I care about Carrion Feeder because infinite lands mm -hmm. or infinite life if mm -hmm. you know he can land a Vizier but Vizier's dead already I thought no that was last game no, sorry last game. so yeah. I mean Joe really needs to get the Shalai off the board because yeah. otherwise his ability to interact is like there we there go there we go we finally got Delirium online and we have a Shalai this is huge. because this is going to allow him to actually be able to use his bribery next turn yeah. So he's going to pump in response. Fair yep. enough. Oh, come on. You know you want to. Unless he's got some way to pump the Shalai, which I don't think he does. We're not pumping. I'm curious as to why. Yeah, why would you not pump there? Because at this point, I mean, at this point, 
uh, Alex and I have a hard time floating through those last few points of damage on Joe. Yeah. I mean, that's just... A lot. That's a big ground log. Mm-hmm. It's got a, you know, big creature like Tarmogoyf and then lots of small stuff yeah. just to make sure you're not taking too much damage on the wide attack. Yep. So Alex got his work come out, cut out for him. I think he's got to try to get some kind of a combo off. Yeah, you've got to. But, uh, you know, that Allosaurus Shepherd. I'm not saying he shouldn't have picked it so that I could have picked it, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 the, I, I honestly think the Gaia's Herald was better for him there. So we did not pump. Didn't pump. So and what are we flashing cannot in? use... Yeah, we've got to do and something. And we don't have Duskwatch. Right. We're gonna we're gonna ask him after this, and if he says no, he's gonna be like, "Well, I'm a dumbass." <laughs> Need to see Alex hand before I can really judge him. You know, you would say that, but you can sort of judge based I'm, on how. I'm gonna many I'm gonna tell you this, my child. I've known Alex for a long time, and you can judge away. That's <laughs> look at this. We didn't even oh, do anything. No. What are we doing? Oh, boy. What are these? What are those? All right. That's oh rough. my lord. Alex seems like he could have you know. Three what, more are, what are you in his doing? Hand, or a bigger board full of idiots. Yeah. All right. Oh, There's the, the vizier. vizier. We've got a chance anyway. Come on. We got a go. chance. Got a vizier and we've got a. We got two. Tanks. What is this? We've got a. Purling sir prepared. Sure prepared. Okay. Okay. Where's our sack outlet? We Where's our carrying feeder? Come on, feeder? come on, Alec, do something here. Make it happen. We're gonna swing for one in the air. Oh boy. All right. Why? <laughs> I don't know, but also, you know, and I appreciate him attacking for one here because, you know, you got to get those points in. But there have been several turns where he could have attacked for one in the air and, and did not. And did not. So yes, correct. I feel like if you're going to try to angle for those individual points. Now, if he had floated in those, you know, two different attacks on yeah. turns where he could have and his opponent was at eight life and yeah. then he had a board full of idiots with plus and plus encounters on him, maybe. Uh, he would have got know, there, maybe. yeah. He could have floated in an attack for two with the birds or he could have yeah. gone wide attack with everything. There's just there's just not much here. No, and unfortunately, yeah. Alec is kind of like this bribery is not going to get anything too meaningful. No, there's I don't think. Th there's going to be some medium cards. You're going to rob him of a combo piece regardless. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah he's taking the there you go. out. So yeah, yeah, it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky. So now he's got carrion feeder. It looks like. Yeah, and um, uh, he can still do skirt. He can still do squeaky jeeky. We still got Chatterfang, Scurrio, oh, sure. Ivy okay. Lane. Yep, 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 yep. Absolutely. Um, and we are also notably at what are we at now? Seven. So we're two mana short from an extra activation. Right. Uh, but we do get an activation of Duskwatch this turn, which should be very good. I mean, you know, if we he's got a lot of good creatures. Spinning this Duskwatch recruiter, any kind of reasonable luck, I think we could maybe yeah. hit some creatures. Deck's trying to get a little thin. I think he's probably got twenty cards in his deck or so. so. Something like that, yeah. So if there are combo pieces that are lurking, we can find them. Ooh. Oh, so sacking. So now we can Finale of Devastation. We can. That's true. And get there. Absolutely. And that'll be Infinite Life. Oh, there's... That's actually one of the best cards you could have got. He just got run in six off of that. Oof. Oops. Now not hitting that Shalai hurts a lot. Yep. Not hitting the Shalai button means that his Vizier can die yep. to the Renin Well, Vizier, Vizier wasn't there yet, but the Allosaurus Rider can die. Oh, right. yep, right. The Dusk Watch can die. His birds can die. Birds can die. Higher Art can thing. die. Oh, Everything Atlanta. dies to this. Yeah, this this is bad. This is this is proof that not activating Shalai literally cost him, prop, may end up costing him the game. Could wind up costing him the game. And, you know, we don't exactly know, even if you're not activating Shalai, the three spins of Duskwatch Recruiter that he could have gotten in also could have meant a lot. Also could have been pretty big here, yeah. And the thing is, so when I saw what Alec was drafting, he actually plays Vizier combo and Heliod combo in a modern. So oh, this that's is interesting. like, so this, this, is right this, this is right in his wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting mm -hmm. to see him make these misplays because, like, in a 75 format, I've never seen him, you know, Do miss like triggers this. like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Yeah. That's rough, you know. Uh, oh, there's there's a chronotog. Yeah, so we're we're rapidly approaching. So here's the here's the other big problem that Alex and we didn't into. activate. Oh no, we didn't activate recruiter. Oh, what no. are you doing? Oh no, Alec. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> Absolute the si rages. The simple, the <laughs> simple bruh. The yeah. simple bruh. That's uh. All right. This, this is, is not. You know what? We're gonna help Alec out and tell him not to not rewatch this. Yeah. How to, how to not <laughs> how to not do this? <laughs> I at, at one point I I jokingly called Alec my son and he he has now been disowned. Oh, this this no. is this this is it. This is the ultimate disappointment. 
That's four times now that he could have activated, and he and now he's activating in main phase. You Are know, you kidding me? If we can, uh, you know, I'm going to stop ne- necessarily talking about what's going on in the game at this exact moment because yeah. uh, it's just it's going to be a little too painful. But on an on an outside note, uh, yeah. just in a more theoretical vintage rotisserie draft, yeah, idea. Um, Alec is threatening infinite life here with his vizier and he kitchen is. finks, which yep. is not something Joe cares about at all. Uh, oh. When he assembles his chronotog totem combo, or yeah. chronotog combo, um, it does not matter if Alec has infinite life, because he draws himself to death. And yeah. Alec doesn't have any sort of um, green sun or, zenith yeah, or something like that. that will stop himself from decking. Yeah. Um, an Eldrazi or, or what have you. So that's rough. Alec's not... He's not actually even threatening a combo that wins. If he had something in his deck like Murderer's Red Cap, if he was yeah. playing maybe a meteor deck with some stuff higher up on the curve, like this Prowling Serpapod could have been Murderer's Red Cap. There's yeah, nothing it, it could have that. been. Um, he also could have, you know, maybe cards like Malir in his deck. You know, yeah. an extra copy of Vizier, so that he yep. has, you know, multiple Viziers going on. I, Malir was one that I was surprised was not taken uh, by Alex specifically, because it is such a good card in this deck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, ultimately it does quite a bit for him. He's got almost sort of a green creature sub-theme with his yeah. Ivy Lane Denizen and his... Uh, his Chain of Vapor, all right. Ooh, okay, sure. That's probably not going to matter too much because it doesn't look like Joe has too much to sweat. No. Um, but, you know. Yep, there we go. I don't want to say Joe was handed this game because he's played well, but he was handed this game. Well, you know, Absolute Ragers. It's, uh... I will say, playing with such weird foreign decks like this, I yeah. think it can kind of trick it's anyone into making sort of goofy Interesting plays. that he hit the... Well, I guess now he can counter whatever combo pieces he plays, so that's fair. Yeah, that's not bad. Certainly certainly not terrible. Uh, does Joe ha- Is Joe the guy who has uh, Mana Drain and stuff in his deck? Yeah. Okay, so that's, you know... Yeah, he has Mana Drain and Force. So he's threatening all kinds of counter spells at this yeah. point. Um, yeah, I mean, he's got a grip full of spells that we don't know what they are, so I have to assume he's played a bunch of the stuff that wouldn't be counter spells. It's got to be nothing but counters left and maybe a couple threats. Yeah. There's so. stasis now that Alec is tapped out except for two mana. Yep. Smart. And that should be, uh, you know, we'll be eating pretty We're close pass. to the game, I suppose. Yeah. Now, Root Maze isn't out, so it's not, you know, abjectly game yet. Yeah. Uh, Alec, theoretically at this point, is hoping to pull Devoted Druid to make infinite mana to Walking Bullets as opposed to that. Yeah. Of course, we know that's probably not going to work since all of those things can be countered. Yeah, unfortunately. And there is a mana leak in Joe's hand that we know about. Okay, which is not nothing. Okay, what is this? Display of dominance. Yep, display of um, dominance. Yeah, stasis. stasis. Okay. Which is going to get mana leak. Countered. Rough. And now we can't even use our serpapod and and three three two sort of. Uh, that should flip back over now, right? Yeah. Okay, but it right. looks like they're gonna miss that uh, for now. Yeah. But Ideal. Well, it's at end of turn that it flips. Uh, well, when Joe ended his turn. Oh, yeah, yeah fair. Uh, no, well, I guess that's maybe not true, right? Because what could have happened is it well, could have gone to Well, it has to, to be two, step. yeah, two spells cast, yeah. Right, and Joe cast, what was it, Stasis and then Mana Leak in the same turn? Yep, yeah. But if that was after the Dutch walk, Dust Watch Recruiter trigger yeah. sort of happens, that would make sense. So. Oh, no, it looks like that was a main phase from Alec. He tapped his lands and then attacked. Oh, okay, that would make sense. We drew the so display, now on this end step, it. the Dusk Watch will flip back. Mm, good stuff. All right. Yeah. Well, not that it really matters at this point anyway, but I no. suppose he'll have a 2 2. That's not nothing. It's no, it, 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 it is not nothing. That, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's interesting, though, because we can now have. Um, you potentially could pump your Chronotog here, block. And see what happens. You're obviously not going to block the kitchen fink. You're at nine life, so you have mm-hmm. to block something here. Mm-hmm. I get, what I'm thinking is: is there, is there, does Alec have any outs? You know, I like to in this situation. If I'm in Joe's spot, I like to ask myself: like, is there a way I can lose the game? And then, of course, like, am I gonna? Can I play around that? Yeah, I think I think not having root maze is huge here because it means Alec actually can draw out of this. Sure. He can draw lands. He can hit finale. He can do something to interact with it. You ended up with Rex Sage, and Alec didn't end up with any come into play, destroy, mm, anything effects. Um, I was kind of surprised Caustic Caterpillar didn't get picked. That's a card I love, because I play CEDH, mm, and it's just so mana efficient as an answer. Yeah, I can see that. that. You know, um, I actually considered taking Viridian Zealot 
uh, I for, love for a similar Zelda. purpose. Yeah. Because if you're going to like Green Sun Zenith something into play preemptively, yeah. you want it sitting on the board so that, you know, if you get a Death of Dance Iona, yeah. um, you can get straight <laughs> Death Dance. Uh, you just death. kill it, yeah. Rough stuff. Yeah, that was... Oh, yeah, we have Chain of Vapor for the stasis. Okay. That's pretty good. So now he's going to at least get to untap all of his stuff once. And Alec not being able to untap his creatures here, again, he got Joe down to six. You know... Oh, we're uh, bouncing. Okay. Oh, yeah, because he sacrificed a land to be able yeah. to copy the chain himself. Smart. Yep. Smart on Joe's part. Um, Joe's playing this game really well. He is. It seems like he's, he's piloting his deck very well, even though yeah. I think his deck looks kind of funny, Jink. I'll say. I'll yeah. say it's funny. It's um, the He said he got the stasis idea from a local that uh, everyone will know when I say Blyden that it is the exact idea. He loves flashy jank that gets there more than anybody is that so. uh jeff Blyden? yeah jeff Blyden. I've yeah you know Blyden. That guy. Yeah. i do uh yeah fun dude fun yeah guy. he is it's very his... nice collection of magic cards and stuff yeah cool cool dude that's so, funny he's a he's a stasis guy huh yeah i remember he used to be a chains of mephistopheles guy. yeah the first, he loves chains one of the first times i met him i think he was buying chains of mephistopheles at like a gp or something yeah he wanted to play it in legacy yeah he played it jeff, what are you yeah doing? He, uh, when we played middle school, he played Stasis in middle school as well. Oh, God. And now he's got it built for pre-modern. Oh, there's no. the Frozen Aether. Yep. Oh. That'll do it. Oh, we that's are, a game. We are rapidly running out of the, the moves here. Yeah. So can Joe not play his Stasis He can't play here? Stasis this turn. So he is at so he's six letting life. Him untap with all he's this? letting him untap Ooh, boy, at I six don't know life. About this. this seems. With a walking ballista in his hand. Oh, wait. What are we doing? We got... Oh, we're... Uh, oh, 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 wait. Are we considering how to respond to this? Or are we... Is he just considering whether he wants to do it at all? I think he's now? considering whether he wants to do it or uh, not okay. now. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, there he, are he, some nominal takebacks allowed here. Yeah. Uh, you know, or... It's I casual. Should say, you know, we're hanging for, out. Yeah, we're hanging out. We're having a good time. People are getting tipsy, so... Yeah. Okay. So stasis okay. so we did, first. We're stasising instead of Frozen Aether. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fair. I think this... If there was, a, you know, Joe looked like he had such an impenetrable board, only to bounce a bunch of it back to his hand and maybe open himself up to. Yeah, so oh yeah, okay, yeah, 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 totally, totally makes perfect sense. Yeah. As I think playing Frozen Aether there could have realistically given Alec outs to kill him. Yeah, so absolutely. He could have he could have very realistically like found some more creatures, found some more power, get in another big alpha strike on yeah. the. On the on the sixth life, um, I think you're in a very precarious position at that point. So Yeah, and this this is game three as well. So this is Oh, game three, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're Cause right. Because they, they right. came in on two and now we're on game three. So we paid the upkeep cost for stasis. We did not hit another blue source. So stasis is gonna die. Right, yeah. Um Renin Six didn't have a blue source to rebuy, correct? No. It has nice nurturing peatland and that's about it. Okay, well, then uh, stasis looks like it's getting locked up. Now this was unnecessary, I think. I think yeah, if he had waited a Joe turn, missed half. Yeah, I think he did. Uh, and tapped too many blue sources, left yeah. all of his red sources open. So it's kind of rough. Um, and he's got all blue cards. Okay? Yep, me and the drink. A handful <laughs> oh, of no. blue cards. All right, so you know we were trying to figure we're, out if there was a way that Alec could get back in this uh, game, and there's it turns maybe, out mis misplay. Yeah, it turns out chain of vaporing all your cards back to your hand. Is away. All right. Hey, you know what? Alex is going to help Joe out. He's going to say, you need some more green mana over there? You only got red mana? I got you, boo. Here's, here's some green. Have it. Now, Joe could Chronotog and skip some turns here. Nope. I don't know if that puts him in a better position. I, I don't know do that it, it does. Um, it would certainly give. Now, Alex's biggest, biggest shot at this point has to be that Joe's at six life and Alec has Walking Ballista. And um, Kitchen Finks to swing in with. Yeah, so he's got attackers that he can realistically use, um, yeah. and he's got a, a, a actual burn spell in his hand, an actual, yeah. like, you know, halfway fireball to, to bomb yeah. his opponent with. So, you know, it's, it's not, it's it ain't over until the fat lady's thing. No, and, the, and I, I okay. this is not how I expected this game <laughs> to go at all five turns you ago. Know, look at me, I was over here, like, just completely checking out, like, Yeah. I don't want to pay attention to this No, game now, like, now suddenly we've now, got a game on our hands. And I, if I recall correctly, you said Joe had Unholy Heat and Lightning Bolt, right? So yeah. he's not looking at... Uh, yeah, and he, he used both of those already. So he has... Renin 6 is his removal now. Yep, yep. So 
We know at least on this turn. He's oh, got two I guess red we mana do have a Tarmogoyf too. Yeah, I didn't. I thought that was like exiled or something. I didn't know no. it was still in play. So okay, that's it is still well, in play. That makes it more awkward, I should say. But you know, we've got a walking blister for one, two, three, four, four. We've got a bird yeah. attack for one in the air. You're literally so close. You're like one life yes. away. You can All do it. All those birds attacks that you <laughs> that you didn't take earlier. Yes. Like, oh, if the birds attacks gosh. had happened, if the pump had happened. Oh boy. Um, let's see. Okay. Like, let's say that you cannot lethal in this turn, which at you the can't. moment it looks like you cannot. Yeah. You swing you with... You can attack... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say you swing with the birds because you get a point through the air. Mm -hmm. You could potentially attack with the Finx, but I don't think there's any upside to that. You just gain mm -hmm. two life. Mm -hmm. Like, so you swing with birds and you get them to five. Mm -hmm. Next turn you pump Ballista, kill him. Okay. All right. Now... I have an alternate line for you, okay? Oh, I misspelled Chronotog. Let me see. Oh, Chronotog. All right, my mistake. Yeah, no, you're good. Okay, here's what I got for you. Here's an alternate line of play that okay. I got for you, okay? Uh, and that is, if you think your opponent values his Chronotog at all, or you think that he wants to emblem his Renin Six, you might want to use your Vizier as an attacker. Oh, player. okay. Float it through. You, That's you a know, Finale of Devastation. Oh, okay. Finale's big. Um, Joe has no blue mana again because he is he is tapped out on blue, and we're going for it. Looks like is this a finale for one? Yeah, what, what are we getting for, for one, one, dude? Oh, the finale on one gives you carrion feeder. Oh, okay, so carrion it feeder. does. So this gives him infinite life and an infinitely large man. Yes. Uh, and then Joe will be able to emblem his Renin six. Yeah. Okay, so this is a complicated game now, because again, Joe doesn't necessarily care that Alec has infinite life. His main way of winning the game, which was his combo, makes Alec draw himself to death. Yes. Now we can make a 3-3 three, three Ballista still, that does get three points through to something. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's big. It definitely can pick a uh, counter off a run in six stop yeah. him from embleming this turn true yeah which is definitely a solid choice you know it stops joe from embling his run in six and then using any excess lands that he can get his hands on to like unholy heat yeah pull off a bunch of your stuff that's pretty big yeah um but joe at this point man he's kind of in a tricky spot i don't think he doesn't have regrowth in his deck right he no he does not he doesn't have regrowth effects at all stasis back mm -mm. so stasis chronotog root man is like that's not gonna happen this game. no stasis is gone it's not coming back so there Ooh. it looks like we're gonna plus instead of emblem yeah because that guy emblem's on six right i'm not crazy yeah, i'm pretty sure it's six yeah i think it's i've on emblemed six. him enough um, that you would think i would know yeah, I, I would think. He's, like, one of the most popular cards in the last god knows how many years. Seven. He does emblem on seven. All right, okay. well, god, we're just oh, idiots. Yep. Oh, my lord. Well, that's okay. Live and learn. <laughs> uh, so we, we now just die next turn if we're Joe, right? Uh, yeah, I would say at this point we're kind of under the gun. We're, we're in a bad way. There's Frozen Aether. Okay. Did Joe have Force of Will in his hand this whole time? There's no way. No, no he had no. Mana Drain. Okay. I swore I just saw his hand in the Enforceable. He did draw was, Force. Oh, he drew it this turn? Oh. Yes. Oh, Joe. I know. Okay. Bad, bad timing. Al Man, is Alec about to win this game? It looks think like he it. is. Why? I mean, at this point, you can float one through with the bird, double pump your Ballista, five yeah. him. Did we not get our opponent for one last turn with the bird? I'm going to pull my hair out. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think uh, this is happening. I think this is going to go the way that we did not. Hey, look, there's that fast bomb. How on play, earth? Well, play perfect, get rewarded. God. Oh my God, we're swinging. We're swinging <laughs> in with all these guys, but not swinging with the vizier. I don't know that I get that necessarily. What do you? Well, think the vizier can do die, I guess. Well, I yeah, don't... but if he blocks your vizier, he dies. He's just dead. That's to the true. Yeah. This is one of those. I think a lot of people when they play their combo decks. Like you said before, you got creatures. They, they have power and toughness. Yeah. Get him in there, man. Like, yeah. What's going to happen? Your opponent's got two mana. And yep. Alec takes it down. Oh. I what is going all. on? You need to get someone, one of these two guys needs to get in the booth and just talk about this game because this game this was, was just amazing. Woo. Uh, you know what? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought your name was Absolute Bangers. It's Absolute Rages. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, play, play, play perfect, get rewarded. Everyone played perfectly <laughs> that game. 
Good that was lord, staggered. that was a game. Let's see what he sideboarded in and out. He boarded out his uh, heroic intervention is ESG. Okay, I don't want to talk shit about Alex Deck or anything. <laughs> but here's the thing, okay? Uh, Alec is, is that... not also Alec is not two and zero. I beat Alec anyway. Okay, yeah, matter. that just needs to be updated. <laughs> um, then that's fine. Alec, yeah, that uh, was an emotional roller coaster of a game. Wow. That I, the last I, ten I minutes were some of the swingiest ten minutes I've ever seen. I thought Stasis had it on lock. I thought Walking Ballista was gonna get there. That was just one of the most wild games I think I've ever seen. That was a wild game of Magic. I am so glad that the first time I ever got to sit down and comment on a game of Magic was, was that, that? I to hang out with you yeah. and watch that fucking thing. That. Oh my god. That, you know what? That was a perfect representation of, of drafting and playing with the St. Louis crew so far. Yeah. I mean, no, that that was... Present. Yeah. Um, I was just is, there this week, so... Wow, what a disaster. <laughs> I'm terrified already. So, alright. Alright. I'm going to tag out. Alright, we'll so be back much. in... Just a second, man. Thanks a bunch, Mason. Appreciate it. Well, that was something. <laughs> no, yeah. My my brain hurts for sure. Yeah, are you? <laughs> they sent you in here to, 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 to be in the booth after that, too. That's 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 like punishment at this point. Yeah, I'm going. fried. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's, that's... I don't... I don't even know what to ask you. <laughs> you have anything you want to say Just... to chat after that game? I am... Scared the whole game to tap out. Yep. I, you know, like I'm, I'm expecting him to keep trying to counter my spells, but then he just like starts bouncing stuff to my hand. Right, oh, man. It's I just unbelievable. I there were several times where I was like, oh, he's got it. I'm just gonna scoop. Like that's the end <laughs> of the game. Like I should just go. Right. And, that, and we get to the point where you know, like we're we're not playing comp Ariel. Like I'm. He's like, okay, can I actually think about this before I commit to casting this spell? Yeah. I'm like, all right, man, let's of course. Do, do your thing. Like, we're here to have fun. Yeah. Uh, and he takes it back and does it differently. Mm -hmm. When if he had done it the original way, <laughs> he would have won the game. I saw him doing that, and then he was like, wait, can I take that back? And I thought, but why? <laughs> why would you want to do it why? that way? And the answer is fatigue. <laughs> yes. Oh, We've been doing this for a thousand years, and yes. we're dead. Yes. <laughs> But you got there. I did. You lived. I am... It. It's a good thing that I attacked when I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, otherwise, I wouldn't have had that, that last-ditch effort to kill him just then. Yeah, there's a there's a lesson there about getting your beats in early. Yes. That I think people um, people need to learn. Let's see if there... It's, uh, no, any time... So I played Devoted Druid in Modern. That was... Right. That was my favorite deck to play. That was something that Jason noted when we were in the booth. He was yes. like, well, Alex, Alex leading into his strengths here. Yes. Um, and, well, a lot of people, like, different versions of the deck are more into the combo, and I always went a more, like, fair plan, so that if... I would always have a backup. Right. Because beats are a real plan. So you're you're very familiar with the need to just, like, get that damage in early in yes. case you need to go for the plan B. Yes. So your experience, your experience uh, yeah. led and, you to the right path there. Well, That's really and, cool. And uh, with a lot of my cards being combos with each other. You know, it's not just like these two cards combo, these two cards combo. It's like these three cards combo, combo all three with these three cards. Right. There's that So it's that. like I, I can just attack willy-nilly because I have backups to those combos. Right. So it, it made it a little easier. You don't mind if one thing dies because you've got a lot of that cross-pollinated synergy. Right. Exactly. That's really cool. And you've got, what, the finale of Devastation to kind of tie things together if yes. you need to. Yeah, if I do need to get there, yeah. Right. Not the green suns, either, because... Mason that was sniped that. up real quick, yeah. Yep. Yeah, he, he decided he really needed that. But you got the finale, which is good. Yeah. 
he's got the natural order. But yeah, you've got that that way to tie things together that makes things makes it makes it a, a little extra redundancy for you, right? Just for it, which is solid. Yeah. What does that What does that put your record at at this point? You are. I. Th- it's probably hard to remember. I think that puts <laughs> that was my third. I think that puts me two one. So you're in solid position still. I yeah. think I lost to Mason, but right. I don't actually remember. Yes, yes, I, I believe I believe I saw that happen. But yeah, because he he teched me for like forty five. He hooked yeah, you in game yeah, three, right? He did. Yeah, he hooked I saw me in game, game two, but and then I like I left, and then game three ended what seemed to be like an hour later because you were both just like drawing off the tops of your libraries for a long time. Yes. And this was off camera, of course. If Chad is 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 confused, uh, this this happened on the side, but. Uh, but yeah, that was a that was a long and difficult one. It seemed like, you know, there were there were cards. As as far as I understand it, there were there were a lot of things that you could have top decked that, that would have gotten you there, and he just got the hoof first. Yeah, you were halfway through your deck or something. Well, so far looking at everything, I don't think I have any particularly good like good matchups or like easy matchups or bad matchups. I right. think it's I think it's really just like uh, if I get there, I get there. Yeah, I I am just playing something very fragile, but. I do have a lot of backup, so there's there's a chance for me to get in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. You'll you'll be able to. Uh, yeah, you've you've got you've got a lot of good routes to uh, to to a successful VRD here. You, you like a, like we said, you drafted to your strengths, and you've got you've got a sweet deck. And uh, ah, yes, the graphic was wrong apparently. So so yes, you are. Yes, I uh, right about that. I actually came prepared this time, unlike last time I. Came in and just kind of had a, like a general idea of what I was gonna do, and this time I actually had a, like a whole list, and I drew up a. I had a. I had started to just. I had a huge list of cards that were like these all work really well together. Right. But then I had a separate list where like, it was twenty one cards, and it was well if whatever this card gets picked, I'll go to this list, and I'll just keep going down. Oh, okay, and so you had kind of like a dependency list. Yeah, going. that's really yeah. cool. And that's what I needed to be like my top picks. That's... And then after that, because I like I'm not doing something that like everyone's fighting for, like all the blue pairs were fighting over the blue cards. Right. You know, I'm playing a very a, a niche, easy thing to just grab a bunch of random cards. You're and in this no, other lane, right? Nobody's gonna hate draft me, so it was easy yeah. for me to just like willy nilly pick whatever. I, I think want. that's really that's a really interesting way to approach the format, having that having that kind of pick order, being being like, okay, when when this. You know, if if people do this, I'm going to move over here. If people do this, I'm going to move over here. There's there's so many different approaches to creating a pick order or creating a draft plan for the format. I think you've landed on something that that I think is is really innovative and interesting in that. Yeah, how many picks down was it before I started to actually pick cards to show what I was doing? Pretty like, far. I right? think it was like 14. Yeah, we didn't get to. We didn't really know much about what you were doing. Well, we thought we knew what you were doing when you, when you picked Luris. But then, then once you picked the Walking Ballista and the the Allosaurus Shepherd, we kind of had a better idea of what was going on, right? And then you then you came in with the Vizier and the Devoted Druid, seventeenth uh, and eighteenth. Yeah. And that was that was really what well, told us what was happening. I picked the Luris in case people started to do like a bunch of removal. In right. In case everyone just started to oh. grab a bunch of cards. Who do we? Who's playing? Jason, come back. Names need to be updated, but I don't know who's playing. <laughs> I don't know. I can't recognize everybody's hands on site, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to find out. Uh, Here, I'll go find out. Oh yeah, thanks. Good chat with you. Yeah. Well, if you want to commentate, you can come on back. All right. Well, we definitely have some people, but it's not Alec and Joe. I can tell you that for sure. We are at, le- at, le- at the very least. Alec is not here. Alec is here now. Dan, Andrew. Andrew on the left, Dan on the right. All right. <laughs> Mock Sapphire on the right. All right, let me get those files open. Uh, yeah, I was definitely a lot more excited to to do this one than the last one. Now that I actually know what I'm getting myself into. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't need records. Uh, let's see if we have that. I'll just delete that one. Yeah, I think that. That's one of those things about this format. Like the first VRD that you do is a lot harder than the second VRD. Like once you once you do one of these and you really have a good understanding of like, I, I feel like you can watch this format a lot and not really understand just how difficult preparation is. But once you start playing it, it's much much easier to understand. Like oh, there's a lot that goes into this. Well, at least in our our group d- uh, does a really good job of like our YouTube channel. Yeah. 
Um, I watched back some of the like some of the old VRDs, and then I also was watching like the. It was Stephen and Mark were doing commentary on like what to expect from the format, yes. what new cards are coming in, like. Uh, I especially liked the one where Steven talks about he compares it more to Commander yeah. than Vintage. It's a lot like competitive EDH, and then absolutely. Mark compared it to, what was it, Canadian Highlander? Yes. Yes, yes. those are both very good comparisons. Um, yeah. Dan is 1-2. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you, Kyle. And Dan over here on the right with the, uh, the, the Mox Opal, the Mox Sapphire, and the Lotus Petal, of course, rocking the metal craft right off the bat. Uh, versus Andrew, who's dropping Urza Saga here. Dan, I'm surprised to see Dan 1-2. His deck seems really resilient. It has a lot of uh, ability to just go off out of nowhere. Dan quenching that that uh, Mind Stone there. Yeah, Dan, Dan's deck, uh, he had a little bit of a misstep in round one, as I understand it. Yes, that was my matchup with him. Yeah, he he, he, uh, he tapped his... He, 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 he tapped wrong with his... With, with his Urza in some yes. way. He had an Urza in play and then tapped his Lion's Eye Diamond for a blue from mm -hmm. Urza because he didn't want to discard his hand, right. obviously. But come to find out, he needed the cards that weren't in his hand. He needed the mana, you're right. Uh, he needed yep. to do something else. Um, he was like one mana short on doing something. He, had, oh. he spun Urza, found a Wish on top, and then needed one extra mana to be able to, to win the game. Yeah, I remember getting to the table, and, and by the time I got there, he was just tanking on the Wish, and I was like, I wonder what's happening, and then he was like, I'm one short, so... Yeah, well, he had Wheel of Fortune and Windfall in the same turn, and every both times he didn't have, like, a Hole Breacher mm -hmm. in play, so mm -hmm. I was just getting to keep drawing cards. Right. And every time I look at my hand, and it's there's still three more combo pieces. Oh, yeah. And I was like, well, if you pass the turn, I win, <laughs> so can you pass the turn? Please pass the turn Please. so I can win this game! Please. Yeah, all, all of my games have been very grindy, very, like, gut-wrenching. Yeah, that doesn't, like, with, with, with the list that you have, that doesn't surprise me too much, right? Like, unless unless you just happen to not draw and assemble something insane right off right. the bat, and they don't have any disruption, you're going to have a long game ahead of you. Yeah, that's also why I kind of, why I was uh, very high on fast bond. Mm, it's because yeah. if I can play two combo pieces on my first turn, right, and just pass the turn, and they have nothing, and then I, I just win the game construct for Andrew coming off the Urza Saga here. So we're facing down a lot of mana from Dan in the form of Mox Diamond, Lotus Petal, some other sweet artifacts here. That little, that little slip of paper, I believe, is that Urza Saga construct. Yes. But uh, not a lot happening on the board here, uh, which doesn't really surprise me with these two decks. Andrew taking the really controlling route here, the Breeding Pool, uh, mostly for the Oko. And then Dan, Dan just looking to assemble his his death machine of artifacts here. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a, a grindy matchup. They're both going to have to sit back and just wait for their opening. Yeah. And uh, Dan in particular is is going to be pressured into trying to assemble some multiple spell turns, try to bait up out some counter spells from Andrew. But as he's a little bit on a, a head on mana, he's probably in decent position to do so. Looks like we've hit uh, chapter three of Urza's Saga here, and uh, we are. We're going to respond by making another construct or, or adding a mana. I'm not totally sure. It looks like adding a mana. That's kind of why I'm happy I, I went into the route that I went is because I get, you know, I have Allosaurus Rider, I have Prowling Serpent Part, and then I have, uh, what's the two white guy? I can't remember his oh, name. Oh, uh, Grand, uh, Grand Abolisher. Grand, Grand Abolisher. Like, I can just say you can't, you can't counter my spells, and they have all these dead cards in their hand, and, like, these guys have to actually battle it out. And I'm yeah. Like, all right, well, have fun, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew finds out he can't get Ancient Den because it does not have zero or one in the upper right. Can't get that with Urza Saga. Decides on the Manifold key instead. A little worse for him here. Not not the ideal item that he'd prefer, but uh, if he's got the Time Vault, then he's going to be in serious business. Of course, Dan does have a little bit of counter magic. He already fired off the Quench, but Rune Snag, uh, I think it's in his sideboard. Yes. Poor right? Miss poor no. Calc. It's in main deck. Yeah, miscalculation. That's a that's a real. That is quite the miscalculation. Indeed. Looks like we've got the uh, the portal art for sleight of hand here for Andrew. And uh, I believe that's the blue green pathway, the blue side of it. I don't know what the bark channel sure. bark channel pathway. I, I actually think that's Jory Isle, which oh, is the yes. the counter spell. That is a land. Ah, yes, because he does have the uh, the Jewari disruption, right? Yeah. That came in forty third pick or whatever, and we're gonna have the mystical dispute here 
on Hull Breacher, and Dan's got some thinking to do about this. He's going to throw that right in the graveyard and untap. Good way to try to spend some of Andrew's resources at the end of the turn here. Yeah, I mean, Hull, Hull Breacher is kind of just a piece of the puzzle, but there's so many other pieces. Mm -hmm. Kind of have him waste some stuff. I really like this iteration card. Expressive iteration is a fantastic card. It looks like we see uh, so Isochron Scepter, Muddle the Mixture, and Grim Monolith off of it here. Yeah, Expressive Iteration is one of the best uh, two-mana cantrip-type spells that has been printed in uh, quite a while. Obviously, they're a little bit off the one-mana uh, cantrips these days, but gosh, Expressive Iteration, if you can if you can pay blue-red, you're, you're doing a lot of work. One in hand, one on the bottom. Isochron Exiled, potentially, to be played. We'll see if Dan has the dramatic... Uh, dramatic... What's... The, I just know a dramatic scepter, right? Dramatic I don't remember reversal. What the, dramatic reversal, thank you. And it looks like we're uh, putting Muddle the Mixture on that uh, Isochron Scepter. Makes sense. Andrew's got a lot of instants and sorceries, and having a pseudo negate on a stick is going to be pretty good. Yeah, especially as a head on mana as he is so far. Yeah. Just being able to parlay that into some card advantage is, is pretty good. He's, he's likely to, you know... Even if he doesn't actually counter two spells with the the Isochron Scepter model, the mixture, the amount of advantage that he gets out of just like having that in play and forcing Andrew to play around it is huge. That construct still only a two-two over on Andrew's side, with the manifold key and itself as the only artifacts present. Just sort of sitting around waiting for something. But here's Ooh, Oko. Here is Oko indeed. You get an elk. <laughs> and you get an elk. Oh my gosh. Opts for the food token instead. I guess having a 3 3 is a little more important than. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Andrew realizes that if he sticks Oko and just sort of beats down, he may be able to beat down to the punch here. That's fair. But That's, it's possible I mean, that. Beats uh, are a real plan again. Oh, yeah. You, you know it better than a lot of people in this, that's, uh, in this draft. I, I mean, honestly, <laughs> that's why Oko is one of the more broken cards, right? Like, yeah. It's just a steady stream of beatdown creatures. You, if you can't stop all of these free 3-3s... Three it's disruption, and I, and I have the option of also being aggressive, and that is so important. Such a powerful card. We're going to see a turnabout from Dan. Not exactly sure what... Uh, what options he's he's exercising here, but I'm betting he's gonna. Well, he has tendrils in his deck, as we know. Yep. So if he can just play a bunch of spells. Yeah, he could just go off. Is he? You can't counter all my copies. <laughs> Andrew going for a lose focus here on the turnabout. No multi kicker, just just the uh, the rune snag, the quench option rather, and. Uh, Looks like Andrew has, has stopped the turnabout offensive for now. Man, Oko is just such a good card. He can he can threaten that uh, that scepter here as well. Really shut down uh, Dan's offensive. Or again, like you said, just make some 3-3s. Three Smash face. I mean, at this point, do you really need the manifold key? No, not just really. Just make a 3-3. Three three. At this, like, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that we're not, yeah... Creating a food here, or or like at least creating a food, if not if not elking up the the manifold key. Oh, I think giving him a three mm. three. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't like this either. Did he give him a three three? Yeah. See, it looks like it looks like we've turned Mox Diamond into an elk here. It seems like a mistake. Yeah. Maybe there's something in Andrew's hand that 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 would shed more light on this if we could see it. But on the board, this seems like. Exactly. It gives Dan a vector with which to combat Oko, and that's exactly what Andrew needs Dan yeah, not to have. And yeah. exactly what Dan's deck does not present at all, right? He's not attacking with creatures. No, not at all. I mean, aside from the occasional combat with uh, that one attack I think I saw very early on with, like, Urza and Hall Breacher, aside from that, he doesn't go to... He doesn't use the combat step. That's not for him. Oko okay, going to turn food into an elk and go ahead and cut Dan's life total in half. He's down to six. Probably going to leave Mox Elk back to block here. Mox Elk. <laughs> I mean, 
Wasn't it? I think it was like the Eternal Weekend 2019 Vintage Championships where somebody won with a a Black Lotus by attacking with their Black Lotus that had been elked, right? Like that just disgusting. brings me such joy. <laughs> <laughs> Mox elk is a thing. Yeah, it was. I think it was like I just attacked you with ten grand. How do you right. how do you like it? Yeah. And here's Lab Man here, probably coming down as Blocking Man, most likely here. Just ready to to absorb <laughs> absorb some damage. Put up a little bit of a wall for Dan while he tries to find his combo pieces. And that uh, that Mox Sapphire, uh, or rather that Mox Diamond animation looking less and less reasonable. Oh, interesting. I took the house keys, so my wife can't go, for, go shopping. Well, rip. <laughs> That's going to be difficult. Emily, if you're listening to this, just go ahead and order some food. <laughs> Looks like we are losing the lab man here, trading off for an elk down to three. Dan's in a tight spot. Unless he can combo off this turn, he's probably going to be in trouble. I don't know. Without the, uh, I mean, he still has Thassa's Oracle. Right. And he did. He have Jace Wilder of Mysteries. Or? Jace is in the sideboard, so okay. he won't have Jace this turn. Dan, of course, taking a look at Oko's minus five. Let's put Oko up on the screen. Where is? is aha! Here's you the exchange word. control. Some three or less. Yeah. Those are the only words I can remember. Exchange control of target artifact or creature you control and target creature and opponent controls with power three or less. Power three or less. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Dan is going to snap off Prismari command here. That's another interesting one. I do like that card. Yeah, it's got a shatter mode, right? Yes. So we've got two damage, uh, careful study, make a treasure token and shatter. So looks like we shattered some sort of artifact. And uh, yeah, Dan's bought a little more time for himself. We've got something. I can't actually tell what that, is that just a treasure? I think that's a I treasure. think it's a treasure, yes, it's a treasure token. It was destroy elk, get treasure. <laughs> Disregard elk, acquire treasure. The modes Dan has chosen for Prismari Command, and it looks like Looks like Dan's doing math, and that means he's got, well, either he's got something, or he's trying to figure out whether or not he's dead on board. You know, the the constant life of the Storm player. And yeah, we'll the see. option of having a wish board yes. is so nice in the combo deck. Yeah, when we were when we were here in the booth and, and wish got typed in, and uh, Jason was like, which, which wish do you think that is? Is that Cunning Wish? I said, no, no, no. That's Wish. Just regular just wish. wish. Everyone's favorite ninth level spell. Dan, of course, uh, doesn't need to sacrifice a 50,000 gold piece diamond or whatever the hell that spell requires in 5th edition. I don't know. Um, he just needs to pay 3 mana, but he's in the tank here. Uh, Listen, I'm sorry. If you get to the point where you can cast ninth level spells, you shouldn't need components. That's just me. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Wish is only verbal in 5e. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, he destroyed the construct, not the elk. That's what it was. It doesn't need... You don't, you don't need components for Wish in 5th edition? Wow. Wow. Well, you know, somebody... Nobody nobody tell me when I was 10 because I was uh, unable to cast Wish. My, my DM was cruel. He could have destroyed the elk. The elk doesn't stop being an artifact, does it? Uh... Loses all abilities and becomes a green elk creature? Does it stop being an artifact? I think so, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it becomes a creature, and it's not in addition to its other types. Okay. But he did destroy the construct, so okay. it's moot. Um, the food traded off with, uh, I think, I think Mox Elk, uh, if I recall correctly. It was something like that. Maybe it was a block with Lab Man and two damage or something. Mm, Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, you know what? That was probably what it was. It was the Lab Man and the two damage. We're doing a little math here. Dan's got that Lion's Eye Diamond. Three, just, four, five, six, seven. Just don't play Urza and tap it. <laughs> Thassa's Oracle. Dan's going to play Thassa's Oracle with not a lot of... Uh, That's a one, two. Here. 
classic, <laughs> classic Thassa's Oracle all by herself here. And we're going to see what Andrew has to say about that. If anything. Andrew, of course, with that blue-green artifact land in play for Modern Horizons 2. Uh, the Lab Man Block and Prismari Command happened in different turns. Well, who knows? Something happened. Cards were cast. It's been a while. It's been a long day. Let's see what Dan has going here. Dan's going to take a look at those top two cards here with the uh, with the Thassa's Oracle and then maneuver them in some way. Or Dan's going to read his own Thassa's Oracle because, well, he's not winning the game and now he has to figure out what the card does when he doesn't win with it. Because why would you cast this otherwise? <laughs> Looks at the top two, puts them back in some order. What does Thassa's Oracle do if you don't win the game with it? Gosh, it's been so long. One on top and the rest on the bottom in your in a random order. Okay, that makes sense. So Dan's still a little bit in the tank here, trying to figure out exactly how he's going to beat Oko. Oh, never mind. He's passed, and Andrew is tapping out. Oh, Our calls are complete. Just full cost. Just plays the whole thing. <laughs> of course, a, our, our seven mana, five, five, first strike trample. In this I heard case. Elk. Yeah. <laughs> Turn my key into an elk. Turn my key into an elk and bash, and it looks like uh, looks like this game has ended. Cauldra and an elk finish off Dan. And we're going to go to game two. That was the second time he's already cast Cauldra today. Is that, That's amazing. Is that it? Is that the end of the match? Do I not know what's happening? Oh, no, Jason's just bad. Jason's just bad? I just can't. I just can't always remember where we are. Thanks, Alec. How are things out there in uh, in tournament land? Oh, they were great. Three three Black Lotus did win Vintage Champs at Eternal Weekend two years ago. That's what I thought. I was right. Yeah. We yeah. did it. We that, got there. That that did happen. I was there for that. I don't remember much of that weekend, but that's part of what I do remember. I just remember it was LSV's pinned tweet for a while. Yeah. No, it, it was it was pretty good. I also got to see Rich Shea on Shops. Yeah, Batser Party Weekend. Yes. You, you remember Absolute Rage. That was <laughs> getting cheered on by the Escalade. Oh, my God. Um, that, I got to see one of my friends have Rich Shea scoop on turn one when Woo! Shea was on Shops. He was on the draw. Mm -hmm. My friend's on the play. He just goes, you know, Mox, Land, Pass. Rich Shea goes Workshop, Crypt, Monolith, um, Mox, Lotus, Walking Ballista, pass. Yep. And my friend goes, Hercules Recall. Recall. <laughs> he was like, okay. I was like, uh, yep. as, you, as you kept saying Artifact, I was yeah. like, I think there's one card that would yeah. be Yeah, it was, it was Hercules Recall, and then he played Spirit of the Labyrinth, I think. Ooh. So it was just like shut down from there on, and Rich Shea was just like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Rich Shea was like, I hate fair magic. Get yeah. me out of here. <laughs> I mean, that's a reasonable take. Who likes fair magic anyway? I'm, I, I, look, Winter Orb is a great card. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I think I, I think I missed that Eternal Weekend. I don't remember where I was. I think I was... Was I in Japan? Was that where I was? I don't know. Because I was, I was there the year before. I had judged one of those championships, but yeah. not 2019. No, 2019 you were not there, I know, for a fact, yeah. unfortunately. It was unfortunate. Cause I, it sounded like a good time. It was. Andrew opening, cracking open his promo pack here. We see the that baleful mastery. Yep. Uh, the folks at Realms of Gaming were kind enough to provide us with some promo packs here. Uh, so I want to make sure I shout them out. They've been very kind to us. And so, uh, you know, definitely check them out. They're great. <laughs> One of the best shops in the area, I think. Hercules Recall. Yeah. yeah. Hercules Recall. Yeah. You, gotta, you know, if you want to bounce all those artifacts, you've got to use those little gray cells. It's very important. It is. <laughs> Hercules Recall. How how are you supposed to pronounce it? I think it's I think it's her. I, well, look, I don't know. I've been Hercules saying, Recall. I've been saying Hercules since I was Hercules? like eight. Oh yeah, so I guess that I would no make idea. way more sense. 
Hercules. No, yeah. I'm, I'm all in on Whatever. Hercules Recall. I'm getting mine altered. Yeah. Next time I go to a next time I go to an event. A Hercule? Yeah, it's Hercule. You can say what you want. It's Hercule. <laughs> it's like you know, in in the same way that like nobody's really totally sure how you pronounce Mordenkainen. Yeah. Except for maybe Gary Gygax. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Which, yeah. You know. Mordenkainen's. I'm casting Mordenkainen's faithful <laughs> watchdog. <laughs> I'm in the tavern getting drunk! <laughs> oh my gosh. What a Her- classic. Hercules Rickle. <laughs> yeah, Her- Hercules Rickle. It's like Prowling Serpa Purd. <laughs> There's a lot of great card names. Yeah, there are. And and by that I mean they really... Uh, what What's the gibberish card from Modern Horizons 2 that's like every letter from the alphabet? Oh, Asmor, the uh, uh, Fantastic Car, or whatever. Yeah, right? no, it's it's Asmo. A, a card that many judges I know have like very fastidiously learned to pronounce, and I have said... Nope. Y'all got that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stay over here. <laughs> yes, exactly, K. Rick. Yeah, that thing, that's just Asmo. Yeah. That's all it is, it's Asmo. Yeah. Asmorin. Yeah, just the, uh, it's just Asmore, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's just, I don't, I don't need all that. It, it's, it's just not worth it. Look, I'm, <laughs> I, I keep, I keep most of Oracle in my brain. I don't need that one. No. That one's fine. I can, I can uniquely identify the card. I'll survive. Yeah. As, as long as I and my opponent know what it is and what it does, it doesn't matter. I've played, so, one of the transformative life experiences that I had was playing Magic in Japan. Mm-hmm. I don't speak a lot of Japanese. Yeah. And my opponents, you know, like English... Didn't is, speak a lot of English, yeah, necessarily. Yeah, English is taught to some degree in Japanese yeah. high schools. That's <laughs> why I don't got time for this. Exactly. Yeah. But, like, we were still able to play Magic, you know, even when my Japanese and their English didn't really connect very much. Because you knew what the cards yeah, did. And that's, yeah, you know... We both speak Magic. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about the game is that it's such a connective experience that you can just you can go anywhere and be like, look, you know, you point to a card, they know what it does, you know what it does, yeah. and you have you literally have a conversation. Yeah, and it, and it's just by playing cards and pointing at it, it's just incredible. I love Some it. Some of the most fun games I've ever played have been played in Japan against opponents where I couldn't communicate with them that yeah. much, or opponents who wanted who were like hyped to practice their English. Yeah. Spoiler alert: I've had a lot of fun in Japan. Yeah. As one does. So we've got a ponder off the top here from Dan, who I have to assume is hoping to rally here to a five-two. Yeah, Dan is Dan. Dan has had some had some trouble early on in this tournament. His deck is fragile. I yes. would say that is a good word for it. There's there's he's he's assembled a serious machine, but he it just doesn't always get there. But he's got looks like we've got breach, we've got dramatic reversal, we've got mana morphos in hand. We've got a lot of different tools. We've got to put them all together. And personal, personal tutor, tutor. is going to help him do that. Yeah. So what are we what are we fetching here? Is is he just going to go for? Oh, he pulled out a wheel. Yeah, I saw a wheel. But he then he gets rid of Underworld Breach, and I don't think that's worth it. No, that seems like a, uh, a you, better you, pill to swallow. It might be expressive. Nope, it is wheel. Okay. Oh well. Nope. 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 Twister. Twister. Smart. That's the better play, I think. Stronger maneuver. We're going to put Twister on top of our randomized library and pass the turn here. Andrew, after playing the uh, the Jwari Disruption land, whose name I totally know. Yeah. Jwari Disruption. <laughs> Jwari, Jwari the other the other Jwari Isle. Yeah. Ooh, Dan passing with no oh, other no. land. You know, of all the people to be short on mana, I didn't think it would be Dan. No, he does not need a whole lot to go off. No. That is very surprising. He's got that rune snag in his hand. Big oof indeed. Yeah. Is and we're on, we're on fairy three. Time Raveler? Nope. No, it's Archon of Emeria. That's actually <laughs> similarly damaging. Yeah, that's basically almost a game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's brutal. Oh, uh, losing two life at a time. Yeah, tu- tutoring when you don't have a second land does seem off. I think Dan... Seeing, it's possible that Dan seeing his his rough opener went for that tutor, just thinking, okay, if I it thins me out, maybe. If but I draw the exact card I need and then hit runner runner on lands, 
I can really get there, but it oh. looks like he's discarding Mana Morphos yeah. hand size, which is just a very depressing state of affairs. Yeah, so we, we are basically done here. Oh, that's Tap rough. Tap Watery Grave. Off the Polluted Delta. This is this is going to be hard to watch, folks. Yeah. You know, if you... If the you the have, good news is it's got to be over soon, right? I mean, Dan's got a scoop at some point. If you have small children, please find them some activity to do while while this game goes on, because they should not have to watch this. No, this is this is dangerous for anyone that enjoys <laughs> magic, because this, this isn't like... All right, as someone who plays Winter Orb yeah. religiously... At least you get to pretend you're playing magic. Yeah. But I don't games, think Dan's going to get to pretend. These games are the fun killers. These games are the games that make people take breaks from magic. And that, yeah. those, those always hurt me. Because, uh, because as my friend Eric likes to say, you quit when you're dead. Yep. But most people take a break at some point. And, uh, oh, we just played an untapped Hallowed Fountain. Untapped Hallowed Fountain. The old pop-up nothing here with the... Uh, the, the shock land discarding winter orb to hand size I feel like maybe Please. that should have gone sooner yeah unless he drew it this turn I think Archon he drew it this turn Archon of Amiria continuing to lay the beats yeah <laughs> and Andrew content to basically just play lands and do nothing yeah hey there's a second land we're we're in business now we if got Dan, if Dan can can unsummon the Archon of Amiria in some way he actually could assemble a winning line here he could but Andrew has six mana, presumably cards in hand, and counter magic available, and so he can just sort of out-muscle Dan. Yeah. Is Andrew actually 0-2? Uh, I believe so. Oh, wow. That's what I was told. Yeah, I would not have expected that. Mystical There's a mystical dispute. going to chew up that treasure cruise. And an opt. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to take a look. Okay. And swing, swing. It's good old early 2000s emo <laughs> for anyone that remembers All American Rejects. Power to you. I'm pretty sure There's that song option. actually was playing earlier today out there. Oh man, and I missed it. I'm I I remember singing along to it. Early 2000s power emo. God. Great. Oh, and there's a talisman. Okay, Tal so that's three mana. Yeah, talisman of creativity here is uh, if I'm. If I'm Andrew, I might, and I had counter magic, I might counter that. So that's an interesting uh, moment for Dan here. We might be... Uh... I think he may just be waiting to counter the twister, but I still... Uh, countering the talisman there permanently puts him off the twister. Rest in oh, peace. Oh, that's... No, knowing now... Okay, yes. that makes more sense now that he wouldn't counter the talisman. Right, you leave the talisman, you cast rest in peace, you try to make sure that that resolves, and then you... Yeah, Dan just passes. Yeah. He says, I, I can't with this. Yeah. Well, and Dan does have a rune snag in his hand, but mm -hmm. we know there's no protection. Yep. Like, he doesn't have the mana to actually use the protection. Skyclave Apparition going to chew up that talisman, and Dan's going to try something, at least. Oh, he's going to respond to the ability with Hull Breacher. Nice. He says, take take this rock. I no, I no longer need it. Yep. Or I'm going to play Mountain Wheel and hope you don't have it. Nope. We're going to play an Is It Signet? <laughs> or Is It Dancer? I'm just going to replace my rock with this other rock. It's it's a dragon rock. I think that's better than the, than the round one. Yeah, well, uh, unfortunately, it's not a dragon force here. He might be able to protect his various plays. No, unfortunately, it is not. And I think, you know, again, this is... Uh, this might be Scoopsville before too long. Oh, no, he's at eight life, so he's actually going to power it out here. And we've got yeah, Dan's, tapping three. What are we doing over here for Andrew? Dan's actually able to hang out and uh, trade off with the... Oh, it's Oko. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, ancient <laughs> Den has become an elk. Yep. And we're laying the beats. He can't block Skyclave Apparition. It has flying. <laughs> <laughs> Dan likes to go to one here. He's just going to make him do it. He's going to go for the twister now. I'm I'm Maybe going to not. win the game now. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to win the game. Dovin's veto <laughs> and flips the twister. Andrew, before... Dan taps mana and Andrew says, I respond with Dovin's, Dovin's veto. veto. Like, oh, rip. Yeah. All right, well, that is it. Andrew takes this one down. Yeah, Andrew is now one and two. Dan falls to one and three. That yes. is tough. 
which for those of you watching, there are no buys here. Uh, we play a round robin format, so everyone plays everyone. That just happened to be Andrew's third match. One of his matches earlier took a little bit longer. Uh, Reanimate is in fact four to one. It lost to Stephen Hagen. Oh really? Uh, That's Steven, right. Stephen steamrolled him in two, oh. assembling his two card combos with no disruption. I wish we could have seen that on yeah. stream. We could have got the uh... gotten gotten to see it. Okay. It was uh, Chain of Smog both times. Wow, Chain of Smog with yeah. Apprentice twice in a row. Second time was with Onyx, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Professor Onyx, I think, and I think that's, Professor Onyx is sort of the card that Steven most regrets putting in his main deck right now. He yeah. said, he was saying that he, if, if he could go back and do it again, he would probably put Questing Beasts in his main yeah. deck, just another I, way to compete on Again, board. I was surprised he didn't put Questing in the main, but I understand, although, you know, there's not, looking at the list, there's not a whole lot of disruption and removal yeah. floating around, besides what Steven has. Um, when Alec was in here, we were talking about just the importance of having a plan B, yep. and uh, B often stands for beatdown. Yeah. And in a format like this, you just saw Archon of Emeria do, like, 74 damage, I think, yeah. if my math is correct. Yeah, no, it, it was at least 74, yeah. <laughs> so, that's something to think about when you're, when you're participating in an event like this. Like, if you can get a creature on the board and attack with it and protect your board state, you can win with a two-power creature. Yeah, absolutely. That's just how this works. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the nice things about this format is you don't have, you know, four Tarmogoyfs to get access to. So yeah. if you, you know, sometimes you stick one and you just get it. Similarly, you don't have four Swords to Plowshares. I think You don't have four Paths. I think that's one of the reasons why Pack Rat has been such a great card for John Ryan. Yeah. Is he's just been able to really really outpower the removal in the format. Yeah, he said it's easily, it's one of every game. It's his yeah. best yeah. card in his deck by far. Yeah, it's a one-card combo. <laughs> yeah. It combos with cards in your hand. It doesn't matter what they yeah. are. Yeah, which incidentally I did have to mention that we will not be refunding entry for anyone that loses a game to pack right. <laughs> <laughs> this is not Magic Online, yeah, folks. Yeah, this, this is not Moto. We're not refunding you. I'm sorry, guys. Your buy-in is your buy-in. Oh, my God. The... <laughs> It's it's an old meme, but it checks out, folks. It's uh, it's, it's still rocking limited like nobody's business yeah. years later. So what a card! What an absolutely ridiculous card! All right, well we're gonna take a little break here. See what's gonna come up next on stream. We'll be back with you very soon. Don't go anywhere. Alrighty, folks, I am back with uh, Dan Zelinsky. Dan, that was a tough one to watch. Yeah, it was a tough one to play. Yeah, so uh, can I can I ask you a question about the uh, the personal tutor? Mm -hmm. What were what was the thought there? Because we were we were trying to figure that out that one. The um, line. Yeah, the casting it, I sort of tunnel visioned myself into. I meant to fail to find when I resolved mm. it. Try to not discard a hand size. Gotcha, gotcha. To keep him, and also he has a bunch of counter spells. Right, right, right. What right. I'm doing. But, see if he uh, can see if see if you can catch the counter spell on it. That makes correct. sense. Correct. And then okay. I just tunnel visioned into picking up the card. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. So I think we've all been there. So, um, as far as your, I mean, I don't, 
I I don't know if there's anything you do want to other else you do want to say about that match, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll I mean you know it was poor Mulligan decisions <laughs> that that happened. We that's all... that's one of the that's I think Mulligan decisions are one of the like most important and somewhat underrated parts of this of this format because the games are it's so important to assemble some sort of advantage in the early game mm -hmm. that you can then leverage into 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 winning that that I think if you if you make a misstep during mulligans it can be really hard to recover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The hand had turn one ponder mm -hmm. and the paradigm shift. Yep. And a counter spell. Right. So my thought was hitting a second land was kind of very important or you know one of my eight whatever right moxes or whatever and instead it drew nothing so yeah that come is... on cantrip didn't get there yep sometimes the turn one cantrip is not does, does not get there sometimes you get got but uh yeah that happens anything um so as far as uh the overall draft though oh. mm -hmm. so we are going to game two Ooh, okay Alec and Ooh. Hagen. all right looks like we are Wow. <laughs> that's, that's unbelievable. That's unreal. That's amazing. There you go. I actually have a game too. That's good. Yeah. So, trying to figure out who's on which side. Thank you. Like 2 1. Not 21. I mean, I don't know. He's a young guy. <laughs> Who knows? I'll be honest, I did not totally parse what Jason said. Uh, it was a game one ended for an, uh, turn one crop rotation to get a swamp to get a damn tutor out of forest. Oh. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. The, no, the bracket command, I see what Angus is saying. Yeah, unfortunately, our, our bot ninth seed is uh, absent this draft. Um, ninth seed will be back most likely for the... Uh, most likely for the next VRD, though I can't speak for uh, Mark's development process. I make I make no claim as to knowing exactly when it'll come back. You just talk smart about magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I talk about magic. I don't know. I don't know about the other thing. That's a you know nice of you to say, but eh. <laughs> I can sure talk though. That's what that's what I'm good at. So it looks like we we've got Steven up a game, really comboing out here, but uh, Alex got some serious two card combos himself as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, both their decks are real similar. Yeah. Because they're both uh, the green white kind of toolboxy, except for Steven's playing way more black stuff. Yeah. Also go along with that. Steven has the redundancy with the multiple combos and the tutors. Yep. Got it. Versus uh, Alec, who has the plan B of just B is for beatdown. Mm -hmm. And that's been very successful for him today. He won a real close one off just knowing when to attack, when to get a little extra damage in today. And mm -hmm. that's been that's been a big deal for him. He beat a <laughs> he beat some wild stasis nonsense that way. Mm -hmm. And that was a pretty big deal. So we'll see if he can uh, attack his way out of this one, though he is mulliganing down to six. And that's uh being down a card in a matchup like this when you're when you're trying to hit those those two card combos is a little bit of bad news, although the London Mulligan does help Alec find those Vizier of Remedies devoted druid style combos. Very powerful, that London Mulligan. Uh, extremely so. Big change to the game. Really, uh, really allowed allowed Magic to become centered around those like headliner cards, those those, those very powerful cards. Uh, in a way, making all Magic slightly more like Commander, which of course <laughs> is how everything should be. Alec with the turn one Temple Garden into Noble Hierarch down to 18 himself. Let's see what Steven can assemble. Yeah, that mulligan was especially rough on a. Hopefully, because Stephen is packing the swap of swath of uh, discard spells. Yeah, Stephen does. Even though Mason did n nab the thought season Inquisition, Stephen has sort of the second tier of discard spells here, mm -hmm. and could potentially rip apart Alex's hand. He also has the hymn to Turok. Yes, that's. Oof. Ooh, Alec uh, assembles Vizier and Carrion Feeder quite early. Which says if he's got kitchen finks, he might be able to gain quite a lot of life. Although Steven dropping the cursed totem down Ooh. early here, let's get that on the board. 
Steven says, your activated abilities are not. <laughs> they <Yeah>. don't. <laughs> that's a really solid hate card against mm -hmm. these. Of course, this is game two. Steven does not main deck the Cursed Totem, but it has come in all out of the sideboard. Steven decided he'd rather have it in the main deck than try to get it with his Karn, because, of course, he'd rather get Lattice. Mm. Oh, for sure. Yeah, Steven's deck having a pile, just also having a pile of uh, real targeted hate cards mm -hmm. on top of his, you know, main deckable ones as well. Indeed. Alex sends in for three. As his creature's largely reduced to a pile of raw stats, he says, well... If you can't, if you can't combo, time to beat down. Yeah, if you can't beat them, beat them. <laughs> uh, that is a bitter a, blossom. It's a pretty good one to. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's uh that dragons of Tarkir hate card whose name I forgot. Oh man, yeah. That weird one. Display of dominance is the name of uh, that card. <laughs> okay. Well. Alec, trotting out the the oft-forgotten display of dominance to destroy target blue, blue or black non-creature permanent. Chewing up that Bitter Blossom and bashing in for three here, dropping a Viscerous Seer, a classic 1-1 one, one for one. Yeah, powerful, powerful 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Not the smallest thing on the board. No, no, the 0-1 uh, the Noble Hierarch still, uh, still outstrips that. Speaking of strip mine... We've got a decision for Steven here. Does he destroy the white source or the black source? Viscera Seer of the Pearl <laughs> Tribe. Very nice. <laughs> when in doubt, kill the untapped land. Alec taps it for something. Mon's Viscera Seer. Wow, John Whoa. Ryan up to five and one. He is just crushing it. Cruising for a repeat. Yeah, he's pretty good at this format. We're going to need to get a lane back in the country. <laughs> She's uh, she's our she's our, our only two-time champion, but John Ryan is is trying to challenge for for uh, at least a share of that title. He wants that seat one win. That's right. We've never had a seat one win here at St. Louis VRD. Mm -hmm. Oop, Assassin's Trophy, and after the Worldly Tutor results. Oh yes, that's a good one. Shuffling away, Alex chosen card there. I didn't know they printed a black and green counterspell. <laughs> <laughs> well, effectively, that's what we got here. Alec tutors up the planes, of course, to replace that fallen temple garden, but he's still got a decent amount of beats on the table, and by that I mean he can attack for two. Steven, really, at 14? Yikes. Hey, he's, he's been attacked for... That uh, Vizier, or Vizier of Remedies was yeah. getting in there. Just, just bashing. Steven down to 12. Luris of the Dream Den coming down. Oh, yeah. Luris. The non-revealed, non-companion Luris. Yeah, that's amazing. Alec just just putting that in his deck. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty good here. It's, it's a powerful 3-2 lifelinker. Steven with Liliana of the Veil, although... Noble Hierarch yeah. gets sacrificed, and Liliana is going to meet the business end of one of these sacrifice outlets here. One of these Pearl Tridents, as they were referred to instead. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just need to attack with creatures. John Ryan's last match is going to be with Alex, so John Ryan literally speedrunning this tournament. <laughs> Jeez. Alec bashes in for four to the face, and one, two. Liliana gaining three here off that Luris. Life total slightly obscured here. We'll have to work on that in a minute. But Elves of Deep Shadow coming down for Steven. A solid blocker. Does trade off, I believe, with Vizier of Remedies being a 2-1. No, yeah. And Absolutely. Notably, Loris is not an activated ability. So. <laughs> yeah, that is interesting. Just playing that Goblin Piker from your graveyard. And that, I believe that's Scurry Oak there. That's a Scurry Oak. One of our new cards from Modern Horizons to combo as well with Alex Ivy Lane Denison to create an arbitrarily large number of squirrels and one very big scurry oak. Also Deep Shadow trades off with the Vizier of Remedies. A couple of creatures make their way in. Noble Hierarch comes on back from the graveyard with Alex Spare Mana and Steven scoops it up. We are going to game three. Game three. Ooh. I like a game three. Yeah, it always always feels 
You, know, you feel cheated on games too. Yeah. You can't talk about stuff. Yeah, exactly. You get you get you get that extra game where it's all on the line. You know, every everything is there. You, you know, you you have to play this game right. And there's always something interesting to talk about. These folks, of course, have already sideboarded. Probably going to leave their configurations at least mostly the same. Though, I'm I'm betting Alex, the type of player, will t at least take a look. Mm -hmm. I can hear Steven shuffling. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I can hear that riffle. I mean, when you're playing with cards from, you know, 93, 94, yeah. like, you got a riffle shuffle. You really want to mash those up real just good. Just jam them. Hopefully on the pavement of some sort of playground. Oh, yeah. No, I've... I've whew, you should see some of my dual lands, man. <laughs> I have a bayou that I won playing for Ante at summer camp. It is nasty. Mm, that is a... That, that's a story. <laughs> I used to play that Bayou in Legacy just because it was the spoils of war. Oh, yeah. It's like a duress and a soul ring in Steven's hand along some other stuff. Got the, that. Uh, everyone, every Legacy player's favorite words uh, sleeve playable. <laughs> <laughs> I, at so many tournaments, I've been asked, hey, Eric, can I play this card in this tournament? And the card is like missing two corners and held together with tape. And I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> but they'll try. Of course they'll try. It looks like that's the the divest. Yeah, it's despise the creature or planeswalker. Ah, it's despise. Song. Yes. So hitting oh, yeah. Luris, strong choice. Then we're gonna duress you right after. No big <laughs> deal. Just chew up that finale of devastation, leaving. Oh, heroic intervention. Move those up. Bless you, Alec. Heroic intervention. Ronus the Indomitable. Carrion Feeder and this Windswept Heath revealed in hand. But Alex still has Noble Herrick and he can still attack. That's what it's all about sometimes. That's what it came down to last game. Oh yeah. Cursed Totem was not enough. Which really impresses me. Just, you know, you play that sometimes you play that hate card and you think, I've got this, right? It hurts. It hurts when you're wrong. <laughs> That's a Kitchen Finks resolving? For yes. Us. The mighty Kitchen Finks. Ah, uh, yes. That's going to be quite the object for Steven to contend with. He won't be able to one, win, one for one with that super well, so he's going to need to find a way to combo off here. He's going to be under some serious pressure. Of course, Dark Depths. What's the way to get around it? Yeah, we've got, uh, of course, 10 ice counters here on that Dark Depths, but uh, Steven's not going to bother representing that. He knows he's not going to pay 3,000 mana to summon Merit Lage. Is, it, is that right? Is it? It's about 3,000, right? Somewhere uh, around there? You know, yeah. Uh, I think we can confirm that. Yeah. It, well, it used to be less, but, you know, interest rates have really changed. <laughs> Mox Pearl for Alec. Notably, the Mox Pearl that was, in his mind, supposed to be a Mox Emerald. Yes, yes. <coughs> mm, pardon me. Oh, yeah. It was 30,000 now. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Yeah, I forgot about those pandemic prices. Five, six. Well, Dark Depth, is there... Oh, is there a Yavi Maya or Erborg I guess sometimes? there's an Erborg... Oh, they're catching it. Yep, okay, the yep. Nope, nope, nope. Classic there we Dark go. Depth there is we not go. a land. It's Dark a Depth... <laughs> it is a pretend land. Dark Depth makes just about as much mana as Maze of Ith, of course. Mm -hmm. Classic combination. With uh, Erborg for just that reason. Oh, yes. Also notably, doesn't come into play tapped. Yeah. Dark, Dark Depths. <laughs> Dark Depths comes in untapped, so it can do nothing. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. I just learned that. I just would have assumed this thing comes <laughs> into play tapped. Yeah, it, there's a certain threshold, right, where if a land has a certain number of words on it, it has to, it legally has to come into play tapped. <laughs> Those yeah, are the rules. This was a callback, of course, out of Ice Age that, uh, <laughs> you know, they were just going off their old... Their old mentality. Right. Well, I mean, if it doesn't come to play untapped, then it probably gets a depletion counter or something. You know. Ronus the Indomitable coming in. Nobody drafted Lava Tubes in this draft. Very disappointing. There's six mana. All right. So now we might see Professor Onyx here, but now that oh, Steven has access to Blue's time... Yes! There we go. This card has been... Seemingly better and better in these Eternal formats. Yeah, it's really amazing just how much value you can get for two mana here. But Alec can pop off that Heroic Intervention. 
That Ooh. was lovely. As we know, uh, token deck commander all star. <laughs> yeah, they they keep printing heroic intervention. And it just continues to hold the value at like <laughs> six to ten dollars because like everyone needs this card. You can't not play it. Alec doing a little Ronus related math. Looks like it's we're getting an activation. Activation, I believe, on Kitchen Finks to make Ronus get up. Huh? But Steven um, says. No, because he. Ronus. He must have targeted the. Uh... Oh, he did. There it goes. Yeah, it has to. Oh, it's four or greater. Yep. Okay, there it goes. So he targeted the carrion feeder. Yep. And then sacks the noble hierarch, and we are attacking for. To get that four. A lot. A lot of damage. That's a big number. A certified million. Yeah, Ronus is. Especially in a format like this. Woo! Yeah, big beat. It's, there he goes. Yeah, and, and uh, the beats take the game down as Alex secures this one with just a huge attack featuring Ronus the Indomitable. He moves up to 3-1, and one, and Steven unfortunately falls to 2-3 and three with this uh, two-card Monty deck. Alex to 2-2. Two, two. I don't think that's... Wait, what? Did, what? Yeah, it should be... I think Alex to 3-1, right? Wait. Because he said he was 2-1 and one beforehand, right? And he just won. What do I not know? Uh, Steven just lost. Right, okay, that's what I thought. No, 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 I know why Steve, we know why Steven lost. Okay, I was just, I was just, Kyle and I were having a back and forth about what Alex's record was, but it's all yeah. good, we got it all figured out. So now we have John Ryan Hamilton coming in for his final match. Oh my gosh. Ooh, yeah, that should be so exciting. So John Ryan, let me just update that, and then I will. He's doing pretty good. Uh, uh oh, did I lose the assets? Aha, good. Okay, so player right, and of course that's. And then I will. Yes, I would love a break, but I'm just going to update John Ryan's record here. He is five one. Yeah, that John. He's he's quite good. He keeps winning magic. He sure does. Very impressive. Bring two buzz Budweiser, like, says Mark. Good call, good call. All right, I'm going to step out here, and it sounds like Mark's going to come in, and uh, Steven as well, and uh, from me and Dan, we'll, uh, we'll see you around later. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Sorry for the... For the uh, the swapping of headphones, uh, Stephen Hagen is going to be in here in a minute to help tell us about what's going to happen in this next match, which is Giant John Ryan Ham John Ryan Hamilton's final match. It is. So we're going to have John Ryan versus Alec. John Ryan coming in with a five and one record, and Alec coming in with a three and one yeah, record. So I am Ryan's only loss. That's right. Starting off this match, 0-0. Zero and zero. Uh, So John Ryan is obviously the person to beat, right? Yeah. Uh, coming in with a reanimator strategy. The card that he is most confident in, which is the reason why he is, feels very good about this matchup, uh, he basically said he was uh, he felt like everybody in the field was cold to Iona other than two people. Yeah, there's one, the deck with Ono, or with Oko, because it had Oko and then other ways to remove. Mm -hmm. But like everyone else... Uh, I don't know who the other one is, but like, yeah, I mean, my 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 removal answers. I have I had some because I have sack outlets. I can make them sack it, but if if I have a walker on the board already, but that's it. So Alec, if if you're Alec and you're walking into this matchup, how can you beat Iona? You hope he doesn't get that part. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess so, right? He, I mean, he, Alec's he really got. Is... Um, I mean, you you get what you do is actually actually you know. Uh, you get a quick board state, right? Like you get if you get Vizier and uh, Devoted Druid down early, mm -hmm. and that way you can draw later into you know an infinite. You just need to get the quick board state. He's got hang about hang or he's got um, walking ballista. Yep. And he's got uh, Dru uh, uh, Duskwatch recruiter. So he's got green. He's got colorless. I'm trying to think if he has another infinite mana. Yeah, I don't see one. Looking through like a scurry oak. Right, like yeah, um, 
It's Chatterfang's out, but that's... Um, so yeah, I mean, Scurry Oak goes, that's green. That goes infinite with um, the... Um, Card that he drafted right after it. Oh, um, hold on, I need I need information. This is oh, this is the Abraxas ale. Okay, yeah. we we're obviously as tradition in vintage history draft. We're all enjoying lots of beverages. This Abraxas is incredible. It's like dragon's milk level of creamy and really just a nice beer. Yeah, Abraxas is a fantastic uh, seasonal limited release from perennial artisan ales right here in the St. Louis area. Definitely check it out. Got it. All right, yeah. So perennial interesting flavor. Perennial seasonal ale. Uh, from St. Louis, yeah. and yeah, it's it's really nice. It's creamy. It's uh, it's dark. It has a lot of like the nice things I look for from the porter. Yeah, they're good to go. Yeah, yeah it looks so, like I mean, they're his, waiting on us and Al starting right now. Alex's answer has come down quick. I mean, yep. that's what he's got to do here. Um, and I mean, it can definitely happen. I mean, I saw John Ryan stall out against me. Um, you know, in two games. All right, so it looks like he's opening with the Birds of Paradise. That's a good start. Yeah. Obviously, like this since 1993 has been a great opening start to the game. Uh, and we'll see if he can follow it up. Uh, John Ryan's here with a tap land. That was pretty common. He didn't against me. He didn't, you know, he was not fast in any, unless he had to turn one dark writ, you know, into shenanigans. It's pretty expected. Yeah, he has dark writ, and he also has black lotus, so obviously he has right. a few avenues yeah. into fast mana, but um, overall it seems like his deck is, I mean, not fair, right, but it, it certainly is an A plus B deck right. uh, that has lots of avenues into both, but doesn't try to, like, push really hard fast. Looking forward to the board. Does Alec have any... He doesn't really have any... Uh, he didn't get rip. Um, Alec's deck, like many Mormon of the Shaman. decks... But that's... He actually, yeah, he, he just drafted so many cards that could be main deck cards. Yeah. Um, this is the problem I think we see a lot with people in this format is, uh, especially early on, it's really hard to know how many main deck cards versus sideboard cards you should have. Yeah, I think I did that very well this time. That was mm -hmm. one thing, you know, I said I, I have some, some critiques of my deck and I'm two and three to reflect that. But, uh, you know, I, that is one thing I think I did very well, which I haven't done in the past, is I, I knew what was going to be main deck and uh, within reason. Sure. And I knew it was going to be sideboard. And okay, and a lot of Mari's call from Alec. Yeah, so this is what he needs, right? I mean, this is 100% what he needs, where he's just going to get Vizier, the pieces, I assume? you know, which I know, it depends on what he has in his hand, you know. Sure. Does he have one of the other pieces or not? Yeah, John John Ryan, I would have expected him to have some some play prior to now. This indicates to me he has some kind of instant speed in turn two, but his deck is I mean, really so low got, to the ground. He's got Fluster Storm, and he's got... Um, Spell Pierce, I think. He's got a couple. Yes. Collective Brutality is really good here, I mean, in this matchup for him, because he can, um, you know, pitch a card, and he doesn't have a lot of ways to get him back, and he can also kill a creature. Um, so but, like, both of those cards he would have played already, right? There's no way he allows a lot of Mario's call to resolve. I think, yeah, yeah, I, well, yeah he didn't have that. But, I mean, I think the, the Collective Brutality, you, he, unless you think he's, I mean, he's, he drops a Devoted Druid. That's a one of the problems with that combo, is it's got to go the next turn. True. Right? So, if he, you know, he drops it, then... You can do that the next turn and, and save it. You're, you're definitely not wrong. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I expected to see John Ryan having some play by the end of his own turn two. Right. Okay, so a Vizier comes down on turn two. Uh, presumably a Devoted Druid is soon to follow it up. As a uh, safe hold elite. Safe hold elite? It's just another sack one with that can go okay. you know in and out or whatever. This is one that I had to print, and we definitely didn't have in, but yeah. okay, it's a sack outlet. Yeah. Or a sack. Not outlet, but it's a card right. that can be sacked. I don't know what... That's actually kind of a weird one, because I really don't know what is he coming in and out with it. You know, what what is... The, he doesn't have a lot of things that the trigger coming in and out does. So it, it can block it perpetually, which isn't bad. I mean... Yeah, it's a weird one, because I don't think... This doesn't see play in modern either, right? I don't think so, but I could be wrong on that. Interesting. And that's such Yeah, I mean, if he had with. like a, an altar of the brood where you can just sack it and then. And this is a Shadowmore card originally, right. so. But yeah, he doesn't even have a sack outlet. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of sack outlets in the deck. He's not running Yogg. Right. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. Um, this this is an interesting card. Obviously, persist is good yeah. in this deck, but like it's a beatdown. I mean, and that's what he how he got me and how it got me in the two games he got me was just a beatdown. Yep. And I mean, he's he's holding a three-one record. He's not doing badly. No. 
this is just an interesting card for a format where we're used to cards that end up winning the game when they resolve. Right. This card feels like a very or setting up a win shortly after. Right. Infinitely large carrion feeder or stacks of deck. Ah, uh, that's what we got the carrion feeder. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, but both Thanks, those, the, these are both like three card combos that. Um, but that's what that deck is. I mean, that's what it was for me in three, and that's why I didn't end up liking it. Was that's it was, reasonable. It was so many. That deck all involves three card combos. So what's happening here? It looks like he may have just unmasked himself. Is that right? Probably, and masked yeah. himself into a Grizzle Brand into an exhum. An exhum. Okay, so there's a Grizzle Brand in play. And uh, drawing seven. Much lower life total. Yeah, I was speaking to John Ryan before this match, and he was kind of like, "Yeah, I have Grizzle Brand, but really, I feel like I need to resolve Iona." Oh, he's going. He's drawing fourteen. He's just and all in. I just, what's the point in drawing fourteen cards when you can just prevent your opponent from ca from casting eighty percent of their hand? <laughs> and I'm like, that's a reasonable reasonable opinion. But yeah. Okay. So Black Lotus. Mm -hmm. Good start. Good start. Yeah, John Ryan's. Uh, John Ryan's draft was really interesting. It seemed like I know initially he was planning on dropping out of Doomsday. Right. He uh, he audibled really well. Yes, absolutely. No, he saw that the reanimator line was completely open. Right. And leaned hard into it. Um, and this is, I think shows this draft in particular compared to the last five drafts we've done. Uh, people really did leave themselves really wide open. They didn't have to lock into a strategy early. I also think that like a lot of people, uh, I mean, you don't see a ton of graveyard hate in here. I feel like uh, a lot of people have kind of disrespected Reanimator. I don't think it's had the showings in our last couple that it could. The, the first two, Reanimator was the best deck in the format. Yeah. Um, regardless of whether it won or not, I think Blyden ended up taking second in the first one, and it Reanimator took second or third in the second it one. Did not, no, top three was Infect, me, and then Grixis. So, okay. In the second one. Yeah, Re Reanimator did, no, did well. No, because Bree messed up Reanimator. In the, that's in the right. One. There, there was, yeah, yeah. The, that's right. Okay, so a Thought Erasure is coming down. Um, try to clear out the hand. Yeah. Looks like we have a Yavamaya, a big dinosaur, and, and a, a Carrion feeder. feeder. Yep. So he's got the Carrion Feeder infinitely big, right? You know, yes. It's gone now. It's not a big dinosaur. It's a Finale Devastation. Yeah, Finale Devastation feels like it's very strong on its own, right? Like, presumably he can find something to combo yeah. off there. Uh, assuming he, oh, well, he has a Galvamaya in hand, so the next turn he can draw into Devoted Druid. That's not good enough on his own because he doesn't have Concordant Crossroads in play yet. Yeah, Iona's in but play. But there's Iona. Iona. Yeah. That's the end of the game. Um, I yeah. spoke to Alec beforehand as well, and he was basically like, yep, if Iona comes in, I need to scoop. So, obviously, not going to do that right away. Going to see if he can And Alec just doesn't have a lot of answers him. anyway. I, I think the Grizzle Brand was already over. I mean, Alec had to win uh, at that point. Alec had plenty of infinite outlets at that point yeah. um, that could just straight up win the game. Uh, even if it's two or three turns later, Grizzlebrand right. doesn't kill that fast, but well, the, obviously Grizzlebrand well, unlocks Yeah, because it can get next. Feeder out of the yard, so, right. but he still has to be able to swing with it. So that's a tough call, again. Like, you have to, he doesn't have like a cordon crossroads to... Right. That is the power of Finale, is it can get it out of the yard as well. Hmm. Yeah, actually, let's pull up Finale a minute in here. Yeah, I mean, and Finale's so strong because it, it is a deck search or a graveyard search, you know, so it is... <laughs> finale of Evastation. Yeah. So, so yes, it's obviously like a very powerful card. Um, it's not very powerful when you can't cast green cards, however. Right. Which is, I assume, what it's named on. Yep, there it is. So are there any of these decks that you feel like really cannibalized your own? Um, I mean, I only lost, so I mean, literally I, on my it walking in list, which even it itself had its flaws, uh, I lost Thought Seize, I lost Green Sun, and so I didn't actually lose a lot. I feel like the story of this draft is really how, uh, first of all, everyone stayed open, but second of all, how black cards actually got the respect they deserve. Yeah. I feel like most of the time black cards, uh, specifically the black discard cards, get drafted in, like, the 7th to 10th position, and this time they got drafted in the 4th to 5th position. Uh, and that just really, like, changes up the way the whole game draft happens, where if you have four players in draft like we have today, it just ends up with a very different experience than if you have one to two players in black. So in hindsight, uh, which is always, you know, 2020, where I go Veil, Abrupt, Ignoble, uh, then Assassin's Trophy, where I grab my second color, Right. I should have audible. That should have been Swords, Solitude, 
Um, yeah, white was very open. Prismatic Vista, and I should have gone uh, black white at that point. All right, it looks like Alex giving that one up. Uh, understandably, that was when the Iona is down with no pressure on board. It's really hard for him to continue. So we have John Ryan up one game. Uh, we'll see if he's able to continue that that magic. Yeah, Mason was going to do something else, and then he he ran off of it. Like you know, and it makes sense. He grabbed the thought seeds early. I I regret I. I I could have. I think I could have got the seal that, like later, and then you know probably the next round or whatever, and got the thought seize there, and I almost did that, but I went ahead and went to my double tutor. Um, so he grabbed the thought seize and the Inquisition, and then you know he saw the writing on the wall and kind of got scared off of it. So. Sure, no, that makes sense. sense. You know, I mean, I think that's the that's a skill that's important. You know, I came in. Hope I had a you know a couple other lists that involved Narset, and then when when I saw everyone with blue and Narset gone, I was like, well, I'm just going to kick out that list and go to this other one. Yeah, and I think that's the the strategy I see a lot of people with, where they walk in with a deck they want to draft as opposed to a collection of decks, yeah. or maybe they have a draft per, a deck per seat, uh, and kind of the assumption being that you can audible into different decks based on the seat you're in. Uh, but it's really just difficult to to do that, right? Like your seat is less important, I think, overall than the, like, topology of the rest of the draft. Right. So Angus has a and great question about opposition agents. Yeah, talk it about has that a little been bit? not great for me. Uh, it's not been a bit bad. Either. I mean, I, I've got some stuff. I won a game off of it. Um, the, the thought was, I think the card's super powerful. Um, I think the card is going to do really well in the format. And it, with those newer cards, I, you just, I don't know, you don't know where they're going to go or what other people are valuing it. I know I wanted it in my strategy, um, and looking at my list, I thought I could get most everything I wanted um, and still grab it. Whole Breacher went in round two, which is where I expected it to go. So I was worried that since that was there, that someone else would was going to be eyeing it. And I went ahead and wanted to grab it there. Um, it was early, I think, in hindsight. Uh, back in our preview shows, I think we said it probably finished like in the top 10 picks. I, I definitely could have floated it down to there. Yep. Um, the other thing is, is I think in my head, because I especially because I do the preview shows, I'm much more up on what the new cards that are in the format than a lot of other people. So I end up overvaluing them. Agreed. Sometimes that pays off in VRD two, where I grabbed Karn Narset as I, I drafted Lotus first pick, and then on the wheel I grabbed Karn, uh, Narset and Karn, and that obviously paid off. And now Narset is I actually almost picked Narset in front of Soul Ring uh, uh, in the first round this time. That would feel incredibly wrong. It would have. I, I that's why like, I didn't do it. So okay, Soul Ring before we start match. Uh, okay, I, I do want to hear about the commentary about Soul Ring because so, I feel like Soul Ring is the wrong pick in that position. But I, I understand that you feel differently. I'm fifty fifty on it now. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I, I not. I, I don't necessarily think it was the wrong pick, but I don't necessarily think it was the right pick. Um, my idea was that I Soul Ring gives me the power to turn to a like a grief, um, sure. and I, you know I think in the most games Soul Ring's probably better than like Lotus, right? Uh, in my deck now, in hindsight, the ability to um, jet swamp double discard first turn or jet swamp him first turn, I would have wanted that. So sure. I don't necessarily think it's the wrong pick overall. I think Sol Ring's probably better than Moxus a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily think in this deck it was. So here's a great thing that I have to point out before we get into the match, which is that Thoughtseize and Inquisition of Kozilek were picked third and fifth, and both are sitting in Mason's sideboard. Yeah. And I think that's just a a, a realization that Mason had to fly over into Elves uh, after Black ended up being so cluttered up. Like, it, it seemed like Black was a generally a pretty safe color, uh, and in this case, it was not at all. But okay, Alec is starting off nicely with an op with a noble hierarch, uh, unlike your ignoble hierarch over there. Right. Um, however, John Ryan is responding with a faithless looting, presumably dropping in an Iona and something else. Let's see what. I think I see a splash of white in his hand, but we'll have to see what actually drops into the graveyard. Yeah. So I don't necessarily think my soul ring was the wrong pick. Um, Makeshift yeah. mannequin and island. Yeah. That's okay, not... so nothing matters. I've only seen Maker of Mannequin in the graveyard. Have we seen that card resolve yet? Nah, I made him discard it, I think, so okay. I don't... Yeah, I've not seen it. Uh, interestingly, the the uh, Giant Killer is a is a promo that we have here sitting uh, in the booth that has been a tradition at the Vintage History for one draft year, here, for one draft. <laughs> uh, where the winner of the previous draft win losing a match first on camera. On camera, because I took him down, but yes. not on camera. But losing a match on camera, uh, the loser has to sign the giant killer over to the new player that kills them. 
Uh, so we'll see if Alex is able to pull that feat out. Pull that fate off. John Ryan otherwise is going to go undefeated and remain the giant for next. So match. He's going to get two counters in the deck, or two counters in the deck. So Shepard's not great here, but you know I don't sure. know what he had on the board for. That yeah, Alasor Shepard is a, is, a, is a new exciting card though. I really do love that. Yeah. That card kind of following the tradition of Guy's Herald and many others. Like obviously it would have been much better in Mason's deck. You know. Oh uh, yes, for sure. Um, being an elf on its own is incredible. But. Uh, what is that white card that's down there at the bottom? Uh, Ranger Captain of Eos. Oh, so, this is the one that can fetch others. Yeah, so it fetches the one drop, a single one drop. So it's not, you know, the other, for Ranger of Eos to fetch two one drops, it fetches a single, but you can also sack it to make it where they can't cast non-creature spells during right. that during that turn. Mm -hmm. Which is good in two ways, right? Because most time you think about you're going to use it defensively, yep. where you're going to be protecting yourself. But there are times where I know they're going to combo off, and you sack it in the upkeep before you, you're pretty sure he's going to exhume this turn, you sack it to stop him from, you know. Sure, yeah. Yeah, John Ryan has a pretty anemic start this game, actually. I mean, I said that last game as well, to be right. fair, and then he ended up crushing the game indisputably. Uh, we'll have to see what happens with whether Alec is able to actually establish a connection that deals damage, right? Like, I feel like Alec is very good at building to the combo relatively quickly on, like, turn four or turn five, uh, but he is not great at actually establishing winning lines without the combo, and that's the thing I want to see from this deck. I agree with you on that. I mean, I think he easily could have... He's got the sources and DRS, which I wanted. I think he easily could have gone for the Thought Season there and, and, and probably is right in the long run. Uh, Angus, yeah, the... I don't know. I'm one that's like more down on Time Walk. I, I think that in the right decks, it is phenomenal. Um, I actually really like it in John Ryan's deck because it's cheap enough that he can reanimate a big fatty Time Walk and then just swing the next turn. I think it's really good there. Um, but I do think a lot of the times Time Walk is just an explorer. Not that that's bad, like, like you said, plus one mana and your stuff's on tap. That, that's great, but is that would you spend a, you know, as I don't know, you know, how high do you want to spend in un, a sometimes explore? I mean, it went really high here, uh, relatively to what it has been the last couple, where it has dropped down a little bit. Yeah, I think Time Walk probably deserves its two through five round pick. Uh, I do think that the repeatable use of a Mox is obviously, like. Moxes exist where they are for good reason. I think that being able to get the ancillary benefit of being an artifact, coming down for zero mana, adding the storm count. Yeah, pack rat. Damn, that is not a pack rat. That is a massacre. Oh, that is a massacre, yeah. And it's going to function as one this game, too. It seems like it's going to wipe everything other than the carrion feeder and the ranger captain. Uh, presuming that Alex is going to sacrifice everything to the uh, carrion feeder, um, but it's going to wipe everything else. So you sack the two to the carrion feeder, uh, then the kitchen finks comes back. Uh, he gains an, he's up to twenty four. Oh, he actually sacks the carrion the kitchen finks twice. So he ended up making the carrion feeder a five five yeah. rather than having a uh, kitchen fink in play. Okay, so we have a five five uh, that cannot block and a three three. So it looks like Alex choosing for the beatdown plan and hoping that his 24 life versus the 18 of, or 16 of his opponent is going to be enough. I don't he, know what Mason's record is. Everyone's technically still in. We play round robin. Uh, if we, we can actually post these standings. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Kyle has them available, but otherwise, if he doesn't, uh, they are linked in the Discord, um, which we can link from. But yeah, the, the standings are, are posted on Challenge right now. The, uh, yeah, the interesting thing here is that now Alec has John Ryan on a two-turn clock. Right. I mean, it's a... So let's see. It's it's STL, or it's under St. Lotus 6. Yeah, Let me, I'm yeah you're at 5. You just updated the 5 to a 6. Then yeah. Then. Oh, good. Thank you, I guess. You're the hero. Yeah, so we'll have to see. Uh, and it, it does look like, I mean, John Ryan is very clearly, this is his tournament to give up, right? He is right. sitting there with a 5-1 record. Uh, the only person who can catch him, uh, the only two people who can catch him are Alec and Mason. So if Alec's able to win this one and then win the next rubber match, then he's able to catch up to John Ryan and at least force a tiebreaker. And in the St. Louis tournament, what happens is that if you have a tied record, we play to see who wins out. We're not going to like deal with tiebreakers and all of that. We're willing to go the extra hour and see who actually is the best deck. So we joked earlier that uh, uh, Thurston and I joked earlier that the Chicago kids are coming down to make us look bad. But I said <laughs> well, after this week that the Cubs had, you know, they deserve something. So Oof. Oof.
I do love that we have uh, we do have some we have Avi in the chat here, which is very nice. Uh, I don't know if Avi's still around St. Louis, but if he is, he needs to come out to one of these in Boston or something. Isn't he? Oh God, yeah, probably. I, th I think it's actually uh, Pennsylvania. There but, yeah. you go. It's all the same place. It's true. Look, we're from the Midwest. We don't really understand the coasts. Oh, yeah. Bay Area. What the hell? Okay. Well, I'll probably be out. I'll be out there in two weeks, so maybe see you then. And it looks like we're going to three. That's excellent. Okay, so Alec managed to win it. Uh, obviously, I'm not rooting against John Ryan. I do just want more matches, and that's really just the thing I'm always looking for in this tournament, is seeing if we can find a, a way to encourage more matches to happen. So we're at 1-1, one one going into game three. Uh, Alec managed to win with a beatdown plan, which is very exciting. Oh, thanks for the follow there. Uh, looks like we have 6deep66 uh, following us. Thank you very much. Looking forward. We're in these tournaments every three months or so. Yeah, we'll see uh, what the next we try to run a quarter. We'll see what Delta variant does. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, luckily, this is a vaccinated history draft, so we have everyone here is vaccinated, uh, which makes it easier to actually keep a tournament going. But uh, it is uh, it is a pretty exciting, pretty exciting event, uh, and I'm glad that we're finally able to do one in person again. Yeah, because. There's something magical about in-person vintage history drafts that you don't get. Obviously, the Chicago people run them uh, occasionally, uh, but in general, vintage history drafts are so complicated that most people just run them uh, remotely. It's not a thing that you can really do in person. Um, most of them take place over the period of five to seven weeks, and uh, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty rare thing to actually see them. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, this is an exciting time to be able to get everyone together, force everyone to make picks within... 10 to 15 seconds uh, yeah. and, and see what happens. So. And, and I, I do think that's like one of the weird things that come out of formats like this one, right? Like, one thing you notice today is that no one took Wasteland. No one took Library of Alexandria. No one took Maze of Ith. And we've talked about Library a lot. Maze, yeah. I, I don't know. Has Maze gone? Maze is generally taken. Okay. Uh, especially in a, like, if you watch what's happened today, uh, I would say that 80% of the decks today are winning via creature beatdown. Yeah. Uh, Maze of Eth, I think, would be very strong. I mean, I think Library is just... I mean, Library is so strong early game in some decks, but it's... Yeah, I think there's arguments for not taking Library. I don't think there's an argument for zero decks taking Maze. Yeah. Oh, I wanted, I, I lost my, my game because I've never actually played a Dark Depths before. Dark Depths is very complicated. It's not that for mana. It sure doesn't. I've never uh, played a Dark Depths. See, there's these two cards. One of them is called Urborg yeah, Shield of yeah, Yongmoth. Yeah, 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 the other yeah. one is called yeah. Yavamaya something or other. Yeah. Uh, both of them something, make it tap for mana. Yeah, I, I yeah. realize that. Yeah. I, both of those would have fit in my deck. And, uh, uh, that's a careful study off of a Black Lotus. So we have two, ma two blue mana floating right now. I don't see a Force of Will resolving, so it seems like this is about to resolve. Did we have a, a Force of Negation? Yeah, the Force of Negation. No, and there, it's, it's drafted. But. Okay. Uh, that looks like a Thought Erasure. Yeah. Okay, so still one blue mana floating, and a full hand getting revealed. Uh, someone's looking over Scurry Oak, or Scurvy Oak? Scurry. So this was an odd choice. I mean, it, it does go infinite with um, Green, uh, green Denizen. Ivy Lane, Ivy Lane Denison, but yep. I, I, Ivy Lane's a four drop. This is a three drop. You know, I think it's cute, but not. It's commander cute. It works in commander very well, but sure, here it seems. I actually agree with hyphenated on this one. I think that library people look at it as a will I get this card and will it allow me to win the game? And I think that that is a reasonable like starting point of like this card I'm drafting because sometimes it lets me win the game. But its fail case is very reasonable, right? Its fail case is that it just is a non basic land that taps for a mana, right? Uh, and I think people, like, they expect it to be, like, Bizarre, where Bizarre Baghdad, of course, is incredible, but its downside is so horrible, that because sometimes it doesn't have for mana. Library of Alexandria, when it fails, it just means that it's, like, about as good as a forest. I would have liked it over Dark Depths. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dark Depths was not my original plan. It was just open, and I yeah. figured my mana base wasn't that that punishing, so I could grab it in Thespian stage. Uh we were talking about whether you take Vampire Nighthawk or, or Vampire uh, Hex Mage or not. Yeah. You decided not to, and I think that's a reasonable choice. Uh, your deck was full of two-card combos, and adding halves to each of the two-card combos would obviously be unreasonable. Right. But, um, yeah, I think that... It was on my it, list. It was, like, it was a maybe. Once I drafted, I was like, oh, am I going to do it? Am I going to not? And then I just kind of, like, everything was coming. I was like, oh, I need these sideboard cards. and. Yeah, and I, th I think that that is one of the things that this draft revealed to me, is how few people were willing to be 
taking sideboard cards, right? There's just a lot of main deck cards in this. Well, in grabbing, this draft. Karn being open and grabbing Karn really helps with the grab sideboard card. I plan. could not believe Karn was open for the entire time. I know. I, I, I swore one of the, either the white blue list was going to grab it. Yes. And then I just kept floating it. And I was like, well, if I don't get it, it's fine. I got other things. And then it was like, fine. I was like, okay, I got to do it. I got to do it. Yep. You definitely leaned into the two card Monty for sure. I, I like the two card Monty. So, <laughs> you know. And double tutor helps you, you know, I mean. Yeah, so what's this card that came in? Is this Loaming Shaman? Loaming Shaman. Okay, so, this is a graveyard hate piece. Yeah, it's uh, a 3-2 for 3, I want to say. And what did it take away? From, did, it, did it ruin John Ryan's plan at all? Uh, did it? I don't know if it's resolved yet. Maybe either he's thinking about things at this point. Pitching a pack rat. Yeah, so he could shuffle in what he wanted. So he could... Um, I don't know if like, he shuffled in the Iona. I don't really see what's in John Ryan's graveyard there, but... I don't see anything useful there. Yeah. Well, is that the Iona third down? Because he pitched the Iona earlier. Not the Iona. The uh, Elish Norn. Elish Norn. I think it's still the Elish Norn third down. Did we... Did, did, should that have been shuffled? Did we miss it? Well, it depends on what he targeted. He doesn't have... It. Oh, he shuffled his own graveyard in. Oh, okay. That's peculiar. Does he know that it's... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's something that we missed about right. why he did that, or maybe he has something in his hand. Uh, but yeah, right. that is a strange choice. Okay, yeah. now Scurry Oaks coming into play. I mean, he, he certainly is winning the beatdown plan right now, even with the pack rat in play. I guess I guess we'll see if, if he chooses to inflate the pack rat, but... Um, 15 versus 20 with pack rat tokens does not seem like a winning line. Yeah. Um... There is a very reasonable chance that Elish Norn never comes into play, but we'll see. Man, these rubber matches, when you're looking at game three in a, in a match where it will probably decide the tournament, are very, are very like stressful to watch, even. Um... The Wither Bloom, uh, the like naturalize on a on a creature. I don't believe we're drafted this match, which is interesting. The which one? Oh, uh, uh, El Elder uh, Wicker Bow Elder. Yes, yeah. that's exactly yeah. That looks like an Eldritch Evolution. Is that right? Yeah, Eldritch Evolution. Uh, sacks a creature and then can tutor one two higher. I want to say. I think it's. I thought it was just one, but I could easily be wrong. Two. Two higher. Okay. You don't matter better than me. So, yeah. Well, it also, it, it, I played it in, it's played, it played in Yogg combo in modern, yes, so. That's fair. Okay, so this is presumably going to line up a infinite combo. I guess it can't yet, right? It needs a three card combo to happen. Um, if he, yeah, if he gets uh, Denizen here. So he sacrificed off that card. And this is exiled at the end of it. Mm-hmm. So he gets Denizen. Right. That, uh... Now, check out, is Denizen the count itself or other, only other green? That's the real question here. Ivy Lane Denizen. Yeah. When another. another. Okay. So he needs a green creature here, basically. And when he does, let, can you explain that combo? So I basically what that. happens is he, you put a counter on Scurry Oak. Yep. And Scurry Oak makes a squirrel. And then that creates the squirrel, makes the counter on Scurry Oak, and it makes yes. a squirrel. So he makes infinite squirrels. That makes sense. Right. But uh, it got killed. So he, he got rebounced. He just rebounced it to his um, hand. So okay, the so counter I'm not sure okay the counter came from the though. evolve counter came because a two three came into play and Scurry Oak is a one two so that's just natural evolve counter. The next green creature that oh, comes into right, play right, on right. Alex's turn. Well, then it would have gone infinite right there actually because the oh, I forgot the uh, evolve counter would have charted it. Well, the evolve counter creates a squirrel. The squirrel then it comes into oh, play oh, triggers Ivy Lane. I see. It would have charted it except for he bounced it to his hand. There we go. Okay. So it, the evolve counter would have started the combo and well, would have allowed it to, to win, to, so, to make infinite. So which bounce card did uh, John Ryan use to save the day there? I do not know. What is in his list? Um, is it an Echoing Truth, I think I see? Probably, yeah. I see the top of a dragon. Or yeah, something. it's Echoing Truth. I can see from the top. Okay. Yeah, so there's an Echoing Truth that ended up stopping John Ryan from facing down infinite squirrels. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot he has Evolve. That's a, the, <laughs> all these new cards, too much stuff. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, suddenly we're down to one card in play Four. versus a whole bunch of cards over here. So we got Denizen back. Does he okay. have a one drop? And now is we're going to see... Is it a green one drop? Well, so this is a 2-3, and there's a... And now it's not enough. Scurry Oak's only a 1-2 to start with, so it's still a, the same. Screws. 
Yep, so now they're identical. It's no, not going to cause a yeah, trigger. Not going to cause a trigger. He's not, they're going to... Oh, starting with... Ranger Captain. Ranger Captain of Eos. Interesting. He wants to protect himself the next turn. Sure, naturally. And, and there's there's four uh, four and he gets a one drop. It gets a one dot green card. And it looks like we're sitting at ten life in play. Yeah, can we slide that uh, white dice over if someone's on audio out there? Yeah. If, if we do have Kyle on there, that'd be awesome. If not, I think, I'm pretty sure it's ten right now. I think it's ten to ten to fifteen. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. I think I've said Kevin like nine times instead of Kyle today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of Kevins in the judge community, yeah. so it's reasonable. But so yeah, so he, he gets a one drop, but it's got to be green. He got vicious here, which is interesting. So he he shows the vizier. Oh no, okay, no, there's the there's the vizier. Right. But he's also just got to defend at some point here. Yeah. And, I mean, as Jason insists on saying, it's visual. Visual. I don't know. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, it seems like the Ivy Lane might actually end up showing up. No. Oh, There's all of Zaki's. Wait, all what? of them have to sacrifice? That doesn't seem right. What did he cast? Oh, there were four attackers, so he had to block with all yeah. three. Otherwise, he would make a copy. Yeah, it was just too much pack rabbit. It's, it's just... That still doesn't feel right, because if he made a copy, it'd be five damage. Why couldn't he leave one creature in play? Ivy Lane and... D uh, Devoted Druid, okay. which can also... It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter, though. So, all right. John Ryan... John Ryan ends up pack six oh, I, and one at an undisputed champion. Pack rat is... Like such a powerful card in the reanimator because sometimes you just don't need you just back I mean, that's the yeah. No, it, it's incredible. So, mate, Alec is no longer in the running for. Let's switch over the stage. Yeah, he's still in the running for this, the two three stuff. I mean, for sure. So over here we have, uh, we have John Ryan now indisputably the champion at six one, even though it doesn't reflect it here yet. Yeah. The people who are n are still in the running, Alec would have been, but this match just knocked him out of the potential for being still there. Right. So the only person who could possibly catch him is Mason. Depending on his matches. Yes, yeah, so if Mason's able to win out at this point... I've got two matches to go. I might still be able to get into the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can still make the money. Uh, the Mason is the only one who could possibly force John Ryan into another match for the day, though. John Ryan is otherwise undisputably the champion for today. Right. So, all right. Well, I'm going to go out and see who i got to play. Who do i got to play left? i got to play Brandon and Andrew. Yeah, so you, you still have two matches left. Yeah, two matches left. So. All right. All right. Uh, send somebody in here, and uh, we'll keep it going. Uh, my name is not Dan, but I am here, uh, and I'm happy to be here. Looks like Eric might be ready to come back into the booth. We'll see. Uh, he could be tired. I've seen Eric before be tired. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a very... Oh, God. We have some exciting business cards coming from Brandon. Uh, Dr. P.P. Poo Poo. Uh, very adult here. There's a TikTok link. Uh, running for president of Earth. It seems like a very exciting time. It's got some relatable content on the back. It says, uh, bottom it says, also don't call me ever because I have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, yes, yes, you've, you've hurt me deep in my soul, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've all been there a little oh, bit. God. That match, did you catch that one at all? I caught some of it. I was bopping around. I, I've So I've regained my, my power to just, like, amble from match to match without thinking about it. Like, my feet just take me places. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I'm over here now. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to judge an event, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like the undisputed champion of this tournament has been Pack Rat. It feels like we were back in, in the mid-2016 or whatever it was. So there's something in this format that I think we don't think about enough. And that's attacking with creatures. Right. <laughs> it's really kind of shocking. There's just, like, no removal. Right. Basically. So attacking with creatures is really good. And even I do if feel you like have removal, Pack Rat kills you anyway. A fair amount of that is because this this draft in particular felt very heavy on the I'm going to stop the broken combos from happening. Yep. Like, Fatal Push didn't get drafted. Eliminate yep. didn't get drafted. There were so many cards that, like you'd expect to see in a vintage-like format that just never showed up because everyone's focused on two-card combos. Right. And what that means is, 
like people like Alec can just attack with two ones. Like you yes. saw that game with Alec and Steven, where Steven played Curse Totem. Sure. And then Alec played Goblin Piker, aka Vizier of Remedies, and then uh, what Chat called called Viscerous Seer of the Pearl Trident, <laughs> and uh, and uh, Mon's Carrion Feeder. Oh my and god! Just beat down with us. I'm like, creatures are good. And then over just now in the 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 Chicago beatdown match, right? Uh, where where uh, Mason, Mason just beat the hell out of Andrew with the El- Elvish Clan Collar, depicted here. So I'm not excited about that, but the thing I am excited about is that means that the dream is still alive for someone to catch. Uh, to catch John Ryan. Because mm-hmm. if Mason wins out, he is in the finals with John Ryan, oh and we get to watch more content. Oh, more content. Give us more content. Yeah, give me that Bo Burnham content right here. That's what I want in my life. It's really like, Elvish Clan Caller, I feel like, is a, the epitome of why we're trying to experiment around with these yep. uh, strange rules about like, oh yeah, you draft a self-referencing tutorable card, uh, and suddenly you get four copies of them. It like It allows for strange things to happen that just to create better matches. Yeah. So pick, I'm excited about them. Pick 45 Elvish Clan Caller really doing some work today here at the VRD. How do you feel about your game time decision to, to make Elvish Clan Caller qualify for the 4 of rule? Uh, so not game time. This was decided two VRDs ago, actually. Ah. Um, so, so when we made the Squadron Hawk rule, which right. is the card we thought would actually make the call, yes, yes. we invited John Ryan Hamilton, the all-star of Death in Texas, who recently told me 10 minutes ago that uh, Death and Taxes is not VRD playable. So, I mean, what do you do? You heard uh, it here first. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, Elvish Clan Caller, this wasn't like a last pick. Oh, I remembered 45th. I can take this card. This was a in position, tw- in the 12th pick position, he came over and asked me, is this card going to be yeah. illegal as a four copy? And I'm like, yep, sure is. And it hours later... Off. Yeah, two hours later, uh, Mason picked it and it ended up winning in multiple matches. So yeah. I'm ecstatic to see it happen. Uh, it looks like we're going to have Steven and Brandon coming yes. on next. Uh, the 2-3 versus 1-3 matchup. Uh, Steven, I think his deck is outperforming his record. Mm-hmm. Uh, his deck actually seems very strong. Uh, and let's update the players that are here. But Steven's deck seems really good to me. There um, are a couple other cards that give uh, 4x. Most of them are just hot trash. Uh, Alec, or not Alec, that's, uh, that of course is Brandon showing off his hand to the camera. Um, there are quite a few cards that do give 4x, cards like Avarax that you would just never play, right? Right. Most of, most of them are just straight up unplayable. Uh, the the vampire, the the bad Squadron Hawk vampire from like Rivals of Ixalan, whatever sure. that card is called. There's Howling Wolf. Yes, Howling Wolf is the, the OG. Uh, from the Mike Long days. Oh God. Yeah, there's there's a there's a Mike there's a Howling Wolf Mike Long story that I will not tell right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the less Mike Long we can have on this channel, the better. The the accumulated knowledge in Kindle don't count because they self reference but don't self tutor. Correct. Yeah, and I I do think there's like possibilities to tutor around with these yep. things or change them up, but I I don't want to like reduce the like integrity of the format right? right i feel like that's a lot of the danger you play with when changing these rules is that you can end up creating a format that's different than what we expect for vintage or history draft yes and we want we want this to be a format that people like we had the pe- folks from chicago come in and, and and battle and we don't want this to be a format that they don't recognize when they right. show up right so we have ignoble hierarch attacking for one damage Fantastic. that's exciting <laughs> Love to see it. Or wait, no, it looks like it helped cast Lily. Oh, oh, it did, did. You're totally right. So that, of course, is Liliana of the Last Hope uh, here. So this is the one that uh, mostly just kills one ones, <laughs> is my understanding of it. Uh, uh, it kills one ones and threatens to kill, you know, everyone on Earth with its ultimate. Yeah, the Last, last Hope ultimate is really impressive. Uh, it doesn't win immediately, but it kind of makes you feel like you have a chance for two turns and then kills you. Yeah. It's got that the uh, the classic endless ranks of the dead, but now now Ignoble's getting in there. Yeah, there we go. One damage. That's all we hope for. Brandon and Steven are two of our most camera aware players. Not only do they have those life total dice in the right spot, they have them faced toward the camera. God, yeah, you gotta love it. I love I love these guys. They 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 know what they're about. Obviously, you know, I don't I don't begrudge any of our players certainly, but I just think it's interesting. Oh, I begrudge many of our players, but not these two. <laughs> So, Sensei to Mining Top, one of those cards that I really wish we could ban from Vintage, mm. but it's just not reasonable to do so. Uh, but I'll just hate it every time I see it happen. 
I remember when that card was legal in formats yes. that, that got played in paper, and it, it just made me want to drill a hole into my skull. Yeah. So It's not that it's powerful, it's just annoying. Yeah. It's one of those cards, I, I have I vivid memories of it causing, just like, causing a lot of time draws. Yep. Uh, much like that one uh, modern PQ. Oh, God, God, look at that. Look at that skill from a player used to play on camera. What a what a beautiful... Thanks for showing <laughs> us everything from that shell dock owl. That was Bitter Ordeal that went under there. Uh, and a whole bunch of islands that went on the bottom of the deck. I was... Uh, bless you. <laughs> I was mostly mesmerized... I was mesmerized by Brandon's on-camera talent and also his fantastic tattoos. Yeah, and nail decorations. Yeah, his nails are on point. I haven't done my nails in a while. It's probably time. Yeah, it's yeah. Time to, time to paint them again. It's been a minute. Bitter ordeal. So, does this card mean anything to you personally? Oh. Do you have any feelings <laughs> on this card? I'm gonna go die over here. Excuse me while yeah. I die on your couch. I feel like bitter ordeal is good, but extract <laughs> is better. That's yeah. what I think. So, I in VRD two, I was we were late. We were like in the the thirty eight forty range, and I I had my my list of sideboard cards going. And I was like, okay, I need to be able to beat very specific stuff. So I had Bitter Ordeal and Extract in my possibilities list. Looks like that's a Tasha's Hideous Laughter being oh. cast in, by the way. And Steven's got a crop rotation in response just to make sure he can get what he wants out mm -hmm. of here. But uh, I went and picked Extract. Because I was like... Well, yeah, the Odyssey block's better anyway. Yeah, and one wants, mana. And look at that brain. Look at that brain coming out of that uh -huh. person's head. How can you not want that card? It's one mana. One mana is better it's than so three cheap. mana. Right. It's so cheap. It's two mana less than one mana. Yes. Or two, than three mana. It's not two mana Strictly less better, one can say. Strictly better. And then when I did that, Steven, who I'd been fighting with basically all draft because we're both hard-headed dummies. Uh, love you, Steven. Um... He was like, what's that card that's like Extract that has Gravestorm? And I was like, oh god, kill me now. It's a bitter ordeal. <laughs> what's that card that has Gravestorm? Right? There's right. one. There's one of them. Yes, please, you, please, please don't uniquely identify the... Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so it looks like Brandon's counting for that Tasha's Hideous Laughter while exiling half of Steven's deck. Oh, gosh. So Steven's deck is actually just... Chuck full of low cost cards. Those cards get exiled, and that is important. They are in Steven's graveyard, and I'll be right. Uh, hey, hey, uh, oh, 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 it's happening. Great, 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 great. Good, great. good. I don't have to stand up. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. So, Steven does have Causal Life Butcher of Truth, which mm -hmm. in this matchup I think is going to be really crucial. It is, however, starting in the sideboard. And notably, yeah, I was going to say, it definitely wasn't in that pile of a thousand cards, because if it was, <laughs> that pile would be a lot smaller. Yeah. That is the thing that scares me about Tasha's, is like, it's obviously a very powerful card in the middle, uh, but sometimes you hit an Emrakul and nothing else. Yeah, that card like, That card has a, like, a real, real serious set of variants built into it. Yes. Looks like we got a couple islands and mystical. But, but Brandon okay. came in with expecting, I'm going to win on mill. Oh, we have yes. questions. Ooh, a judge question. So Uh, yes, if if a player if a player has questions, yep. If you yeah. are asked a question, uh, we are applying comp REL fixes. Yep. That's the that's the best fix we have. So here we're playing by the Wheaton uh, the Wheaton rules of competitive REL, uh, meaning that players shouldn't be a jerk to one another and if there is ever any complications that come out of that we're playing at competitive REL yeah so sometimes that causes some bad feelings and that means Kyle is gonna have to go deliver some bad news but uh he knows how to do that looks like fractured sanity's getting uh cast here straight up cast that sounds like bad news for Steven very bad news for Steven he's down to one card in his library after losing 14 more cards well I mean he might draw a card and then win the game we'll yeah see. Uh, well, it, that would be hard. That would be hard to do. Well, he has a lot of two-card combos. Maybe he, one of them is with Ignoble Hierarch we didn't hear about. He would need to play another Mana Source, Witherbloom <laughs> Apprentice, and Chain of Smog. And I think at least... Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, uh, is that a Meddling Mage? I believe no, that's no, Douthy Void. That is a Douthy Voidwalker. Thing. Oh, no, that's Opposition Agent. Sorry, of course he flashed it in. And he's scooping. Yep. Well, okay. That, that was a good, good effort. Yep, we tried. We tried. But Brandon... So... This is one of the games where Brandon's mill strategy has looked at its most potent. Yes. Well, it's because Steven is full of chock full of cards that are very good with exactly one other card in his deck. Yes, indeed. Uh, if his deck receives 
half of itself in the wrong order, it does nothing. <laughs> and if his deck receives half of itself uh, placed into <laughs> into the exile zone in an inopportune time, Look, it may Kyle, just do nothing. I know Metally Mage wasn't drafted, but we had Chris Bakula in chat, so we have to respect it. Yeah, we so do. So we have to make sure it, it receives the shoutouts it deserves. It's important to play around it, even if it's not here. Respect <laughs> is important. Yes. Uh, we also have the right art, of course, printed. Oh, yes. That's very important. Yeah, yeah. None of that Alara Reborn nonsense. We don't play that. No. That's not uh, We don't believe Judge Promo should be reprinted in the same art. We don't believe oh, that... Oh, super don't. Yes. We, we don't believe that Player Promo should be reprinted in different art. It's, no. it's a very complicated system, but we stand by it vociferously. Yes. I, I, I mean, we, we, we respect the, the, the art featuring players like Chris Bakula, Diego Chan, and so on and so forth. Yes. So, uh, PVDR? Uh, yes, Paolo is on Elite Spellbinder. What a card, by the way, for Paolo. It's incredibly good, too. Like, yeah. I, I printed it off with the assumption that we get drafted today, but apparently next time is its, its moment. That card that card rips. That card's very, very frustrating to play against. Okay. I know that because my wife plays it in Modern, and she casts it against me, and it makes me lose games. <laughs> See, I, all I know is that it says, your Shark Typhoon doesn't work. Whenever people cast it against me. <laughs> Uh, that's what the card says. It says your Shark Typhoon goes from costing 2 to costing 8, yeah. and I proceed not to cast it and lose. Yeah, it's, uh, your Sharknado turns into a little bit of a box office bomb there. A little bit. <laughs> uh, so, so this match, then, uh, in sideboarding, does Steven have anything he can do against this uh, mill plan? I mean, he's got the Kozilek, right? That's that's sure. kind of his, his big his big play. Of course, uh, one of the things about that is it can get uh, it, it, it can get hit with Tasha's, yes. but if it gets hit with Tasha's, it accounts for half of the mana value that Tasha's is looking for. So it does blunt the offensive just a little bit. Um, the strange thing is if you are, if you're 19 CMC into that process and then you hit Kozilek, yeah. it still counts. Yeah, so you can, it, it, it can go wrong. Uh, I don't see a ton of other stuff that would be really relevant in Steven's sideboard here, unless there's something down the bottom that's sneaking around. No, uh, no, Plague Engineer, Helm of Obedience. Uh, Helm of Obedience I could see trying to, like, flesh out, maybe pull out one half of the combo and just double up on another half or something. I mean, I think that just, like, adding adding another combo to the deck, right, is just... Adding, adding more density of combo cards... Against a mill deck might be prudent. Oh, I'm yawning. But add, adding more combo cards might might help. Just just increasing the threat density of, of Steven's deck, because it is a little light in that regard. He may just also try to play Questing Beast and beat Brandon up. Sure, yeah. I, I, might, I would do that. That's, Questing Beast is a combo with the combat step. I'm honestly shocked that, first of all, Lutri isn't seeing play ever. And number two, that uh, that Glyphs the Unthinkable isn't main decked. Yeah. So, so is Brandon not revealing Lutri on purpose, or is that just a thing that has never happened? Is that Lutri there by his oh, uh, die? You're right. I believe. I, believe I, I think it just hasn't happened yet. Okay. I haven't seen Lutri get cast. I see. Um, now the thing about Glimpse the Unthinkable, it's interesting because in modern, right, in the modern blue black mill deck, right, they don't play Glimpse really anymore because it's just not flexible enough. It's not as strong as something like oh. Tasha's, and it's not as flexible as something like Fractured Sanity. Okay. So it just gets edged out. Whereas in this format. I'm, you know, it's it's interesting because Brandon's mill, he's not trying to mill you by inches, right? He's trying to get you all at oh, once. Oh, yeah, it's like two hits. Right. It's it's Tasha's, it's Fractured Sanity, and it's Brain Freeze. And uh, then... Brandon's hand looks good. He's he's full yeah. of lands, and there's, a, there's yeah, there's all sorts of great cards in there. Yeah, he's got... He's going to mill you. He's going to counter you on turn four with a Cryptic. And I think, I think the line for Brandon is like, is this something where I can just like, oh, you know what? He's probably bringing in... Oh, no, Archive Traps in the main... Um, it may just be that 10 isn't enough. Sure. Yeah, that's honestly shocking in a format with 40 cards, yeah. where you effectively are starting with the game with 30-something. Yeah, but um, uh, it, it may be that, that he's got his line, and 10 is below it, and, and 13 and 14 are above it. Reasonable. So, so the fun thing is that uh, Brandon actually played against Mason, mm -hmm. and Mason ended up asking me for sleeves and boarding up to over 60 cards. Wow. So Mason just brought in every card from his sideboard plus a bunch of lands. Brandon loses the Fractured Sanity here to Duress. Can sure. Go ahead and play out that Watery Grave. Looks like he's got JTMS and Cryptic Command in hand along with some lands. Losing that Fractured Sanity does hurt. Look at that king though. Just leaving his hand face up for, for us all to see what's happening. Yeah, I, I, I have appreciated that. That's been really good. Um, oh, Narset's Reversal oh, getting man. revealed. Steven's uh, hand disruption is really just ripping him apart. Wow. 
Is that uh, Mana Crypt off the top, I believe? Wow. Yeah, Mana Crypt has been an interesting one this match, or this, this uh, tournament. Uh, seeing it play against Stasis was really a feel bad oh, moment for yeah. me. <laughs> that hurt. That it was, really that was painful. I saw that as well. I, I remember myself, VRD2, having Mana Crypt and Time Vault in the same deck and having to be very careful. Yes. Lutri getting added to hand here for Brandon. So we okay. may see a uh, cute little Otter Baby yeah. play here. That is a card that I'm really sad never wasn't allowed in Commander. Like, I understand why they made the choice they did. Uh, but it is sad they can never see play. Yeah. Right? Like, I feel like Commander Identity colors, uh, which are generally trying to be as flexible as possible for many reasons, mm -hmm. uh, ended up screwing that card, right? I feel like if that had been a, a red and a blue to cast, it yes. might not have been banned, uh, which would have been really interesting. Right. right. Like, I feel like that would be a fun card to have in red-blue decks. Yes, yes. And I, I you know... If if people want to house rule that, like if somebody if somebody shows up with a red blue deck and they're like, hey, can I do Lutri? And it's like somebody I know isn't just going to make the game unfun. I'm good with that. Agreed. But like when I'm building decks, I'm never going to assume that, no. and therefore I'm never going to include it, and exactly. it, it kind of creates a self reinforcing cycle. Yes, exactly. Which means it just never gets played. Exactly. Okay, so Ashiok. Ashiok is a is a card that has always been a powerhouse in this format. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Woo! Whoa. That's a cozy like Butcher of Truth under that Ashiok. Okay. That has a good chance of, of just sort of ending this match from being interesting. Yeah. I mean, so this two things have happened, right? One, Brandon has neutralized the big anti-mill card in Steven's list, right? And yes. two, Brandon has this inevitable threat. Now, that 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 possibility is muted a little bit by the revelation of Bitter Blossom sure. here, right? Bitter Blossom is going to start chipping away at Ashiok in short order unless Brandon has a card I don't know about to deal with it, right? So so I think Brandon needs to move toward the Turbo Mill plan, which is a little harder without Fractured Sanity. But uh, You're not wrong, but it does mean that the, tur the Turbo Mill plan is something that we were like, oh, well, Kozilek exists, and the only card in Brandon's deck that can answer it is Tasha's. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. were wrong. Ashiok answers that card real nicely just yes. by permanently removing it from the game. So now suddenly, as opposed to just being like, well, he's going to lose whenever he inevitably hits Kozilek, uh... Brandon can just mill with impunity and at some point win the game. Uh, and, like, Steven has to apply a ton of pressure here to stop Brandon from ending him right away. Right, and Steven has to make an unenviable choice. This is one of the interesting things about Planeswalkers uh, yes. in, in, in situations like this. Steven has to choose pretty much next turn. Oh, never mind. Oh, abrupt decay. <laughs> Well, Steven would have had to make choices about whether to attack Ashiok or attack Brandon, bless you. But uh, abru with Abrupt Decay, Brandon is going to Narset's Reversal Abrupt Decay. Oh my god. Wow. Choosing to destroy the Bitter Blossom, I assume? Yes, he's going to destroy oh the Bitter Blossom. Oh my god. Now, Steven is choked out of green, doesn't have the mana to recast it this turn. Which means that the next time that Brandon that Steven goes to abrupt decay the Ashiok, Brandon can cryptic it back to his hand if he so chooses. Oh my god. So what is that green land that he has in play? Is that is that a pathway? Uh it looks like a pathway. There's only one yeah, symbol it's the, it's on the it. green black pathway. Okay, so he has one green source. Yes. Uh, uh, well plus the, the hierarch. The ignoble, yeah. which he had already uh Yep. Yeah, if he if he hadn't attacked first. Wow, and yeah. he just lost Karn and a Wither Bloom oh, command. Oh my gosh, that's a real beating. Steven made a little bit of a mistake there, and Brandon with a really heads-up play to capitalize on it. Mm -hmm. And of course, Steven draws the forest for maximum frustration. Abrupt wow. Decay coming down, and Brandon has that face-up cryptic command here as well as Lutri. But a counter-target spell doesn't do a lot against an Abrupt Decay. Yeah, he could choose to bounce the Ashiok, but he's just going to let it go, save his Cryptic Command for something more important. Fairy Token comes in to just... Oh, no. Yes. Beating in for two. So Brandon's been leaving up this this five mana here. Do you think he's going to use that Cryptic? Or is he just going to let it go? Um... Yeah, that's I I, I, I I think Avi is right here. Steven has really nothing going on. I think I would have bounced the Ashiok here as well. Same. I think that's the right line here. But Brandon is, Brandon is playing from a position of strength here, right? He's yep. taking two damage a turn, which is not insignificant in VRD, right? We've seen that a lot. Oh, there's a gush. 
Oh god, I have his book on the shelf that tells is me all sorts of good things about guns. Oh she's my gosh. god! Brandon just went for maximum value. Oh man, I just love watching it. You, you love to see it, oh. right? When someone comes to the Menendian school and just like ends up handing you four cards into your hand when you're in a position already of power. Steven Menendian, add another chapter to your book titled Lutri. Cute Man. little otter baby. Yeah, wow. No, we, he threw that in on like turn three or four into his hand, and we were like, yeah, well, he's never really cast at this game. Nothing's going to happen from that Lutri. Uh, we were wrong. That was fantastic. I mean, if 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 Brandon wasn't ahead before, he's ahead now. I don't know how Steven comes back from this. I mean, obviously there's infinite ways that Steven can cause two card combos in his in his deck, but he's not coming from a good spot right now. But right here, face up on the table, Brandon's got that crypt deck, and even though he's a little behind on mana, he can shore that up with the crypt here. Well, Steven just got his clock, right? There's yep. one and a half damage a turn. Crypt lays down the Sensei's Divining Top. Sure. And we're going to use the other mana to spin it. Oh, I see a land, and is that a Urborg on the left? Yeah, I see two. Urborg, land, and something. Two lands and some kind of spell. He put a spell on top, but I couldn't tell what it was. Brandon being, ran a little more focused on his gameplay now, trying to close this one out. You know what? That's fine. Brandon, you do your thing. Let's see what Lutri is. Lutri is, is it just a boring creature once it resolves? It's like a 3-2, yeah. Sure. It doesn't have any, it's got nothing. Okay. But I mean... Still, drawing two cards, divination plus a uh, plus a three two is not bad. Hey, yeah, I'll take that any day. My my three mana three two divination. Mm -hmm. What do we have here? Oh, oh Tasha's. Tasha's. There we go. All right, we're counting it out. Uh, Witherbloom, apprentice, uh, confidant, grief, <laughs> DT. Oh my God, these are Chains. all cards that cost three or less. Wow, Steven's deck just getting ripped apart by Tasha's uncontrollable hideous laughter. Or just Tasha's hideous laughter. Sorry, they couldn't fit the word uncontrollable on the magic card. Uh, uncontrollable is not part of the 5th edition wording. Oh, Maybe in the sorry. Second edition or something. I'm back in AD&D 2nd edition. Yeah. Pardon, pardon me. See, I joined the club <laughs> in, in, in early 3rd edition before 3.5 came out. So oh, We played a lot of 3.0 in high school. That's a... I actually have books on the shelf that you can see right I there. I saw them. I... I uh, <laughs> Emily and I actually played a lot of 3.0 together in high school back yeah. in the day. Glimpse has come in, and Steven is oh, just... Oh, that has to be game. Extending the hand. Brandon takes it down 2-0 wow. to bump up to 3-2. Steven falls to 2-4. and four. So the moment that that game was lost, I feel like it has to be Gush and Lutri. Yeah. Right? That's the thing that hands it over. Yeah, well, I... You know, I don't know. I think it might have been uh, the Narset's reversal. Honestly, sure. Steven losing his clock there... <laughs> allowed Brand like because if Steven has a clock there mm -hmm. Brandon can't possibly spend all of his mana and return two of his lands to his hand to draw four cards that's right that's fair he has no time to do that if there's fairies every turn yeah no that's true yeah being able to, to turn around that abrupt decay because that also means that the Ashiok just handled yeah yeah it's it's this was a very interesting like this was a really interesting game I love magic. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, same. Walking into this tournament, if I, so Steven and I were debating about who would actually be tapped in. I was trying to convince him to play, and he was trying to convince me to play. Uh, we both wanted to play the same strategy, which is Chain of Smog plus Witherbloom Brentus. Yeah. What part of not having a clock will have been due to boarding in so many cards? Steven doesn't really have a clock, period. Right? Yes. He's got these two-card wins. He's not made a questing beast, which he said he, he regrets, right? Um, but his only real clock, so to speak, in his main deck that isn't just a two-card auto-win combo is Bitter Blossom. Yes. So I think that Brandon Brandon correctly identified that weakness and said, I have a chance to get rid of Steven's only way to put pressure on me. <coughs> and if I can do that and hold up Cryptic Command for later, then I can secure myself a lot of time to mill him out. And I think that was a really strong call on his part. Yes. I fully agree. I, I don't see a way that... I don't see a way that Steven wins without pulling together an A plus B combo, mm -hmm. uh, whereas Brandon has a lot of cards that incrementally push him towards a, a win, yep. right? And if you are, are you are you a player that's pushing five points of damage a turn, or are you a player that's looking to assemble two things that end the game immediately? Right. It's a lot easier to disrupt the second one, right? If, if somebody can get through 15 points of damage, every card in their deck wins the game, as opposed to you just need to stop 
two exact cards from coming together. And that's what we saw there. This so we is... saw Steven, Steven trying to pull together pieces that were getting disrupted constantly. One of the most interesting, one, one of my favorite things about VRD is that even when people are like late in the tournament and their record isn't great, right? They have a losing record. People are still playing to win, right? Oh, yeah. They want to shore up their record. They want to say, okay, I got. I want to get as many wins as possible out of this deck. Mm -hmm. And so we get really interesting games, no matter where players are. Hey, buddy, Brandon's here. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to stick in? Do you want me to? Um. Uh. Why don't my why don't why don't why don't you stay if, yeah. if you want to stay around, Brandon? Why don't you chat with Mark and I'll uh, go. I'll go. I will water. be the Budweiser if I'm going to stay in the booth. Two Budweiser? Yeah, two Budvars. Two Budvars. This <laughs> Bud Diesel. Bud Diesel. So, so let's hear all about why, how you crushed your opponent and ended up defeating the entire tournament. Okay, so there's this one thing where uh, we're playing with 40 card decks. Yes. And then there's a card that costs three mana that says 37% mm -hmm. of your deck is gone. Okay, uh, is that a good card or a bad card in this format? In this format, I would say that it is a good card. <laughs> That's reasonable. Yeah. Eliminating a third of, to a half of your opponent's life seems good. Here is what I will say, which is that uh, these those recent discard spells from Modern Horizons 2, Fractured right. Sanity, and Tasha's Hideous Laughter from, uh, from Forgotten Realms. Thank you so much. Thank you. The King of Beers coming in live from St. Louis. They have... Uh, like they're they're backbreaking, especially if you have other things that can go along with them. Sure. Now, one of those things is not me as the person playing them in their deck. Sure. Because it's oof, boy, it's been two years since I've played Paper Magic. <laughs> it's been two years since I've played Magic at all. I think it's been two years since everyone's played Paper Magic. It was so. literally the last VRD, I guess. So it yeah, was, you know, technically only a year and a half, but. Um, it's September of 2019, based on my records. Yeah. It uh, is a long amount of time. Yes. And I was not a great Magic player to begin with. Sure, same. So, this is where we are. But yeah, you won that match. I did. Uh, it seemed like Steven was struggling to assemble pressure. Yeah. Who do we have? Do you have it up everything updated? Cool, thank you. Yeah, I think... Uh, we're on opposite trajectories, mm -hmm. whereas I started off... Oh, there's a match happening right here. Yes, we have we have the Alec, uh, who I believe is on the on the right. Alec is on the right versus yep. uh, the Time Walk. Uh, uh, we have time Andrew walk, the playing. Time Vault deck. Yeah, Andrew on the left and Alec on the right. Uh, yeah, I think Stephen and I are on opposite trajectories, whereas I started off very... Uh, I guess tilted and frustrated. Sure. Um, and then have just been like, <laughs> my day's basically over. So yeah. all I can do now is just have fun. Uh, and then yeah, I think he started in higher spirits and has had some uh, unfortunate losses in his recent two or three matches. So his deck did seem very strong when I looked at it. Uh, it does seem like it kind of fell apart a little bit, and I don't know exactly where that happened. Well, but it seems suboptimal. The first thing is that against me, it does basically nothing. Yeah. Uh, and I, I saw so little of the deck. To be fair, both of those games, I played Fractured Sanity and Tasha's Hideous Laughter. And that's that's how you count to all of the cards in one's deck. Reasonable. So I, I didn't really get to see uh, how all of his interactions work and, you know, if it... if he comes out profitably ahead and like establishes good board presence. Cause like if he's got, you know, I did see abrupt decay and stuff like that. There's just not a whole lot on my side of the board. He's interacting with. Yeah. You know, he doesn't really want to blow up my mana crypt that much because like, that's theoretically the thing that is just going to help him beat me. So totally. So, so this matchup, it looks like we have Linvala uh, on from the time walk deck on the left. Uh, and, and it's battling against all sorts of three-card combos from Alec on the right. So Alec is obviously coming in with a pretty strong record. The the, the person he lost to most recently is is John Ryan. Um, but Alec is coming in with this uh, this kind of like birthing pod deck from Modern that existed in four or five years ago. Right. Uh, with uh, Sacrifice Enough Kitchen Finks, Viscera Seer, uh, and other cards. Um, but Linvala feels like the hard counter to that deck. Which is exciting to watch, right? She just stops all of those activated abilities from happening. Yeah. Um, 
I'm interested to see whether Andrew is able to assemble his time walk combo. Because he has Manifold Key in play right now. Yeah. So he's one card away from just straight up winning the game. These Time Vault decks uh, are very hit or miss. Sure. Like, it is all about hitting a critical threshold of, you know, oh. whatever counter spells you have. What's that card that's resolved? I believe that that's Time Vault. That does seem very good, but he's missing one land. Because Time Vault obviously needs one land to use the Manifold Key yeah. to untap itself. So that means he has to pass the turn. So if Alec has a Fragmentizer or a Nature's Claim or any cards that weren't drafted this draft, that would be very strong. <laughs> However. Yes, you have to draft those cards to play them against a Time Vault. Unfortunately. Uh, does not seem that that's the case. Oh, God. Elaine just pointed out that Time Vault, that, that Birthing Pod was banned was, six and a half years ago. I was just about to say that. You were doing commentary, and I was like, all right, I'll wait. And I was going to be like, you know, it was banned in like 2014. 2014 was like a year ago, so that yeah. doesn't make any sense. It was either 2014 or early 2015. But yeah, yeah, but right now it has to be like one year after that. Yeah, there you go. Right, so, right, uh, 2016, so that means that it was the midterms, and we're just right past that. Jam 2015. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm just, uh, you know what? Uh, I think it has less to do with how much sleep I get in terms yeah. of my performance here. I think it's just, if I'm waking up before noon, mm -hmm. it's just not good for me. Well, I good news for you, though. Uh, next VRD, we're actually going to push it back by two hours. <gasps> so rather than starting at 8 in the morning for players, we're going to have a 10 a.m. call time. Mm. Uh, and, and, and that means we're going to push more to the West Coast and allow for Pacific people to get better views. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm also... You know, a little bit excited that so Ooh. many people cancel for these. Right. Because then, because I'm definitely not getting an invite today uh, <laughs> or a return trip, you know, uh, in the top two. But uh, I, listen, I'm, I'm happy to be at the top of that list for a uh, day before. Yeah, Lane, I think, I think next time what we're going to do is we're going to start at 10 a.m. and plan to go until 10 p.m. with the assumption that we'll go until midnight. Because uh, right now, we tend to finish up around 8 or 9 p.m., uh, and that's fine, but I think people would much rather start later and end up coming in much later than that. Uh, F6 has been called, so uh, Alec is allowing Andrew to do whatever he wants with a time vault turn. This might be the shortest round we've witnessed on commentary. Yeah. Because Andrew was already up one match, and now it seems like, I mean... If he can remember to untap that mana vault, things are going to go very well for him. Here is what... First of all, Elaine, hello. Uh, it's nice to hear from you. I wish that you were here uh, in your absence. Uh, the draft went way off the rails. Not a fan. I would like to have you back so you can draft normal cards yes. that spur everybody else to also draft normal cards. And... Uh, yeah, I... I don't know if Elaine heard, but there was this cool innovation that John Ryan had where he can draft these Draft Matters cards, and it was really powerful when he did it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. She she drafted some other cards that were okay, but she wasn't able to pull off the full like Aether Searcher combo that he was able to innovate the, the format with. Yeah. Um, uh, so... But yes, uh, it, it does seem like she's, she's about to... Uh, it seems like Andrew's about to win the game. There's the handshake. Yeah. Uh, this match is over. Uh, but yeah, whenever Elaine's able to fly across the border again, whenever whatever thing is currently banning her from entering the estates is, is done, um, it'd be great to have her back. Uh, so, okay, we have Northos asking, what Alec has going on here? It does seem like Alec, uh, Andrew has enough cards and life to win deterministically, and that is absolutely true. Um, what was happening there is that Andrew was being polite. Andrew had already had the win in game and was demonstrating to Alec how he was actually going to win. Um, so... Alec wanted to actually just watch, which is absolutely his right. Andrew showed off how he's going to win by attacking with Linvala, yeah. and at that point, Alec extended the hand. So, uh, that's one of those situations where the board presence was already developed enough to yes. make it happen. Uh, and because I'm a narcissistic individual, and I want to talk about my deck yeah, let's hear and, all about your and, deck and justify how I'm not as bad as my record might indicate. Yeah. Uh, for that situation, the card that I drafted was Mesmeric Orb. Ooh. And which forces your opponent to... Every time one of their card... Every time either player's card is untapped, uh, it forces them to mill. 
one. Sure. So, uh, I've got to go play, but feel free to talk amongst yourselves about whether this is an effective strategy as a mill deck against a 40 card deck uh, that is playing Time Vault, having to tap, untap. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm just saying? I'm just putting yeah, it up there. Yeah, that does seem like a uh, does seem like a way to stop things from going completely off the rails. So. And, and Brandon, what's your record currently? Uh, I'm two, and three. two and three. Okay, you dropped a card, uh, but two and three walking in still has a chance of probably making the making the money. Um, I believe four and three might have a, might have a good run at fourth place. Yeah. So so if Brandon doesn't drop any more matches, he actually has a good chance of making it. In. Um, so we'll see who makes it on camera. Uh, obviously, Andrew is doing very well. Let's jump over to the standings and see what's going on over there. So we have right now John Ryan indisputably in first, right? He is six and one. Uh, uh, Elaine, you didn't see him end up losing the match. I disagree with your. Uh, it seems like you have some curse words he didn't drop in chat, but uh, you didn't see John Ryan drop his match. Uh, it was exciting. Um, he he was worried about two specific matches. One of them he ended up winning. The second one he ended up losing. Both of which were the matches in which Iona wasn't a game backbreaker. So Iona obviously shuts off half of his opponent's decks, uh, and there were some decks that could get around that. Mason, it appears, is still alive to catch up and force John Ryan into a finals match. That's the thing we really want to see here, from my perspective at least, is always more magic, always watching more things happening, uh, and if we can make uh, if we can make that that occur, that would be ideal. Uh, then the, the next thing is if Mason doesn't catch up, then there's a chance that Mason and Andrew uh, or Alec still catch up to him, so we can force a semifinals match. Um, it looks like the the people that are going to be going on camera soon, we still have a few matches remaining from Dan. So Dan obviously has that really powerful uh, storm-based deck that wins off of Underworld Breach. It seems like he's not having a ton of success with it, which is disappointing. But uh, Dan and Mason are actually going to be going on commentary right now, or going on, uh, on, on camera right now to see what's going to happen. Uh, it seems like uh, the last match with Joe is going to be on video. So Mason versus Joe, maybe. Um, uh, okay, so Mason and Dan are going to be playing right now. Uh, okay, Mason and Dan are playing, and the last match of Mason is going to be on camera. So uh, it looks like Kyle's still working on figuring out what's coming up next, but uh, the... Incredibly attractive, Brandon is going to be finishing out his last two matches and seeing if he can catch up to get in the money at least. So, uh, let's see. We have live updates. It looks like Mason and Dan are playing currently. And when they're finished, they're going to have Mason and Joe on video. So up to that point, I'm just going to jump over there and see what's going on. It looks like uh, that's those are uh, fingernails that I recognize as Brandon's fingernails. I don't know who this person on the right is with the orange sleeves, but let's let's uh let's just throw some chat in here. So we got Brandon on, and it looks like oh, the raging Levine himself is coming into the booth to uh to help us out. Still nursing that uh that nice sour on his, oh, yeah. well, I got a his beer. Ooh. If there's, look, if there's a sour beer just sitting around and people aren't drinking it, I'm here to appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, that's what I appreciate about you. Uh, so who, who is playing against Brandon right now? Uh, that's a good question. I'm going to have to take about 10 or 20% off of it and go take a look. Yeah, yeah no, that's good. That's good. Uh, we got an orange sleeves over there and very boring looking fingernails. Alec. Okay, so Alec is one of our live live people that could still make it to the semifinals. Yeah, Alec was was uh, Alec's been very happy with like his his increased uh, amount of preparation yes. for this this event. When I was talking to him here in the booth, uh, he seemed like he he felt a lot better about the work he had done coming into this event, and I thought that was awesome. Like, right. I was saying this earlier, but everybody put in the work. Uh, it's been very impressive to me. Like, this is a format where it's very easy to phone it in and be like, "Yeah, I know how uh, how formats work." Yeah. Uh, but VRT is just like such a strange, weird animal compared to everything else. Is Alec uh, really still X one? I think he is. I think he's still live for finals. Wow. Let me double check that though. 
Yeah. Oh, Alex, I'm being told. Kyle says Alec is 3-2. and 3-2. Two. Three and two. Okay. I think he may have lost against uh, Jen, against John Ryan. Oh, okay. So, oh, no, he's 3-3 three, three and three now. Oh, okay. Okay, so the only person that can catch John Ryan is Mason. Right. At this and point. he was going to game three uh, against Dan. Oh, okay. Dan Good. Dan took down game two. He he underworld breached down to just the lotus pedal in his yard, resolved paradigm shift, and then tossed his oracle to win. Sure. So. Uh, and Brandon is currently two and three. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, Brandon's doing a great job as always. He has a mystical tutor in hand, archive trap, staff caster mage. Is that a, a basic island? I believe and... that's a mystic sanctuary. Yeah, okay. And an Ashiok dream. And an Ashiok. Okay, so lots of tutoring denial. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Uh, Alex uh, Mox is in play. <laughs> Obviously, incredibly sad that he took the Mox Pearl, but a devoted druid still came out of it. Do we think? Do we know that that Mox Pearl has cost Alec a game yet? I don't know that it has. I've not heard confirmation, but I've seen the sadness in his eyes. Yeah, and, and that indicates to me that it definitely has. I think that at minimum, it has caused some. It has caused him some grief. Yes, and that that is worth something. Mm-hmm. Getting a text. Oh no, my watch wants me to know that I can still close my move and exercise rings. Fantastic. Well, keep drinking that beer. <laughs> I, I I cannot imagine that the Mox Pearl has not cost him a game. It's, it has to have, right? Like. He, his deck is so green reliant yeah. that there's no way that, that that white makes up for it. No, there's there's no way. I mean, it's still a mox, right? Let's oh yeah. Be, let's be real. It's even if it was very good. Even it was if it was the the uh, the five color proxy staple mox crystal that just made a uh, made a colorless, <laughs> right? A card that does not exist nominally. <laughs> I love mox crystal. And I think they should print it. I agree. I think it. I, I think it should be printed in like. Look, if Soul Ring Commander can be Legends printed too. in every Commander set, then yeah. Mox Crystal can be printed just too. Give me, just give me Mox Crystal as a Mythic Rare in Commander Legends too. You sure. We all know what's happening. Gavin, please. Yep. Seems like a good, fair thing. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm using up my one Gavin, please, on this. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle points out that it could easily be turned into an Elk. Mm. Uh, yep. Hey, fair you know point. what? If... <laughs> if, if anything, anything can be an Elk... Well, most things can be an elk. Devoted druid doing a little extra work here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Finale of death. Oh, is he going to oh, finale right? of vizier? He's only tutoring for one, right? Am I misunderstanding that? Well, he he's oh, uh, he tapped, untapped. He, he tapped, untapped, and tapped again. Okay, so it's, yep, time, to it's time for vizier. Is that game? Uh, because Brandon has nothing in hand that can stop that. He has a brainstorm. That's yeah, it. That's bad. Oh, Mason took down Dan in game three. Is now up to five and oh, one. Oh man! So, so he's got one match left, and if he wins it, he's going into the finals with John Ryan Hamilton. The dream is alive. You know, we could see that giant killer get signed in the finals. I I really would love to see that. By I, a Chicago I, and I love John Ryan Hamilton. Me too. So don't get me wrong. He is attractive, smart, and just an all-around good guy. <laughs> but. If I could watch him lose on camera, I would just laugh for the next week. We love to see we love to see people get dethroned here. Yeah, I want to see the heroes fall, yeah. right? This is like, show me that invincible storyline and show me why superheroes are bad. Yes, yes, yes. Give me, give me fate Marvel Phase Three. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's let's be clear. Give me the Marvel version of that, please. Please don't give me Justice League. I no, will no. I will reject it. <laughs> I, I also am not a huge fan of the like, what's that terrible show with. Uh, the, the terrible show on Amazon Prime, The Boys. The boys. I, I don't want to watch The Boys. I want to watch characters I care about that yeah. are not bad people. So, okay, the only show that I... Like, if I'm going to watch a show that's just about bad people, yep. it needs to be, like, Always Sunny, where the characters are consistently getting their comeuppance. Yes. Right? Like, where it's where it's consistent... Where the show is like, these are bad people, and you should hate them. <laughs> right. <laughs> or, or even, like, one step beyond that, like, Breaking Bad. Yes. Where, where it's like, I know they're going to get their thing at the end of it, but, like... I'm just sick of seeing the real world where bad people win out, and Oof. I don't want to see that in TV yeah. anymore. I'm, I'm, I, I am, I too am tired of that narrative. Yeah, it, it, uh, it exhausts me. But anyway, it seems like uh, bad people lost this game. Uh, Brand, <laughs> Brandon successfully lost. And that's exciting. <laughs> So uh, wow, Brand- Brandon's having a tough day, you know. He he really is. He, his, wait, you put the he drafted. A, he doesn't get the X, right? Well, you're right. You're right. <laughs> this is why I'm not allowed to control he things. He doesn't deserve the X. Yeah. 
Y'all like y chat likes the boys. Our opinion is unpopular. Well, I mean, people can like bad things. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, the, the boys is, a, is an incredibly well directed show, good cinematography, and has a terrible message. And all of those things can be true at the same time. I chat friends in chat. I love you. I respect your opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't like this show. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I am glad that that show was created, yeah. and I'm glad that people get to watch it. But it feels like a Punisher arc that gets misinterpreted a whole lot to me. Yeah, I don't like if 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 it's not one of those shows where I'm like I think this is like actively super harmful. Right. Because if, if it were, I would be taking chat to task. Believe me, I'm pointing my <laughs> finger at the screen right now. You can't see it, but I am. Uh, but but it's not one of those. I don't think. So let's note that Brandon is currently taking out seven cards from his deck what? right now. Okay, let's 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 go to the let's go to the deck list. What do we think Brandon is doing? Yeah, that's a lot of cards to take out of a deck that seems pretty chock full. Brandon wants to kill stuff, right? Brandon wants engineered explosives. Brandon, Brandon wants... also entered in with forty three cards in his deck, so he has some flex room. <laughs> oh, I oh I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not going to say that that's wrong, but it definitely is unusual. Okay, I'm, I hear my name. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be right back. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Eric, and uh, that usually means something Yes, uh, so Eric's going to resolve some horrible rules issue, um, probably involving, if I had to guess, I, w I would guess it probably involves Stephen Hagen, uh, but we'll see. Uh so looking at his deck, Arcane Denial seems very possible. Like, Brandon probably is not comfortable with Alec having a whole lot of ways to win the game immediately. Um, I could see Sherlock Isle coming in. Okay, sounds good. It was just a question about, like, the length of the lead on the tank operation. If I kill it in response to the ability, does yeah. the thing still get exiled? And the answer is yes, you get wrecked. Yeah, you get wrecked, you don't get the thing. Yeah, you, you don't get your XX. <laughs> so my speculation is that Brandon is bringing in his anti-unfair cards. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. Arcane Denial is almost assuredly coming in at this point. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I don't know what else is coming in. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Shellback Isle, perhaps? We could see something like... Uh, uh, yeah, we, we could see Drown in the Lock here just as a removal spell. Because That's Alec is, is putting some cards into his graveyard via those fetch lands and such. Yep. Um, and I mean, Arcane Ar Drown in the Lock is also just a good card regardless. Yeah, I'm interested in the... I'm, I'm interested in the calculus of not main decking Drown in the Lock. It does seem strange to me. Because it's relevant all the time. It's not like a removal spell or a counter spell. It's yes. It's both of those things. Right. Uh... Lucia, TNN? cute little Audrey, Otter Baby is going to stay in the sideboard. Yeah. True Name seems fine to bring in. I mean, it blocks, right? Like, I guess. Yeah, there's just so many cards that are in the deck. I don't know what's not in the deck. Is Tanglewire really in the... Oh, Mesmeric Orb. He mm. was really, like, preaching up Mesmeric Orb, so I'm sure that's coming in. Mm, okay. I guess Alec does have a lot of permanence. So Mesmeric Orb does uh, have increased relevance here. Alec, uh, of course, playing the untapped Temple Garden here, playing the Birds of Paradise. Yep. Brandon going to... Uh, looks like an upkeep top. That's... Yeah, you're right. That is strange, though. There's an Ashiac Dream Render that he's considering. So the upkeep top is one of those things where... I feel like when you upkeep top, it's kind of like taking a payday loan, right? <laughs> it's one of those things where you're like, you feel like you need it, and then you take it, and then it just bites you in the ass later. But sometimes you really need it. Yeah. I don't think that's, this is the time, though. No, he has plenty of lands already, so it, it's very much him trying to avoid drawing a land right now. Right. Uh, Avi, I do like the comic book Invincible. I feel like... I have not seen the show enough to have opinions on it, but I've I've neither read nor seen. I would like to fix the first one and then decide on the second one. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so Brandon is now at the unenviable position of having to drop a turn two play after having spun the top. Yep. So Brandon drops the swamp, and what he's he's got mana crypt in his hand. Actually, that might oh never mind. He's passing. Yeah, he dropped a swamp there, so I don't think he has a lot of black cards he can drop. No, black is mostly, you know, black black is the other color on uh, on, on uh, Drown in the Lock, right? right? Black is the other color on his Ashiox. Yes. He doesn't have black spells, he has blue-black spells. And I feel like that's what he was considering, is he spun the top, 
then saw Ashiok Dream Render, which would be incredible to do, mm, uh, mm-hmm. and then couldn't play it because, because yeah, Ashiok is is a fantastic way to spit out some blockers in front of this uh, like aggressive deck. Yep. Okay, so so there's a uh, is safe that old elite there. Oh, safe old elite. Okay. Uh, the the classic uh, linchpin of the Shadowmoor era standard little kid green white deck. Um, yes, uh, that's a good, really long way of saying a bad card. <laughs> They told me when I when I went to uh, Doug's unaccredited, unaccredited commentator academy. They told me to be positive. Okay. Oh, yeah. Brandon going for the old uh, use top spin top maneuver. Ooh, that's interesting. So it looks like he buried the top there. I think. No, he did. Yeah. I, I, he didn't. He didn't like shuffle the deck or anything. So no. it's not gone forever, but it's it's sitting there. Okay. Brandon freeing himself from the oppressive yoke of Sensei's Dividing Top. We all appreciate that in commentary. Freeing us, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I know Brandon was very excited about getting Energy Flux versus mm-hmm. Energy Field. There, there was a, a mix-up there when we first uh, handed the cards out. Ah, so. uh, yes, Energy Field, a very different card from Energy Flux. Uh, very good still, yeah. also VRD playable. I was going to say, I believe I've seen Energy Field in VRD previously, but yes, it was Flux. He wanted Flux. He even said, this is the one that gives artifacts <laughs> upkeep. So we all knew, but the wrong thing got printed. It yeah. happens. Well, hand it to him, rather. that one's been both been printed since yeah. the past five years. So right, so we you know those cards are probably next to each other in the box. Too. You're right. Uh, Get probe. It, okay. Get probe is a card that I really love in VRD and hate in every other format. Now I have an important question for you about about sort of the VRD metagame. Yes. Did Alec end up with a Pikachu bandage on his hand? Uh, he ended up with a. Paw Patrol bandage on his oh, hand. Heck yeah. uh, we were looking for the Pikachu one and couldn't find it, but uh, he has a Sky bandage. Safe uh, hold Elite and its team of elves are here to save the day. Yep. <laughs> I do like that there was a competition for elves in this format where <laughs> Alec wanted them for his like weird three card combo deck, yeah. and then Mason wanted them for his mono green elf ball deck. I just. I love VRT. <laughs> it's it's so really delightful. <laughs> So if we flash back in time, uh, I believe it was the, it was one of the, uh, one of the Shotgun Lotus tournaments, I think around four or five, Yeah. there was somebody that went Black Lotus into an Elf Ball deck. Uh, ah, think... here it is, here it is, yes, Nate Heist. Yeah, Nate Heist did it in VRD5. Oh my God. Uh, so that's the closest equivalent to the deck we saw today out of Mason. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, I think Mason actually was more inspired from some later drafts that we're closer to the Chicago area. Yes. But if you wanted to watch a really deep dive into the elf ball strategy, I think Nate Heiss actually had a less interesting version of the deck Although than Mason gets. Although he does have Edric, Spymaster of Trest here, which I think is a very uh, very interesting pickup. Correct. I think it was just a more, uh, it was a more all-in elf ball, I'm going to attack you, as opposed to Mason's deck, which seems to have some more, uh, some more late game potential. I don't know if you saw what Mason was doing during the draft portion. Like, especially in the later rounds, once he, like, solidified he was in Elves, mm-hmm. he had, like, his tablet, which had Scryfall, with this yeah. long list of Elves, and he had his phone, where he was, like, looking up different Elf decks in different formats. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about you. Uh, so, but... so Mason never <laughs> won to turn down some popular positivity. <laughs> When uh, when hearing about it, so, uh, so we were just talking about your your the way I saw you like in the late picks with your notebook writing down elf cards with like your tablet on Scryfall and your phone looking at different deck lists. And I was like, this guy is like the the epitome of flexibility in this format. I just thought that was so interesting. And, and this one, Brent, Brent has resolved his mesmeric orb Ooh. though. So there's a lot of potential for uh, for Alec to have a whole bunch of mill happening here. And uh, it looks oh like Alec got God. green frozen for quite a lot of cards here. Loaming Shaman to shuffle it back in yeah. the deck. Alec lives to fight another day. That Loaming Shaman is a card that has really been providing him a ton of value it in a bunch of different matchups. Some there were some goofs about Loaming Shaman in the draft room when it was picked. It was, you know, it's the, a bad card. The working man's endurance, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a bad card, but it's a bad card that does a good thing, and yeah. that's what matters sometimes. And you know what? It's a three-two body, <laughs> and we need to, we we've learned today that we need to respect creatures. So so 
the person that turned me on to this card is Jeff Blyden, mm. who obviously VRD All Star. Uh, but he he turned me on to this in the context of modern shamans as a deck. Yes, yes. Uh, where Loaming Shaman is one of the crucial pieces that ends up just like you play it in. in I think it was actually not modern. It was EDH. He oh, yeah. He played it in this uh, this strange like centaur shaman deck that tapped shamans to turn them into Llanowar elves. Oh, oh, was it? Uh, uh... Starts with a K, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, well, there's the there's the druid one that will tap druids for mana, right? Yeah, there was that one. But this was a shaman specific deck. Anyway. Oh gosh. Oh, I think I know what you're saying. Anyway, yeah, Je- yeah. Jeff is full of all sorts of strange, very or strange EDH decks that are not quite comp art REL or comp EDH decks, but still are like right on that line, and can have a great fun at tournaments. So. Jeff, Jeff is like, uh, in terms of like coming up with really cool ideas yes and and just like creating fun and interesting concepts that do really cool stuff jeff is jeff is an all-star and and he's he's also just a great dude right yeah he couldn't make it this weekend he's in minneapolis uh but he'll be here next one for sure you you know you're you're never gonna have a bad time when jeff biden's around so uh what's brandon doing right now Brandon is shell dock isling i did not see what he got because we were we were talking about somebody else who's not even here well jeff is worth talking about yeah jeff's great uh, so, so things going on on Alex out of the battlefield. It seems like there isn't a close to infinite combo right now. Uh, is that an Ivy something? What What is this? Uh, is this? We've got the chatter or something. <laughs> Ivy Lane Denizen, Chatter Fang. We got none of none nope, of those. neither of those. Yeah, they're not here. Uh, Ashiok Dream Render is is here to tear up Alex Graveyard and uh, it, Mill Alex tear up his graveyard. Make sure none of this Loaming Shaman crap ever happens again. Yes. Uh, Alec does have in play this green creature, however, that has Evolve, I believe? Uh, no, he just has Birds of Paradise, Loaming Shaman, and Safe Hold Elite. Safe Hold Elite, god. Once that... again, and, and it's, so the thing is, it's the, the weird, uh, it's the Unlimited Masters version of Safe Hold Elite. Right, it's not the one I'm used to. That's got a little bit of, uh, yeah, if you, if you go down, if you go down to the Shadowmoor version, you'll, you'll see the one Right, it's the one holding the sword, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this art, by the way. Yeah, I don't... it's really just a clean line through. Anyway, it's great. Yeah, I know but they have a different style now. Blah blah blah. But <laughs> every like time I one. see the every time I see that card, I'm just like, well, that's a card that's going to combo off with some other card that he plays. Yeah. Turns out that's inaccurate. It's going to combo with nothing, and if he gets two other cards, it can cause him to, I don't know, gain some life or something. It I does. It, it's like a it's like a third tier extra combo piece that can like it does it's it, it does seems something. bad. It seems very bad. Yeah, I mean, it's just a redundancy piece. Sure. It's not. It's his worst card, right? Yeah, and I think that's fine. Every deck needs a worst card. Yeah. It's it's the. Uh... Oh, he managed to kill off the Ashiok. Ashiok down. Okay, that's a big deal. But he is still getting very much wounded uh, by that mesmeric orb. I mean, yeah, if he keeps playing zero cards, he'll end up milling to a turn. Yeah. Well, the, there's just this very interesting tension, right? Between Alec wanting to play creatures to beat up Brandon so that he doesn't get to cast cards like Fractured Sanity and Tasha's. Alec is under 10 cards at this point, though. Alec is... Oh, Alec's going for it. Eladomri's oh Call is God. being cast. And that means there's another card being cast. Yep. Okay. So Alec has one more turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be fair, Brandon is at 13 right now and has what looks like at least 5 damage coming his way. Yeah. So if if Alex able to drop, I don't I don't know what he's dropping right now, but Alex picks up Ranger Captain of Eos goes and casts that tutor he's again. To tutor for a one drop, which he can't cast drop. this turn. I mean, it can't be a Arbor Elf or Drive at Arbor. Yeah. But what he can do here is he can pop the Ranger Captain in Brandon's upkeep to prevent him from casting non-creature spells. Sure. And then at least. But then he beats him down to eight. Not get killed by. Okay, he's picked up carrion feeder. Okay. So he must have something in hand. He he must have vizier in hand. But he's not going to have time to attack with carrion feeder. Right. Alec doesn't have it at concordant crossroads or anything, right? There's no haste in his it's deck. Not, it's not in play. He does. He he does not have concordant crossroads. Yeah, that's that's in Mason's deck. So I, I'm I'm interested to see how Alex can come out of this because I see I see eight damage on board. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's a possibility of him getting two more turns. Yeah, no, I, 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 I struggle to imagine how Alec would uh, would leverage 
Hey, he, he, he's going to get another turn. He's going to untap and draw unless something weird happens here. But I struggle to imagine how Alec could win this game at this point. It's a, it's, it's a tough situation here. So what we're going to see here is Brandon is rolling for Mana Crypt. Yes. And Brandon's going to take that bolt down to 10. But that's still not quite the life total that Alec is looking for, right? He's got 8 power on the board. So he can't quite make things happen. His hand has Carrion Feeder, Mystery Card, and what looks like Worldly Tutor and Horizon Canopy. So he's really going to have to make something happen on his turn. I don't know what that's going to be. So Brandon says, how many cards are in your library? Let's have a count. 8, 9, 10... It looked like there were 18 cards left in Alec's library, which is actually more than I thought there were. So that's interesting. That means Alec has a little more time than we might previously have thought. Oh. My. God. Because it's under 20, Brandon has just cast Emrakul the Aeon's Storm. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. Brandon has managed to board in Emrakul the Aeon's Torn and... Floated, I guess, floated on top with top. What on earth is happening? Emmercool. It okay. So that's that's gonna be that's gonna be it here. I don't see how Alec comes back from this. Now, Emmercool can't attack yet. It doesn't have haste, so I don't know why we're tapping it, right? Okay, or was that? Was that in the, the end step here? Is that what we're saying? And then Alec is going, in your upkeep, I'm going to Ranger Captain you. Okay, so my prediction was correct. Alec is going to Ranger Captain uh, Brandon in his upkeep. However, that leaves Alec with seven permanents. And uh, seven's not a lot more than six, which is interesting. Uh, so I don't know if you know this, Mark, but uh, uh, there's a creature on Brandon's side of the battlefield. It's kind of big. It does seem like substantially larger than 14 squirrels. I yeah. don't know how exactly many it would heart. Uh, could, you, <laughs> could you put this on a play mat, or how would the exact this <laughs> work? You know, I'll leave that for the the, our, the great mathematicians of our time to figure out. But Brandon, at the end of Alex's turn, was like, hey, how many cards are in your library? And Alex <laughs> counted out, I think, 18. And then oh, Brandon God. was like, cool, and we're cool? <laughs> That's just rude. Yeah, on the bright side, Alec will not have to <laughs> orb. Oh! That's so incredibly oh, that's, sad. That, that's painful. That hurts. Well, luckily, Alec is up one one game. So this match is going to go to game three. You that's know, exciting. I, Brandon's had a tough day, right? He's had some missteps. He's had some bad draws. He's had some bad luck. But Brandon got to play him or cool off Shell Doc Isle, and if that doesn't heal some of those wounds, man, I don't know what will. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really the best feeling, right? Like this feels like a, a high end cube match right now, uh, where Alec managed to draft some green cards that cost two mana and make two twos, and Brandon got to cast Emrakul. Alec is uh wow, Alec, a valiant competitor here. Alec continuing yeah. with the match here under the em under the gun from Emrakul. Goes and takes one from his rising canopy, and uh, I think he's scooping up. Oh, okay, we're. Oh, that's an aggressive handshake. Brandon, Brandon really wants to shake hands despite this being game two? Question <laughs> mark. Uh, I've brought you some ultraviolet oh, sour because uh, I hate sours. This I is love four hands. Oh, okay. I didn't uh, know they did a sour. That's rad. It's surprisingly not terrible. Four hands, another uh, uh, St. Louis area brewing company, and it obviously like... nowhere close to as good as Anheuser Busch. No, but no, no, still no, no, in no, the no, same no, ballpark. We, we, we are. It, it's it. You, you can't fight the king. It's the king of beers. It says it on the bottle. Yeah, if it's not label. Do? What are you gonna do? Right. Um, so it looks like we're going to game through here, and it looks like you have a second shift uh, Art of Neurosis. Art of Neurosis is really fantastic. That's a fantastic beer. Now, you're you're an IPA guy, yeah? I do. I I, I just really like, I don't know, I like everything, right? Yeah. Other, sours are the only beers that I really can't handle, uh, but Art of Neurosis, and in general IPAs, I feel like, have a nice, like, interesting taste to them that uh, has... 
the same kind of joy I get from a really like junipery IPA, right? I feel like a lot of the the wonderful benefits I get from IPA or IPAs are similar to the, like the strange, uh, like strange things I get from strange gins. Yeah, right? and that's yes. what I look for. Mm, something like botanist, right? You know, I mean, that's that's sure. the more mainstream version of that, where but where you get that that really herby gin, right? You got it. Yeah, Ransom Old Tom is my personal favorite. It mm. almost looks like a. It's like brown it looks like a bourbon almost Ooh. but it, it, it's a it's a gin that has a ton of flavor to it there's some interesting japanese gin actually these oh yeah days. same ideas yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. um what are, what are your thoughts on the like juicier like sit, more citrusy east coast ipas how do you feel about those I, I like them i do think that the uh that that the citrus will add more flavor than it detracts from it so i feel like gins are like oftentimes just like so herbal that they're like almost difficult to um to kind of like get the flavor through all of the like just hit in the face with uh with a bunch of hops kind of feel that you get from a kind of similar to ipas right Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. but i feel like gins oftentimes will try to overwhelm you with flavor uh and that the um, that the East Coast ones adding in some fruit really does help reduce that just like reliance on one direction. Yes. So you end up with a multi kind of faceted gin, which is interesting. Well, for the IPAs, I, I have some good citrusy IPAs that I'll bring by. I'll, I'll bring a couple cans by next time I come by. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. Uh, six deep. I'm excited just to watch what happens coming out of the Wisconsin Vintage History Draft. Mm. Uh, whenever they they do their first one, that'll Heck be exciting yeah. to see. Um, and I'm excited to see what Miller does there. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Alec and Brandon going into game three. Um, oh, just the boss. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, I'm a serious <laughs> type. I wore my Red Sox hat here today. Yeah. I didn't really enjoy the memes that went around the renaming of uh, of of the Guardians uh, baseball the team. The Cleveland Guardians, yeah. Yeah, where people were complaining about how Guardians such a boring name, and then everyone was just talking about how there's a whole bunch of baseball teams named after socks. Right. <laughs> and, like, if you really want a boring name, you don't have to look beyond Ohio. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, uh, the, the Red Sox will forever be associated with Kurt Schilling and the Game 6 Bloody Sock. And uh, Kurt, <laughs> Kurt Schilling is uh, turf garbage, and he can go to hell. So, uh... <laughs> so for me, I... Uh, I for the longest time because I grew up kind of in Michigan supporting the White Sox actually not because I was closer to Chicago than I was to Detroit. Uh, I didn't understand that the Black Sox and the White Sox were not the same team, or were the same team. <laughs> right, right, right. So I was like, well, yeah, the Black Sox are really bad, but I like the White Sox a lot, yeah. and that that was a that was a big part of my childhood. So. Ah, yes. Uh, yeah. Learning learning about Shoeless Joe and all of that oh, all that man. stuff. It's pretty rough. Baseball's baseball's got some got some stuff. I did I because I did mention my Red Sox hat. I do I do I it is it is important for me to mention that the Boston Red Sox have a terrible racist fan base and I do not uh-huh. support that. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of stuff at Fenway Park that I would never say out loud because oh my god it was hateful. It is confusing for me about baseball that the Red Sox fans often wear green or red socks. And yes. that just doesn't, like, I understand rationally where it's like, okay, yeah, there's Irish heritage. Like, a lot of it makes sense to me, but it also is just very confusing. Yeah, it is It is. It is kind of a th- weird thing. Archive trap, getcha! Oh my god, turn Archive one. Archive trap, no, I haven't played a single, oh. Brandon's like, let me mill you, please, yeah. sir. He's let just... me provide you valet milling service. This is absolutely the Spider-Man mill where you just like gesture with the two middle fingers asking for your deck and then just flip over cards for them. The Boston Gruel sucks. God, yeah, I would, oh, I mean, you know, back back when we had our, our big, back when Mo Vaughn and Jose Canseco used to play for the Boston Red Sox, we were kind of a Gruel smash team, but uh, I'm getting a little deep in baseball world now. Let's get back to magic. So Alec is looking for his, his, his graveyard, and it seems like he milled a lot of good things. Yes. Nothing that is backbreaking. There's, yeah. no, there's no one piece that is going to stop him. That's he, the really interesting thing about Alec's deck is that there's so much redundancy yes. that, like... He actually has, uh, unlike Steven, who has a yes. really bad matchup against this kind of deck, because if you lose half your deck in, in two-card Monty, you're just like, you might just be dead. Right. Alec has so much redundancy, and the tutors, he may well be fine. It, it does seem like Alec is really playing a modern deck, right? Yes. And I think this is the same thing he did last time, is he built a modern deck that plays fine against a VRD. E, honestly. e for one. Wow. Solid call. Yeah, that really does, like constrain a lot of Alex's choices. Mm. Choices in the future, too, right? It's not just, like, 
this is powerful against what he has on board, but it stops Alec from making plays. Yes, yes. Yeah, Alec has to... Alec, Alec now has to... Th- that's the, the magic of an onboard Wrath, a card like Engineered Explosives or Pernicious Seed, where you now have to... You, you now have to play your opponent. And you have yes. to say, how deep do I have to go on one drops before you pop this? Right, and you, you'd think that most players would say, okay, this card is out there, I can't deal with it, so... Uh, or, or, this card is out there, and my opponent's played two cards, I'll get the straight two for one. But a lot of times you just wait. You wait past that point. You wait until they play three cards, or maybe even four cards, because you know they can't win except through their combo in this format. Wait, sorry. Why is Luris on the battlefield and Alex tapped? Oh, wait, is he searching? Is he tutoring for it? What's what are we doing? That can't be right. I don't what's, know. What's happening here? He's played Luris. He's looking through his graveyard. How is how is Luris in play? Uh, okay. There was no Black Lotus in Alex's seat. I'm pretty sure. Right. What happened here? Maybe he's trying to cheaty face it into play. <laughs> I mean, he be. does have cheaty faces. His 46th card. Uh, what? That is Luris, right? I'm not going crazy. No, no, you're right. That's a Luris. That's Luris of the Dream Den. How? Oh, did he? He doesn't have the reanimate. Brandon has the reanimate. What am I thinking? Safeful delete. Spells cost mana. What's happening? Do you mind? Do you mind? You running oh, out there? I'll be right back. Yeah. Spells cost mana, team. Okay, so we have a, a safe hold elite as well, plus the uh, the Birds of Paradise. Uh, there's an engineered explosives on Brandon's side of the battlefield. Uh, ah, there was an unearth card cast. After getting milled off the archive trap, he unearthed into play a Lurus of the Dream Den. Yeah. And then Lurus of the Dream Den allowed him to cast in this safe hold elite. Yep, after bringing back the uh, the fetch land from the yard, I guess. Yeah, so Urza Saga, oh, no, he's he's not, not, rather, yeah. Urza Saga is not just a simple card that's in Steven's deck that no one will ever want to see him play. Yeah. It's instead also a magic set that was put in play a long time ago, probably when you were like, I don't know, 30, 35? Yeah, I was, I, was, I was very young. I was a child of, yeah. of, of about 32 right. when, when Urza's legacy was, 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 was created, yes. <laughs> uh, and, and it had this other card called Unearth in it that allowed for Lurus to come into play. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah, Unearth, great card. Now modern legal. Uh, so really? Yeah, it's an MH two, right? That Am I going crazy? Oh my god, that's modern is a broken format. Nobody plays Unearth. No one plays modern. I play modern. I do play modern too. I, say, I play Living End. <laughs> I play Storm, <laughs> which is kind of like not playing modern. To be fair. I mean, I still have Storm built. Let's be real. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Elaine has comments. Elaine, Elaine wants to tell me that I don't play Magic the Gathering. I think, <laughs> I think Elaine... <laughs> Elaine has feelings, and Elaine wishes she was here. <laughs> I play Modern and I play Living and are not congruent statements. Yeah. Uh, so Elaine will be here for next... in three months. Yeah. Uh, oh. she's having, uh, she's having issues with the border, and with, uh, the... with the access to American customs. Yes. But I think she'll be here soon. Yeah, so. I'm, I look... I, I, I miss Elaine, and I, I look forward to seeing her. I have seven chess books on the shelf that are all looking forward to Elaine being here. Ah, yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what does Brandon have going on here? Brandon's got this, uh, this, this EE on one, and he's got a Mana Crypt. Okay. And an Urborg. And right. an island. I and agree with all those things. None of those things seem like particularly useful things no, right now. No, that's the thing, is that he's not doing anything, and Alec is doing this very powerful thing. I don't know if you've heard of these, but okay. in Magic the Gathering, we have these these cards called creatures yep. that have power and toughness and oh. attack you and make you lose life. But Brandon's life total is at 20 right now. It, it, it does seem to be at 20, and we're rolling what appears to be a spin down for Mana Crypt, <laughs> which causes me physical agony, but that's fine. Well, according to the rules, that seems fine. Yes, it's not a, it's not a, a card that asks me to roll a d20 so right. the rules are, are the rules are inert on this per- <laughs> on this particular issue <laughs> just dunks please ban spin downs <laughs> i don't think it's gonna happen anytime I soon know. no one beyond you and me cares about spin downs but just cares about spin downs he doesn't want them to be rolled for the d20s and he got his way <laughs> fair enough <laughs> I mean, plenty of people felt that way. Yeah. That's why there were there were the D20s in the packaging. So Brandon, yeah, Brandon does not have a lot of game against... Uh, is that a pa- Is he That's passing a pass the turn? The turn. Yikes. Okay, so... We have five mana sitting there untapped. Mages and mentors just subscribed. Thank you, my dude. 
That is very nice of you. We really appreciate that. Uh, that does sort of help keep the uh, the ring lights on here at uh, at VRDHQ. So we do appreciate it. Uh, I don't I don't know. Mark Mark won't tell you this, but he does spend money on this, and uh, he he does appreciate it when he doesn't just lose all of that. And though he loves this, and he loves all of us, and he loves he loves making this happen. It is nice for you folks to give back. We really appreciate it. Not required. Nobody should feel pressured ever, but it is nice. It, it is very nice when people give back one twenty-fifth of a of a pointer for us, <laughs> uh, which is roughly one twenty-fifth of the cost of a draft. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's it's exciting. This format is just like one that gets so little love, but I feel like is one of the deepest in all of Magic, right? Like, I understand why it's not the entry point yeah. uh, by any means, and it's not the point that people most end up at, right? Like, it's kind of just, like, one step beyond Cube, right? If you really enjoy Magic and really enjoy all the depth of it, this is the spot that you fall into, where it's it's about the most complicated you can fall into, and you end up with a really interesting... Uh, unsolved format that changes a whole lot every three months. There are people in this building who are playing this tournament and doing well who are like, yeah, I don't play Magic basically other than this. Yeah. Yep. Like, it is it is a little bit the home for retired Magic players. Yeah, it really is kind of like uh, one step... It's kind of very similar in EDH, right? Mm -hmm, like, EDH mm -hmm. often will be the spot where after you're done playing competitive Magic, you will play EDH because you've realized the things you like and don't like about Magic, and yep. this is a spot where you can find people that enjoy the things you like. And yeah, VR, VRD is is it often ends up being being a place where the the more competitive among us mm -hmm. who who still like doing wacky stuff. End yes, up. It, it's a spot where you can play Magic, but not have to spend t fifteen hours a week playing Magic yep. too. So it's magic for people with kids. That's the way I think of it. <laughs> Looks like Alec is getting really getting his beat down on. Has transformed his uh, Duskwatch recruiter into the the three three half, which definitely has a name that I used to know. Yeah, um, absolutely. That that other half of Duskwatch recruiter. You no, know, the three three that makes your creatures cost less. Uh, so Duskwatch recruiter is one of those cards that uh, really does feel like it Crown is. Crown Horde Howler. Yeah, that card. Um, it, it's just, I feel like. Flipping it to this half is probably correct some part portion of the time, but is usually not correct. Yeah, I mean, you don't always get to pick, right? Like, yeah, your opponent passes, and you flip it into Kralin Horde Howler, and you're like, well, I can't activate this thing anymore. <laughs> but that is often, like, the Dustwatch Recruiter half is one of the homes for Alex infinite mana, right? Yes. Because he can just go off, go through his deck, find Walking Ballista, and win the game, right? And I'm sure he's won a game that way today. Yes, absolutely. Brandon, up oh, okay. Uh, so we're gesturing toward the vizier. When we gesture toward that vizier, that makes me think that safe hold elite like died and came back or something. But I think Brandon, Brandon wasn't nine as far as the reckoning of the the big old die, and ought to be going to six. Yep, okay, six. Okay. So the the kraken horde something or other hit. And did all damage. Yep, yep, yep. yep so yep. we're at six. Yeah, we're, okay. Well, that was the uh, that was actually the mana crypt damage because oh, he I uh, see. he just got got whacked by his crypt in his upkeep here, which is a little awkward because he is facing down. I mean, yeah, I, actually, he's facing more he's than, dead next more turn. than nine power creatures yeah. anyway, so it really didn't matter that much. So he needs to win now. Yeah, this is the part of Brandon's deck that scares me. Right? Is like, how does he? He just passed the turn again. He must have cryptic command. That's the only thing that makes me make him make me think he's not going to lose. I mean, he may also not have cryptic command, right? He's branded. He has a lot of cards in hand. He does have many cards. That's Yavimaya Cradle of Growth there. But so. yeah, w when he passes the turn with confidence, yeah, you really have to have two choices, right? Either he is sure oh, that he has a oh, game covered, oh. or he is sure he can't win. He's tapping mana crypt. He doesn't have anything. Ah, he's tapping two cards. That means he probably wins the game. Okay, he's brain freezing. Okay. That does nothing. Yep. And he's Narset's reversaling it. Okay, so he's going to mill for six and then lose. Am I understanding? Oh, no, he's going to return it to his hand. Yep. Okay. Okay, and then he'll lose. 
Then he, yep. <laughs> there we go. And there's the handshake. Okay. Wanted to make sure you took the maximum number of actions per hand. Well, Brandon's trying to complete an, a Magic Arena quest, and he yes. just doesn't know that this doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> so Alec goes up to 4-3 here, winning that close game three. I mean, that was a that was an exciting match, yeah. though. To be honest, that was really fun. That was a good one. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's coming. Oh, I do know what's coming next. Oh. It's uh, it's it's going to be Mason and Joe for Mason's really? final match of the day. Okay. Or maybe final match of the day. Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, if he wins, it's not his final match. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a particularly stressful spot to be in. Yeah, this is exciting. This is an exciting time. These are these are just complicated times, right? Like the Incredible Hulk said. Yeah, let's take a look at these standings. Yes, oh, yes, there they are. Okay, so John Ryan indisputably in first. Yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely in first or second place. Mm-hmm. Mason, however, if he wins this match, ends up taking the final match to time. He right. has to force John Ryan into a into an on-screen finals match. Or I I okay, so we. <laughs> We may have, like, a weird pileup for fourth place. Ooh. Okay. We're, we're going to have a really, yes, interesting pileup for fourth place because we've got Steven and Andrew at three and four. Now, three and four, if I'm understanding the tournament math correctly, three and four is the fourth place record, right? Someone who is three and four will be fourth place because if Mason yeah. goes, whether Mason goes six, one, or five, two, uh, he and John Ryan will occupy the top two spots. Alec is indisputably third. No one else can get to four wins, which means yes. Stephen and Andrew and possibly Brandon. And no, literally everyone below literally everyone Alec. Literally everyone's live for fourth. Yes, everyone's live for fourth other than everyone below Alec. Congratulations, everyone. You're all live for prizes. <laughs> so, yeah. okay, yes, we're looking at the standings right now. 3-4 is the fourth place record. Because we have Steven here leaning a little closer. Yeah, so Steven, the other, uh, other BRD council yes. So take a take a look here, Steven. So we've got we've got John Ryan at six one. Right. Mason will be either six one or five two. So he's locked for one of the top two right. spots. Alec four three locked in for third place right. because no one else can get above three wins. He's got Ryan's here. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, well. Yes. So every person below, every Alex person a game left. that isn't locked Alex for three. Yes. Yeah. So Alex locked for third place. Yes. Straight up locked for third place, which means Stephen, Andrew, are are both locked into the tie for fourth, and all of Brandon, Dan, and Joe, as of these standings, are. <laughs> yeah. 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 Joe still has two left to go. So literally everyone is live for prizes right now. What is happening? <laughs> this is delightful. This is why I play Magic. Yeah. Here, here, put this on. So my green black versus Andrew's white blue. Um, I... So game one... Um, I, I hit him. I hit a counter spell on him off, or a counter spell on Solitude off of him, sure. and just kind of roll from there. Yeah. Um, game two, I've got him pretty much locked down, and oh, uh, game one, I also he turned to uh, fetch, and I opposition agent it and lock and blew him out. That's right? dirty. Right. So game two, I've pretty much got him locked down, and he goes for the enlightened tutor, and I opposition agent it. Um, but I. I see the tie. I see the. I should have taken either the Calder or the Sword of Feast and Famine and just gone to the attack. But I played defensive, saw the Time Vault, and took it. Sure. And yeah. he top decks the Sword of Feast and Famine later on as he's dying to kill, swing for lethal on me. Uh, but if I had done the Calder, I think I just win. But uh, game three, he mills to, mills to five, and I open with duress. Sure. But his hand is land, land, tinker, mana vault, uh, Time Vault. All right, we're just playing around with some cameras right now. Yeah, go for it, please. 
So yeah, I, but I take a Steinfeld off the dress, and then I end up strip mining his land and de- demonic tutor of a Karn, and he was actually closer than it should have been for all that. But uh, it was it were good games. Uh, so we have to figure out who's in the feature match right now. I will go tell you. Yeah, that'd be great. Mason on the left, and Joe on the right. Uh, Mason is obviously the most complicated match here, because if Mason is currently a 4-1, uh, if Mason ends up winning out, that forces John Ryan into the finals. Uh, so he's probably, Joe is probably 4-2. Let's see. Let's we'll, we'll pull up Joe a minute. Let's see. Uh, so Mason, we know is the crucial point here, right? Ma- Mason will determine whether uh, Mason will determine whether John Ryan has to force to the finals. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to find out what Joe is up to, but uh, they can figure that out for us. So, but but Mason being at four and one is the really so crucial point here. Joe is two and four. Okay, got it. He's Joe's Joe showing us one and four in ours, and Dan's only showing. Okay. And Mason is first five and one. Right. Yes. Uh, Mason is four and one. Right. No, five, five and one. Five and one. Got it. Yeah, this is both their final matches. Mason said that this is quote the most high pressure match he's ever played. Ooh. So Mason is Mason's feeling pressure, like coming down to St. Louis, engaging in this in this final match that will determine his tournament life, determine whether he can get in the running for those first one pick and then the final three picks in yeah. this uh, alcohol bracket is really the the really difficult part for him. Mason is a non-drinker, particularly it's going to be difficult for him because he has to decide which alcohols he wants to take to give for future people. buy-ins. Yeah, our future right. buy-ins. Yeah, their future buy-ins for VRDs. Um, so Mason is coming in with his elf deck, right? right? Obviously, it's been good for him. I mean, yeah. Elvish Clan Caller in forty fifth pick is the feature card from our perspective because it's an exciting example of the rules. Uh, Leovold Emissary of Trust crashing in against Joe. Uh, what does Joe have going on here? Um, so is that all stuff he's cast so far? I mean, so Joe is going to be coming in with this this deck that he drafted in. Uh, from the position of third position, right? He yeah. he came from starting off with ancestral recall, uh, which is shocking, honestly, coming out of third third space, right? Like normally, ancestral recall comes in second, but he started with ancestral, worked down through a series of counter spells, um, so, Ren and Six, Merchant Scroll. I think Joe went wrong in a couple spots. Uh, I don't think the Ren was over. Shots good. fired. Um, well, he even said to himself, like I was talking to him, Joe's a buddy of mine. Like, so one of the things he did is he kind of got silly tricked into taking the reanimate as a, as a hate or whatever, the animate dead as a kind of a ha-ha against, right. uh, against John Ryan. Which then and, forced him into the world well, torture. Then, instead of just discarding it and saying I made a mistake doing a ha-ha, he went for the world torture. He tried to play right. into it. Yep. But he's been citing it out really heavily. Because so. the only card he's got to win with the world order is like Blue Sun. So, so Bob does point out that if Joe, if Mason loses his match, he may never show his face in public again. This is his final really? match really? on camera. Okay. Uh, so we really have to hope for Mason's sake that he manages to win this one out. No, no, no. Less, I, you know, more, less people in public is good. Let's go for it. <laughs> just just I mean, all good, Mason. I'm just good for the country. Yeah. <laughs> for the good of the country, we just got to do it. So a Dragon's Rage Channeler. This is a card that's relatively new and. Uh, Basically, every time I've seen it, it's been like at least a two, at least a three-three in play. Yeah, I think he broke it a little early. Um, but you know, obviously, I was high on this card during our previews, and I think. Yeah, this is a card that I know you brought up, and I was kind of like, "Ah, eh, well, this feels yeah, like another mid-range garbage." Right. Is but, it card? So the thing that I think with Joe's deck is that he's kind of this like red-blue aggro list, and, and all the games I've seen that he's done well, he's been the red uh, kind of red-blue aggro. Yes. Um, this time he's facing against five different right. elves. Yeah, and that's rough. He doesn't have a sweeper. I told you he didn't pick a pyroclasm. Yeah. Um, pyroclasm feels like a, incredibly strong this match. Yeah. 
Until he gets too many clan clawers that sit her down. You know? But even then, like, yeah, I mean, you're obviously right. But there's just a lot of, there's a lot of elves. Mm-hmm. Or a cyclonic rift. Sure. Cyclonic rift is too slow, but yeah. Chain of Vapor hitting the Leovold, forcing a draw from Mason. Uh, Mason probably choosing not to rebound the uh, the, the Chain of Vapor. See, okay. we, when Mason wrote it, we were talking, I think it was Eric and I, or was it you and I? That were, yeah, we were talking about the Thought Seas earlier that he didn't play, but he was playing Leovold, so he is playing Black in there, so I still don't... I still think the Thought Seas probably could have made the main. He, he decided... But he's 5-1, he's one, who might argue also. Shit, yeah, you know, he, he decided to lean into the, the Elves plan, right. right? He said, I'm Mono Green... Happy to be splashing the other two cards, right? right? This is this is not a deck that's really choosing a bunch of different strategies. Right. He is an elf ball deck that happens to have a couple of the colors. Yeah. Yeah, I had good hate against him, but he had the the natural order for the crater hoof against me game two because I mean I had plague engineer come in and I had toxic in. And, yep. But natural order hoof. Yeah. I was able to kill the hoof and save some damage, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, I feel like like. There are a lot of overall things that we can talk about in this draft, and we probably will. But like the the real thing that shut this draft down for me was the the prevalence of early black discard, and then the fact that no one took sideboard cards to handle things like Iona. Mm-hmm. Right, Iona ended up dominating the entire field because no one deviated outside of their primary color. Yeah, I so I actually lost a lot of focus somewhere in the second pack and I was focusing pretty much only on my own stuff. Right. I mean, I had a lot of sideboard stuff. My, my sideboard was really good, but I didn't see the Iona and didn't think about getting something to deal with that. Right. Um, okay, so there's the first game for Mason. Wow, yeah, just, yeah, just I mean, beating I, down with elves right there. I was there. super happy with my sideboard plan and my sideboard and the sideboard I had, but yeah, I really, like, there were several picks that I just didn't even see happen. I really lost focus and I got a decent night's sleep last night, which is a, not a great night, but a decent night. It, it's hard, right? Like, there's... There's oftentimes a lot of things happening, um, but w- when when one player in particular is kind of pulling ahead in the draft section, you you rely on the other players to check them back. Yeah. Uh, and and when it's 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 incredibly hard to do so when you are focused on your list of seventy cards that you're trying to draft to make sure no one else drafts them. Right. Uh, it's really hard to decide. Yeah, I'm going to decide to deviate from my plan. And instead, pick cards based on his previous picks. Oh man, he took my such more rich, and he didn't even run it. <laughs> so, so let's talk about Mason. What what is Mason going to bring in this match? Um, if he's not main decking it, he'll bring in um guy as Harold. Sure. So. So guy as Harold, we're looking for Caracas. Probably not good enough no, in this match. I don't think so he's, he's pulling up the list. He shouldn't bring in Caracas. Yeah, I mean every player has access to every other player's lists. Yeah, some uh, Elvish clan caller is probably not making the cut this time. Uh, Mason's deck building is excellent. Uh, it's reflective. Of it. Yeah, I mean Mason. I don't know him personally, uh, but from today, it's obvious that he knows what he's doing, right? This is not his first radio. Right. Uh, he's in the double digits of VRDs. Uh, he clearly knows, walking into this kind of format, what he's looking for. Uh, yeah, I don't and think he needs a lot of changes here, really. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's walking in against Joe, who is a little all over the map, uh, kind of on the blue-red uh, kind of Dread Horde Arcanist plan. So, if you're Mason, what are you worried about? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it just... Joe having, like, a bolt, unholy heat, quick. Yeah, again, I, 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 I think this is a pretty square, squarely in, in Mason's favor match. I was, like, looking at this, I just don't see... Like, Gaia's Herald might be useful just yeah, against, I mean, against Joe's counterspells? Yeah, I mean, he's already got Crew Cavern, so Herald comes in. Yeah. Um, but Joe didn't, I mean, how many counters But, but like, maybe Elvish Clan Caller, if you just want to go, like, deeper on the, like, go wide strategy, since Joe's relatively fair. Joe's right. not going to, like, combo you out in turn two. Right, right. Yeah, and, and Clan Caller was good against me. I mean, he... he... Yeah, quick way. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry that you have to, like, deal with Mason on a day-to-day basis. It seems like a much easier strategy when you just avoid him in tournaments, but... Uh, 
if you do have to deal with him, it seems like it's a hard kind of path forward. Uh, I, I assume you're going to be playing against him in future VRDs, uh, as will we, and that's going to be an exciting time. It'll probably level you up a little bit, because Mason obviously knows what he's doing. There we go. There's that Brandon. There's that Brandon Curry real all star card. Yeah. That uh that explains his uh his his top twenty uh very real very very good doctor explanations. <laughs> He's been passing out these cards all day trying to get people to to understand yeah, his uh yeah. He has got like forty two thousand subscribers on his like, TikTok. I, that's almost as many as we have for this vintage history draft. Yeah, exactly. So. We're, we're up there. Yeah. With the Brandon Curry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Brent, Mason does seem like the type that would uh, that would recognize good picks and understandably try to pressure against them when he's playing against them. So, uh, I look forward to seeing him in future drafts. He seems like he has a lot of potential. Seems like he might catch up with Elaine and John Ryan as true juggernauts of this format. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's really nice to have people from out of town visiting and helping to level up St. Louis's uh, draft scene here. Um, I feel like the Vintage Tissue draft community is small enough that it's it really is open to lots of innovation, right? We have lots yeah. of people that come in, and I feel like when Haken came in, bringing in the kind of understanding of how Planeswalkers actually affect the format, it really did change it, right? It was, it shifted from being a, I'm going to draft instant sorceries and draft two card combos into, I'm going to draft Planeswalker grindy decks and force you to answer them. And that shifted the format from being two card combos and answers to two card combos to being uh, a Planeswalker format that allowed for people to interact with other things on top of that, right? Like, I feel like Narset and Karn ended up being the primary boogeyman of the format over uh, things like Time Vault, right? right? Time Vault is still important, but we didn't see any Shatters drafted today. No, and I no. feel like that's a testament to the Planeswalker dominance of this format. Yeah. I do feel there was just not enough answers today, too. No yeah. Vandal Blast, no uh, yep. Shattering Spree. We saw Rex Sage. Yeah, I mean, we saw Collector Roof. We saw lots right. of cards show up, stuff, right. but but there were very few that were truly dominant. Right. Okay, so we see a Savehold Elite, or an Elvish Clan Caller, actually. I think that's an Elvish Clan Caller yeah, in play. It is. That's, that's interesting. That means that he actually is bringing in that card. Hey, he's just going to go more aggro. Double Caller, I mean. Double Caller, okay. So what do you think? I mean, I, I you think we're going to stick with the draft one, you get four... Uh... Yeah, you no. Know, it, it seems it caused one deck to change slightly this, right. this time, which feels yeah, like a very good spot. What is the card on the right side there? Uh, he has got Ancestral and Goyf. So Suspend Ancestral. Yeah. That's a turn we're Okay, got it. Getting to work. We have Alec Shaw hanging out in the booth with us. Uh, obviously, Alec is locked for third place, uh, which is an exciting spot to be. Uh, well out of the running of the fourth place run that's all going to have to compete to decide who ends up getting the last bottle but uh, Alex going to get two picks at the pie we'll, we'll see what happens with Mason and John Ryan this is going to be really exciting if Mason's able to win this match out I do think that like Joe surviving past the first couple turns here and being able to draw up that well, ancestral, yeah. that that that's just like a really powerful spot to be in. Quick what managed to win with a blue white goblin charbelcher list, which is a kind of shocking spot to to win from in a VRD. Charbelcher obviously is known best from its red green days. I don't know how a blue white deck wins, but somehow it managed to do it. Tarmogryph crashing in, dealing a ton of damage, taking him out of 13. Uh, so untapping. I feel like Cavern of Souls is one card that uh, has outperformed my expectations for it. It it just it shows me how much creatures matter in this format. Well, I mean, I, and elves in particular, because you, you have sure. the consistency of type. You know, I mean, I think a lot of people, it's like my one really good card is going to be yes. not counterable, but in elves, it's just like I'm going to <laughs> the stuff I need is going to be uncounterable. 
Yeah, I think you're right on there. So double clan caller is interesting. Both of them pump each other. Yeah. They they provide like a ton of pressure together, whereas each one on their own would be pretty relatively minor. We have an endurance coming in, it looks like. He's pitching a crater hoof, saying I'm light on mana, this isn't gonna happen. Sure. But I will take a three four reach. And reshuffling himself or shuffling Joe? Uh, I think because of the Jace, he's reshuffling Joe here, but I'm okay. not 100% sure. But we got four spiked anyway. Because we were in the middle of a Jace activation at that point. <laughs> Interesting. So I think he was trying to stop the Jace from flipping. So Endurance does have haste then, is that right? Obviously. No, but it didn't matter, it got four spiked. Got it. It's got flash. Yeah, and it's always. Oh, Screech. So yeah, so, and he flipped the Jace. So that was an attempt to stop the flip Jace. Good play. I like it there, you know. Yeah, I mean, Jace, Jace is a card, right? Like, I don't know. I, Jace is one of those cards that came in and I think snuck in under the radar as like, oh yeah, this is the budget Snapcaster Mage. But it ended up like... Mm, unholy Heat with a lot of stuff in the yard there. Oh, man. That's a six damage Unholy Heat. <laughs> yeah, not great when it's the only when it's only killing a two drop, yeah. but... Still. Well, it was a 3 3 2 drop, right? At that point, so I mean, it had to, it needed a 7 yard. That's true. So this card's good. I mean, this card, I, I, I liked the way he drafted this. I mean, in his deck, especially, where he's focused on Delirium. Yeah, I think it's an overall bad card, but in his deck in particular, I think it's very good. Uh, that's a Ren and Six. Yeah. And pinging something for one? Is pinging that right? the other clan cards. So the clan cards are actually only one ones, I guess. Oh my god, I didn't realize they were that small. Yeah, so they were two twos. Until they bumped. So I thought they were two twos, but. Okay, yeah. In that case, right? Mason's locked down. So yeah, well, yeah. it was the mana screw, obviously. It's a big, big part. Sure, of course. Yeah, and Mason, like, isn't coming from a bad spot there. Right. But it is definitely interesting that, uh, that he's able to be disrupted that easily, right? Like, coming from a spot where he has kind of. Dominant board position, multiple lords in play, and then gets two cards in and just completely shot out of the game. Yeah. Can you pull up a uh, clan car? Yes. Again. Yeah, we knew that. I just wanted to see the, the power toughness on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's 1 1. Or just 1. It only finds one card. Yeah, I mean, I think very rarely you're actually in a tutor for them, but it is very convenient in one pick, in 45th pick, to pick four cards. And yeah. I think that's what he was looking for there. Well, in game two against me, he had he hit one off Coco, and it saved, uh, saved yep. up some combat. And that was... Um, and I think Coco's pretty bad in this format normally, but it worked there. <laughs> yeah. I had it in my version of your list in three, and it was miserable, and I hated it every time I cast it. Like... Yes, yeah, this is a intense rubber match, right? Joe's playing purely for pride, right? Yeah, Joe's, Potentially Joe's arguing into fourth place if he manages to get good on breakers. Right. Uh, but Mason is is arguing for first place, right? If Our Mason wins this match, sure. if Mason wins this match, he's playing for first place. Joe's going to six here. Yeah, Joe's mulliganing down. Okay. So we've uh, got a once upon a time. So oh, from Mason's hand. Yeah, from Mason's hand. I saw it once. I saw the the knight there. Oh, he's holding it up for us. So we got an endur Ooh, that's a good hand. Got endurance one. Scavenging news. Some other stuff. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, druid. Yeah, guy is cradle druid. Magus is a cradle. It's a druid of something dreams or whatever. It's not got it. Cradle. Circle of druid dreams. Yeah, druid of there it is. Circle there. of dreams druid. Circle of druid dreams. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, this card's obviously very strong. If you're managed to pull off triple green, which with which, Heritage Druid, I mean, it's very he's strong. He's got enough mana rocks that it's... Yeah. yeah. Enough mana rocks, enough mana dorks. Yeah. Man, okay, so starting off with the, uh, starting off with the tutor. Yeah, dig a little deeper, see what he gets. Mason really leaning into those, uh, that... 100 card sleeves now that he didn't need to rely on the 40 card sleeves since he needed to sideboard up to the 80 card deck to beat Brandon. Yeah. I should have done that. <laughs> so, 
finds a clan caller. Yep. It is approximately 10% of his deck. Yeah. Now, no one drop here. I mean, that's... Yeah, that could be problematic, See, right? He can't cast his Dream Druid. Right. See, a per Merchant Scroll, um, an Ancestral. Land of Elves, which he must have drawn this turn. Yeah. But he's going to play the clan caller. So he's... Sure, that makes sense. Yeah. And just control three. So I actually thought John Ryan was going to go bucket and go um, recall in the first pick slot. Sure. I thought he was going to. Let's see if we can find the clan caller card. Again. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah, starting off as a 1-1 one, one is actually incredibly weak, yeah. but obviously there's many, many things that pump it. Oh, of yeah. course, yeah. Fully agree. I mean, Lord, Lord of the... The old Geo one is, but that gives you other people little elves for Forest Walk too, you know. So we'll have to see, like, what what path does Joe have out of this, right? Ancestral Recall is a great start, right? But like, what? How can Joe end up winning this match? Uh, quick Goif would be good. Sure. But at the end of the day, it's going to be creature combat, right? right? Is there any way beyond creature combat I mean, that he has to win? He's got a lot of elves in his hand, so I mean, that's going to be tough. He's going to say like an unholy heat here, a lightning bolt here. You know, just keeping him back on his rocker is sure. Um, I'm assuming. I mean, I assume what he's going to do is just go for a stasis block. That's what he's been citing into. That's what he says he should have played. Like, sure. He should have. He's been citing out the world gorger. He should have, he should have said he'd been, it should have been stasis main deck. Do you think he's he's going to go for the world gorger in the combo here? I don't think so. I think he okay. cites it out and goes stasis. Sure. Yeah, I mean Joe's deck. I feel like is one of those that like it, he decided on three different really good decks and then picked yeah. two of them. I will say, I mean, I, Joe's a, a buddy of mine. I play a lot of cards, as I said, and this is not meant to be a dig against Joe. Joe is not a great deck builder. Well, um, and, and Joe also isn't super familiar with this format, right? right? He walked into this format two weeks ago being like, I'm going to figure it out. Right, he's done one before. Yeah, right. he has. And he talked to Blyden a lot about it. Right. And I think he actually, I think he ended up with a very good deck, right? I think overall he, like, made good picks. He navigated the draft well. But I think there's also just, like, a lot of so the root potential there. So we, we missed the roommate, so that's going to help. Oh, so, so, yeah, strong. Yeah. Now, root maze doesn't affect creatures. Right. It's artifacts and lands. And lands. But it still keeps them back a little bit, right? Sure. And a dread horde. Now, if he can get the dread horde connecting in, um, the, the Suze is out, and the Suze is going to stop that, you know, lower the value of that dread horde quite significantly. In the graveyard, I see two lands and an ancestral. So he's going to get ancestral off the first one. He'll get Suze. And then he'll hope that he gets something else. But yeah, he's... Oh, is he tapping out for that? No. Okay, okay. No, he's he's leaving up the green to take out the two. Ancestral. Right. I mean, the thing has to... Yeah, it's an attack trigger. So yeah, no. I would be shocked if Mason let that happen. So he comes in. Crashing in for two. So, I mean, I think he blocks out there. It's a 1-3. I, mean, I guess he could flash in. A, uh, no, it's not. It's a, it's a clan caller. No, it's a two. So, yeah. I mean, there's no creature for it to eat. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't block too, but so he goes ahead and eats the ancestral. Makes sense. Like I would wait until it attacks, but whatever. Right. Nah, I mean if it's. I don't know if Joe has Snapcaster or anything else right. in his deck that I'd be worried about, but in the dark. Merchant scroll, okay. Normally finding ancestral. Let's see. Which instance in Joe's deck are you looking for? Bolt. Bolt's strong. Bolt's is like a very fair card to find at this right. spot. Is there anything he has that like shuts the game out? No. I don't think so. That's fair. He's just gonna get force and I mean but, but see, I mean unless you're just going for the natural order and he already no, no. Well in natural order is only in a sorcery. So okay. Well he got yeah. the force. Yeah. I say he's got the cradle, so I don't like, like the force, or not the cradle, the um, cavern. So I'm not big on the force there. I do feel like Joe's deck has like some of the highest potential of this draft, uh, yes, is, yeah. but then also like has a lot of mid tier stuff. We see that a lot with the stellar deck, though. I mean, yeah, a that's lot true. Of times that you this deck, I think it's hard to get 
blue and red are usually very contested. Yeah. And I think it's a deck that ends up just, you know, getting very contested and it's easy to kind of get off course with. Yeah. There's just a lot of powerful stuff you can be doing. Yeah, and I agree. I think Texas points out pretty well. Uh, Green-black is often really tough to navigate in a cube deck because green and black kind of falls in a mid-range do-nothing decks. Uh, whereas here, it's like everyone is fighting over blue, and often you have blue if you want it. Uh, but green and black, you can navigate a really disruptive deck, still be playing around with what other people are doing. Um, but there's enough combos in blue and black that are available in rotisserie draft that wouldn't be available in cube, right? Like, they're cards that you couldn't afford to drop into a cube, like a Sararak or uh, like a, a full elves deck. That you can just navigate into here in, in yeah, a VRD. Yeah, the blue Kismet out. A frozen Aether? Yeah. I'm yep. pretty sure that's what that is. No, it, it absolutely is. So that navigate that makes lands, artifacts, creatures? Come and play tapped. tapped. Yes. For your, opponents. For your opponents only. Yes. So this this means it stasis, if it does resolve, effectively locks your opponent out of the rest of the game. That's, that's why it's tapped, played. Right. Right. Well, yeah, stasis means that your opponents don't untap their things. This means that their things come into play tapped. So the classic counter to stasis is that you just play lands and then cast your things and win the game. Right. Um, this prevents you from being able to play lands. What is that? Some garbage land. No, that's a creature. Is that an elvish arc druid? Yeah, it's an arc druid. I, I see the little swandy thingy. Yep. So that's going to pump up all the rest of the elves. Uh, 20, 20 and 15. So we have a scavenger news, and then three elves, and then a, a wire red symbiote. Right. So the archer comes in and play tapped. He's got him over there waiting for the stasis. Is it coming? Is it coming? You have to assume that stasis is going to drop, though, right? right. Like unless Joe just has nothing going on. So the symbiote gives him a little flex of untapping something. One one time per turn, right. and it bounces an elf each time. Is that right? This is because a uh, Kyrian. Ranger, I believe, bounces right. a forest. Right. Let's pull up the symbiote so and see. Three here. This is ancestral. Wirewood symbiote. Yeah, return elf. Yeah, bounce an elf to untap another something. Untap a creature. Okay. I still said earlier I wanted to see Joe go time elemental and just like go old school stasis. Yeah, that's like... I'm, I'm, I'm teasing, but just, yeah. In fact, right behind us, we actually have a picture of a time elemental, <laughs> despite it being on a Sarah Angel. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's not good. Well, that, was the, that, was the way you, that was the way you used to party back in the day. Yeah, no, I've played a lot of that on... Uh, on What was the uh, Chandelar? Chandelar. The old, the old Magic the Gathering uh, Micropose product. Time elemental was my jam. And it's so easy to accidentally kill yourself at 5 life. Okay, so Dreadhorn Arcanest is attacking in and then untapping itself somehow. Uh, I think that might have been an, 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 a mistake. The great thing about babysitting is you get text like, Rowan is having some funky poop. He's a walking funky poop. <laughs> yeah, that's very exciting stuff. Exactly. Welcome to fatherhood. Time, second time. What do we got there? That looks like a Thought Scour. Yeah. So maybe a Thought Scour before the Dread Horde? Bound, or, land your, land. Yep, a Dryad, Ar a dryad Arbor and a f Swamp happening. Yeah, this seems like Joe is taking control of this game pretty hard. He's trying. There's a lot of mana there. Double tapping in order to get an, an Elvish Clan Caller into play. Yeah. Uh, what's that? What's that creature above the clan caller that's tapping with it? Uh, that's the dru oh, of dru druid. yeah, circle of dreams druid tapping for each of them. Yeah, it's, it's cradle. I mean, yeah. So yeah, this card is obviously very strong, uh, able to fetch up another Especially arcanist, and allowing him to block potentially this uh, this attack. I think he actually opted not to attack with the uh, with the Dread Horak Nest and instead just allow past the turn. I've got a whole bunch of untapped elves and I have two cradles out now. Oh god. Okay, so cradle plus dream druid. 
uh, so meaning much. that there's a ton of mana. Mason has really taken control of this game now. And he's got a, uh, unless it went off the board, he had a uh, Elvish Archbrood as well. I feel like Joe had that last turn to decide to do something I mean, and he, didn't have a stasis, stasis in hand. Right, He didn't have the stasis to lock it down. And as a result, Mason could just take over. He drew a lot of cards. Well, that's a pretty... Uh, that's a pretty uh, minimal play. He's decking with the 3-3, three, three, and it allows for him to fetch up four, two more... 4-4? Uh, four, four? Elvish Archdruid. Archdruid, there we go. Clan cards. Right, so the clan callers can obviously fetch up two more copies of themselves, right. uh, which guarantees the win next turn. Uh, and the Lana Ralph attack is really small. Yeah, but he's blocking with the Goyf, and now we're gonna, we got a Druid... Dreams Druid being tapped. To probably bounce the Lana Ralph. Nah, he's going to have a bigger. I mean, he's, he's using some mana. He's going to eat something with the ooze. I think that ooze attack two up there, by the way. Oh, That's okay. The there it is. There. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So the Goyf is dropping, now he's, blocking the ooze. Yeah, but now he's bought, popping up a, another clan caller with that mana. Yep, another two probably. Because he has plenty of mana to do so. There's no Azuri or anything to pump the field. Not yet, no. Joe's going to take at least four. Probably more. Uh, that's a one comma something. That's a ten. Like two, ten, okay. Because there's, there's five pumps on the board. Four pumps on the board, so he took five. Yeah, this isn't a bad spot. And Joe doesn't have a reset button for this. Yeah. Joe, Joe really does just need to lock down the board with stasis this turn or do nothing. Right. Even then, I don't know if that's enough. It might be, right? If he's able to actually just, like, stop the game this turn, uh, playing a basic, playing a effectively basic land is not a lot. We'll see. Tapping three. Jeez. Okay. He'll block a card. It, I mean, it, that's a staying alive. We'll see. He might have more. Okay, no, he passed the turn. Yeah, so there's two more fetches. Finding two more clan callers. So yeah, we're we're sitting here There's at only one more clan card we found because the the other one was tapped, so you could only find one. There was one untapped. Okay. Oh, left a card. Yeah, it feel it feels like Mason's game to lose at this point. Yeah, I know. I mean, the, the, he needed the stasis. He really did, and that was his only out here. He had the setup. He had a window, but you know, he only hit it, he only hit it. <laughs> so everything gets plus five, plus five. There's a Zuri. There's a Zuri to lock down the game for sure. Yeah. And Ooh, okay, force on a Zuri. Yeah, he did not use the green off One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six, seven, eight. So he has three mana floating still, if he has anything else to play. So let's see if, if Mason's able to pull anything else out here. Either way, though, being able to attack with everything at yeah. plus five, <laughs> yeah, okay, plus four, plus four, and everything is very strong. We playoffs, sir. We do. We're walking into the Mason versus John Ryan. And John we'll Ryan took him the first time. I own his really good in this match. He did. We'll have to see if if Mason's able to beat down before I own is able to drop on right. green. That's the key to this game. Uh, Steven, are you able to make it to the finals here? Uh, no. Let's drop the standings and find out. I am not. I'm, I, I'm actually able to make, make a top four, possibly. We'll see. Okay, so we're looking at here. Nope, I have... You are three and four. Yeah, but uh, Brandon has surpassed me, it looks like. Correct. That means you need the playoff for three and four. There's three players here. All right. That can all still make it. Wow. So, yeah, we have a three-player playoff, sir. a three-player playoff. Uh, that's an excellent question. Well, we and we'll have to, to figure that out. To figure that out real quick. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, figure it out. But yeah, all, all three of you are in the running for the finals. All right. Well, let's take a break. And well, the, the no, it's the last game doesn't affect us, so we got to play it out. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we're gonna have John Ryan versus Mason in the finals, absolutely, and then a three-player playoff to decide who's the final player in there. So we'll be right back. Uh, we'll uh, probably get Eric back on the mic here in a minute to navigate the finals. Uh, versus John Ryan and Mason to see who's actually taking home the ultimate championship of the first place in this tournament.
Okay, so actually, let's let's pop over to the standings real quick before we do anything. Hey, John Ryan, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So, John Ryan, you're in an interesting position where you are uh, getting ready to play in the first play, place playoff with Mason. Yes, but that's correct. But before we do that, we have a score to settle, <laughs> and that score, of course, oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> I got given a really nice beer and a cookie. <laughs> Before we do that, we have a score to settle, folks. Uh, Brandon, Stephen, and Andrew are all three and four. And that means they're all tied for four, fourth place. And fourth place gets prizes here at the uh, St. Louis VRD. And our motto at the VRD is more magic always, even to our physical detriment. <laughs> and so what we're doing is a round-robin fourth-place playoff. Because, John Ryan, I hear, I'm being told that your match, your first-place match, isn't exciting enough, but it needs more hype. Is that yeah, true? Yes, we need, to, we need to build the tension and watch a bunch of people play for uh, fourth place <laughs> in maybe the most convoluted way possible, which is... A round robin where only two of the three people can play at the same time because the third person just has to sit there and wait. Yes, and perfect. then it's possible that they all go one and one. Right. Correct. Absolutely correct. Alec, of course, is is here locked in for third place and also locked in here with the rest of us. Yes. Hi. Oh, well, he's not locked in here. He's though. not locked Apparently, in. He's, he's leaving. Good, good, good to see you, man. Hope you had fun. All right, well, Alec will, will claim his prize at a later date, but we're going to go to a game that may already be in progress. Let's go check that out. And it looks, oh, they're, they're waving. They're waving. So uh, let's let's see. I actually don't know. Yeah, I don't know who's playing. <laughs> I don't know who's playing. And look, uh, well, those are Brand that's Brandon on the right. You can yeah. see those fabulous nails. And on the, uh, on the left is Andrew, I think, because Steven is re-sleeving his yes, deck. Yes, I think two of the three players on <laughs> sleeve their deck. <laughs> but Andrew re sleeved first. So let me just go ahead and uh, and fix the uh, the names here. Uh, John Ryan, what do you think? How do you think this match is going to go? Um, I don't know. I've kind of liked Brandon's deck a little bit. I, like, looking at it more, I was kind of thinking his deck was kind of a train wreck. Maybe he'll watch this later. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, Mill seems like kind of reasonable. Like, in, like he's gotten so many cards lately, and he's drafting all the ones, like, we're playing all like 40 card decks, and like half of his deck just says, like, put half, half right. of your opponent's deck in the graveyard. Yeah, when you have cards like Tasha's Hideous Laughter and Fractured Sanity that are just like, delete your, delete most of your library, Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, Dylan wants to hear about the word fancy. Usually, stuff that's that's worth about fifty bucks. That's that's what we're working with here, somewhere in that. Uh, uh, yeah, something that you wouldn't be embarrassed to give as a as a gift at somebody's wedding, something like that. Uh, and then we have Brandon. Remind me what the other deck is. What is Andrew playing? So Andrew is playing like the the uh, the blue white. Um, the the blue white time oh, deck. Oh yeah, I really liked his deck. Yeah, I was really scared of that one going in. I did too, and I was quite surprised to see that he uh, he he had sort of a, a rough go of it. Yeah. But these folks are are now are, are playing for for that buy-in. Andrew, sending something to the bottom. It looks like Brandon kept his seven, while I was uh, finagling the uh, the buttons over here. Let me get this up. All right. Island for Island here. So between the mill deck and and the Time Vault control deck, where where would you rather be if you could be in one of these two seats? Which would you pick? Um, I think generally the mill deck fares well against the you know slower control deck, but um, Andrew has a lot of like reasonable clock tools like Stoneforge Mystic for Cauldra. Mm -hmm. Oko can close the game real fast. And he has a decent chunk of, like, counter magic, right? He's yes, got, quite a bit. Yeah, he's got counter spell. Mystical Dispute's really good in this matchup. Yes, yes. Against almost almost entirely mono blue. Both Mystical Dispute and Miscast are, are, are likely to be, well, Miscast yeah. out of the board likely to be relevant as yeah, well. Yeah, Force of Negation. Teferi Time Raveler good against, like, a lot of, like, the um, archive trap stuff like that. So I think I'm leading Andrew. Mm, yeah. I'm, I'm also I'm also on that. I, I feel like Andrew is... Uh, in in a Andrew's pretty well able to to one for one Brandon out of existence if he's if he's able to draw what he needs. Yeah. Is it? What are, <laughs> <laughs> hang on, let me hang on. There's an open beer down here that I'm gonna pick up. Getting a picture real quick here. <laughs> hey, <laughs> get it. <laughs> Oh, that was wonderful. 
wonderful. VRD all day. That was really cute. I think everybody can agree. And nobody saw that on stream. I yeah. just switched the feed yeah. shit. <laughs> Everyone on stream is just listening to a bunch of people just cram into yeah. a small room. They're, they're just, it's, so it's, it's like those ASMR videos, but, but instead <laughs> it's just like, it, it's, you know, sometimes you're home alone and you want to hear noise. Maybe you, you, maybe you put on like, like a song or a podcast, or maybe you just put on a, a YouTube video that has like the sound of, of like somebody else's party in the background. <laughs> Not that I've ever been <laughs> bored and lonely. That's never happened anyway. <laughs> Oof. Little, little window into my past lives there. <laughs> I don't know if that exists. That prob that's probably real. Yeah, probably. Probably. Can I? Oh, no. We already did. Uh, Alright. Brandon's gonna put some cards back on top of his deck with Brainstorm, and then, uh, He's going to look at his hand, and he's going to crumple up a little piece of tinfoil right into the microphone. That's about all I got for you folks today. You'll have to subscribe to VRD Pro for more of my ASMR <laughs> stylings. <laughs> Brandon, of course, with Shell Doc Isle, a card that's been an all-star for him today. He, I saw him play in uh, Emmercool off of this earlier today. That yeah, was wild. That was, uh, that was a good one. That was a heck of a thing. Shell Doc Isle, one of my favorite cards in this format. Yeah, I was going to take a Shell Doc Isle. Brandon took a lot of my cards. <laughs> Maybe that's maybe that's why I'm bitter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he didn't literally hate draft me. <laughs> he just looked me in the eye and took a reanimate. <laughs> just didn't do anything in his deck. What was that like at the table? He really he really gave you he, he gave you the Brandon eyes at that yes. moment. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> that's delightful. Brandon also with the mana crypt here, putting himself on a little bit of a clock potentially, because as you said, Andrew does have those clock tools in Oko and uh, Stoneforge Mystic, and even cards like Skyclave Apparition that can just sort of attack or damage. Brazen Borrower as well. It's like kids. Oh, I guess we never know if they're taking damage or not uh, until they move the dice. Yeah, Brandon giving the finger guns, which tells me that, yes, oh. I'm not, not moving the dice, but the finger guns could yes. mean anything. That's a. Uh, a good point, uh, as it were. So, a lot of lands, a lot of mana, not a lot of action so yeah, far here in this game. a lot of land goes so far. I imagine Andrew's hand is just a bunch of counterspells. He missed a land drop, I think, so yeah. it seems like he's probably just sitting on counterspell, force negation, whatever, and missing those pieces he needs to kind of, you know, actually win the game. Yeah, Brandon being ahead on mana, I think, is... Uh, is, is going to work in his favor, as long as he can take some solid double spell turns and yeah. try to make things happen here. Yeah, definitely. I think the longer the game goes, the more Brandon is favored. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, if Andrew doesn't stick some kind of clock or get the time vault combo going, he's he's going to... Oh, all right. Okay, so we're just flashing in our 3-1 flyer that doesn't block uh, ground things. It's beatdown time. Raisin Bar, we're coming in to lay the beats now. Uh... <laughs> One of the interesting stories of this of today has been uh, attacking with creatures, and you've done a lot of that today. Is that right? I mean, attacking is a way to a means to an end for the deck that I'm playing right now. But yes, I guess I'm mostly thinking of your experiences today with the card pack. Oh, uh, that is true. Yes, pack rat is <laughs> a lot of attacking for me. Yeah. So it, would you like how? It, would you say pack rat has overperformed from from how you would have estimated at the beginning of the day? I think pack rat. Packrat went from, like, an afterthought of, like, oh, this is, like, a cool sideboard juke, and then also, like, a discard outlet when you need it, and it just became one of the best cards in my deck. Like, one of your primary win cons, yes, right? Yes, I have killed, I think, as many people with Packrat as I have with, like, Grizzlebrand slash Iona. That's really interesting, and I think something that people should uh, think about a little bit as they go into future VRDs. Brandon casting Archive Trap here, but it's getting lose-focused. I'm hearing, okay, all right. I'm not sure if you're being slandered in the chat or not, but I'm going to find out. Uh, Elaine is telling me that you've never cast a pack rat before. Is that true? No, I think she's memeing because I did <laughs> one of the, like, I don't, I don't know if she remembers this, but back in college, like, my first PTQ top eight ever was with Mono Black Devotion and Theros Standard. Oh, and that pack deck was, definitely had pack yeah. rat in it. And then I lost in the top eight to the mirror where my opponent put a pack rat in play. Oh, uh, she does. All right, yeah. I yes. assume that's what she was referencing. I always assume that Elaine is memeing, and then sometimes I find out that she's being serious, and yeah. I apologize. But <laughs> it's a safe bet, usually. Fractured Sanity coming down, it looks like, from Brandon. The classic mill 14. What a weird number. 
Yeah. What a, just what a strange choice. Like, how do you, you know, how do you arrive at mil fourteen as as your number? Yeah, it seems like a lot of the mil cards just have like a random issue. <laughs> because it's like archive trap mil's thirteen, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fractured sandy mil's fourteen. <laughs> There's uh, glimpse the unthinkable mil's ten. It just seems like very arbitrary numbers. <laughs> Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure that there's a uh, some sort of magic eight ball somewhere in in the uh, the wizard's offices that deals with Ooh, that. Ooh, Ooh. Mystical dispute this Ashiok. Yeah, is pretty nice. He I think two mana because of the yeah, he only has the mana crypt untapped. Yeah, so that's not gonna do it. That's not gonna pay for that, and uh, Brandon's not going to have blue mana with which to push back via counterspell. So this Ashiok is headed to the graveyard. That gives uh, Andrew a window potentially to to just start continuing to push through damage. Maybe try to resolve something else that uh, will clock Brandon out. But it looks like for now he's going to be relying on this Brazen Bar. We're coming in for three, playing that Tangle Pool oh, Bridge. Uh, yep, that's the name of the card, Tangle Pool Bridge. I was gonna. I only had the second part. I know it's. <laughs> I know it's a bridge cycle. You had the first part. It worked that's, out. That's why we have teams, folks. I got Tangle Pool. John Ryan's got Bridge. <laughs> Plus, you'd get bored of just listening to my voice. That'd be terrible. I don't know anything. John John Ryan's good at this format. <laughs> Brandon's really killing it with these mana curve rolls. I think he's three for three on not Gosh. taking any damage. Brandon's just absolutely invincible. There's another world where Brandon's at five here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to envision this sort of bizarro Brandon. Uh, no mustache. M no mustache. Very uncharismatic and always loses his mana curve rolls. But here comes uh, second Ashiok. Uh, just as second breakfast is real, so is second Ashiok coming down, and it uh, looks like we're going to see uh, Andrew. Andrew's got to die, and this one mills for a lot. It, like if you just let it sit there, it mills you for twenty, I yep. think. But yeah, obviously, right. Brazen Borrower can help mitigate that. But then you're taking stuff off the clock. It's still a mill eight plus gain three life, if that's the case. I think that's one of the most interesting parts of the Ashioks in Brandon's deck, because it does present you with that choice. Do you try to clock Brandon oh, out and Andrew, face. Andrew goes to the dome? He can always attack it next turn, too, yeah, so. That's true. He can just kill it. Go to 11. I mean, yeah, I respect going face, because, like, you, this this mana, or this mana crypt has to hit him eventually, right? Yes. <laughs> someday, someday Brandon has to get hit, right? Potentially, theoretically. Now, the other interesting thing is that uh, uh, Ashiak does lock out some of those search effects, and mm -hmm. Andrew has both Tinker and uh, Tesseret the Seeker. Yeah, Stoneforge Mystic even lots yeah. out, and Lightning Tutor. So there's a, you know, there's some alternate universes in which Brandon is vaguely incentivized not to activate and let it be just Stone Dead to Brazen Borrower, but I'm not sure we're in that universe. Did Brandon... I think Brandon's in the tank or yeah. something? Yeah, I think he's in the tank. Did he... We rolled for Crypt, right? Uh, Yeah, I think he did take damage. I believe he took yeah, damage, eight, because I believe uh, he yeah. was at 11, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. nothing lasts forever. Yeah, one for... F or three for four ain't bad. Yeah, still pretty good. Going four mana. Ooh, Jace. Ooh, Jace the, the Mind Sculptor. Jace the Mind Sculptor is better than the things that you like, and it is here to... Hmm... Do what exactly? Yeah, its modes aren't super enticing. Mm. Brandon's deck isn't really designed to take things off the battlefield, so I imagine the only way this chase lives this turn is if it pluses, but if he plus, it's just not doing a whole lot. Bouncing could, Brazen Borrower is a little bit counter yeah. counterproductive, yeah. Yes. You can't really bounce the Flash creature. You could draw, you could brainstorm, and then let it get hit. Yep. Bouncing Brazen Borrower could even result in, like, okay, bounce your thing, replay Brazen Borrower, yeah. if Andrew so, felt was so inclined. <laughs> Just petty theft your thing and play my 3-1 <laughs> again. So I think we're going to see a Fade Seal here. That would be my guess. Uh, looks like Brainstorm. Yep, and uh, Brandon, who who is often in tune with showing his cards to the camera, is keeping things a little closer to the vest today. Uh, this, at this point in the tournament, he's, uh, he came to game, and, uh, playing for keeps, fourth place. Look, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a solid bottle of liquor that you're, that you're playing for here. It's a, it's a real buy, and that's, you know, that's one of the, the things about VRD that I keep, think keeps people, like, you know, keeps people in the hunt. There, there is, there is something on the line, and, even when you are sort of down in the lower part of the bracket, even if you're dead for prize, you're still sort of, you're playing for honor, right? There's no, there's no, like, 
people don't scoop in VRD before yeah. the match begins. That's not how we do things. Brandon's repealing his mana crypt. I mean, you gotta stop taking the damage. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. He gets to draw a card as well. Oh, no, he's um, just using it as a ritual. Ah, okay. To convert a blue into two colorless. And he's playing everyone's favorite card, Sensei's Divining Top. He should have a floating mana. I don't, oh, no, and he's, he's using oh, that for oh, Brain Freeze. There we go, that's why he's doing it. Oh, Brain Freeze plus Ashiok might be... Yep, yep that's, that's the game. Deck. Okay, Brandon's up a game. All right. Bonk. Yeah, that Brain Freeze is really good in his deck, too. Yes, he does have a lot of those very small spells. He's got the, the Sensei's Divining Top equity, where he can just kind of bounce it back and forth a little bit, do some nonsense with that. Um, no Helm of Awakening, though, notably. So no no going no going infinite and then, then brain freezing you for arbitrary. Or I guess, yeah, there's some limit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Brandon, in terms of sideboard cards, we are looking at, um, I mean, Brandon's sideboard is a lot of sort of a lot of them are kind of other main deck cards, uh, but he's got Thada Adele, which is interesting in any matchup where your opponent is playing Time Vault, right? Yeah, absolutely. Thada Adele looks great in this matchup. You can like hit the Stoneforge bullets, or you can also you can just <laughs> Time Vault your opponent. Mm -hmm. And if uh, Brandon wants another threat, he could put Mesmeric Orb in. Now Andrew doesn't tap uh, permanence too much. Andrew Andrew's not about doing things necessarily until yeah. it's time to counter your spells or win the game. So I'm not sure Mesmeric Orb is is what he's looking for here. Um, Arcane Denial, perhaps. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like too much else. Whereas on Andrew's side, we've got the Miscast, which is a potential option. Uh, Gainsay. Gainsay is a real good one. Counter every, basically every skill <laughs> yeah, in his deck. Just, just absolutely get you. Yeah. So that yeah, looks like most. It might of it. be a feast and famine matchup. Discard some of the cards in his hand. Mm -hmm. Could could play the Archon of Amiria if Brain Freeze is a real worry, or just if he wants to have another body. Yeah, Archon might be okay, just as mitigating uh, some of the flow of Brandon's cards. Yeah, there and there's. I think there's some 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 value in being able to just attack Brandon to death. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think you definitely. The the one thing that you always want to do against Mill is just kill your kill them as soon as possible. Yep. You can't just like sit on your hands. Yeah, that's that's and that's a little bit of the difficulty here for Andrew is, is this, his deck is designed to just sort of sit there and one for one you and yep. try to get you in the late game. And Brandon's Brandon's got a lot a lot of serious threats. The Ashioks in particular represent just a lot of milling. Yeah, both those Ashioks are real good. And Andrew did well to deal with that first one, but the st sticking the uh, the Dream Render really. Really was, I think, uh, yeah. a big deal here. Mill eight, turn off the searches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ashiok Dream Render, a real, a really fantastic card. Yeah. You know, <laughs> of all of those War of the Spark cards that we all really enjoy. Yes, yeah, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's no Narset, but it's still, uh, it's really something. It's no Narset, it's no Teferi. Yes. But, you know. Both of those cards, a uh, scourge of players and judges alike, having having had to deal with many unpleasant Narset situations myself, I, uh, I have a I have a special place in in my heart for for Narset. Um, it's you know in the the very the very unhappy part of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a uh, like a ten minute judge call at um, Eternal Weekend once. I had a Spirit of the Labyrinth in play, and my opponent put Sylvan Library cards in their hands. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> and that judge call took a long time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I, I've taken some some judge calls relating to, to Leovold and, and uh, Sylvan Library as well. Yeah. I, I remember that vividly. I was the head judge of a Legacy GP in Louisville in, I think, 2018, something like that. No, earlier than that. 2017, I think? That's the one. Ago? Yes, yes, yes. I think that was the red-black reanimator GP. Yes, that was the red-black reanimator GP. I remember that final as well. Uh, but, uh... <laughs> nor is it the Wanderer. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is also not the Wanderer. I don't even know if I know the text. It, it, the minus exiles tapped creatures, and I don't yeah. know what the static the does. The static prevents non-combat damage to your stuff. Interesting. So, weird card. Yeah. 
It costs like three and a white, yeah, I want to say. Four, yeah, four mana. It's definitely, definitely a card that exists. Not a card that you will, I think, ever see in this format. But never yeah. say never, I guess. <laughs> there, been, there are some weird cards in this, in this VRD. Elvish Clan Caller has done some good work today. Yeah. That's been a while. Saw Mason beat the crap out of his opponent with four Elvish Clan Callers. <laughs> yes, we did. Uh, we were, we, John Ryan and I were watching intently uh, during that match. John Ryan, of course, with, uh, you know, a little a little bit of interest in that match. Yeah. First ever event to judge was an SCV. <coughs> <coughs> yup. Okay. Yup. Uh, yes, I remember that Star City. I believe that was the Star City event that was across the uh, hall from a Yu-Gi-Oh event. And the way that you knew which hall was the Yu-Gi-Oh event was because it was the one where they had hired armed guards. Now, I don't know why, because, like, obviously... The Oh, yes, oh, that, that makes a bunch sense. Of lands. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Stephen came in to throw a little shade at John Ryan, but also inform us that uh, there is some anti-mill sideboarding yeah, going you, on in the You've got to see on the, on the screen here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, Andrew is, uh, or rather, uh, Kramer is asking why Mason can have four clan callers. And that's an interesting question. We we put up into place a VRD rule very recently for for, for, for this, sorry, was, this event. Yeah. I think it was available last time. I remember talking about squad Nobody crowd, did but it, no one ever right. drafts them. Nobody ever did it. But yeah, this, this event is the first time it's come up where if you, there's a certain subset of cards that are self-referential and search for other copies of themselves. And we want those cards to like, we, 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 we Right, yeah. and we wanted those cards to be like, you know, to do something in VRD. So we said, if you draft one of those, you can have four copies of them total. So Squadron Hawk, Avarex, Howling Wolf, and as it happens, Elvish Clan Caller is on that list. Yes, if you were to draft a Snowland, or I believe a Wastes, we also said yeah, you would get wastes, four. Makes sense. Yes. Uh, so that's something that we tried. No one has yet drafted a Snowland. I believe Joe considered it because he has the uh, Ice Fang Quaddle. Yeah, at the table he, he picked Ice Fang Quaddle and then said, you can play Snowlands in your deck, right? And everyone at the table told him no, and he was like, oh. I remember that, and now Ice Fang Quaddle <laughs> lives in Joe's sideboard where it belongs. Yes. <laughs> Steven, would you like to, uh... Yeah, I'm good. You're good, you're just, you're just hanging out. Cool. Okay, so that's kind. That's like actually kind of remarkable that it's cooler in this room yeah. because this room has always been hot as balls. <laughs> yeah, the fan the fan being on at the start of the day uh, was a, a big win. Thank you, Neem. Uh, that was a, a strong call. It looks like we're ready to go here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I, and I'm, I'm sure that who, basically whoever wins the, uh, this, this match is going to stay at the table, right? And, yeah. And that way, if that way, if Brandon wins two in a row, we can just cut, cut out that third match, not play it. Yeah, and. And the fifth place, uh, the fifth place playoff is irrelevant because there's no fifth place prize. Yes. So the way that prizes work uh, for the uninitiated, I'll just mention it now because I finally got it in my brain this I time. I still don't know. So the way it works is first through fourth get prizes, and first place gets first pick, second place gets second, third gets third, fourth gets fourth, and then, then second, second gets place second gets place gets fifth pick, and, and then, then yeah, first place gets the last three. First pick before yes. Yes. Right. So it's a uh, you get first and then sixth, seventh, eighth. Second place gets second and fifth, and then third and fourth get third and fourth. It's a yes. it's a four two one one structure. Yep, makes sense. Yep. Yeah, I think it's all booze. Well, originally we were all booze. Yes. Yeah. They don't drink. Yep. Yeah. So la so last time we had. Uh, there, there were a couple of stake buy-ins. Yeah. Yeah. Like someone had a gift card to a butcher. 
Yeah, it was. Well, it wasn't. It was like a. Get, it was like a receipt where you go. You would go and you'd pick up a lot of fancy steaks that had already been purchased, basically. Mark brought cheese last time. Yeah. No, you 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 can't go to Schnucks. Eat, like not even Deerberg's is gonna have the fifty dollar real cheese. Like you're gonna have to go to a specialty store. I the steak buying was very cool. Yeah. Yeah, the steak buying was cool. Uh, look. Chicago. No, 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 no. <laughs> you gotta shake it all the way back yeah. home. <laughs> Enjoy your yeah. five-hour drive. Can I borrow an ice pick, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yup. Thought of Adele coming down, so... Oh, yeah. This, this, there's no way this resolved. Oh, actually, maybe there's a way this resolved. Nope. Lose focus. Taking out that Thought of Adele. Brandon's got that, uh... That engineered explosives. On two, it looks like. I think. I hope it's on two. Yes, it's on two. Because otherwise, what are we doing? Yeah, I don't know. If it... Yes. Yeah. But here, I think he's just trying to keep, you know, time. Time vault off play the battlefield. Against... Oh yeah, time vault's two mana. I believe so. Yeah, time vault hits Stoneforge Mystic. Ashiok gets hit with. Uh, uh, gainsay? gainsay. Yeah, that's the that's the OG Gainsay. Bless you. Everybody gets one. Yeah, that's gain say not the new uh yeah, gatecrash one, one or whatever, but Theros, or the Theros one, yes. Yeah. But here's the the, the original plan, plane yes. shift art with Bolivar and Urza. Bolivar underrated. <laughs> not Bolivar. Did Andrew board in all islands? Andrew did board in and Andrew's on uh, sort of a, a lost in the sea strategy yes. here. Oh, okay, you can cast white spells now. I was just wondering if he boarded in other basic, because I feel like he should probably board it in some amount of planes. Oh, beat down. So he just brought in his sideboard, like and yeah, and lands to compensate. So he's on like a sixty-something guard deck at this point. Yeah, makes so, sense. Hmm. That's interesting. His mill does exile. Oh, uh, that's a hard cast cauldra complete, hard folks. Hard cast cauldra. Uh, Brandon's gonna counter that with what looks like cryptic command. Yeah. yeah. Cryptic. That's, that's cryptic. cryptic. He's cryptic. picking his modes. What did you do with cauldra game three? Oh jeez. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yes, and of, of course, equipment cannot equipment that is also a creature cannot be attached to anything, so it just falls right off, and that means your germ is gone. I was talking about this. I feel like animated equipment should be able to keep its own their own keywords. <laughs> that just makes sense. Like, right. if, if you equip something to a Sword of Fire Knights and hit them, you activate your Sword of Fire Knights, but if you hit them physically with a Sword of Fire Knights, it doesn't activate it. So I, it just doesn't make any sense it, to me. I agree. I, that's the, 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 the flavor of bestow creatures is the flavor that an animated equipment ought to have. Yes. Yeah. As as a certified flavor, a board certified flavor judge, I approve this message. John Ryan is correct. Yeah. Cauldron complete should have trample mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you when you get activated Karn on. It. Yep. Yeah. I should I should be able to just smash you with this this big first strike trample nonsense pile. You only you only even go for one turn. It's fine. I love that they you know. Cauldra Complete has that beautiful extra line of text, text from Sword of Cauldra that literally basically never matters. I've, I've exiled a Grizzlebrand once with this. Oh, okay. I have, a, I have a hit list card. I've been playing this card in Legacy and Death and Taxes. Very good card. <laughs> yes. Um, I have I have a hit list of like cards that c you can actually exile with Cauldra Complete in the format, and the list is like Emrakul, Grizzlebrand, Merit Lage, and Uro, and like that's the end of the list. Yep, that, that sounds about right. That's basically it. Oh, yes. Right, yes, yes. If if there's if there's a creature that's big enough to survive the damage... Yeah. It, but that's the key. It has to be big enough to survive the damage. 
Yes. Yeah, because it's a triggered, triggered ability, right? Yep. So it doesn't exile any small things. Yes, because it just takes lethal damage. How do we be I become a board certified flavor judge? Is there a Judge Academy course? No. Uh, I'll, Elaine, I'll send you my cash app later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, Elaine. Elaine would be like like a great flavor judge because every good story needs a villain, you know. <laughs> Elaine, I love you. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Elaine, Elaine, Elaine knows I appreciate her. And <laughs> <laughs> and see, here's the thing, though. Like, I I, I would say that I, I managed to get a good bird in on Elaine maybe like one one tenth of the number of times she gets <laughs> gets them in on me. So, like, I gotta make them count. <laughs> Just bring up a seju. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's got no heat coming from me. You you have to do that. Yeah. Mm, there we go. To Ferris puzzle box. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have to talk about uh, I have to talk about uh, VRD two if I really want to get my burns in on a land. <laughs> the one, yeah, well, that's that's the one and probably only time I'll ever beat a land in Magic: The Gathering. So <laughs> get that, you know. There's some there's some moments you just got to take pictures of in your mind because they'll never happen again. And one of those is me beating a land in Magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to get rid of her. We had to fly her out of the country, so she stopped beating everyone at VRD. <laughs> We're very excited for Elaine to be able to come back in the country. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't talk shit if we didn't love her. Looks like we're popping the EE to get rid of Kinda containment kill freeze. Containment freeze. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, Brandon's at 16. He can only take eight more attacks off <laughs> containment oh, freeze before he's dead. Only. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, looks like he's uh, just gleaming something. the cube here, just rotating it for no reason. It What's is happening? Is spin down? <laughs> oh, 14. okay. He's at 14. Okay, seven more. We Excuse me. It. He does also have mana crypt in place. That's a real, real issue. I feel like this game has been going on for a while, but nothing has really happened. We talked about a lot of garbage for what felt like about an hour. <laughs> We're still staring at the same game. The state. exact same permit. I mean, in, in fairness, the way that uh, Andrew is boarded, I don't think a lot will happen. That's true. I think it's probably also correct for Brandon to sit on a lot of his like static number mill cards until he finds Tasha's. Yes. Because Tasha's will just get rid of a big chunk of the lands in the deck anyway. Yes, that that's the really interesting thing about the uh, the the board in my many islands plan. Like you know if if uh, if if Brandon. Right. Yeah. The, the Tasha's hideous laughter is a very impactful card, and that's kind of amazing. Yeah, it's been making waves in like modern. Yeah, modern mills like a real deck. Blue black mill is is a, you 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 need a plan against blue black mill. Yeah, a lot of people with a Kozlek or a Gaia's blessing in their sideboard. Mm-hmm. It's been wild. Okay, Hushbringer is the uh, the tipping point for Brandon. He pops off that EE, clears away the two two drops. Uh, taken, rolling for mana crypt. Brandon looks sad. Oh no, okay. wait. Okay, he moved his life die, but not. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, he's Thanks getting hit. One one thing I do appreciate is that Brandon's very good about keeping those life dice facing, uh, uh, oriented the correct way so that we can read them easily. Uh, as a player, I will say with absolute honesty, I've never even thought about that once. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, well, of course not, right? Like, why, why would I've you... I've never considered that, and I yeah. will try to think about it more going forward. But now that you're sitting in the booth looking yeah, at that, isn't that, that nice? Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You, Makes a lot more sense than just having them upside down or facing me or whatever. Totally. That's why we had the iPad, but I had the brightness set too high and I ran it out of batteries. <laughs> we plan ahead here at the VRD. Oh yeah, we uh. All right, untap Man of all. We did some tech work this morning, so you know, is what it is. Our first post, well, post pandemic is the wrong word. Our first, our first VRD in a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I just want to make sure I don't say post-pandemic because that's in the middle of a just pandemic. not true. Yep. I saw a very awkward screenshot of a uh, a sports event with a uh, an advertisement for Delta Airlines that was like, "We're here in the stands," and I was like, "Oh no!" Yeah, we're 
yeah, yeah. we're we're back right and it's just like that's not that's not good yeah. uh, i am i i'm fearful for my the the like concert tickets and so on yeah, that I've i saw pictures like... of i think it was Lollapalooza. oh something. yeah it just crowds like tens of thousands of people just Oh god, never gonna end well. So Brandon appears to be playing Lutri the Spell Chaser as a a three two body beat downs. I was thinking you might like save that and find Tasha's and do double Tasha's because that seems pretty messed up. Yeah, that definitely seems like a, uh, a a a possibility. the The issue with that, I think, is that Brandon sort of risks it all against Andrew having none counter spells. Right? It's true. Yeah. If you if you that's uh, energy flux. Yeah. yeah. Energy Flux is here, so that's going to require Andrew to pay some tax on that Mana Vault, notably. Um, and uh, Brandon, without the Mana Crypt in play anymore, I think he right? does have it under those lands somewhere, oh, is it but, just... I mean, if anything, it lets him sack it so he stops taking damage. That is actually really good. He can throw the Mana Crypt in the garbage. He, he does need to dispose of that, doesn't he? Enlightened Tutor coming in from Andrew. Is... Now, that's interesting. Is Andrew going to try to go for Vault Key here? Because if he does, he's also going to need to be, pay quite a few... Uh... He does have enough... You would need five, right? Because you need to pay two for the key, two for the Time Vault, and then just one to untap the Time Vault. So he's got the five lands. So if he gets both pieces in play, he can pay for them through Energy Flux and go off still. LOL. Thank you, Elaine. I was going to say, because uh, uh, it's, what, a thousand times more transmissible? But then this is an Airlines joke. Hey, Delta's... Look... I fly Delta. I I quit United. United is 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 the worst. So, you know, maybe Delta Airlines is the new Corona beer here. It's the it's the the brand that that uh, it's not the brand we need, but it's the brand we deserve. <laughs> I can't stand Southwest. I oh I like if okay if I didn't fly a lot I'd be I'd be on the Southwest train, but because I, like. Because I'm one of those idiots with status, I like Delta. The brand that Vin Diesel flies. <laughs> Look, Vin... I, the, okay, the Kramer... You, you, dude, you and I saw Fast 9 literally in the same movie theater. You know that when, what Vin Diesel flies is a Dodge Challenger. <laughs> We've been over this. Actually, well, John Cena... Never mind. I won't spoil it. Uh, uh, Red Fast 9 via the internet. <laughs> Yeah, my, my wife and I have been going through the Fast movie. She's never seen them. Oh I saw gosh. up to eight, I think. Yes. So she's just, we finished Fast 5, I believe, which is really oh. where they start jumping the shark. Fast Five's the best one. Fast Five is excellent. The ending scene in Fast yeah. Five is just... Arcane amazing. Denial on the Time Vault, very nice. What, uh, so my rankings are like five, and then seven, and then it gets kind of muddy. What about yeah. you? Where are you at? I, I, yeah, I'm a huge, I'm a big fan of Five. Five is where they really find find their their place. Yes. Um, a lot of people like uh, Three. Is that Tokyo Drift? That's interesting because like I, I, we, I watched it. I mean, I don't remember the like, when I originally watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I on the rewatch, I was like, this movie did not. I don't know if it didn't age well or if it was never good. But, I think I think it was never good. Yeah. Because uh, the Lu Lucas Black, I think is the actor's name. He he is. At that point in his career, he had no charisma, none whatsoever. The lead, he could not carry that film. Yeah, that was he. Yeah, it was a rough lead. Also, Tasha's hideous laughter is being cast. Did you know that? Oh, They're oh, still yeah, magic being played. A little that's bit more interesting than talking about Vin Diesel <laughs> movies. <laughs> mm. Okay, Solitude's gonna eat up five of that. We're going. Go. Mark on for three. Yeah. That's more land. That's three. force of negation. Counting. I don't know what number they're on, but they're counting. Brandon's sort of... Okay, yeah, that's all it. Right. And Linvala. All right, so those are all exiles. Not the end of the world. Look, I, I can't tell super well, but it looks like Andrew has a pretty decent chunk of deck left still. Yeah, this is this is one of those things where you can't really see how much deck there is left, but there is deck left. Oh, yeah, I forgot I made brownies. Yes, <laughs> there's brownies. I'm going to set these here so that we can eat them without chewing into the microphone when there's a little bit of a break. Thank you, Mark. And you made these brownies? Yeah, I completely forgot that I brought them. Dude, they look great. I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, to be to be a bad boy and eat sugar. I don't do that anymore. So so Brandon Brandon is the only person with a creature on the battlefield. It's true. Might just loot your beat down while Andrew draws a bunch of lands that he put in his deck. We've we've learned today that uh, that attacking for three is pretty good. 
Many times I've seen I've, I've seen Alec attack with a lot of creatures today. And win games just like turn... <laughs> brownies, but not your friends that on a weekend. Uh, look, wow. if I could easily have access to a, a, actually, I guess we were in Airbnb. I could have maybe made brownies, but it's too much work. John oh. Ryan, did you bring enough brownies for the entire class? I. Uh, I did for the VRD. I did not when I went to a tournament with my friends. If people are coming to the 100K, if you're staying at my place, I'll make brownies for you. Wow, okay, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, reservations are open at the John Ryan Inn, and he think, will make you brownies. I, I think, in fact, reservations are incredibly closed. I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm hosting like five or six people. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be at the Fab Calling that weekend, if there is a Fab Calling that weekend, and the Delta variant doesn't cancel yes, all this is Yeah, forever. this is if the 100K happens. Right, I'm either going to be at the, 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 uh, the, the, the Fab Calling or hold up in my apartment. One of the two. Mana Crypt's back. I can't make heads or tails of Brandon's board, I'll be honest. Yeah, Brandon, Brandon has developed a strategy of sort of placing his lands in different <laughs> in different parts of the battlefield just to vex us, but he is brain freezing for an Some amount. amount. Yep, there are brain freeze copies on the stack. I think he's cast... I think he's... Oh, he, he's, he's, he's doing oh, this. Oh, he's arc, is he Narset's he's reversaling? He's Narset's reversaling it. So mill zero, unless he cast a spell before this, which he I don't did think cast mana crypt. So he's okay. going to get him for, so three, him for three, and then he's going to get him for another twelve when he recasts it. Yeah, well, it also copies, right? So it gets him for six. Is that what Narset's reversal does? Doesn't it like? Oh yeah, you do. Okay, so he's getting him for a total of what I believe is eighteen. Yeah, it re it bounces the spell and then and copies, copies it. the spell. So it'll mill two sets of brain freezes and then it'll cast another brain freeze with storm four. Yeah, he's going to get so, four. Yeah, eighteen yeah. total, I think. So I think that, like, I'm, I'm no I'm no rocket scientist, but I think that's going to be most of Andrew's deck, if not all of it. Yeah. I have no idea how many cards were started in his deck, but... Now, Brandon is doing uh, doing a lot of the international signs that players do when they respond to their own spells, which is a lot of pointing and then and then showing different numbers yes. with your hands. Uh, so I mean... I think he's explaining exactly what we were just explaining. <laughs> mill 3, Mill 3, <laughs> cast Brain Freeze, Mill 12, or yep. whatever. I believe that's correct. And Andrew is uh, pretty cold to this, I think, so he's counting them out. And it looks like... Okay, wait, hang on. So I don't know what order these objects were in, the, but... The six. Yeah, and then he's yep. And so that's it. All right, dead. Andrew reaches across, and Brandon is the winner. So what we're going to see next is Brandon playing against Stephen Hagen. And if Brandon can take this one down, and Stephen predicts that he will, Brandon will secure his fourth place prize. Now, how do you... Like... In terms of, of, of like, epicness and build-up, do you feel like this, John Ryan, do you feel like this is creating enough buzz around your <laughs> upcoming first-place playoff match against Mason? I feel like the length, of how long that match went, like, I played against Mason on camera in the Swiss, and I think, collectively, it was, like, seven or eight turns. It was pretty quick, right. Now, if 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 we were pros, if we were real professionals here, we would have developed, we, we would have taken some of that footage, and we would have put together a little promo package, plus some talking head interviews with you and Mason against, like, a nice solid color background that we could put something in. But we don't have that, so we're going to sort of have to sort of approximate that just by asking you, like, you, you, you feel like you're going to win that one? I think I'm pretty favored. But, on the other hand, I am also the first seed, and the first seed is cursed. Mm -hmm. First is so, cursed. Those yes. are the rules. I first seed has never won a VRD here, apparently. So that's why we play the games, folks, because of things like curses. Yes, exactly. That's 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 our primary reason. And that's why we do things like fourth place playoffs, because we are cursed. <laughs> we brought this upon ourselves. And now we have Steven and Brandon. Brandon aggressively declaring Lutri as his companion, of course. Just Just leaving that otter out there. Uh, Lutri in some games relevant, in some in others more of a mascot. What are your feelings about Lutri in this format? I think Lutri is good. Depends on the deck, certainly. But I mean, it is literally free to play. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, well, unless you draft like the Squadron Conqueror, Elvish Clan Call, or whatever. But you know. <laughs> yes, there is. There is actually one deck in the room in which Lutri is not <laughs> an LOL freebie, and that is Mason's deck. Yes. I think there are a lot of reasonable things to do with Lutri, though. Like, if you're, like, the the Ancestral Recall player, you can, like, pick two or three Lutri, maybe. Yeah. How, like, is that, do you think that's a reasonable, like, time for Lutri to get picked? I think, there are a lot of, there are always a lot of blue decks at VRD, so I think yeah. Lutri needs to go pretty quick, because it's just, it's so easy to put in any deck that has blue cards. It is just so free, and if you have, like, any reasonable cheap spells, 
to uh, actually take uh, advantage of Lucci's ability, then it just gets even better. Ooh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah. Well, do I we want to do we want to swap move. teams? Do you and Mason want to hop in here and take care of business, or? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's 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 get you in here, give you a break. I can eat one of these fantastic brownies that John Ryan made. That'll be a lot of fun for me. All right. All catch right. you later, chat. So uh, so we've got we've got the the hometown hero John Ryan, and and then we've got uh, the the away team here, the the red shirts, if you will, in the form of Mason, and then Mark, whose home this actually is, I guess. So we're gonna relinquish the throne here. Uh, we'll have more words for you soon, but they won't be from me. Mason coming on the mic for you. Coming at you, yo, yo, yo! Uh, seems like we've lost our brownies. Uh, right. John Ryan is well known for winning tournaments and making brownies, oh but apparently God, he I can't do. share the Holy brownies shit, with anyone really else do. as well. It's fantastic. Uh, so here on the here we're gonna have Steven versus Brandon in the uh, in the tournament that we assume Brandon is gonna win. Yeah. And by we, I mean Stephen and I assume that Brandon is gonna win. Hmm. Well, Stephen should have some confidence uh, because I think. Any of these matches can be very close. And Brandon's got a... Okay, what, what did they call it earlier? A punt factor? Listen, <laughs> the man could do anything at any time. Yes. Uh, I don't think we should count anything out. And Stephen, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, maybe, uh, Stephen seemed like one of the most knowledgeable people while we were talking uh, and drafting earlier. So. He would definitely appreciate being told that. I He sounded remarkably intelligent when talking about the draft and everything. So yeah, no, His deck he... looked good. The man is literally playing six mana Liliana. Just raw dogging it. <laughs> casting it for six mana. That's bold. All right. Ignoble coming down right away, right? That's a good start. He's going to start off as a mana. Uh, his deck is just full of two-card combos that can randomly win in turn two. So we'll right. see what happens. And I think any of those will be pretty effective here. Like, Brandon doesn't have that many interactive spells, right? He's not packing a ton of counter spells and stuff. Mm -hmm. He's got some, I'm not going to lie. He's got, like, you know, Arcane Denial and shit like that, but... Sorry, stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I, I would say... Oh, Douthy Voidwalker. There's one that's pretty brutal against Tasha's, or card. against, like, Brandon's second general. Absolutely. That card's beautiful. Uh, Dothy Voidwalker. Dothy Voidwalker, I think. I mean, I, I don't know how much you guys saw it under camera, but it looked like it was overperforming on the tables it, the whole yeah, time we're out there. It just feels like an incredibly powerful card, right? Like, I don't know. It it, it does... It's just like a good hate piece, mm -hmm. plus it's also a, uh, a combo piece on its own, right? Oh, yeah. It's a really... I mean, yeah, it's a really nice just sort of clock. So he's using yeah. it really cleverly with Helm of Obedience as well. Sure. Fantastic. Great use of Karn. Mm -hmm. uh, so not only does Karn Mycosynthladis just win him there, but then he's got the backup of Dothy Voidwalker, Helm of Obedience. He's got mm -hmm. Leyline in his sideboard, so lots of good stuff going on there. Sure. Um, it's also, you know, in this situation, it's a 3-2 unblockable, and it's getting the Exalted Triggers. It's like a reasonable clock, and he does have some... some he does have the ability to clock his opponents. Like, Steven's yes. deck can just, like, play removal spells, play some idiots, and, and beat and beat people down, so. Right, and that's what you're seeing right now. He's already got branded under 16, right? Crambler points out very well that it's just unblockable for damage. Absolutely. Uh, for two mana. We were all uh, joking that we had to pick uh, shadow creatures earlier to be able to block the Voidwalker. <laughs> but, you know what? No one did. Fucking nerds. Uh, I'm also, sorry. like, nerds. That's what I meant. Uh, shadow creatures, finding a two-power shadow creature is no joke. It's actually, like, most of them are just one-ones for no reason. Mm -hmm. I think a Wall of Diffusion, I think, can Ooh. block shadow creatures. Okay, there we go. Powerful. So, Keep why didn't you pick that in, in round? I'm not playing red. Okay. That's the yeah. only reason. The single only reason. That makes sense, I mm -hmm. guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Bob14, Mason, who makes better draft brownies, Rachel, or this group? I have not tried these yet, but they look very good. Rachel and Chad, uh, Bob14 over here, mm -hmm. host our events, our Ooh. cube drafts, and our, our vintage or history So where can people follow along with those? Do you stream them? So I don't stream them, no, but after seeing all of this you guys did today, I'm like, I kind of want to try it. I'm yeah, like, you why? should. I, you know? Or at least do, like, write-ups or something, which I think would be fun. Uh -huh. um, because I know there's, like, not a lot of content. If you want to consume vintage or history draft content, yep. there's not a lot of people, like, writing about the format. There's not a lot of people, you know, uh, writing, you know, 
thought think pieces about it. Um, I think it would be kind of fun. <laughs> the Discord is honestly a great place to follow along with you if you do want information, and mostly because Hyphenated has all of the history, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm going to try to beat up Mason after this and see if we can get all the draft uh, sheets and get them over to Hyphenated, because there's, like, so much history there that's just, like, in no other places. So. Absolutely. And I, that, that sounds great. Whiskey? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it so oh, sounds man. like there's a uh, there's gonna be some whiskey getting passed around. Uh, nice. I don't I don't think it's going to be uh, no, 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 from no. the the top eight pairings, but there there are definitely eight whiskeys in the top eight, so it's gonna be very exciting to find out what happens. Uh, so now it looks like Stephen is still in the lead, down yeah, to seventeen now that. as he taps mm -hmm. the elves of deep shadow. Uh, he has the the uh, the dark depths in play. I did hear some wild complaints from him earlier. About how Elves of Deep Shadow doesn't uh, doesn't or sorry how uh, Dark Depths doesn't tap for mana. That's mm -hmm. been very complicated mm -hmm. for him. Uh, he's not used to lands that don't tap for mana. Um, but this time it seems like he's figured it out mostly. Do you think he should have prioritized taking something like Urborg or Yavimaya, considering he's literally playing black green and it nah. would help fix his mana up a little bit? I mean, it would be good, right? Like, don't get me wrong. It would be obviously fine in his deck, but mm -hmm. those cards, his deck is trying to do a lot of stuff. Right, like I think he should have prioritized sideboard cards over the cards he took, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. rather than trying to like maximize mana base or something like that. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, I think uh, people might do sort of a job making their uh, two color mana bases a little too good. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, uh, I Patrick Chapin used to talk about this all the time, where you know people would spend all this time putting so many dual lands into their deck, and they're right. like, dude, you're a two color deck. You, your mana base was good ten lands ago. Okay, right. you're fine. Yeah, I think you're not wrong about that for sure. Um, the, uh, I do think there's like something to be said for putting in more lands into your deck, like more non-basics. Mm -hmm. But it's mostly mm -hmm. because people don't know what good sideboard cards are. Right. So I think like if you have a good understanding of what sideboard sideboarding is for a format, like especially around fortieth pick, mm -hmm. uh, it's reasonable to to just like abandon the the two land picks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you're correct, and it's tough for sideboard cards too because. In order to draft a solid sideboard, you really want to have a nice, clear idea what 40 cards you're going to be in your main deck. Yes, absolutely. And how, how many non-basics there are going to be, yep. so you know how many slots you have for a sideboard. Because, for instance, if you only, if you know you only have six, seven sideboard cards, mm -hmm. and actually that actually seems like a pretty reasonable number, six or seven, you need to know who those are coming in against, yep. how flexible they're going to be, are you going to be able to use them against multiple people, like that stuff. So All mildly matters. controversial opinion, I think you actually have closer to 20 than you do to five sideboard cards really? in this format. I think that like in a two-color deck, you actually have tons of sideboard options, and you probably have like three to ten different non-basics that you're running in your deck, and the rest of your deck is all sideboard. And there should be zero cards that you're not playing in your main deck that you don't have clear sideboard options for. Mm -hmm. If you do, you means you drafted improperly or got screwed out of something you're trying mm -hmm. to do. Uh, well, that's interesting. Um, yeah. Is that also considering the fact that a lot of these vintage or history draft decks play way fewer than 17 lands? Like, they are uh, playing, you know, they might be picking, you know, five to seven non-basics or five something non-basics, but then they're also only playing like 14, 15 lands. So I, I think that that is mostly true. I think mm -hmm. a lot of the decks we looked at today are probably playing closer to 17 than the smaller number, right? Oh, that's interesting. I, I, I think that like, if you're in a high moxin deck or like a artifact deck, like something you're running Urza, then I totally am on board with you. I'm, sure. That's sure. obviously correct. Mm -hmm. But like, if you're running a like, a bunch of creatures and just like beating down with something like what Alec was doing today, mm -hmm. you're probably running like 15 lands at least, right? If you're not, then you're probably not, you're probably getting mana screwed a lot. I don't know. I, I Maybe I'm wrong, but like walking Hy into those. Hyphenated, that is a good point. Uh, you know, if you, if you pivot and you move something yeah, and totally. you move something around, that is a very good point. And that is obviously something that like, you know, it can be dangerous. You can get into a situation where you're too late to pivot, depending on how many of your cards you can sort of change over. So correct. I, I do think that like the difference between VRD versus something I mean, like a draft is that you're probably going to abandon something like two to three picks versus in an actual draft you could abandon ten and not feel bad about it. Uh, yeah, like it definitely gets tricky. Those yeah. sideboard cards are so important. Absolutely. They can they can completely shift matchups. I mean, you do play more post board games than pre, right? Yeah. 
And to Crambler's point, uh, the, the only two that I think are really worth talking about, like, we have lots of McKellens and, like, uh, kind of, more, like, traditional scotches and things like that. The only two bottles I think would be worth talking about are we have a couple of nice Japanese whiskeys. I don't know the names on them off the top of my head, uh, but those are the only two that I think are, like, particularly interesting. We don't have any, uh, any weird bottles tonight. It's true. You all should have seen him jumping around trying to pronounce them. They are in Japanese, and I don't believe he can read Japanese, so yeah, it's pretty no. funny. Throw me Spanish or French, and I can help you out. But beyond anything beyond that, I'm done. Steven That's has great. a car in play, though. Yeah, that let's should take be a, a look at let's combo. catch up on what's going on in the game. So yeah. there was Atasha's hideous laughter right? cast, and I have no idea what happened. Uh, it exited it, not that much. No, yeah, it it was a little odd. Though Steven's deck looks like it's getting a little thin. He's got the mm-hmm. defense grid up off the Karn. Now that's what he tutored with Karn. That's but odd, I'm not right? sure. Why? I guess just because he knows his opponent has Cryptic and Quicken and all of these cards, right? It does look like he's got him face up. Also, he's winning on board. He is. Uh, he's winning by almost every conceivable metric, so we'll see if Brandon can kind of get him here with the big... Uh... There's also Wither Room Apprentice in play, which means that Steven is just one Chain of Smog away, so presumably he wouldn't have tutored for this if he, didn't, if he okay. had lost the Chain of Smog. This might just be game, right? He's going to... He's gonna mystic tutor it, or he's gonna mystic it back onto the top. Yep. Play quicken or get probe. Yep. And then he just got Tasha's again, and I don't know, but Steven's deck looks small, man. It really does. I, I don't know how Steven wins this one. Kind of interesting. But I don't know why Steven would have tutored for defense grid if he didn't have the win ready. Yeah, because you see, he's got all of his mana tapped here. Mm-hmm. I think he maybe could have just played Micah's Lattice, right? So he's pointing at his uh, Karn as if it matters. So I think that maybe. Th- uh, Brandon is reliant on the Mana Crypt tapping. Mm. Well, he just played the Mana Crypt. Uh, so Texas, so. you said percentage of cards versus proxies. 100% of the cards versus proxies are are proxies, uh, other than the basic lands. So everything here is printed off. Obviously, like, between the group here, we probably have something like 95% of these cards actually in paper, but uh, for the sake of a VRD, we're not going to be, like, shuffling up Moxin. Yeah. Um, just because, like, with the number of people that are running in and out of this house, it'd be really dangerous to have that much money flying around the tables, so we mm-hmm. proxy have everything. Can't invite us Chicago boys here if you got fucking 40 grand worth of cards on the table. Okay? That's right. We, like, Mason's real sketchy, and we don't want to allow him near near all of our vintage decks. So Now, uh, to be fair, when I introduced myself to Nick, I said, hi, my name is Mason Lang, and I'm sketchy, so <laughs> I won't even blame him for that one. Well, that's fine. Oh, uh, wait, so, so someone won this game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Brandon did, so he played yeah. the Tasha's... Steven kind of, like, went to pick up his deck and then flashed him the, the two-card combo card. Yep. But I don't believe he had the mana to play it, so I believe he was just sort of conceding that Tasha's was good enough. The second Tasha's. I, I think you're right. I think um, that it seems like Brandon has a uh, so damn one covered. I mean, Brandon beat Steven and Swift uh, and Andrew Swift in the yep. uh, round robin. Mm-hmm. Um, so it would make sense if he was able to take them both down here. It's... Uh, you know, there there's so much variance in some of these vintage matches. It wouldn't surprise me if you know someone loses, you know, loses one, gets gets another back. But if Brandon is able to just kind of close this one out, I think that speaks volumes to how consistent of a of a deck that he drafted. I agree. Let's talk a little about how bad John Ryan's deck is and how much you're gonna just defeat holy him shit. Okay, so really here's so it. here's the thing about John Ryan's deck. Okay, yeah, it's and really I, bad. Some right? people have been saying that uh, they think he's favored because he t- he dispatched me in like whatever it was six turns earlier. I, I believe it was fewer than three between both of the matches. Here's yeah. here's the thing. Okay, look at this man's list. It's not even a good reanimator list. Mm. All of his fucking re- <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't swear. All of his reanimation spells cost like two or three mana. He has like. Uh-huh. Faithless looting and careful study to actually put them into his graveyard. What in tomb? One in tomb in his entire deck. Sure. He has like very little stuff. To, like consistent. People were out there were saying they lost to pack rat. Pack rat people. Okay. Right. Now, first of all, pack rat is an incredible magic card. But if you it are is. honestly telling me that you are losing pack rat with your vintage rotisserie draft deck. With no actual disruption. It's not like the man is hitting you with a bunch of discard spells and tearing your stuff up and then countering stuff while he pack rats you. No, he's literally just playing pack rat and then trying yes. to, like, turn six you or something. Bunch, yeah. It's embarrassing, okay? That's I ridiculous. See. I'm going to destroy John because he's probably not... I First of all, I'm only getting to five in, like, both games earlier, mm. okay? And then he had Iona in his opening seven, like, both games. That is frustrating. Okay, yeah, it's the best card against my monocolored deck, okay? If he had pulled out the Gristle Crank, I would have destroyed him. Makes the point sense. Being, so, Mason, so what, what is your answer to Iona? Let's hear about that. 
Uh, I have Caracas. That's the thing. That's the stupidest thing. Is I even I my monocolored. Uh, I curse like a sailor. I'm realizing this now that I'm trying not to. My horrible mono green idiot deck. Uh huh. Plays Caracas in the sideboard. Like I even have outs to a giant angel that literally says I can't play spells, and it doesn't matter. Like I have uh what endurance or whatever the free yeah. like. Uh, reanimation killer. I have a bunch of discard spells. I have graveyard hand. I've got it all. Okay, like he was incredibly lucky against me earlier. And if he's in here talking shit, I want everybody to know that I'm going to destroy this man. All right, not even to be close. I, I cannot wait to watch this finals match. I feel like the anticipation is just building, and it's like a very real matchup. Also, John Ryan is like coming from a like small town St. Louis, coming here mm. ready to like mm -hmm. talk, and now mm -hmm. all of a sudden, big time in Chicago is coming oh, yeah. in to just oh, show yeah. him what's Look, up. Look, we don't uh, we take our magic very seriously up in Chi Town, okay? Yeah. And we uh we come to win, okay? I didn't come down here to take second place next to one of the St. Louis boys. Came here to present, okay? Swifty ran bad enough for the both of us. Yep. He's like gonna wind up, you know, outside of the top four. Mm -hmm. It's a bummer. His deck was good. He drafted well. I think, you know, he got unlucky in a few spots. It happens. Look, if you have to like pick luck between the two of you, you pick you pick the player that you want to win, right? Exactly. Like, listen, he can get as unlucky as he wants. I'm here to game. That's a fact. All right, what do we got going on in this match? We got a turn one elves of deep shadow. I love that art. Beautiful. And we've got a turn one Sheldock Isle. So Brandon's Sheldock Isle. And I don't believe Steven did this. I know that when me and Andrew Swift played against Brandon, we sideboarded in every single card from our sideboard. And my deck was 61 <laughs> cards post-board after, after game one. And I believe Swifty did the exact same thing. I think he was playing a 60-card um, right. deck. That so, can't be right, though, right? Like, there's so many cards that don't care about milling that Brandon has. I would argue that literally the only thing he has going for him is, like, Sheldock Isle Emrakul. Okay. He he cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter against me and the, the other card, like, Mills 14. Yeah. And I was still at above 20 so that he couldn't activate the Sheldock Isle. It Reasonable. was huge. Okay. Uh, it didn't look like it mattered very much for Swifty, unfortunately. Yep. Um, but I know that he, you know, didn't lose to, uh, like, he got brain freeze for, like, 40 cards or something like sure. it, it happens you know brandon eventually had enough time swifty's playing a controlling deck brandon's you know also playing a controlling deck so they right. can have a whole and, and brain freeze whole storm is obviously very hard to control right mm -hmm. with a proactive plan like steven has i would argue i if if his sideboard is reasonable i, I would argue that he should probably you know man up like a uh, card up and, and this is honestly like one of those things where drafting a bunch of like main deck cards as your sideboard is an advantage, right? Because like uh, you don't have to so, worry yeah. about like, oh, acid rain isn't good against Brandon, so I guess I'm not gonna play it. Like you just no, I, I throw everything in there. Yeah, that makes sense. It's totally fine. I mean, uh, I know Stephen. You know, if you can't go to sixty cards or whatever, you can go to like forty-seven or yeah. fifty or something. You know, you add in, and the other thing is like, as soon as you start adding more cards, you also get to add more lands, which. Sure will also theoretically help you. So I think that boarding up against Mill is, is a decent uh, strategy, mm -hmm. generally. That makes and, complete if, sense. and if more people didn't do it against Brandon today, I'm honestly surprised, because it feels like sort of a slam dunk. Steven also just played his first pick, which is Soul Ring. Oh, Soul Ring's such a good card. Soul Ring is very good. I think it's a second round pick. I, <gasps> I understand why he did it. What? I think he's wrong, uh, but he thinks he's right, and that's okay. Um, I also think he's wrong. Um, can I can I yeah, go, this go, list over it. here? Um, so the thing is, uh, he picked it in the fourth position. Right, I think it's maybe seventh. So I could see taking Soul Ring over any single Mox. Sure. What I cannot abide is picking Soul Ring over Mana Crypt. Come on, man. One right. of them costs one. One of them costs zero. One of them makes three mana on turn one with colored mana, and the other makes two colorless. Like, come on. Mana Crypt's great. That's it's interesting. Not like, it's not like anyone's pressuring your life total in this format. Look at this. No one's yeah. playing red. No one's playing Lightning Bolts. No one's even playing Thalia. Like, so you know, no one's beating you to death. So. Mana Crypt historically has been taken in rounds two to three. So that's interesting. Like, Mana Crypt almost never gets taken ahead of Moxon. What? Right? Really? Yeah. Oh my god. See, that is such a crazy difference. Yeah, it uh, really meta -wise, is. Because... It is rare that Mana Crypt will make it to, like, 7th or 8th pick. It, it's not unheard of. I mean, it, it happens. People wind up with Mana Crypt and a Mox mm -hmm. fairly often, or double Moxen on, on pick 8. But Mana Crypt and Soul Ring, I would say, are both valued higher than Mox in, in our... In Do you our mind running out there a minute and checking to see if there's anything going on in the gameplay? It seems like there's... Absolutely. It seems like we're paused for a moment. 
we're finding out what's going on. Uh, it seems like uh, there was a uh, Shellback Isle that was played, and then some confusion happened. I'm not sure what Brandon is up to, but uh, yeah, we're finding out what's going on. But yeah, looking at this draft history, it actually is very interesting kind of looking at the history. I feel like the, the St. Lotus draft kind of evolved from the history of uh, of what was happening on the uh, Shotgun Lotus crew. That's kind of where our history came from. Um, and some of that is, uh, is is just historical, right? But Chicago obviously like moved Soul Ring and Mana Crypt up in the history, in the in the evolved. So Mana Crypt's average pick is 9.7. Compared Are you? to Soul Ring, oh, which is wait, eight, so Soul Ring is slightly ahead, uh, but wow. Mana Crypt is almost always in the, is, is is average in the second round. That's crazy. So what that so that nine point seven. So it's not even being picked ninth. It's being picked by the the yeah, seventh it's, seat. It's being picked by seventh seat. That is crazy. So uh, what happened was it looked like Brandon had one too many cards in his hand. I uh, see. They're thinking that like this the sleeves got a little sticky. One one kind of stuck to him. Uh, so sense. they had to do a little um, had to do a little change like. Yep. Uh, Basically, Stephen got to look at Brandon's hand, pick a card, and I believe they put it on the bottom of his deck. So, it okay, happens. Eric in here to update us. Oh yeah, Eric, you want to tell us? So, hey folks, Head Judge Eric Levine here. So pretty much what happened there was um, Brandon. I don't believe the error occurred with Brandon's Shell Dock Isle. Brandon was able to give me enough information about the Shell Dock Isle cards that I don't believe those were the issue. I'm pretty sure that we just had two sleeves that got stuck together. So I just applied the hidden card error fix as is traditional. We just revealed uh, Brandon's hand to Steven. Steven, as you saw, chose that gush, and that was shuffled into the randomized portion of Brandon's library, of course, leaving those bottom three from Shell Dock Isle undisturbed, and then we just continued on. That makes complete sense. Can you tell us about this whiskey while you're on mic as well? Uh, yeah, I don't remember the name of the whiskey. I uh, My brain tells me Toski, but that is the name Tosky. of a squirrel from Kaldheim. Yeah, so no, that is not the name of the whiskey. This will draw me a card when it attacks. But it is a, it's, a, it's a Japanese whiskey, nice and smooth up front, but it's got a little bit of a bite in the back. I, I, I quite like it. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. It's, it's really it's incredibly smooth, uh, and it doesn't have a lot of like the peaty kind of like overtones that just like overwhelm you as you're drinking it. Right. Well, we're not dealing we're not dealing with a, a peaty scotch. We're not dealing with an Ardbeg or something that sort of smells yeah. and tastes like a Sharpie, which personally I really appreciate, but I understand why other people don't. Now, I don't totally remember the name. I'm like 99% sure no, I remember the name me. of the it, other whiskey. It's locked but I, I'm not 100% sure. So what I'm going to do is go I'm going to go double check and I'm going to come back to you folks with the right answer. That'd be appreciated. Yeah. But uh, this has been a really delightful experience. Uh, drawing extra cards while drinking whiskey is always wonderful. So. Good times, good um, times. Good wow. to see them moving forward. Wow, fast plays. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's let's update ourselves. So that's a Delphi Voidwalker into a Grief? Yeah, Grief in play, that's great. So that Elves Deep Shadow helping us fix, him, fix his mana up a little bit, and uh -huh. that Soul Ring's helping him cast Grief. Grief, such a powerful magic card. Obviously so, not so, a Grief Tyrant. So, so good looking. Right. Of course, maybe Grief Tyrant would be pretty sick. That would be... Yeah, Kayo. Kayo. We won't do too many impressions as it might get a little racially charged. Let's like just. Yeah, we're gonna stay out of the whole Kayo. like. We're in we're ignorant Americans. This is not breakfast I'm at Tiffany's. American. We don't need to try to do Japanese accents. We're good. Great point. Yeah. Okay, so so that brain brain freeze is in the graveyard right now. Is that uh, right? Yeah. So it got exiled from Dothy. So I'm. Oh, you know what? I bet it got hit by grief. I bet okay. that's what happened. That makes a lot um, of sense. Brandon does lean on Brain Freeze for a fair amount. Okay, so we got the Tasha's Hideous Laughter coming out. All right. Ooh, and immediately he hits two four drops. So, yeah, this isn't going to take a ton of cards off, but it's obviously going to take, you know, it takes 20 men off. It's an Apprentice and a another command. Brandon played this thing against me earlier. He yep. hit 19 mana worth of spells. And then, it and goes then Crater Hoof. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. See, that's the worst thing about these, oh like, god. giant Eldrazi you have is, uh -huh. yeah, they count for 15 mana or something, right? So but if you're CMC. already 10 mana deep, you know, it doesn't help. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I think that that's, like, the, like, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, I feel like, has been a really huge all-star. And I think the more they have these exile effects versus the discard effects... It's really going to invalidate a lot of these uh, Eldrazi oh. lands. Oh, shoot. Oh, shit. I do not think Brandon saw that one coming. So That's this is game. the classic. So he boarded his Helm of Obedience in from the sideboard. And I think sitting just off there off screen is Demonic Tutor. So, so Brandon's making the last play of trying to draw two cards to find a Force of Will. Didn't find it. 
What happened there was uh, a Douthy Voidwalker was in play. So Douthy Voidwalker uh, says that if any card would go to the graveyard, it's exiled instead. Uh, the problem being that there's this card called Helm of Obedience. Obedience. Uh, Helm of Obedience ex er, discards cards on the top of their library and whenever puts them they... into the graveyard. Correct. But since they can't go to the graveyard and get exiled instead, Helm of Obedience takes their whole deck away. Yeah, so Helm of Obedience exiles, exiles their entire deck. At that point, Brandon realized that if he were to draw his next card next turn, he would lose the game and yep, chose to scoop it up. So Steven wins a way game. Yeah, very nice uh, very nice sideboarding there from Steven. I know he usually keeps that in the board and tutors it up with Karn, so really awesome job uh, awesome job sideboarding there. I, I'm not going to lie, didn't see that one coming. It no. really caught me by surprise. And that's that's the beauty of Steven's two-card Monty deck, right? Is he needs mm -hmm. five mana and two cards in hand, and he wins the game. Mm -hmm. right? Last game, he showed that on the last turn where Brandon played Tasha's again, Steven had, again, a two-card combo. He just needed two more mana, and boom. Uh, and Brandon's this is, dead. like, the huge risk of Steven's deck, right, is that, like, he can be massively disrupted by Tasha's, where all of a sudden he has five cards that are all comboed with five other exact cards, and if he hits yeah. those five cards, all of a sudden he can't win the game anymore. But if he happens to exile four of those and then draws the next one the next turn, he wins the game immediately, and it doesn't matter what you do. Yep. It's so hard to disrupt if he happens to have one plus A plus B in his hand. Mm -hmm. In these small deck formats, I know that personally when I draft, I have a real hard time getting milled because seemingly every card in my deck needs to do Absolutely. the thing that it does. This and is the I reason get... I've never pulled the trigger on Doomsday. Like I play Doomsday mm -hmm. in every other format other than this one, but this is the first format where I'm just like, I can't play this deck because if you happen to lose one card, 90% of your piles are disrupted. Mm hmm which is tough. You would have to really be... Uh, how many people in the comments play this format? <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Excellent um, question. Yeah, no. We, it, this format is incredibly niche. It's really complicated and requires a special player that has a lot of awareness of the history of magic in addition to modern decks. Uh, so Ooh, Brandon's hey, showing, Brandon's the, showing the hand, yeah. uh, which, of course, he is mulliganing away. Yeah, it wasn't so good I think enough. He was just showing us Too many lands. Like a, yeah, like a bunch of lands or something like that. Um, I saw someone's okay, so I came right back in as hyphenated uh, made this comment. Mana Crypt's average pick is 9.7 in 42 drafts compared to Sol Ring 8.0. Right. So here's the thing, hyphenated, and I'm going to go ahead and just talk completely out of my ass here. Um, <laughs> I have played a lot of Yardies, right? I have probably played 30 of Yardies in the last, And like, Mason promises to um, share all this data years. with you. It's going to go in the Discord immediately after this, of course. Yes. Uh, he's going to work very hard on making sure all those are Absolutely. Watch. All the ones that, since we started keeping track of them on Google Sheets, I probably have 10 or so uh, that I will share from um, the the last couple of years. But what I would say is that I believe that like three-ish years ago that it was correct uh, for all of the colored Moxen to be taken over Sol Ring and Crypt. But Sol Ring and Crypt have actually gotten better in the last couple of years. Uh, Ooh, there spicy. are more artifact decks that are viable now. Um, there are more... So before... The How much of that is due to Karn? Uh, I mean... Karn is a, a big contributing factor to that. So Karn is one example of these sort of artifact-centric decks that get much better when they get a few more pieces. So I would argue that uh, with a start with Crypt and, and Soul Ring now, there are several other, like there are several different branching decks you can go into from there. Whether that's an aggro deck, like a affinity artifact sort of uh, modular aggro deck, or a large Eldrazi deck. Eldrazi, Reality Smasher, and Thought Not Seer are the biggest boons to Sol Ring and Mana Crypt that have been printed ever. Like, That's baffling to me. They are absolutely me. insane. Because they, they feel like they've punished Workshop so hard that a lot of the Mono Brown decks just like don't know where they're do what they're doing anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's shocking to hear that they're actually like a boon to that type of format. Oh yeah, and I've got some lists to share with you that are just Eldrazi all over the place. This is like Eldrazi gonna, Winter, uh, but on steroids. A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. Um, the old mud decks, like the workshop decks, like you're mm -hmm. talking about, and a, a lot of people know this who have played this format before. But workshop is sort of a trap. Like that card is it absolutely is, is. is tricky. Now it obviously can be very powerful, but you you definitely have to have a plan with that card. It's not yes. just going to be generically powerful. And people who try it to play like lodestone today, golem, if you try to draft a old school like mud stacks deck from vintage with workshop a couple of years ago. You're actually like drawing debt. You're you're not going to do well in that draft. However, 
There are a few different strategies now that all can really make use of Soul Ring and Mana Crypt. There are some really powerful three and four mana Planeswalkers in the format now. Uh, Soul Ring and Mana Crypt have gotten better. Uh, and the Moxen, you know, it's not like the Moxen are bad. I think we, Smasher we, and Thought not get drafted in every single Vintage History draft that I've hosted in the last, since, like, since they were printed. So we should jump back. This is actually we should. really interesting. Yeah, uh, we should definitely actually talk about magic. Th this illuminates the wide variance in VRDs and how different yours is from ours. But It is. It's crazy. Uh, also very different from, like, hyphens and ours are very different as well. But, like, mm, it's sure. kind of just like they're very big schools. What's happening right here, though, there's a Douthy Voidwalker in this play from Steven's side, which on turn two is, like, a good play. Brandon has a Mesmeric Orb, and just, like, there's a Shellback Isle in play, there's a Suspended uh, Narset in play as well. Like, Brandon has everything going for him in this game, and this is the rubber match, right? If Brandon wins this one, uh, he is locked for fourth place. That's true, that's and that true. And then forces the action to you. Mm -hmm. He has seemingly everything going for him, but Steven's got that Dothy Voidwalker, and we did see him just clown Brandon Did out Steven of forget nowhere. to mill two? I think Steven forgot to mill two. There we uh, go. Yes. He's okay. milling those two. Uh, now. He's doing it now. No. Um, so very cool. Oh, and it was goes like <laughs> card. So <laughs> obviously Steven wanted to get that right out of his hand. But uh, yeah. Um, so I mean, like, yeah, Brandon. Brandon's looking great. He's got the Narset and everything, and Narset's probably gonna die this turn. Yep. Um, but, I mean, he's, he's seemingly got some stuff going. He's starting to mill with Mesmeric Orb. Uh, Steven must have boarded in that Kozilek. Um, Brandon's probably going to have to take that care of that with uh, yep. Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Brandon actually has very few cards at Exile, right? Like, yeah. for being a mill deck, you, normally those decks kind of play uh, Leyland of the Void or some way to handle things when they go to the graveyard, even Surgical Extraction. Mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of ways to deal with cards when they go to the graveyard, but, like, dealing with the Titans is usually, like one of the top three concerns you have as a mill deck. Yeah. Brandon right. kind of just ignored the problem and figured Tasha's would handle it for him. Yeah, and you know, lucky enough, he did pick the Emrakul, yep. and I don't believe Ulamog got taken, so it was just, uh, it was just Kozilek, yep. um, which, you know, now he's going to have a little problem, so he's got to keep the pressure off him with a Voidwalker, he's got to avoid getting comboed, and he's got to figure out a way to deal with Kozilek. Should and Ste easy, right? Steven did take Kozilek immediately. Uh, after he saw Tasha's get taken, because he's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I just don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm going right. to take Kozilek and win the game. Right. And now, funnily enough, uh, it's so good against Tasha's yes. eating up so much of the mana, and also Tasha's the only way he's going to exile it, so it's kind of Correct. a funny little balance he's got there. Brandon also could potentially try to do something. He's already got the Sheldak Isle down. Uh, he could try to set something up, and if he can get you know down to a few cards, that Emrakul can always come off uh, underneath that thing and That's uh, right. really devastate Stephen. So should be kind of interesting. There's an archive Hyphenated, trap happening. You are right. All the three, all the good three mana walkers do cost two pips, yep. but that's technicality. I don't recognize it. What about Davriel? Isn't Davriel a good three mana walker? You know, I think Davriel. Is, it's okay to say no. Is probably. I don't think Davriel is actively unplayable. I'll say that. Really? I, yeah. That's actually, I actually surprising. I actually think there are a few interesting things you can do with like rack style strategies. Waste knot, wheel people, yep. Megrim. Uh, yeah, Megrim is a, is a really fun card. You can legitimately and it's play like it's like playing Magic like it was in 1996 too. So it, like it's uh -huh. a nice little throwback feel for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I would actually be interested in someone trying to draft that sort of like hull breacher wheel deck and just yep. throw in some Megrim action. You know, just really really crush people sure that'd be kind of fun maybe some blue black action uh, get a Ooh, little, get a little time okay, twister okay. Uh, kind of cool i mean Memory we saw jar. a wheels deck today the wheel deck today was that's cooler. true uh dan he, was really he killing absolutely it. should have beaten me uh i won game one on a tragic technicality and then he almost just beat me the next two games too so it was pretty wild i feel like dan's deck underperformed it's 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 actual like that deck felt like it was a top tier deck and it just didn't perform as well as it should have i agree yeah hyphenated that is funny um i think i've only seen someone draft megram actually oh my god i, I think I've, it's actually been drafted twice which yeah. is so funny megram is probably not a good <laughs> enough card to be drafted in 2022 no, no. i would probably like, not recommend it yeah okay so let's see so we've got some stuff going on there's we've got a some ton more. of mana in play there is a, a we Tasha. got the Tasha's coming okay gotta get this okay, pose so like the Tasha's Elf of Deep Shadow, Five. some Walker. Pull, pull the cards in. There's a, a Grief. Bit. I wish we could see, but that's okay. Okay, Grief helps. Okay, so that must have been it. That must have been 20, but it did not look like Ko's like hit there. I didn't see it, no. Is what, is what it looked like to me, but it was kind of tough to tell. So maybe we'll have to just like play on a knife's edge, and if there's no Ko's like, then there's no Ko's like. Yep. Who's to say? 
Oh, there's Karn, oh, there's going. Guttural Response, there's the Spies in a Forest, okay, so nothing, nothing How major did... there. Oh, oh just that was the Mesmer Corp. Mills. Okay, there we go. Ooh, and we got the, oh my strip god, that's mine. brutal, the Strip Mine on the Shell back out. Out? We don't get to see, we, we don't get to find out. We're never going to get to find out, but if it was the Emrakul, then that might be, realistically, one of Brandon's ways to actually win this game. I, I do think he showed it, I don't remember it being Emrakul, but we'll see. Okay, right. okay. Well, I doubt he's getting to 15 mana to cast his Emrakul any other way. So <laughs> it's pretty unlikely. If we didn't get... Does Brandon have no outs besides the Shaldag Isle? Um, well, I think his out now would be like recast Tasha's Hideous Laughter again. Sure. Um, and he may also have... And then, you know, he's got... He, he actually has some, some pretty interesting things going on in this deck. He's got uh, Cryptic Command plus mm -hmm. uh, Mystic... Um, sanctuary yep. to sort of do that whole loop. Uh, he could potentially cast Tasha's infinite or Tasha's hideous laughter several more times this game. He apparently um, has Mind's Desire in his main deck, so that could happen. He could Mind's Desire into Emrakul. I Emmerichel. remember him. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I think I don't know uh, how wise that funny. would be, but it's possible. And you know, always there's always the Lutri beats. If he ever remembers he has Lutri. Oh my God, he's putting it in his hand right now. What an absolute madman. Dear God. I don't think he's cast this card once today. He keeps forgetting he has it. It's very funny. <laughs> you should hear him cuss and freak out out there over him. like When he remembers Lutri completely exists. Completely forgetting Lutri exists. Yeah. It's really funny. Okay, we got the Witherbloom Command coming out. He's milling Brandon out and returning Stripmine to his hand. Powerful, Ooh. powerful stuff going on there. So Brandon's going to be going out of two cards. Is that right? Um... With a Rulu Command, I feel like it's the card of the last two years that has the biggest delta between VRD and other formats. Mm. Like, it is mm -hmm. a card that in VRD will always get a two-for-one, and in other formats is, like, struggling to get a one-for-one. Absolutely one. dog, dude. It's one of the worst commands out of that set, and I will die on this hill. But in, in this, format, in this it's format, format, it's bonkers. Yeah, format, I think it's better it's than the other ones. Prismatic Command is even close, but I think Wither Room is better than all of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I agree with you. I generally put uh, the white-black command and the red-black command higher on raw power level, sure. but in this format, contextually, it just doesn't work. Yep. For something like standard, beautiful, but... I, I did see when he copied Gush and drove four cards off Lutri. Okay, yeah. See, that was a beautiful That is pretty ending. legit. That's, that's great. Yeah, that was just him, like, flexing when he was in the fourth playoff slot. Right, that's least... how you know that man loves magic, okay? Yeah. That's a fact. Look, if, if you're able to, like, cast Gush and then, like, make Menendian super happy by casting it twice, like, you're just... You're really making life good. Oh, yeah. That is direct. That's all I want to be doing in, like, Vintage Cube Draft, let me tell yes. you. Lutri is a real treat. I actually really, I think this card's great, and I really like is how that a really in the lock? it. That is a Drown in the Lock, and that is a Veil of Summer snagging Aww. that Drown in the Lock. Oh, my God, this is so brutal. This Dothy Voidwalker really showing, really just kind of flexing on us Look, here. Steven said he was going to lose this match, and he's really not, like, performing for the viewers. Uh, I mean, you know, wants he, to see he him lose. sniped that last game. It's true. And I think he decided, he got all big in his britches and decided he was actually going to win. This is going to be an exhausting finals. So the problem is, we know, if Steven wins here, yes. then theoretically him and Swifty have to play. Yes. And that's brutal. That's rough. Yeah. And then we just have to, like, everyone has to hope Steven loses so we can just, like, go home. Right. Well, no, you no, have no. To, You have to drive home five hours, right? Um, I'm not driving home tonight. That's uh, nice. We're driving home tomorrow. We're okay. gonna, but I mean, we're not really gonna have a lot of options for dinner. I don't think at this point. I can't believe it's already getting to be nine o'clock. It's crazy. It's true. And St. Louis shuts down at like five p.m., so it's gonna be tough for you. Oh boy, that's rough. Well, maybe we'll have to grab some fast food and then just eat some good <laughs> breakfast on the way out tomorrow. <laughs> this is gonna be my last non-working day for the next God, month or something. Well. It's gonna be forever, so it's gonna be rough. So I'm here to party all night, playing right. Magic forever. We'll play a Commander tournament after this. It'll be good. Fantastic. Commander is a format I have not played in a long time. <laughs> uh, outside of Cube. Commander right. Cube. Lots of fun. Alrighty. So Steven... Steven what do you got? Crop rotate Okay, out. there's a oh, Wither Bloom and apprentice. And there's the combo! Wait, is that... Yep, oh, God, it's a chain of small... And boom! Steven, Steven takes it down! Oh, is, is he like? Yeah, I think at this point he's kind of jerking off. Oh like, god! You know, giving him, giving yeah, him a chain jerk. of okay. So chain of smog plus witherbloom command. Do you want to explain this or do you want me to? Uh, it's fairly simple. Chain of smog is like a fairly unplayable magic card. However, <laughs> the person who it is cast on, just like uh, the more popular card, um, chain, chain of vapor. Of vapor uh, the person who is, is cast on 
can discard two cards, or can copy that spell. Uh, and you can copy it as many times as you want if you target yourself. Uh, the new spellcraft cards uh, work off of spells that you cast or spells that you copy. So all you do is you target yourself with this chain of smog, copy it infinite times, and all of the copies will trigger your magecraft cards, which will, in this case, with Witherbloom Princess, kill your opponent. And this um, used to be a four card combo with Rel Zarek. Uh, which we actually saw do okay in VRD4, I think it was, for St. Lotus 4. Uh, but with Witherbloom Apprentice and Chain of Smog being in the same colors, obviously it's much stronger in this VRD. And when I was planning on coming to this one, I was going to draft this, this set. I'm just go all in on it. But yeah, Witherbloom Apprentice uh, says that whenever you copy a spell, you make an opponent lose one life. And when Chain of Smog allows you to copy it as many times as you want, as long as it targets yourself... Uh, you can make your opponent lose infinite life. So uh, that's what happened there, in, and that was Steven's second win. So we're going into that's the insane. finals so of Steven versus Swifty. It looks like Steven is Swifty. taking his deck apart, though. That can't be right. Doing. No, there's no way. Maybe he, let me, let me go talk he to must him just be de-sideboarding. I'll just, just wax philosophically for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get Swifty in here and see what happens. I'll hang out here. Let me see. Hyphenated. So I've heard hyphenated here host some weirdies. I can't wait to get into this Discord. Uh and talk with some other uh, VRD enthusiasts. I'll tell you guys my favorite VRD story. So the uh, maybe the second or third VRD that our group uh, out of DeKalb, Illinois had ever done together. Um, I had just come out of the hospital with a spontaneous pneumothorax. My lung had collapsed. Um, and I got released from the hospital uh, being told that I was okay. And the, the following the day after I got out of the hospital, I went over to my friend's place and we did a VRD at his house. We got through the first 20, 25 picks, something like that, maybe even the first 30 picks, and we decided to take a little break. Um, I was drafting a very cool high tide, uh, mono blue high tide deck. I, was, I had Trop and Breeding Pool, and I was splashing a single card Explorer uh, because I couldn't get Fast Wand, and I was very upset about it. But if you keep cycling through your deck with Time Spiral and Time Twister, you can keep casting Explorer for like net one mana basically. Um, so it's kind of an interesting, kind of an interesting little deck. Anyway, we're sitting there on our break and I feel a pain in my chest and I walk over to my friend Dylan and I say, Dylan, my lung exploded again. I need to go to the hospital. <laughs> so he puts me in his van, speeds me over to the hospital and uh, one bedside surgery later, the the ER physician says, yep, your lung collapsed a second time, uh, 24 hours after you were released from the first time, uh, and I could not finish the draft. Um, I wound up uh, sort of, they, they wound up um, proxying my deck up for me. I, I finished the draft like remotely. They proxied my deck up for me, and my friend Dylan, who had driven me to the hospital earlier, came back over. Uh, with my now proxy deck in hand, uh, and uh, and sat there while I was high off of my act. I was tripping on like Vicodin and like uh, morphine or something. I could not hold my head up, so it was legitimately <laughs> taking me. It was probably taking me like several minutes to play a card because I would play a card and I would sort of fall asleep in my chair, um, and he would like nudge me to wake me up so that I could get back, so that I could continue. And again, I was playing a masturbatory storm deck, so he just watched me beating him for like the better part of an hour. He sat there, played a whole match with me, and then we did not play any more matches of the Transfer Draft. Wow, that is quite a story that I only caught the tail end of. <laughs> uh, yeah, have you ever uh, <laughs> VRD'd Trific on Morphine? Uh, no. Well, Opi opiates do not have the intended effect on me, well, so unfortunately... Well, if you told people that, your draft would make more sense, buddy. Hey! Uh, 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 I'm just messing uh, you, you know what, it was... You with things today. Absolutely I, fantastic. It, it was, uh... It was... There were, there were mis mistakes were made. <laughs> yeah, hyphenated. That's right, I'm spitting fire tonight, okay? We're dropping bombs! You, All you, right, you, 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 Brandon, you. what happened, buddy? What happened to Steven? Okay. Uh, Dothy Voidwalker very early, and uh, he, and he has Kozilek in his deck, and I didn't bitter True. ordeal it. Ooh, bitter ordeal. Okay, yeah. So because I uh, sideboarded it out because uh, I'm. That's rough. Uh, we're what, kind of the, the kids are Tasha's. saying I'm dumb. <laughs> 
Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that necessarily, but in, Tasha's hideous laughter we thought was kind of your only out for it. It but was. You, you did have, you know, you had the Mystic Sanctuary, your Cryptic Command, you put it back in your hand, you keep doing this and stuff, da 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 But with Dothy Voidwalker in play, it exiled the Tasha's, right? So, yeah, eh, that's rough, that's rough. Voidwalker, fucking hell of a magic card, right? That's very good. Yeah, that's absolutely, what. Absolutely listen, baller. the youths these days—they're all, all—they're all about the streets, the, the saying, "Hey, let's let's get these Dothy Moonwalkers. <laughs> they're going yeah, for. That is what they're saying these days. They're going for uh, a a hay penny to the gram. <laughs> what a sentence to say <laughs> out loud on air. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Cards are flying fast and furious. Stevens played some threats. Dark Swifties deaths mostly com- on the com- board. Countered them, but he did hit him with the turn to him. I know when Swifty and Steven played earlier in the draft, uh, that him was absolutely brutal for Swift. I know um, he was having a hard time. He just wasn't able to counter those turn two uh, hymns super frequently. So uh, kind of brutal, but he did keep the uh, the threat off the board with his lose focus, and now he's got the Urza Saga kind of ticking up. Uh, we'll see if that works out. Steven over there with the Dark Depths, and it looks like he played the Crop Rotation to get the Thespian stage, so he's probably going to get a 20-20. Swifty, of course, does have both Path and Plow in his deck. Uh, he also has Solitude. Um, so he's got lots of different ways to not be dead to this. Those, we'll see. Those things we'll seem see. good. Yeah. I don't believe Steven has any way to protect his 2020 outside of, like, discard spells and stuff. He didn't have any targeted discards, so... Uh, you know, Swifty, Swifty will at least have that going for him, which is cool. They've got your token what a, out there. What a what a handsome looking token. I was gonna say, I you know what I heard about that token? Uh, the man in that token is wearing a toupee. What? Yeah, I didn't know that. That's scandalous, kind of wild, right? Yeah. Well, you can kind of. I mean, honestly, it kind of looks like toupee. Uh, know well, it, you know, <laughs> that's why the the toupee problem in philosophy exists. You know, <laughs> it's all toupees are bad because every time I see a toupee, it, it, it just looks terrible. But if it looks terrible, you're noticing it for being unrealistic, and wow, therefore it creates a it. it creates a, a fake bias against oh, right, against you never toupees. The good yeah, toupees. Oh, which wow. I think you know a more uh, prescient example I think would be uh, what the fuck, what just happened? Uh, oh, Swifty chance. did not have an out to the 2020, so he didn't have any one of his numerous exile based removals. Yeah, effects, which uh, is a real bummer. Bummer, Ruski. Uh huh. Uh, kind of a quick one for Steven. Now, if Steven beats Swifty here, he then will he takes have an, place. an unabashed W. If Swifty somehow beats Steven, then what they've decided to do is all three of them are going to go out in the yard and do a rounds of shin kicking, uh, with the last one to tap out being the winner. Are you excited about that, Brandon? I, I, I believe that I am the most physically imposing of the group. Oh, wow. That's so, interesting. That's interesting. Uh, you know, standing at a at a meaty six foot four, <laughs> I believe that I've got this one in the bag. Uh, now, uh, so I've been a lifetime martial artist, and I can personally tell you that shin kicking is all about who has the most experience kicking shins. Sure. Uh, generally, size does not matter. You don't have a lot of meat over those over those shins. Legally, bones, no? I'm not allowed to throw bows, you know, <laughs> right. deadly no, deadly right. weapons and all. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense to me. So I've had to, you That's know, exclusively a lot of restrict you it. Damn straight, Texas Ranger. Right? Hell yeah. <laughs> I I'm glad that that is the tiebreaker because okay. I have no yeah. interest in playing more magic. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's that's fair. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I I have I have mo- low to none interest. I will not say I, it's yeah. But. You know that's fair. Uh, an alternate tiebreaker would just be you guys going around in circles, uh, continually playing until you pass out from exhaustion. I am not enthusiastic about that idea. Yeah, right. That's fair. I I don't blame you. Yeah, I wouldn't be either. Uh. So, I do hope that somehow me and my finals opponent, uh, we get to somehow draw our games and play like a 14 or 15 game set. I think that would be really fun. I agree with that. I think that would be marvelously tremendous. Good stuff. All right, so going up for game two, I know that in game three of their match earlier, Swifty Mulligan down to five cards, kept a very explosive like Tinker Mana Vault hand, and Steven immediately hit him with the turn one discard spell, turn two, destroy your Mana Vault. Oh. It, was, it was brutal. Um, Gross apocalypse. Right, so I'm sure Swifty would be very excited to keep seven my cards deck, here. My deck was so bad. 
It had good cards in it, but it was not a good deck. I liked some of the stuff that your deck had going on in it. There were some things I didn't like. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of things that I did. Uh, yeah. I am a huge fan of any of the Eternal Command strategies where you're taking regrowth effects like Mystic Sanctuary yeah. and uh, Cryptic Command. Yeah. I think you probably could have been a little bit more focused on the blue-black control side of things. 100%. Um, and had less mill cards. Like, I don't know how many games Mesmeric Orb won you, per se. Um, uh, but... I'm going to say... So that was a sideboard card specifically for... Uh, time Vault. Oh, that's funny. That's interesting. Yeah, okay. because, cool. you know what? Okay, I'm going to combo off. It's like, okay, well, do... Can you kill me in 21 or less on taps? Mm -hmm. That is that is pretty interesting. Um, yeah. And, you know, on taps probably aren't going to be just the, the two permanents or whatever. It's probably going to yeah, be quite it, a bit more. If they're trying to... First of all, you know, if they want to keep doing... If mm -hmm. they want to keep taking all these turns, that's automatically three untaps. Mm hmm all right, per so, turn. yeah, I actually think that's pretty clever. I, I like that quite a bit. So Swifty started off, he kept six, and we know he's got Tinker in hand at least. Uh, Steven has his most powerful start, which probably involves Soul Ring, and Strip Mine coming in to take out the island. Of course, he can't take out the dual land. That is the artifact land that is indestructible. So, <laughs> Get pretty sweet. Shrekt. And now he's got the Bitter Blossom on turn two. Okay, but... Uh, but not like Dothy Voidwalker, which I'm sure Swifty's happy about. Um, nothing more disruptive. He doesn't have more discard spells, which I'm sure Swifty's excited about. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's kind of what he's hoping for, right? Like, I right. mean, he, he's mil he's mulling down to get at least one piece of the combo and something to protect right. it. Right. He's got an indestructible artifact in play and at least Tinker in his hand, so I'm sure he is. You know, he's got he's got some plans cooking. Um, Stephen coming ooh, back. Stephen's uh, He's ooh. planning on losing a lot of life here. Yep. Now, he's a, what? What I if he can't. just flips over that Kozlak, huh? Yeah. I can't. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't draft Dark Confidant. Dark that Confidant's was, a that was big e beating. That card's that, that was easily the biggest whiff during my draft. I would say this is one of the last formats that uh, Dark Confidant has a has a home in. You know, he's getting chased out of every other format, but he is. VRD yeah. is is a nice home for. Ooh, Swifty is not going for the Tinker. And I guess it's because he thinks he needs the land. So if he's going to Tinker for Time Vault, he's going to only have two mana, and we, he doesn't think that's a good position. We know he has Tinker? I do know he has Tinker. Okay. I mean, unless he somehow put it on the bottom, because he did Mulligan to six. Uh, but I can't imagine him doing that. Okay. Uh, so uh, I believe he has it in hand. I The only thing I can think is that the only thing he's thinking is, OK, if I go and get this. Uh, time vault, then I am only have two lands in play, and that's not going to be very good. So uh, He also might just want to keep counterspells up. Uh, that's that's also totally fair. Reasonable. You know, Steven has so many Assassin's Trophies, Abrupt Decays, Wither Bloom. Like, he's got so many interactive spells for Swifties, like combos. Uh, Swifties probably better off trying to play a more fair game. The games that he was winning, it seemed like, were, were the fair games. So, yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of tricky. Swifty and Steven both have nice interactive spells for each other's stuff, uh, and it's sort of just a, a question of can they draw them. You know, Steven makes a 20-20, Swifty has all these removal spells. Uh, Swifty goes, you know, time key, Steven has all these removal spells. Kind of just who draws what and in what order. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Should be kind of an interesting one. We see Swifty uh, quickly on tap. Uh, yeah, play... The flip spell, the double face card, um, it's normally a force spike, and you can play it on the double face as an island, so that's cool. Steven getting his beat down on, got to get his Bergeron, Bergeron. and now he is playing the Ignoble Hierarch. It's kind of a shame that we didn't get to see a noble Ignoble deck today, don't you think? I, I was a little bit sad. Uh, however, it, I mean... How fun is how fun is that if you just smush them all in one deck? Well, you know, I had a uh, I had a delightful. What do we have here? So that was a Skyclave apparition. Uh, so uh, what is the scooping exile? up? Yeah. Actually, didn't see what it targeted. We are the, the commentators. Oh, the no the uh, oh bitter, the bitter, bitter blossom. blossom. Yep, you're right. It was the bitter blossom. Get that out of here. Scoop that guy up. Skyclave apparition, of course, being one of the best cards, like one of the best white cards printed in God knows how long. Uh, one, I would say, I would honestly just say one of the best cards printed, period, in the last couple of years. I mean, it's so 
freaking good. What set is this from? It was from, you know, I'm sure there's a whole thing we can do over here. See, Ooh, normally Mark yeah. does this stuff. I'm, I'm oh, yeah, yeah. sure. Neither of us know what we're doing. Um, it's called Sky Clave Apparition. And it is from some kind of a set, I assume. Boom, look at that. I, what is that? Like, It's not Kaldheim. That's a set before Kaldheim, I think. Maybe... Uh, you know, I have not played. Well, don't you feel like a fool because it's, from Zendikar, Zendikar, it's from Zendikar Rising. See, I yeah. So I uh, all see, I pandemic. Just in the chat and Texas Ranger would have told me. Damn well, th I mean that's because Texas Rangers are a friggin' boy. Oh, I thought you were gonna call him a nerd. <laughs> no. <laughs> what an no. actual nerd. Uh, uh, yeah, I did not play at all during the pandemic. This is my first time. I, I'm. Uh -huh. I've mentioned this, I'm sure, multiple times. First time playing, because it's an excuse. Sure, really. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, have not played since All the right. last well, VRD. We seeing... oh, Counterspell! Oh my god! Okay, if you didn't see what happened there, there was a card that came down, so if he didn't have an answer for it, it destroyed him in his lands. The man untapped, put a Microsynth Lattice in hand, which of course is a two-card combo with Karn. I'm not going to explain bah. it. Our chatters are professionals. They know what's going on. Vale of Summer protected from the counterspell. Swifty was land screwed. Didn't have anything going on. He didn't get that way accidentally. He got land screwed by the strip mine bodying him. Was that, <laughs> game? Was that, that was in game two, right? Uh, That was. It's over. That was. Oh, that was game two. That's it's, The it's Dark Depths. Oh my god, you're right. Mer Merit Lage. You're right. Yeah. So Stephen comes away, the undisputed winner, but the most important thing is... We <laughs> undisputed the winner of fourth place. Fourth place, that's, what, that's what's important. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, what the most important thing there is that he, uh, we got to play the maximum number of matches. We got to play all three of the... No, the because... Matches well, you know, place. if you don't count shin kicking that's right. as... Now, yes, of course. You're not going to get a chance to yeah. shin kick... Sure All right, we've got uh, the real professionals coming back in to take over. Really, get it going. His name is Eric. He okay, in the myth of legend, guys. I don't know if you know this, but when Eric drinks, he likes to gamble. He keeps trying to get me to put mad ducats down on this match. Uh, uh, are we? Uh, I'm sorry. Are we going to the casino tonight? I don't know why do you guys? Because okay, every time I turn over, he's literally got fistfuls of hundred dollar bills out, and he's asking me to it's, name a number. It's outrageous. Oh, wait, this <laughs> this man, he's like, all right, we're gonna. It, it's Russian roulette, except with, without <laughs> without the dangerous aspects. I just, just if just it, one in six stage. chance you give me a hundred dollar bill, and I'm like Eric, that's not a very good game. And he's like, I don't care. He's like, how do you think? He's like, how do you think I got all of these hundred dollars? I'm like, in the first place. You're a genius, Eric. He's like, I know you dumb, <laughs> dumb twat. And I'm like, that Eric, that's a little aggressive. And Eric says, shut up, you. And I say, Eric, please. I thought we were friends. And then. Eric just smiles and laughs maniacally for hours oh, on gosh. end. Uh, yeah, it's it's a good it's a good strat. Deck building, okay, that's a fact. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with good deck building. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. All right, nice job, guys. So are you coming in to commentate on this match while I go out and destroy you, boy? All right. All right, guys. Wish me luck. Me we're too. Going to the, we're going to the streets. Yeah, we're getting out of here. See you later. No matter what They're going to do those streets. Same oh, yeah, 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 that's, that's the right, same that's right. one. Cause we're looking, cause everybody <laughs> cut, everybody cut. <laughs> it's like cut. Everybody cut, loose. Cut, loose. 
news. We're just going to riffing on Yacht Rock here. Hey, so. everybody, if you're not familiar with the old Channel 101 series called Yacht Rock by J.D. Risner and friends, you are missing out. Please check that out uh, at the link not below. You know, <laughs> it's oh. the end of the night here. <laughs> We're going to need to update some. I am punchy, and oh my god, I cannot believe I pulled, the, pulled that game against Brandon out, and then... You know, I'm really glad you did, because I'm glad that the matches were designed, decided by, like, things. Like, like game activities. Like Dottie Voidwalker. <laughs> yeah. That card's a house, man. That card's going to be a VRD, like, just special for a long time coming. Okay, close this. I'm just updating the things. And apparently I can't talk and type anymore at the same time, so... That's where we are, folks. Professional commentary from me and my good friend Steven. So the, fu the fun is. Uh, beverage? Yes, that is a beverage. I'll take I a agree. small glass, so that's it. Yeah. Is it just my left? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, in that game, is that before the start of this, I, if I hadn't the one game two with the uh, Witherbloom combo, mm -hmm. I was would have cast his own Miracle off of Dothy Void Walker. Yeah! When I activated it to Mill <laughs> That is amazing. Come on. There we go. I'm pressing the right buttons. All right, folks. This one is for all the marbles. Mason versus John Ryan in the finals. Now. So, Mason's just looking for not a quick Iona. Yeah. Yeah, if Mason can fade the Iona here, he's got a shot. But right. John Ryan's got a lot of really good good tools to find and entomb and re-put into play that Iona. So, I think Mason is not favored here, right. let's say. Well, and even Grizzlebane's rough on him just because of the lifelink, you know, because he's on the beatdown. Sorry, wait, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, Chad. Did we say we were going to do shin kicks for the win? This is what happens when we let Brandon and Mason yeah, yeah, yeah. into the booth at the same time. <laughs> the reason we don't let Brandon in the booth very often. Like, there was one long ago where uh, there was Brandon and Vince in the booth. And, oh, God. Oh, my. Br Brandon and Mason in the booth had some of that same oh, okay. energy, to be perfectly well, honest. Well, I think everyone's got that same energy. Yeah. But, but Mason, Mason I, I, don't, I don't know if you've spoken to Mason at all, that, all at all today, but he is already there. He's an yeah. energetic fellow. Lots of fun. See, so I'll miss some fun while I, I was in my Brandon, when I first lost to Brandon when I was streaming Obscenities. Uh, Mark's, <laughs> uh, Mark's wife came in and had, because their son said, is your, is your friend okay? He seems, he seems very upset. <laughs> not, not just he seems yeah. very upset. He, he seems sad. Does he need a snack? And he was right. I did. And I ate some like fried corn things and yeah. some, uh, um, some little vegetable and, samosas. And yeah. I did, that did a lot of good. Yeah. That, that's, that's, I, I was saying that's one of sort of the, uh, the truths of our species. Uh, you know, I am sad. I need a snack. Yeah. That's real. That's my. That was my pandemic mood. That's that's why I did drastically change my diet. Take care of yourselves, folks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we got uh, we got some Elvish Mystic there. Let's Ooh, gold a nice clamp, clamp hand. Yeah. That's gonna be a, looks like a solid one. Mason gonna put a card on the bottom here. Yeah, I would have had turn two cards. I would have oh, had game one against him if not for Clamp. Like mm. he just got so many extra gassy cards. Clamp is Clamp is a lot. Like that card's yeah. a lot, especially I in a deck. Like awesome, but yeah, he, he grabbed it before I could get it. In a deck like that, can that just can? Oh, oh, we got the uh, the classic. Well, the thing was at that point where I took the blossom and he took the clamp. I wasn't sure he was going to delve yet because he had been and had the black, and it wasn't right. quite clear what he was doing yet. So I didn't think I had real competition for the clamp. And yes. then, like, and then surprise, and he grabbed it and then moved into it. So it was smart. So we have the surprise. Uh, once upon a time into Deathrite Shaman. As Texas Ranger points out, multi five again in this matchup is rough. That is a bad way to start this matchup for Mason, but. If you were going to start this this uh, matchup tutoring for something off of, or pulling something off once upon a time, Death Rite Shaman is a solid choice. That's good. Oh, that's sour? Yeah. That, that sour is real good. Spontaneous free fermented sour ale with black currant, cherry, and vanilla. Yeah, I just, I told myself I was not going to have any more, any yeah, more drinks. Yeah, I too, but, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I had some of that earlier. It's very good. Very, very good stuff. So Death Rite Shaman, probably going to be an impactful card in this matchup, yeah. most likely. That was one I wanted. He grabbed it right before I, I, yeah. I got it. Mason also has uh, Mason also has Scoos in the board, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's main or board, but I'm assuming he has it for sure, yes. Let's go check on that. That's actually relevant information. Folks, we are bringing you relevant Scoos information here from the finals. Scavenging Ooze in the sideboard. And you I will don't not think see he has one. any other, like, graveyard. He, he does have the endurance oh, on the board as well. Right. Okay, and that's board as well. So. Yep. So he's got two solid, solid, you know, three solid graveyard hate cards. Yeah. That if he gets those and doesn't get the quick start, he's got legs there. Now the thing is that John Ryan honestly has the muscle to to beat a little graveyard. Just pack rat. He can he can he can beat those cards yeah. with pack rat. Now 
the problem with Packrat in this matchup is that Mason's also well equipped to create a large board of nonsense with cards like Elvish Clan Caller, which frankly has overperformed yeah, today. And that's not his main either, though, is it? No. He brings it in there. Yeah, it's definitely overperformed. It's been really good from what I've seen it. John Ryan, Lotus, Vamp Tutor, Faithless Looting Away, Grave Titan, and Preordain. And he's going to exhume that Grave Titan, and here's my zombies. Go. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a... That, nothing that Death Rite could do right there. Yeah, Death Rite Shaman did not have the opportunity to do anything. Mason had no mana, and Death Rite Shaman still had the... Uh, the old summoning sickness. Or as we call it in the Levine family, the old show-up throw-up. That's a little tidbit for you folks about how I like to talk about Magic the Gathering. Putting the clamp on the Death Rate Shaman, making it a 2-1, and we've got Elvish Mystic down on the battlefield. Those cards are not very good against Grave Titan. Titan's just going to ball. This is... Yeah, I don't know if he's got answers to that. No. Gonna... Well, Mason is going to cash in Death Rite for a couple of cards here. Uh, he is going to block the Grave Titan rather than trading off for one of the zombies. Not terribly interested in preserving that life here. in a symbiote. Ooh, okay. John Ryan's got something. It's Pack Rat. Uh, do you think Mason's in trouble here? Yeah, yeah, I think Mason I mean, might be in a little trouble. Symbiote gives him a little bit of cuteness where he can block and return yes. the, to his hand. And he does have Visionary and Heritage Druid here, so he's actually got but, a little bit of gas. he doesn't have the gas to go. He doesn't have the, he's got the gas. He just yeah. doesn't have the, the engine for it. He just, he's just not quite there. He can, he can play Heritage Druid and uh, tap these three bad boys to make some mana and then play the Symbiote and then return something to hand and then not really get much done. I mean, he'll return the visionary. He'll oh oh he's clamping the visionary. He's gonna clamp the visionary. Draw two. He can draw a lot of cards. Oh uh oh okay. But he's got to survive. Yeah, I don't think he survives here. Uh, he's at twelve here, facing down four zombies, grave titan, and a singular pack I mean, that's rat. Fourteen just from the grave titan. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, he can block. He can put a symbiote and block one mm -hmm. and survive. He's got two floating here. Gonna go ahead and cast that uncounterable Wirewood Symbiote. But I mean, his only hope is a Crater Hoof yeah. Overrun. No. And two mana is not enough to get the job done here. I would have been interested He's got the in a four for the natural. He just needs. Uh... I would have been interested in a line that involved returning the the Visionary to hand potentially, right. but I don't know. That that may be a little too EDH of I, me. Yeah, I think it's a little too. Q at this point. I think he just needs the raw cards. John Ryan says, I'm going to turn sideways. Wirewood Symbiote runs on the way of Grave Titan. Looks like we're going to make uh, two zombies. John Ryan, thinking about making a pack rat, chooses not to. Mason falls to three here. He is in dire straits. And uh, the band is not going to be bringing him any of those color TVs, it looks like. No, but John Ryan is the sole swing this game. Yeah, John, John Ryan has the board. Natural Order is not going to save Mason unless they've printed some really insane green cards in the last 10 minutes or so. Going to cash in Elvish Mystic for a card. Still got that Heritage Druid in play. You know, Mason. Mason's a uh, Mason's a tenacious player. He's looking yeah. for that way out, but John Ryan is uh, just, as, just as tenacious, and Mason's not playing really any D here, so... Uh, Looks like Mason's going to be paying tribute to John Ryan in, in the form of losing game one. A couple of music jokes here for you fans. We're going to send Dryad Arbor straight to hell off the skull clamp. Draw a couple more cards. Mason's got that Mox Jet, and he just says, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Right. Let's go to the board. All right, so we got Endurance and Scooze comes in for sure. That and Endurance is, is probably the best here because it can come down flash on turn one. Because, I mean, that was the issue there. Like, he, he had yeah. turn one uh, death right. Right. But when you go Lotus and, you know. And basically Mason's entire deck pitches to evoke uh, Endurance. And Endurance, of course, has flash. Let's pull that. I'm going to pull that up for our viewers here. Yeah. So my our previous show, I said um, Solitude, Grief, and... Um, Subtlety would see play, and Endurance would probably see play. Yep. So I was wrong on Subtlety. Yep. We didn't, we have no subtleties today. Yeah. And you uh, picked Grief. Yeah, I picked Grief. Solitude went, and then Endurance went here. Went and here. I I believe that Grief would have gotten picked by someone else. I think by you. Yeah. Like Unmasked got picked in this draft. That yeah. tells me that Grief would have gotten picked. Right. But yeah, uh, Subtlety, uh, an interesting card. I like it a lot. 
will probably show up in a VRD. Did not show up today. Yeah, I mean, I, the more I've played it in Commander, I'm less impressed with it. The fact mm. that you can only get creatures and planeswalkers. <coughs> yeah, that is a little bit of a bummer. Um, it is it, the fact that you can't hit those non-permanent spells that you really need to interact right. with in VRD. And if it was a hinder, a real hinder, instead of they got to pick, yep. it would be better, but not being a real hinder also. Um, yeah. Top or bottom, it's a little bit... Uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes that's good. Bottom, sometimes that would be, yeah. But they, them getting to pick. You know, yeah. it's, it's definitely, I'm much less high on it than I was. Yeah, it's a... Uh, the, 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 often, oftentimes, the difference between a good bad good card and a bad card is your opponent getting to make a choice. Yo, browbeat a little. <laughs> that's what I call it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Browbeat. And, you know, and I, I've I've played me some uh, Skull Scorches in my day. I've played some Browbeats. I've played some Book Burnings. Uh, Book Burning, of course, uh, the card with some of the most unfortunate uh, original templating of all time. I don't know if I know that one. So Book Burning uh, is basically a spell uh, that that is intended to give you threshold. Right. Right. You mill someone for six unless unless your uh, unless basically your, your opponent agrees to take six damage. Right. But Book Burning, the way this is printed, it says unless a player has Book Burning, and that's the end of the first line. Huh. Deal six damage to to them, and then blah 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 right. blah blah. And so a lot of people, I was at the judgment pre-release, and my opponent was like, "No, you don't have book burning, so you take six damage." I was like, "Friend, friend, <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to someone called uh, the Whoa. judge right. because they're going to help you." Like I wasn't even a certified judge; I was in like high school at this point. I was like, well, "I know that's not right. That that's not what cards do." Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, that's my book burning story. Always fun. We're back to endurance here. Uh, John Ryan up a game, and if John Ryan takes one of these two games, which I think he's good he's to do, he's going to be our second back-to-back champion. Yeah. And we're really gonna, we're, you know, from a narrative standpoint, we're really going to need Elaine to come back. You know, we really need Elaine to come back just because Elaine's great. But from a narrative standpoint, it'll be even more imperative. Honestly, though, a Chicago player coming in and winning the whole thing, that'd be exciting, too. Yeah. It's all pretty cool. So, uh, you know, very exciting, very, very interesting for me, a VRD meta-narrative standpoint, and that's what I like to hear. I'm a, I'm a meta-narrative kind of guy. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I'm a meta-narrative guy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, going to the hair. I'm punchy. <laughs> uh, hey, I liked it. We don't have it. The hair. Oh no! Neither, <laughs> neither 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 of us really do possess the hair. Yeah. You've seen both of us today. You know Mason Mulligan again. Oh, that's a real bummer. Yeah. This is. I don't think this is how either of them wanted the finals to go. No. Well, I mean, honestly, so Mason was in there earlier, like plotting hard on sideboard. How he's going to sideboard for this match, yeah. making sure he's doing it right. Like he wants this. He was in there thinking hard about it. Yeah. Yeah. No. He's 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 hungry. He's tenacious. He's ready for it. But the cards are not falling his way in this finals, and he's already uh, kind of unfavored in this matchup. Uh, in my opinion, in John Ryan's opinion, I, you know, yeah. if you ask Mason honestly, I think his opinion too. Although, of course, he's not going to admit that to himself right now. He's just trying to scrape and claw for everything he can get. Never, never admit you're the underdog until the until uh, well, the so far. Over. John Ryan's only lost for the day, so I feel good. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty great. Yeah. That's a that's a solid take home. And you won the the I fourth place it. gauntlet. Yeah, <laughs> I got to bring home a bottle of liquor. Yeah, get my entry back. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. So it's time for Inquisition of Kozilek. Yeah. He brought in his Inquisition of Thoughtseize. Okay, so we see uh, Preordain, two lands, Necromancy, Snuff Out, Makeshift Mannequin, and another land. I mean, do you take the Ordain there, or do you take one of the reanimators? I mean, he's got two of them, I guess. Yeah, he has he has Necromancy and, and makeshift. Uh, makeshift. So I think taking the Preordain and trying to keep him off targets is right. reasonable. Just try to slow him down as much as you can with one spell, because, like, that's your one discard spell for the game, probably. Right. You better make it count. And you got to play for the high upside. That's what Mason has to do. I mean, he can't hit Mannequin anyway, so he yeah. could have hit Necro. He could hit Necro, but you you got to play for that high upside here. you gotta you got to go for the, the big swing, especially right. when you're already down a card and you're trying to one-for-one one your opponent. That can be a little rough. So, What else is in that hand there? Uh, it's Island, uh, I think Pathway... Uh, um, concordant crossroads. Oh, 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 Mason's hand. Ah, Mason's hand yes. There. Crossroads, query, and ranger, and, forest, yeah. something. Like a waterlog grove, maybe. I don't know. He's flipping them pretty fast. Uh, no, just the three. It's just three cards. 
Yep. Math checks out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need I don't need to go giving anybody else a hidden card error today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once was enough for me. I I did one, Kyle did one. Kyle's was worse. Mm-hmm. Unmask pitching mannequin. And there's the verification. We've got three cards. We've got Queer and Ranger. We've got Concordant Crossroads and Forest. Take, yeah. take that Ranger. Faithless looting. Draw, draw. Let's see if we pitch the known knowns or the known unknowns. Probably that island. Yep, that's going to go. And something else that we can't Cannot see. see. Oh, oh, it's going to be the... Nope. Okay, there's something else you can't see. Played the pathway on the blue the blue, blue side. side yeah. Yep, because we've got Blood Crypt, of course, so we're going to want that blue mana. There he's moving his guard up a little bit. Look like oh, I think. Yeah, I believe so. Mason cracks in with that Finned Horn Elves, bringing John Ryan one lower. <laughs> Come on in, Logan, you can join us. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, if Mom says no, yeah. then, then, then we it's, say no, too. Exactly. We are... Flashback of Luton. Good friends. We know what to do. Yeah, flashback that looting. That's going to dig John Ryan even further towards cards like Iona, cards like presumably Elish Norn, which I'm guessing got sideboarded in. Yeah. Another another just haymaker that will delete Mason's board. John Ryan taking some time to think. Either that or he's put cards down in the part of his graveyard that we can't see. Oh, he's... You know, I wonder on his elves. I mean, obviously he did super well all day, but I wonder how much Genesis Wave would have been in there, at least in the board for mm. something like this. Because he's got all that, you know, like high end. Like one game we were watching earlier, he had like the Guy's Cradle Druid and Cradle and the ability to untap the Guy's Cradle Druid. Like Genesis Wave into a Cradle Hoof and an army and Concordant. And, you know. Yeah, he, he, he had the ability to make a lot of mana that he simply. That, that, that is one of the interesting things about Mason's deck. He's, he has an ability to make a lot of mana that he simply can't do quite enough with. Yeah. I think he would have liked to have the finale of Devastation that ended oh, up yeah. Yeah, deck. Yeah. He definitely wanted that. I, I, his face, I saw his face like, oh. But when he took the Green Sun Zenith, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty much locked in that Alex, Alec was going to pick up the finale. Right. So he gets a land off of the, yeah, Caracas. Oh, Caracas is relevant. Elish Norn and Iona both, and Gristlebrand, uh, and Gristlebrand all three. So unless he has, has he got Arcana Cruelty in the main or. Arcana Cruelty is in the main grave type. He might have figured it out, right? Man, old Ragavan got drafted and did not really get played. That's sad. Yeah, Ragavan uh, ended up sat in the board. old board. Not nimble enough, Ragavan. No. John Ryan getting beaten down by a couple of mana elves. Going to crack that fetch. Go down to 12. Pick up a little more mana. Try to get something going in this game. He's got that snuff out sitting in his hand. Might be hard casting at some point here. But down to 12 going to be a little bit harder to justify So watching life. today, did, what, any cards did you see that you thought performed better than you would think? I mean, let's start with Elvish Clan Caller, right. right? I saw Elvish Clan Caller win a lot of games just just sort of like in, in ways that I did not expect. I was very impressed by that. Uh, I thought Tasha's hit, Hideous Laughter was going to be good. It it was, was better than I thought. Yeah, it was so, so it weird. really impressed me. Like that, I did not I, the the, tar, the, the tar, opponents thing, so you can't veil it. And, yep. Uh, the card that I had that impressed me all day, and I thought it was going to be good. And I told Mark in our our, our previous shows it was going to be good, but it, it, almost every time I cast it, it was amazing. It was Wither Wither Bloom, Bloom Command. Command. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a format where there's a lot of artifacts and enchantments that cost less than two. There's a lot of creatures with one butt. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, with Dothy Voidwalker, I did mill three return strip mine to my hand. I milled him for three. Gosh. And then return strip mine to my hand. I mean... That's busted. Yeah. yeah, I saw you do some really cool stuff with that card all day. I am very impressed with that. We had a cute little moment here where uh, one of those mana elves was getting getting snuffed out, and I think John Ryan was like, that one. And Mason was like, what about this one, though? What about Elv- What about Findhorn Elves? Yeah. And John Ryan stuck to his guns. He said, no, Elvish Mystic. It's the newer card, therefore it's got to be more broken. Exactly. John Ryan going for the careful study. Got to put some more cards in, in his graveyard. Is John still Ryan... The Necro, or is it... Still has the Necromancy in hand, okay. I believe. Because he was playing cards up earlier, so I didn't... I don't yeah. see it currently, so I didn't know. Yeah, John Ryan. John Ryan has not, to my knowledge, discarded the necromancy. Right. And as you can see, he certainly hasn't cast it. And he has cards. That's true. I did hype uh, Tasha's hideous laughter pretty highly, but it really did out like it. It was better than what I thought. Like. Man, so brutal. 
Yeah, yeah, it's just really good. The the average mana value in in these drafts is quite low, and exiling is a big game. Yeah. Um, and as far as like, I'm just trying to think if there's Turn anything. Turn one I saw. of the lotus would have been hilarious. Oh gosh, is there anything that you saw that like did not meet expectations? Cards you saw that you were like, oh, I really was hoping I was pulling for this card. Um. Did Animate Dead World Gorger Dragon ever happen all day? He, no, he, he ended up fighting it out for the stasis. He realized he built his deck wrong. Yeah, I definitely think the uh, stasis Chronotog combo right. is a, the superior option. I know you were in earlier, but basically he got suckered into taking the hate pick on uh, Reanimate. Yup. And then he uh, uh, Animate Dead, and then he decided to run with it, rather he, than just saying, I made a mistake taking it. So, so yeah. that's one of the really interesting things about, about magic in general, and, and just about a lot of things in life. Um, uh, Paolo Vitor Demeteroso wrote a fantastic article on Channel Fireball a while back about mistakes and how there's two ways to make a mistake. You make a mistake and then you go, okay, that was a mistake and I'm just going to I'm just going to acknowledge I made it and then I'm just going to keep trying to make the best play. And then you make a mistake and then you make plays or choices that try to reverse justify that mistake and that's almost always wrong. Yeah. Right? And I think that's what we saw here with the uh, World Gorger Dragon pick. It was a it was a, a sort of a, a an attempt to retcon that mistake and that's that's rarely a good idea. So Opposition Agent wasn't as good for me as I thought it was going to be. Uh, it destroyed against Andrew. Like mm-hmm. it was amazing. Um, I think there I still think it's really good. I still think it's like a 10 12 range. Yes. Um, I think I just had didn't have the great luck with it today because when it worked it like I stone ranked somebody with it on turn two and you know uh, but yeah it definitely was not as strong as I thought it was going to be. Collective brutality here very strong killing one of um, killing Mason's symbiote and actually draining Mason for two. Um, draining being relevant. Yeah, drain being relevant. John Ryan at eight. And endurance. In, ooh, endurance flashing in. John Ryan's graveyard going to go on the bottom of his library in a random order, and endurance is a three four. Uh, yeah. It does block 3-3 three, three pack rats. So the thing about off agent that I think in the long run, I think in a blue-black deck where you're holding up your mana anyway, mm-hmm. it's light years better than in my deck where I want to be tapping my mana a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, but in the blue-black where you're holding up for counter spells, I think that's where it becomes... That's really where it shines. That, that much better. I want to draw I want to draw attention to the heads-up play that Mason here made here. Uh, blocking and killing the token instead of the original pack rat, I believe is the correct choice because, you know... The original pack rat, they can, you know, there, there's there's things John Ryan can do if that card is in the graveyard. Right. Just like taking out the tokens is not going to change what's in John Ryan's graveyard, and I think that's that's very relevant. Going ahead and attacking for one, two, three, four, five, that's six, that's seven. That's John Ryan's at one. Very precarious here. John Ryan with the two pack rats. He passes. He's got five mana up and an at unknown number of one cards card in hand. hand. Uh, yeah, but. Yeah. One five mana is not six, and Mason takes game two. There we go. Folks, we've got ourselves a game three of the finals, we've and that's the dream. <laughs> Thank you, Jim Ross. <laughs> oh man, I'm. You know what? If this if this finals hadn't gone to a game three, I don't know if I would have been satisfied. Yeah, no, this is much better. It's that's that's what you want. I I've said twice before today, and I'll say it again. A game, th- if you don't get a game three, I kind of feel a little bit robbed, you know, robbed of a little bit of drama, robbed of, of a little bit of ceremony. And what we're getting here is a really interesting, uh, really interesting final from a storytelling point. We have got VRD number, what was it, five? This five. is six. This is a yeah. VRD cha- five champion. VRD five champion, John Ryan, hometown hero, uh, looking to repeat uh, versus Mason coming in all the way from Chicago after after just a, a Discord message saying, "Hey, you all need some folks. Uh, we're we're established VRD people. How about we come down and uh, show you what's what?" And we checked them out, made sure they weren't kooks. <laughs> yeah, we we took a little look, make yeah. sure make sure they weren't weren't murder gonna murder us, but make sure uh, they fit in. Yeah, but they were willing to drive to Missouri, so we said, "Yeah, come on down." You know, obviously. Again, yeah. they were established VRD folks, had done quite a few drafts, so don't go get any any ideas, or, you know, unless you do. You know, ask us. We're friendly. But, we might uh, say no. We might we say might, later. Right. We might put you on a reserve list. Yeah, but we might also say yes, because we're friendly, too. Uh, but but I think this this is a really interesting, uh, just, just a really exciting Files. John Ryan, of course, advantaged here on the play. Careful study. 
right off the bat. John Ryan also trying to break the curse of the Black Lotus. Yeah, first pick, Black Lo- first pick, first seed is not one of St. Louis BRD. So John Ryan jumping Iona and something into the graveyard. Uh, John Ryan jumping Iona. <laughs> so, Iona and card. Right, unless there card is name. an endurance in hand. It also means that he has a reanimator. Yeah, I'm trying to look and see if he has endurance in hand. Well, he didn't have a scooter, he would have dropped it there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, is that Archon of Cruelty? I don't... I, I'm yeah, not... Yeah, it's an Archon. I can see it. I'm pretty uh, sure. I'm pretty sure you are right, Northos. I haven't gotten to the point with Archon of Cruelty where I can recognize it, kind of it like from the corner the yet. I'll get there. I'll get there. Uh, Questing Beast was really good for me today. I yeah. should have main decked it. Mm. Yeah, I think you're Question right about beat. that. Um, it's a solid card, though. Yeah. Scooz is here. Scooz is here, and Mason's got a mana up. So even if he collected brutalities and takes it, tries to take it out. Well, actually, he, with the man up, he can't even collect it out. Yeah, because it's only minus two, minus two. And John John Ryan uh, spent his disfigure, I think, appropriately on Priest of Titania. And John Ryan says, "Plan P, Pack Rat, let's go." Rat a tat tat. Scoo's gonna eat that Iona. Go to uh, three three and gain Mason a point of life here. Uh, Call to complete. Performed really well today when I, when I saw it. For Did Mason gain his life? I don't think so. I'm going to uh, yeah, see what I can do about that because that's important. Those are relevant things. We don't turn the judging off. Uh, he just dropped a 17, so I'm not sure. He went back up to 18, so I think he might have got it there. Smart. Ooh, scavenging who's got big while I was gone. Mm-hmm. I think he ate some of his own. Yep, ate his own priest of Titania and the Archon of Cruelty as well. Yeah. But Scooze might do I mean, it, that's a, a quick Scooze without removal. Loop. Yeah. That makes this tough. Yeah, I mean, what are John Ryan's options for actually killing the Scooze? They're, they're few and far between, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Massacre? What is Massacre going to minus two, minus two? Massacre's minus two, minus two. That's not going to do it. Does he have a way to kill that? Death touch from a Grave Titan. No. Yeah. So, no. Got yeah. it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's... Uh, no, I mean, he doesn't have a lot of removal. I mean, he's playing... No. Uh, you know, Archon's gone, so say you can't, like, repeat Archon over and over, hoping to... Echoing Truth. Would get Echoing it. Truth yeah. will bounce it and resize it. Yep. Right. What? Okay. John Ryan taking a taking a time walk? Oh no, John Ryan discarding time walk? I think he got uh, Inquisition maybe? Doesn't look like it. I thought, cause he tapped a black, so... Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe you got Inquisition. Yeah, yep, I think, yep, I think yep. we're just a little off board there. Inquisition took time walk. That makes a lot of sense. We need to get our camera a little bit higher. <laughs> yeah. yeah, next time, next time. Faithless Looting becomes a rat. John Ryan untaps and passes. We've got three, three, three rats, and those will go to battle pretty well with Scoos. Oh, and an Endurance. Endurance says, goodbye, Graveyard. It's been nice. I think we may have a Titan Slayer, a Giant Slayer card. We may. Now, we do have that Giant Killer card, that Foil Giant Killer. Good seeing you. Take care, bro. That was Brandon. He's headed out. Looks like John Ryan's going to make another Pack Rat in Tomb. And Tomb, you're quite the card. Now you're a 4-4. You're a 4-4 rat. How does that feel? And John Ryan says, okay, we're going to play a game. You're going to make elves, and I'm going to make a pack rat every turn. How does that How does that suit you? Yeah. And we'll see who comes out the winner here. Now the question is, did Mason bring in the clan callers? Because the clan callers are actually going to be relevant in this kind of situation, right? I don't right? think so in this game. I mean... Well, if if because I mean he has yeah. to side out a lot of stuff, right? That's like, true. That's he, true. He doesn't. He he sides out the Rex Sage. Mm, mm-hmm. Um, but he, he's bringing in the endurance. He's bringing in the Scoos. Yep. I don't think he brings in the Clan Callers. Yeah. He brings in the Inquisition and the Thought Seeds. At least the Inquisition for sure. So he's at least brought in four there. So yeah. There's probably the there's probably no room for the Clan Callers. Yeah. You're right. So that's interesting. And oh my oh. gosh, that's a hard cast crater hoof. Wow! And with six creatures in play, that's a big swing. John Ryan goes ahead and makes another pack rat. Now, I haven't done the math here. And at least one of these players has. We've got... We're going to put Crater Hoof up on the board here. That's 11 for the hoof? 5 plus... Crater Hoof Behemoth XX until end of turn. 
So each creature, get, each of Mason's creatures got plus six, plus six, and trample. So we have an 11, 11 scoos, an 11, 11 hoof, and an eight, nine, nine, or nine, nine, ten, nine endurance. ten endurance. And all of those creatures have trample. John Ryan has 25 points of toughness here That's and 15, 15 points of life. So this is not a lethal attack. So. And the issue is with the 11 11s, right? If they were, yeah. five, if they were 10 10s, he's in right. so much better spot. But the two being 11 11s make yep. this rough. Yes. Now, what I think John Ryan is likely to do is let one of the 11 11s go face and then yeah. full block the 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 other two creatures, killing the Endurance and the, uh, the Hoof. Yeah, but then he loses his rat. Oh, yeah. He's going to lose most of his board. Because, yeah, he can't take, I mean, he can't let take two face, though. So. Yeah. And the the thing is that those rats are all gonna die after after damage, right? right. Because as they leave, they get smaller. He's got to do the scoos. So he's gonna have to block probably differently from what I said in order to survive. Uh, There's no first strike, so yeah. I mean. But he does he does want to keep at least one rat around. He's not, but he can't. I don't think he can. He can't. I can't. I think this is a mistake. I think he needs to double block the endurance here. Yeah, I agree. But I, I, I don't think there's a lot of ways out for John Ryan, to be perfectly right, honest. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think it matters. Overly, he's going to be at four, and then, you know, he doesn't have a damnation or a... Yeah, there's no wraths. Nobody took a real wrath. I took Mask Toxic Deluge. That's right. You were the only person with a real wrath. Yeah. And Toxic Deluge, like, paying life in this format is like, yeah. great, sure, bye. Was Not using that for anything else. Yeah, that's the right block. Okay, so John Ryan, yep, that's that's what we that's what we sussed out. 15, uh, basically 15, 15 here. So we go 5, 5, and 1 there. And then we go 5 and 4 there. So yes, literally every rat dies after combat. Because, right, uh, the other rats will be smaller. And... The other rats get, get smaller. Yeah, Mason here hoofing it from Chi-Town all the way down to the Gateway City here in St. Louis. The Gateway to the Midwest. And Mason is crashing through that Gateway with an army of invading elves. Really so, impressive. interesting thing about this matchup, though, this thing out, is so in five, mm -hmm. John Ryan versus Elaine was a playoff. Yes. And John Ryan was the underdog. Yeah. And John Ryan took it. Yeah. And uh, the the same here, right? Yeah. Mason coming in as the underdog. Mason, the underdog, the out-of-towner. The Scoos. I mean, he had the Iona quick, and he had the Necro yeah. in hand to go for it, but. Scavenging is a big difference maker in this hard cast Crater Hoof Behemoth. Crater Hoof Behemoth really, really showing us, hey, <laughs> did you did you forget how good I was? I hope not, because, oh my gosh, look at this freaking card. How does John Ryan win from here? I don't. He I doesn't, don't right? Does. I don't. I mean, so Scooz is dead. It, is he, he's only got three mana. I mean, I can't think of a... Thing that I don't know, I don't know if he has any cards in hand or not, but I can't think. I think he's fishing all the scoos. Yeah, he's he's been he's been hurling all of his cards into the pack rat engine one at a time. Yeah, I I don't. This isn't okay. I don't, you know, frankly, I don't know if there is a correct block here. I don't know that it matters. I think this is. I think you've got to take you got to take two of them out. Yeah, this is this is the best block. Right. But it doesn't matter. Wow. This is really impressive. John Ryan, I mean, if there's a way out of this, frankly, I think John Ryan's going to find it, but I don't think it exists. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming he's got no cards in hand, and he can't... Sh I mean, Iona's gone, so you can't show and tell in an Iona. Uh, I can no longer do ha math about how many cards would be in his hand because right. his graveyard got enduranced. Right. And so. some eaten, and half of it's off the tape line. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. What a fun 13 hours. Absolutely correct. Absolutely right, Texas Ranger MTG. This has been an unbelievable marathon. Yeah, I miss VRD. There's, there, was, there was a hole in my life in VRD. VRD fits perfectly into it. Yep. If there's a winner interview, ask Mason about Brush Strider and why isn't it in the screen deck. I'm going to put Brush Strider up on the board for you. We do usually do a winner inter winner interview. I just we're we're talking about we're talking about regular brush strider. I'm gonna be quiet. We're talking about And that's the handshake. Mason is our winner all the way from Chicago coming down to St. Louis, dethroning our champion. Congratulations, Mason. Winner. Taking hold the gold in VRD six winner, here in St. Winner, Louis. Chicken dinner.
Unbelievable. Well, I'll send him in for a quick interview so we can wrap all this. Let's up. get that man in the booth. Yeah. See if we can uh, get him to talk for a short period of time. Although knowing him, that might be difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Not. Oh, it says Brandon and Mark. Rip. I got. Okay. Mason. Oh my God. Uh, I was so okay. I've I've got explicit instructions from Chad. Now, before we get into anything about your deck, about your day, about your your fantastic victory, I I need to know. I need to know something very important. Yeah. Brush Rider. Uh, two mana, three one vigilance. Why didn't this right. make the cut? Tell me about this card. Uh, it's just not the right meta, you know. Uh, every card is good contextually. I think it's the number <laughs> one word that comes up. Now, Shredder, it wasn't its day, but you know, you get the right conditions uh, online. I'll give you this. Uh, you know how Calder Complete is kind of like the nut now. Yeah, yeah. Stone Forge Mystic. Yeah. Well, Calder Complete doesn't have vigilance. Uh, the same way that Brush Rider does. So I think that if you continue to see the Calder Complete meta over Batter Skull, we might see a resurgence with Brush Rider. Yeah, we're, we're here in here in St. Louis. Guy. We're we're a little more of a Brush there. Wag meta here <laughs> r- around here. But uh, well, but... that would explain some things about your guys' <laughs> quality of play. <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> in all seriousness, up. though, it's it was amazing to see you come here and take down this whole thing. How do you feel right now? I. This uh, this morning, getting ready for the the tournament. Yeah. Honestly, it was probably one of the most excited I've been to play Magic in a really long time. Vintage Artistry Draft is such a, sort of such a specific format, and it might be a little masturbatory, but like mm-hmm. people really talk about it being this incredibly skill intensive format, deep. Really, you get out of it what you put into it, the preparation, the work you get into it. So, uh, I've done so many of these with my friends over the years, and you know, being very egotistical, I do really well. <laughs> Um, and you sort to start to wonder, you're like, you know, you're going to a new place, you're playing with new people, uh, in a new meta, you guys have all these other ideas about the format than I do, and you kind of wonder, like, is my skill set going to hold up? Like, right. it, am I going to be able to come here? Are these guys just going to destroy me? Am I going to turn out that, like, this inbred VRD meta we've been playing up in Chicago is just completely backwards, and, right. and I'm just going to get trashed? And you know what? Honestly, the guys, like impressed me with the way they evaluated a lot of cards like uh the way that they were prioritizing their picks keeping themselves open it was awesome like i think a lot of guys drafted really well um with like you know differences in meta really being the the biggest thing yeah and i don't think i had one easy match today um dan who drafted the blue red wheel deck uh mark said it looked like it underperformed a lot yeah uh dan would have beaten me in the swiss uh but he resolved a windfall incorrectly and and like literally just lost a game that he that he had boxed up. Yeah. So um, if that had not happened, I wouldn't have even made the playoff match, and I wouldn't have won. So it's like that kind of variance is just insane. Every match that I had was super close. Uh, you know, and and I think you kind of saw it. Like everyone had really similar records. Yeah. I there weren't people uh, with me and John Ryan. I guess uh, we kind of pulled away, but so many people were right in there with these really, really similar records. And I think yeah. that just shows like a very, very close meta, very close, very close matches. Yeah. It was, it was a really impressive day, a really impressive draft all the way to the end. And I, I think it's really amazing that you came down from, from Chicago and, uh, and managed to take down the whole thing. Is there anybody back in Chicago in your VRD group that you want to shout out right now? I bet there's at least one person. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and shout out my, uh, now former roommate, Jim Houseworth. He is a, VRD machine. Uh, I swear to God, I could count on the num- I could count on both of my hands out of thirty VRDs how many matches I've lost, <laughs> and this many of them, like this many of them, would be just to him. He's the only. <laughs> he's like the only guy I can just never beat, and he is. He is a crusher. He's he wins as often as I do in our in our hometown VRDs now. And maybe one of these, you know, in the next one, I can wrangle him up and he can come down here because yeah. he would get such a kick out of out of talking about the format and, and playing against new people. And he is a stone cold killer when it comes to VRD. Well, we have not a great... in any other format, Jim. <laughs> <You and> I... <laughs> I gotta get that little burn in there. 
<laughs> you should see him try to play his own cube. It's <laughs> rough. Well, right. we, well, we had a great. If I if I can speak for the group, and I think I can, because that's the kind of thing I just do without asking anybody. <laughs> I, I, I we had a great time hosting you and uh, and Andrew this this uh, today uh, at this VRD. You guys were were fantastic. A lot of fun to have here, and I really appreciate you coming down and uh, playing this. And congratulations! This so awesome. Thank Very you well guys. done. I appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Hey, all right. right. So I'm going to yeah. switch over to the uh, to the other view because you're going to go pick your prizes. Oh boy, Mason Lang gets to pick some alcoholic bottles of. Ooh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> yeah. Yes, your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mason. The joke there being that Mason doesn't drink alcohol, which will be yes. a really exciting time for him to pick. But you know what? That dude had a good time today. Absolutely. And he had a great time. So we're going to switch over to one of these other scenes, right? Which of these scenes uh, is the right one? Let's switch over to the uh, the gameplay scene. Ah, look at that. Right. So we don't exactly know who is picking at any various <laughs> point, and it's going to be a fun, exciting experience. But these are the this is the lineup. Yeah. Uh, there's a fair amount. The Angel's Envy is one of my favorites, Ooh, actually. That Angel's Envy bottle is a high pick, I yeah. think. Yeah. Oh, this this bottle of Japanese whiskey that, that that was just touched by someone that's a that's a wild card. Oh, here's Mason going for the biggest one. Good Ma choice. Good Mason choice. Mason bigger is better. Mason grabbing the okay and the the wild card Japanese whiskey going next. Now there is a ninth bottle in there. That's there's that beer bottle. Is that paired with anything? It's paired with a Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace plus Goose Island. Uh, the Goose Island. Bourbon County Stout. Now those Bourbon Counties, you ate, you age them in your fridge for a couple uh -huh. of years. They come out real nice. I think the Buffalo Trace is a sleeper hit here. Oh, and Angel's Envy is, is my pick. Wow! Right? Did Angel's Envy wheel? Yeah, I think it did. It's making the rounds. It's gonna be fourth pick. Nice. A Alec just... ended up picking the McKellen 12. Alec gets the McKellen 12, a solid middle of the road, uh, 12 year Highland. Inoffensive. Uh, inoffensive, but un but uh, the the nicest thing I can say about the McAllen 12 it is is that it is a 12 year Highland. Yes. Which is not a bad thing to be. But yeah, so that means that the last two picks are going to end up going to Mason here, and yeah, I agree. Like that bourbon wow. County, I actually have a vertical flight running back four or five years, mm -hmm. uh, and it's delightful. Every year I open one of the oldest ones and then yeah. carry it forward, so I end up with a three year flight every year. I have a uh, I, I have one of the I have one of those bottles that I got from uh Justunks still in my fridge. Mm -hmm. Uh still aging from a holiday gift exchange we did a few years ago when, when we went to visit him. So uh, that's that's chilling in the fridge. I can't believe the Angel's Envy is going this late. Yeah, that that's one that I recently put in my uh infinite bourbon, which Ooh, is like yes. the idea of uh you have a bourbon bottle that you put into a decanter and you add more bourbon over time. Uh, you end up with this like really nice bourbon bottle that, it, since it's all blended anyway, it doesn't matter. But you just like constantly are evolving a history of a bourbon. That's and I've setting. I've had a little bit from this uh, this infinite bourbon bottle, and I can confirm it's a uh, it's a solid concept. And Mark has has brewed up something very nice here. I enjoy it a lot. Hey, John you. Ryan, thanks very much. It was great having you today. Yep. And I think we're all done with the, the draft here, so we can call it for the day. Yeah, we're going to go back to the, uh, the the full screen for us. Uh, so, folks, it's been a fantastic uh, eight, 18, 19, 34 hours, oh something God. like that. Yeah, it's been a long time. My watch uh, has died, so yeah. I don't actually know. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I still... Okay, yeah, it is It is 10, 10 o'clock. Uh, my wife is asleep. Yep. So, uh, yes. Well, we did it. <laughs> 15 hours in. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and thanks for bearing with us. So. And uh, before we go offline, I do want to say to you, Mark, and uh, to, to all of you here in this household, thank you very much for hosting us once again here for the St. Louis VRD. Um, I know, I know that you know we say it, but I don't know if we can ever say it enough. You do, you do a lot. We we put your home in deep, deep disarray every time we come here, and yet you keep inviting us back. So you must really love either us or this or both. So thank you very much. Look, fifteen hours in, this is a delightful format, and I look forward to doing it again in three months, but not before that. So <laughs> it's gonna be great. And it's gonna be a really fun time. So that sounds about see right. See you all in ninety days. All right, folks. Thanks very much. See y'all.